See? Strokes. Someday. Now, it was a better, better choice, wouldn't it, to start off with? Um, oh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Steve Mitchell. No, come on, let's get my name right from now on. That, that novelty's worn off. What is it? Is it Steve Merchant? Oh, yeah, they, yeah. that's the wrong one, isn't it, Mitchell? The Guardian got it wrong, it's Steve Merchant. And the more I say Mitchell, the more people are thinking exactly, it might be Exactly, it might be Mitchell. Oh, God, sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> but Carl wanted to start off with the stereophonics. Oh, loser. Because it was a newer track. And Carl now, we've made him what he is, he was nothing when no we problem. found him. He's right? like work experience. And now he's going, oh, so we should start off with the stereophonics. I'm going, Trying oh, to tell you what to do. If right? I want anyone's opinion, I don't. <laughs> but he'd probably come to me, I imagine. Wouldn't he? <laughs> before, I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. Just keep it. Just because he uh, was in a was it Pilkey's his making this music. Pilkey's Pilk Pilk making. I bet you never pleased a crowd once. Did. Loads of times. Go yeah. on then. What did you play? What's your biggest gig you ever played? I did uh, a, like a social club gig. Yeah. And and it wasn't just about the music either. <laughs> I used to what else could it be about? <laughs> I used to take prizes and, and cigars and stuff. <laughs> In a youth club? To give away. I just love these like 14 year old manks hanging out going, let's go down there, you might have some flags yeah. and cigars for us. Well it was whatever like was on my mum and dad's dressing table. That could have been embarrassing. That <laughs> could have been deeply embarrassing. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. You've won. <laughs> and fair price some handcuffs. And a black mamba. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that at any point in your upbringing, your parents left around any kind of marital aid on the dressing table. <laughs> don't don't think I'm saying that, Carl. I'm not suggesting. <laughs> like, he doesn't like this, does no, he? Well, I, no, I can understand why. Oh yeah, because it's about his it's about his parents having sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, they must have. Yeah, well, at, at least, least three times. I think I was an accident. <laughs> like, I still have sex. Oh, Carl. I, no, think he's, I think it's been ongoing. Just because me, me brother and sister are quite older than me. Yeah, me too. I was an accident. I know that, yeah. Um, How old's your uh, brother and sister? Um, I think my sister's about 39. Right. And my brother's about 37. Okay. And you're 29. Like 29. Right, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, my, my next one's 11 years older than me. Yeah. That was definitely a... Do you want to have a hug, you two, or...? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're dealing yeah. with it now? You got oh, over it? Well, would you like to see us have a hug? Oh. <laughs> oh. You oh, had a mobile rubbish. disco, as well, You had a laugh, aren't you? I was, I, every single gig I did, it's dynamite. The people loved it. It was storming. What, what, what was I, it called? I ran it from about the age of 14 to 18. What was it called? Was it called in the... name of our mobile disco? Yeah. It had two names in its lifetime. <laughs> yeah. It started its life as... Bear with it. Go on. The Rock and Roll DJs. Oh my <laughs> god. The Rock and Roll DJs, that's the <laughs> worst. I mean, that's the worst. Yeah. That's the most appalling. But then it, it became pretty bad after that. When it became the Fantasy Island Roadshow. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Because everyone up to you looked like Tattoo. Partly that, and I... Because I liked the programme Fantasy Island. Why did you like the program Fantasy Island? Well, it was about love on an island. <laughs> it was, and it was about a midget on an island. No, the midget was a minor character. It was about people going to find <laughs> love and romance. You obviously yeah. switched off once the midget had gone off and said, there's the plane. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. that then. Your yeah. parents went, that's over then. It's only five minutes long. <laughs> yeah, well, it's... <laughs> and that's what's that fantasy midget? Yeah. What happened then? Because you know, didn't they, uh, they, um, acted out their fantasies on an island? Well, people would pay to go to the island, um, yeah. to live out their own romantic fantasies, and then invariably that's but what was it always week. It was always about getting yeah, off it was a kind of love island. Yeah. Was it? Well, no, not always. It, sometimes they might be Maybe a... I didn't watch the whole one. Maybe I did just see him, like, smack a little tattoo did. around the head. I think you just saw the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, really? But, um, so what did I sort of go? I've always wanted to have someone in... Well, no, it, it might be something like, you know, I've always wanted to, uh, to sort of, you know, live out, uh, uh, being a gunslinger in a Wild West frontier town, you know, so you might kind of create that kind But what's of that got to do with Well, he invariably would find love, or he'd sort out some emotional problem he had. It was much more a spiritual, emotional journey than so, it was well, about little midgets running around. But was it like, um, oh, I'd like to be a cowboy, and, uh, I'd like, remember the shag? <laughs> yeah, it was like, you fix it. Like those layers you wrote, did you want to fix it? <laughs> I'd like to meet five star, and if something happens, so be it. <laughs> Well, um, but no, I have to just say once though, this on. is about my, this is my DJing credentials. I was once playing, uh, music at a scout jamboree. 
Yeah. When I was about 17, big 16, gig, 17. Then, big, big gig. gig. Yeah. It was a thousand scouts there. Yeah. Right, yeah. They were, and I'll tell you this, we were playing on stuff, they were loving it, they were dancing, it was in a big marquee. Right. right? I slapped on Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Right? They went mad. They went mad for it, they were, they were moshing, they were climbing up the poles, the organisers were going, switch that off, switch that off, right, they're going crazy, and I was there going, no, that's what they like, I'm gonna do it. It and was like Footloose. It was unbelievable, it was just like Footloose. Then I came in with Raging Against the Machine, Killing in the Name of, the place you went wild. Yeah. And they were trying to get me off the decks, it was like Bill, it was like Bill Grundy interviewing the Sex Pistols. And then when, when the, the head of the had you killed, <laughs> exactly. like there was some sort of mafia thing, it was all hushed up, that the scouts went there one night with all candles and they said by your grave and that, and that was the end of the film. <laughs> exactly. It was a film, I assume. <laughs> you no, know, it genuinely to, happened. I assume this didn't really happen. Yes, you, it did. I swear to God, I was playing Smells Like Teen Spirit and it went wild and they were, the organisers were going, switch that off, they're going crazy and I was going, no, it's what they want. Can I say something? It was brilliant. That to me, I've, I've known you for about f um, four years, yeah. and I've heard all those things. That must be the highlight of your life. Unbelievably so, yeah. It's you've never had anything that good no. or exciting since, have you? One day I hope to sleep with a lady. I hope <laughs> that'll uh, it'll slide into second place. <laughs> Right with the I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. To I know. Prepare and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. no, this would, oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he bought for himself at uh, about ten? Penguins. Mm. He buys penguins still. I know. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked wagon wheels. <laughs> You've not been a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's the Clash and Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother in law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, and I think moving in with my sister, and I was about like, um, I don't know, 13, um, and so he was about, uh, 30, and I moved in, and, uh, he brought round all, um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave them at our house, right, mm -hmm. and he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, no, I was right, and, uh, um, and, uh, they, uh, put them upstairs, and I was looking through them, and, uh, it's just all like Alvis stuff and Beatles stuff, and there was a mate of mine who loved Alvis, okay, oh. and he had, um, oh, loads of chemicals, <laughs> yeah, he had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry, and, uh, he said, let's swap me some chemicals for them, so I sort of nicked about five Alvis singles, and I got all these chemicals, and then, just oh. guilt. What sort of chemicals? Just things like, you know, um, uh, just things like from a chemistry set, just, you know, crystals and metals and magnets, all that sort of stuff that I just like to muck around with. And, um, and, uh, and then the guilt just hit me. I just thought, well, he's gonna notice that. And I just, I, one night, I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him but you've got to be good. And it's sort of like I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then, and then I was, have I told you this? No, I, no, 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 you haven't, you've just reminded me of something. And then I remember, um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it, and he said, did you ever, um, uh, play those records I left for you? <laughs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't oh. she? She, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. <laughs> but you've never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't. Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that <laughs> to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I just, oh, That's it was great terrible. I, I remember, um, I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, Magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, Cigars uh, and dildos. And one day, right? Same thing. Uh, me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right. Well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me. She, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right. Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh God. I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like, what? So I, not, not big stuff. I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at 7.2 <laughs> per day. So, um. How so many calculators do you need? So, <laughs> so it was when that phase. You failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um. <laughs> so anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed to her. Computers like, will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confess to this magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confess to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. 
She said, really oh, I, I don't like asking, I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow twenty quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. Bloody <laughs> that's great. And it's the same oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you- And he, he went, hold on, I'm letting you work out the interest on that. I bank ten percent. She'll owe you four yeah. pounds forty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and did you yeah. say, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and, uh, did, 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you went, I just, I just- with your, with that other- Because yeah, what I'm saying is, presumably you got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 right, you know. no. She went, no worries, I'll just go and get my purse, it's on the dressing table. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Carl! Do you want a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> what other things you used to give away at your disco then that you'd find on the dressing table? You used to go into your parents' room and go, what can I give away it was, tonight? It was stuff like a c cigars. Yeah. I'd like cigars. Yeah. Uh, I had a pair of tights. <laughs> 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 Unopened. You know, you get them in like a long. <laughs> Who did you give that to? Just whoever did the prize. It was stuff like you know, we we did like a little raffle. <laughs> just imagine Carl going this just for a pair who's of going joyriding this week. Pretty Polly Sheer. Exactly. Yeah, who's <laughs> doing a bank job this exactly, week? Exactly. That's what it was used for. Yeah. Just little bits of you know, unopened makeup, just stuff like that. And did right. their parents not notice? Well, no, because it's stuff that. You're not that bothered about it. If a telly went missing, they'd notice it. <laughs> they would, wouldn't they? They'd be staring at a wall for three days. <laughs> but a pair of tights and a cigar and that, yeah. get away with it. Yeah. But it's it's funny as well because like you had you had two names. I just like remembered. I started <laughs> off as um, Dazzling Darren's Disco, just because the first lights I could afford along to someone who had their name put in lights. Right. So I went along with that <laughs> name to pretend you were called Darren. That's lovely. <laughs> That's crazy. Is it worth it? <laughs> Brilliant. And then it went on to Pilkins making music. Yeah. 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 That's great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Cause yeah, we've been waiting for what, what are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws Oh, brilliant. Up. Yes, Steve Merchant Steve here. Merchant. Steve Merchant. Yeah. Okay, don't, 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 don't keep saying it. <laughs> Carl. And, uh, Carl, obviously, yeah. Now stop, we've stop been fiddling, Carl. We've been digging As around in Carl's office, haven't we? As ever, Rick. Um, He's a little bit nervous about this. Well, but he doesn't need to be. I don't think he is. He just needs to trust us, Carl. Just trust us. Trust us with the music. Trust us with the speech output. <laughs> trust us. <laughs> yeah. That's <with> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> easier for me to yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious, Rick, that sometimes perhaps we're a little ill-prepared on sure. the show, and I just wanted to make sure that we were sort of keeping ourselves abreast of developments, changes at the station, <laughs> you know, policy. Said breast. Thanks. Uh, you know, policies particularly, and yeah. um, I was lucky enough just to stumble across this, and I feel that actually a couple of weeks back we were a little ill-prepared because we yeah. hadn't read this. Yeah. This is the XFM uh, information, it's the guidelines, if you will, sure. on how to react to deaths, disasters, and other news emergencies. Yeah, and there's, there's very important ones, like important a, a royal death, there's like, you know... Well, there's certain criteria. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, the general guidelines state that occasionally something will happen in the world that prompts XFM to break away from the normal programming and react to our audience's feelings of shock or grief. Mm. Uh, as broadcasters, we have a do you think They're not talking about, about our show there, are they? They're yeah. talking about something happening. No, all, all shows. I, I mean, no, no, like people being caused grief, just Carl's on the air. Right. You mean like, you know. I a, mean a bigger event. A royal yeah. dying. Or a royal dying yeah. or a, some kind of, um, you know, major disaster. Sure. Um, we should be able to tailor our output to show that we feel the same way as the audience in yeah. these times of trouble. No, definitely. Uh, that would never involve the station shutting down completely, Rick. No. I want to reassure you of that yeah. now. And it would never involve playing classical music or stopping all speech content. Sure. Because okay. a lot, because that, that, they put that in there, because a lot of stations, that's exactly what they do. Exactly. But um, uh, XFM have, have deemed it uh, th that we don't have to go completely down the line. There, we have oh, to do it our own way. Go People on. need company at times like this. Yeah. And should be able to look to us for both factual information and emotional reaction. Sure. Uh, we simply have to change our tone and our playlist to show that we're all feeling the same thing. Right. Be it. Oh my God! I can't believe this is happening. Or, well, it's pretty sad, but she was 101 after all. And that's actually in that. That's what it actually it? says in the general guidelines. <laughs> that's as they are stated. Um, uh, if you should hear about the death of a major royal, yeah, this is information that you're actually read. reading this, by the way. Yeah, I'm you? reading this. Yeah. Out. What you should do is say nothing about this on air, on air under any circumstances. Drop all the ads and promos from your schedule. And if Chris Smith, the news guy, is in the building, get him in the studio immediately. Yeah. That's what it says, Carl. Yeah. If Smitty is a, I don't care where he is, I don't care if he's on holiday. Let's phone him up now and tell him someone's died. To see how he would react. Get, get him down here. Get him down here. See how long yeah. it takes him to get down here. Where, does, that, he, where does Smitty live? Because I know where he lives. He lives in a cave and he slides <laughs> down a pole. Yeah. And he gets into a car. <laughs> His butler <laughs> uh, is, is up there and he, and he sorts well, things out. I, th I suppose the approach there is that only Chris can deliver this tragic news. Yeah. If, yeah. It, if it was your eye. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same. Uh, I remember, do you remember the XFM, uh, as it first started, it launched the day after after, um, uh, Princess Diana died. I know, I know. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I'd never done radio before, I was nervous enough, mm. and it was launched, and it was, oh, how- Because I, I, 
was it was it the first night? Because what I've forgotten actually until you mentioned that then is of course you used to host your own phone in oh, show. God. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten all about that. Yeah. Oh man, I like. And I gave that up after a week because it was just too stressful. I have never seen a man so petrified. I know. He spent all his time preventing people getting through on the phone lines. Yeah. He just wouldn't let people come on air. And, 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 and for the f for when I had to go on air, right? Um. My mates sort of like came over the first day and they were mucking around and uh, I was having a drink with them where I was still working I was going, I've got to go on air in a minute and I was like, I was drinking shandy or something because I was saying I didn't want to be drunk and, and uh, I kept saying don't swear. <laughs> Telling my mates not to swear and they looked at me like I was mental, I was going don't swear because I'll swear. I was terrified of two things, um, just swearing uh, and, and, uh, and operating the desk. I thought. I'm gonna, even if I get through operating the desk, I'm gonna swear. And it just, I, oh, it was, it was awful. Didn't you, um, didn't you spill coffee over the machine and then go, oh shit, on your first link? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. But no. I know it wasn't a triumph. No, I started off with a, I was really like the music, and I started off with a classical piece by, <laughs> um, a bloke called Kuntz, <laughs> who's a, uh, a German composer. Brilliant. So I knew, I, I knew it was, it was okay. You're then. off. Yeah. You're off. off. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and so how did it go then? Because I remember it was appalling. <laughs> He's a composer. Look it up. Yeah, I know he is. Right, uh, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Yeah. If you know what yeah, the composer yeah, I'm yeah. talking. Yeah. What? Yeah, we've what? done it. We've done it now. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, Carl. Come on. Well, you know what people are like. What? They take things badly, don't they? <laughs> like who? Like what? You, you just. It's like a, <laughs> a, a a bull to a red rag, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you know, but the thing is that we say bad words and we get in trouble. But I was listening to Heart um, uh, the other day, and they played Luther Vandross, and uh, th that that song uh, 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 was it? Um, never too much, never too much. Play it a bit. The lyric in this is disgusting. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> Woke up today, looked at your picture just to get me started. That is That's disgusting. filthy. Play it again. Woke up today, looked at your picture just to get me started. That That's is just depraved. filthy. What a fil- What I mean, is he doing? Just something like that. Imagine that. He's got a young girl's picture and he's going, oh, thanks for that. And he phones her and goes, what did you say? You know that picture you gave me? She goes, yeah. He goes, well, <laughs> I looked at it just to get me started. <laughs> <laughs> that poor young woman. Must I imagine more that like she's sleeping, <laughs> and he just sneaks in and just he's got a Polaroid camera. She wakes up. He goes, "What are you doing?" She goes, well, "What are we up to?" He goes, "No, I'm just taking a picture." <laughs> well, why? I'm gonna. We're here tomorrow, are we? Yeah, you're, you're well, going on holiday tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I need, I need oh, that. You're just just telling me to get me started. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, get you started? Yeah, you know, in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's on heart. Mm. All right. Six point two. So don't come on air and tell us what we, we can't can and say, say. We can't say, we can't say classical composers' <laughs> names or philosophers like Kant. Exactly. So don't tell don't us that, Carl. All right. Just play a record. What is that? Some ride, Steve. Yeah, I just think it's time that we listen to some ride. Rick. We haven't listened to. Them, I don't know about you and I, but I, I haven't listened to, them, to any for a, a, about six, seven weeks. Yeah. Just thought it'd be good to have them on the air again. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a tragedy they split up. <laughs> this is uh, the classic Chelsea girl play it uh, <laughs> in their lifetime. I really. know. Yeah. Right, it's it's a great sound. But influenced lots of bands at it that seems time. To me, yeah. Sort of the old Britpop thing and the, the wall of sound mm. and mm. they weren't. Were they shoegazers? Do you think they were? Weren't they? Well, that's I mean, what they thought because there was a lot of new. Yeah. guitar, but yeah. uh, good melodies as well, Rick, and that's always important. Uh, it is to me. <laughs> I don't know about uh, you, Carl, but it is important to us. Yeah. We've just had uh, a couple of um, people, Sarah and Claire, call it and wish us luck for the BAFTAs, but for mm. some reason, they want one of us to do an impression of Leslie Phillips. Can't do it. I can't. I, 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 he I doesn't mean, say ding dong. And uh, hello, and all that. That's not bad. But, that's but bad. I, want, I want Carl to do it, though. Yeah, go on, Carl. Go on. Hello. <laughs> well done. Say ding dong. <laughs> ding dong. No. <Nice. laughs> yeah. Do you enjoy any other impressions? Um, no. <laughs> I, I can't think of any. Hello. Do that. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look like a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Oh God! Do uh, my name is Bond, James Bond, as uh, as though it was Sean Connery. My name's Bond, James Bond. Do that. Go on. My name's Bond. No, do it as though you were in doing an impression. Sean. I'm what? So I'm trying to be Scottish. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, sort of. Perhaps a bit more specific than that. Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Bond. <laughs> not, Keep going. Not... My name's Bond, James Bond. <laughs> Thank Jimmy Stewart. It's not that. This is this is the best fun. It's like yeah. having your very own Fisher Price toy yeah, for two exactly. hours a week. It's exactly. great. Um, do um uh uh Roger Moore do that? Uh, Roger Moore. <laughs>
Phyllis Pierce, Percy Sugden, I'm, I'm licensed to kill. <laughs> that, <laughs> anyway, she just said. No, this is a great no, game. No, no, yeah. Any, we'll we'll come it, back to this another time. Yeah, maybe. anything, anything you want Carl to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Carl's homework today was come up with those, you know those, um, lateral thinking things? Go on. Those stupid. Oh, I hate they're them. They're ridiculous, aren't they? That they, um, a man went into a field and died, and you're meant to ask questions like, oh, was it, and it turns out his parachute didn't open. So it's basically, it's not logic, it's what am I thinking? Yeah. Well, there's that one where there's a man in, this is the worst I've ever heard, yeah. a man is found dead lying in a phone box, yeah. right, his wrists are cut, mm. he's bled to death, and there's glass everywhere, Yeah. right, and the phone's hanging off the yeah. hook, right? Yeah. What happened to him? I know this, yeah. Right? Do you know what the answer is, Carl? It's ridiculous. He was a fisherman. Yeah. He was on the phone, someone asked him how big his fish was, he did that gesture like fishermen always do to say it was much bigger than it actually Put his arms out. His arms went through the glass. And he slashed his wrists why, and he died. Why did you do that with someone on the phone? When they can't see how, how big you're actually saying? Well, that's one of the many problems with that, uh, yeah. that conundrum. Yeah, not the point we were making, but again, good. You <laughs> I mean, you're there. <laughs> yeah, that is good thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so what, you had to come up with some of these. I didn't know this was his challenge. Yeah. Have you come up with one? I came up with three, and they're all belters. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna, oh, is it? <laughs> oh, well, that's If it's as good game. as your quote about happiness that we had to guess which was yours and which was the real ones, like faking it, I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I literally can't wait. Should we do it now? Well, I'm tempted to save it because I just want to mention to people um, that uh, they should be very excited because uh, it's going to be Carl's special night tomorrow. You excited, Carl? Oh yeah. Oh, this is yeah. Um, uh, me and Steve, because we were nominated, we get a guest for the Battle uh, Awards, um, and it's uh, it doesn't say guest. It actually says um, you know uh, partner. So I'm taking um, my partner, and uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is. You will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. wouldn't be able we'll to get it. Says, hands it says, is, is this your, is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to, how it is, and either we go in like that or we can't get in. You have to, you just have to be with him when you go up there. I mean, you have to, uh, does yeah, he have to hold You should, we should hold hands, but I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that, like, it's gonna go wrong, we should just do a little kiss. Just like, just and I'll, I'll, I'll be seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that, yeah. you know, you're not, he's, he's like not Elton just, getting, John and David he's not just getting his mates in for a free meal, you are actually partners. No, I'm not, I'm not for that. Why not? Well, because we know we're not actually gay. No, but, but, yeah, but so you, it's not a problem. you've come out of it looking quite good because you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> but I'm, I'm meant to look like, you know, I mean, I'm not gay, but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your thing. Oh, he's done you, Steve! It's turned on you again! I cannot believe! We were trying to get in! Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I have got the cream of London's totty <laughs> phoning me up trying to get an invite to the BAFTAs, yeah. right? We have very graciously asked you if you'd like to come along. Well, that yeah. worries me even more. That you've got women calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Carl, I can't choose between them. If I let one of them down, I'm gonna, they're gonna destroy yeah. them. Is they, yeah. they'll, they'll be, they'll be ruined, their yeah. lives will be ruined. It's better for me to take you and not, you know, ruin the lives of any of those poor when, women. When, when he told them he was taking yeah. you, it was like a scene from Graceland. There was just like, there women, was weeping. They were crying. Like, it was horrible. Hundreds of them. And really? he just went, and I he, got upset. He, he just had to say, look, just chill out, bitches, didn't you? I did. I just said, you know, you're all my hoes, but yeah. I can't choose between you. So I'm taking Carl. So I'm taking Carl. You know, he gets, he could get you a discount frocks. No, I had a letter from the people that there's a, no, no, you know, listen, Carl, there's an organization that sponsors the BAFTA Awards yeah. in terms of clothes and fashion. They sent me a letter. They said, your partner, they've not specified the sex. They've said, your partner can come along and choose yeah. an outfit. Now, I suspect. By the look of it, it is a woman's outfitters. I'm thinking we could get you a lovely trouser suit. Well, you have a it may look suit, feminine, right? But I think people will be fooled. It'd just, it just be a little bit roomy in the hip and that probably now on the shoulders. But you're a bit skinny. Why don't you take it? Because it's a lot of an insult. And maybe just some pearls as well. <laughs> be lovely. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't well, you? Uh, I haven't got anything sorted to wear yet. See, you're slagging me off. You're likely to be end up going in a tracksuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going out today. I have, I've never bought a suit since I was like 11. Right. <laughs> I, went, I, went, I went to my brother's wedding. That's the last time I wore a suit. Right. Really? Um, and you, won't, you can't get anywhere near it now, can you? Can't, can't get into that. No. Anymore. No. Um, that was a good day. What was it? What sort of suit was it? It was, uh, like a, 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 a sort of a grey silver one. Excellent. Quite flary. Nice. Um, we'll try a and go with something similar. grey silver one. I just think that with your little round head, what did you, what did that look like? 
I looked all right. <laughs> like he'd landed from the... <laughs> yeah, just landed on it's like, who's yeah. the most... <laughs> they walk space among man. us. I didn't, I didn't really need to wear a suit either, because I didn't... I hardly went into the church. It was in the car park, right? And it's when my brother was in the army. Mm, and right. he had a Ford Capri with one of them horns that goes... Do, 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 and you do, just do, sat there. Why didn't, why didn't he come in his tank? <laughs> I just I just sat in that doing that all day, and the vicar was getting well annoyed with me. What when the service was on? Yeah, it was Brilliant. driving everyone. Well, up the do wall. you were you just allowed to do what you wanted when you were growing up, like Nelson Munts from The Simpsons? You, you just were you just allowed? D didn't matter. There, was there any discipline? You didn't have teachers. You didn't. Did, did no one just? Uh, why yeah, didn't I, someone I, come I, out and? I did. I got a couple of good idings off my dad a couple of times. What for? Just being mopey most of the time. If, if I had a strop on, he'd hate that. He'd go, go out and burn something down or nick something, but don't mm. wander around with your head no, down. Well. Didn't he smack you for not liking a castle once? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what's that? What's that? <laughs> Went to, uh, Carnarvon the yeah. other day, and I was bored. I was at that age when I just wanted to go in an arcade, and my dad was saying, come and see the castle, you know, there's history here, and I still don't like castles. It's one of them things that, again, just too far back to sort of even think about people living in them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was just like, look, it's a wreck, you know, knock it down, flatten the thing. Sure. <laughs> and I was being really <laughs> mopey. Isn't that great? <laughs> and it's weird, cos now, like, my mum and dad have retired and gone to Wales. Yeah. And now and again he texts me there, and every time we get to the point where he gave me a clout, he goes, you're getting flashbacks, son. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a sobering <laughs> lesson for you. Yeah. You're not on the British Heritage Committee anymore, are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the National Trust land tarmac it. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> car park in Britain, for Christ's sake. So, um, so look, you're looking forward to the awards, are you, tomorrow? Um... You better say yes, cos otherwise... Uh, no, it'll be, it'll be alright. I mean, I've, I've told a couple of people and they got like, God, you're dead lucky. Yeah. Right, in a way. Oh, they did lucky. It's like it's Santa's coming, isn't it? It's uh, other way people talk to Carl. You're a lucky boy, aren't you? Yeah. Going to the Baptist with Steve. <laughs> it's just a, a posh raffle at the end of the day, though, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's you know there's yeah. gonna be some they give away some tights and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's Chris Tower. He goes. I found. I went to my parents' house. I found <laughs> yeah. these just lying around. Oh, but winners and losers and um, yeah, yeah, but what food? Well, quite. Yeah, but the, what, what is exciting? Surely is the razzmatazz and the uh, brushing shoulders with the rich and famous. Mm, I'm, I'm not into that. You're not? No. I don't think you're gonna appreciate this like we thought it's you It's weird, would. cause Susan said to me this morning, who would, you know, who would you like to meet there? Yeah. Is there anyone who, like, you know, you can get close to and it's like, God, you know, I really admire your, you know, big fan of yours, whatever. And it's me and Steve, so you're here now? Well, you know. I yeah. really admire your big fanny. I didn't- <laughs> What did you what say? What did you say? You, but, you know, if you're a big fan of it. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. And, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there, there isn't anyone, really. Do you know what I mean? I like, there? you know, you two are alright. Um, Thanks. Jonathan Ross, is he going? He might do, I don't know. Well, hang on, wait a minute. I can't help but feel we could have exploited this more. We could have maybe run a, a competition to let someone win. You yeah. know, if, you, if you're not going to appreciate it, can't Yeah. Are you going to get a trouser suit? Are you going to get a lady's trouser suit? <laughs> I just think then, if you go sort of like looking macho and walking down with him, you know, they know that you're not really partners. And I just think it's a slap in the face for BAFTA. <laughs> That's true enough. No, it doesn't matter what you wear though, Elton. Can't Jones. you mince a little bit? Can't you at least sort of walk a little bit mincy? Because you've got such a macho What's sort of mank walk. Elton John's fella doesn't look gay and stuff he wears and that, does he? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It means nothing. No, but that's because Elton's doing the work for him. No, oh, but- By dressing as like some kind of restoration dame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love the fact he dresses as Anne Widdicombe <laughs> for special yeah. occasions and has yeah. his hair done like her. Uh, that, that's great. Anyway, music. But, anyway. Yeah, anyway. I, I, um, this is a very underrated album. It's Richard Ashcroft's um, Alone With Everybody and I know it got a bit of a slag and it didn't sell as well as it was because people were going, oh, it's no urban hymns. And it, and it, it, and it maybe it's not, but um, he got criticised for being pop, but this is a great tune on here. Um, you Are My Mind In My Sleep and I, I, I think it's, it's really good. Ashcroft there. And uh, You Are My Mind In My Sleep. Do you like that one, Carl? Alright. Yeah. Good, okay. Um, oh, uh, oh, what I did want to do is, um, uh, I want to play some, um, adverts now. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the fear. Next FM 104.9. Well, into the last hour, and then only two more shows. That's true enough. And we're away for yeah. three months. Oh, 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 I'm Ricky Gervais. Obviously, yeah. Steve Merchant, little Carl. Now, Carl, what? his homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we might, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the, uh, Oh, um, on. Romeo and Juliet, right? Romeo's asleep on the bed, Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass. What happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's, 
Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again. Oh, what am I thinking? Yeah. Yeah, come on in, Carl. Right, um, first one. Yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right? He's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, and all his mates come running up, and they're all stood round him. Yeah. And, uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That why, is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> Oh, I'm wow. laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real absolutely. ones. Oh, no, absolutely. These are really good. Did you make them all up? Yeah. No, no, I mean, did you make up all the ones that already exist? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would make a lot of sense. Right. A bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running is, up is, night. Wasn't oh. it Was it important that his head was cut? Um... I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it been okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. Well, what's your answer? No, you meant to answer a question. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, where's the turn? So you go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of a motorcycle stunt team or a parachute. Why, why didn't they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something, or... Well, yeah, but if you mark, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting angry! What, are they parachutists? <laughs> why, why, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. Still... But he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they, they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor as well. They're right? walking, are they? Yeah, well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking they're at him. They're soldiers. Why? But why if they're Because it might be in a battle zone. They might have their helmets on and he's been right. shot in the head. No. Well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. That one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work. What, yeah. what, what's the difference? Why, do, why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't, don't think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already <laughs> guarded a little bit. So they could take their hats off. It's the best mate, for God's sake. <laughs> okay, he's dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? What kind no, of hats are they? The answer. No! Don't get ratty! What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball what hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Well, no! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are uh, not that the moon happened. It was yeah, that yeah, wasn't it in the studio. Field. We know that. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl. What's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly. <laughs> right, next one. No, let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl, oh. while you think about what you've done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you've been embarrassed Let's play some classic suede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran, I think, who wanted a yeah. bit of, bit of butler at his best. Come on, crack oh, it on. Hey, you butler. Come here, next. You're next. Lateral problem number two. Brilliant. <laughs> suede there. Indeed. I think that's second or third single. Brilliant. All the way back. Ten years ago. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Metal Mickey. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9. Was it ten years right. ago? Must do, mustn't it? Wow. I think it was Drowners ninety one. I think so. Rums. Yeah, go on, right. go on, and Carl. Second Lat one then. This is a bit easier, but I still think it's a good one. So this is. Uh, we should explain what this is if it's you just a, tuned in. Uh, it's uh, one of those stupid lateral thinking problems that Carl himself has created. Yeah, that was yeah. his homework. Right, this go. one. Um, it's a fella. He <laughs> he has a normal day doing doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with him. Right. <laughs> And <laughs> it's a twist in the towel. It's just like towels the unexpected. Yeah. Just a normal day, nothing wrong with him. Hold on, though, he's got the legs of a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that's um, why he's been hiding his legs. So Go on. He, he does his normal. The legs of a fish. <laughs> <laughs> so he can't carry on. He has his wo his working day and that, yeah. and then he gets a bit tired. Oh. Mm. Um, goes to bed. He puts the light on. Mm. Leaves it on. Goes to bed. No. Oh. That's crazy. That's mental. I, I can't think what's happened. Anyway, here's Radiohead. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Why, the question is why does he put the light on when so he's So a man, he's, he's had a normal day, he's come home from work. Is that right, he's coming from work or he's not been working? Yeah, he's just been no, he's, he's been working and stuff, I think. <laughs> you think? You've made it up, Carl, you can decide. Um, so, is the, yeah. the question is why has he put the light on when he's asleep? There's a reason that he's put the light on when he's asleep. Has he gone to sleep? No, no, Carl, don't shrug. You're meant to answer these questions. He, he put the light on before he went to bed. Yeah, and the, and the question and you're asking me is sleep. why? What's and the he, scenario? And the, and the light's on and, and yeah. like that, but he's gone to sleep. Yeah. He started reading and then he fell asleep. Um, no. Did he intentionally, so he intentionally, for some reason, put the light on? Every night. 
It's mad. Sounds mad. <laughs> it's that, that's Carl, doesn't it? Every night he does it. Yeah. He puts the light on there. So on it. Carl, mad. Carl, is the point of this, the, 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 he puts the light on for a very good reason. Not for us, but for some people. He's blind and it's always been on and he thinks he's turning it off, but it was on in the day and he thinks he's turning it off, but he's turning it on because no, he's blind. No, that'd be stupid. That works. No, that works great, Rick. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. So um, you've got to come up with- Hang on. If what? you're blind, why would you put a light on? No, he thinks he's off. Yeah. But why would he turn it on anyway? To think so he doesn't get burgled so people know he's in because he can't see him. So he just like, he puts the light on when he's there then he turns the light off when he goes to bed. So people think it's fine. But he's, he's got it out of kilter and actually he's, he's, he's walking around in the dark all day. I don't believe that if you're blind you turn your light on. I don't on. think you'd be living <laughs> on your own, would you? I'm not having that for a second. Do blind people live on their own? I'm not having that for a second. <laughs> oh, some people do. Lonely blind people live on their own. No, if you, if you like, if you got bad eyes. What, any of them women? Any, I mean, are there any blind women who are living on their own? <laughs> No, I mean, if you know of some blind women. Oh, wait, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. We've gone through this. If, if you are a blind, blind woman, woman with, with, with no standards and you don't care annoying voices and smell. Yeah. Then get in touch with you. <laughs> yeah. Do I mean, you know you've got to be within the ages of, say, 25 to 65. You know. <laughs> right. Well, say, call it 75. Yes, I see it. You, I see all of it. So. <laughs> I know. Yeah, go on. If you were blind, would you live in London? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, someone said yesterday there was one struggling outside in Leicester Square. And I don't understand if you would. I mean, you know, it if might you, have been a tourist. But why come to London if you if you're blind? It's the worst place in the world to come if you're blind. To hear the sights. <laughs> <laughs> to hear the sights. It's a bit mad, isn't it? They're, well, they have. They, yeah, same, they, they do the same. They have tourist them. needs like anyone else. Yeah. No, but it, it sort of stinks, and you go away going, oh, it's not that good. I just thought that, I, I, I thought, thought it was a bit weird. Well, never mind your concern for the, the partially sighted or uh, part, you know, sight impaired people coming to London. Get on with this. Yeah. Um, so, th yeah, so there he is. Yeah. It's like, oh, a bit tired. Yeah. Put, just put the light on and get to bed. Yeah, so he turns the light on and he goes to bed. Yeah. Oh. Should we, it? should we, um, should we, should we play a track? He's not, he's not, he's not sleeping on the job, he's a lighthouse keeper. Well done. Is he a that, that's not it, Carl. He's a lighthouse keeper. Right, why wasn't the light on all the time? Because it's light in the day. You idiot. Play a record. What? Play a record. You're a buffoon. No, actually, the, light's, the light isn't on in the day, is it? No, it's not. And silver on um, XFM 104.9. I love the fact that Carl went a little bit mental then. So happy that he thinks that a lighthouse keeper pops the light on at the same time every... Are you telling me it was never foggy? Everyone has a routine in the job. <laughs> and why was he going home from work knackered? What had he been doing all day? He never said he went home knackered. He did. He said he went home, he's just done a day's work, he said he went home knackered and puts the light on and goes to sleep. That's what he said. Yeah, but he's maybe a part-time lighthouse keeper. Oh, what does he do? Works in the library, does he, as well? Now listen, Rick, don't, let's just, look, I'm really with Carl here. What? He definitely got you. He's anyway, you got it right. right and proper. Anyway, I got it yeah, right. but then you embarrass yourself by he's saying that- He's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. You would never put <laughs> a lighthouse light on during the day. What's your, what's your next I, I one? I've been painting it that day. Oh, I did. Extra shattered. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, last, last one, this. Yeah. Lateral thinking. Yeah. Lateral thinking. And you've, you've written this yourself? You've had yeah. no help from anyone? No, I've, I've come up with these on my own. Okay. <laughs> right, last one. <laughs> yeah. Um, this bloke. Um, this always this bloke. Yeah. This bloke, he's yeah. got a brother that is um, never met, right? They got separated at birth. Right. Um, you know, anyway, he gets a letter in the post. Yeah. He says, oh, I tracked you down. Yeah. Um, meet me at the airport. Yeah. Okay. As soon as he gets to the airport, yeah. he goes, there he is, and he goes walking over. How did he know that was his brother? He'd, he'd never seen a They picture. were twins. They look exactly the same. They were born the same day. No, Steve's got it. Yeah. That's what I mean. So he knew they were born on the same day, so he knew they were twins, yeah. I didn't say they were born on the same day, did no. I? No. No, I'm just reiterating. They would be, though, if they looked yeah. identical. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that when we've got you there, Carl, mate. Yeah. Mm. You're quite upset about that. That was one out of three, though. That's what about fair. this, then? Do you know that when, um, uh, uh, two brothers, born on the same day, of the same mother and the same father, but they weren't twins? Why? Say, say that one again. Two brothers. Yeah. Are born on the same day of the same mother and father, but they, they weren't twins. 
Why not? This is good radio. I d you see, the, the problem is I heard you saying to Steve, I'm gonna do that one about the shark in the pool, so I'm trying to think. This has nothing to do with that one though, is it? Clearly. <laughs> um. Give him the answer, Rick. The, the, the answer is there were, there were two of triplets. Right. They had another brother. So yeah. do you want to hear the one about the shark in the yeah, swimming pool? Yeah. Okay. A bloke, just in the swimming trunks, walks into a swimming pool full of man-eating sharks. He walks around for a bit and slowly gets out the other side and he's not bitten or anything. Why not? Because they'd already eaten. No, they're starving hungry. He walked through the water. Yeah. He, wasn't, he wasn't like a, a bridge. No, he actually was in the water, soaking wet, the sharks. He, uh, he had like a metal suit on? No, he's naked apart from swimming trunks. Um, there were real sharks. Real sharks. Swimming about. They swimming were sharks. Man eating, hungry, yeah. They were really hungry. Yeah. This fella gets into the same pool. Yeah. It's the same pool. Exactly. He walks right, he gets in the steps, yeah. he walks down, he walks yeah. across. Yeah. He's in the water. Yeah. Up to his neck. Yeah. And the sharks are near him. Yeah, they're attacking him. They're attacking him? They're actually attacking him. But he still gets out, okay. Yeah. Walks out the other side. And he's not, hasn't got a mark on him. I don't know. Go on, Rick, what's the answer? Yeah, I was lying about the sharks. <laughs> there weren't any sharks. No, I was lying about the sharks. Completely lying, just made up. <laughs> just an empty pool. <laughs> That's just stupid. <laughs> That's our <laughs> point! <laughs> They're rubbish. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Look at his face! He's so offended. <laughs> oh! Confended and confused. Come on, play a song. No, go on then. Ah, now ah, this could be that, interesting. Now that noise, do you want to explain to I will. I've just sent a text to this number that some of you may have heard of, 63336. Now apparently this is a number you can uh, send a text to and it will answer any question that you have for it. And in the past, for instance, I sent it um, quite some quite profound questions. I once asked it, um, should they have dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki? And it had a very thoughtful answer. So we've sent it a question, perhaps equally thoughtful. Carl Pilkington believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? Now we sent that because this is the Halloween special. These podcasts are, are three one-off free specials, and they're free because we want to thank people who uh, who paid um, for the for the audio books we did the uh, the last two series. So thank you for that. I've just bought a, a flat in New York and Steve's just bought a lovely BMW. Mercedes. Oh, is it a Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Carl's had his kitchen done and his boiler replaced. He's still not happy. But, um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, the back catalogue is still available um, in audio books on iTunes, but these are three free ones. Anyway, the question we asked 6336, Carl Wilkinson believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? And this is the response. Unusually, producer Carl Pilkington is both an idiot and a comic genius. His humour is not to everyone's taste, however. That's <laughs> amazing. That's the response. But it's curious because it doesn't really answer our question about ghosts. Send them, do you believe in ghosts? Okay. This is the Halloween special, of course. That's why we're talking about ghosts. Carl, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen, like, a proper proper ghost. So why do you believe in something that uh, there's no evidence for? Yeah, you but what, what, why are we here then? If, if it is just sort of, you're born, right? And when, I mean, we are useless, at least other creatures, when they're born. Well, you speak for yourself. No, but they're born, other creatures are born to do a job, aren't they? When a bee's born, you know what that's going to be doing. It hasn't got any <laughs> options. That's got a job to do. And it does that job and it dies and the next one comes along. Oh. We asked it, do you believe in ghosts? The existence of ghosts is not proven. Many experiments have claimed to identify ghosts, but none have been scientifically sound. Excellent. See, yeah, that, that, that's that, just, that's but that, but that, that's a sensible, intelligent, logical, thoughtful answer. Weird things have happened to me when I uh, mm. was living at home and uh, was in bed one Where night. Where do you live now? No, but I was at my first home. Your mm. parents? Yeah, my mum and dad's. Mm. So I'm in bed and uh, I'm lying there. And you know you get that sense of like, uh, oh there's something going on. Right. And uh, I sort of look over my quilt and there's nothing there, thinking it's weird that. So uh, turn me back on it 
I'm thinking I don't want to know. If there is something there, I don't want to know. Right? <laughs> so I'm turning me back on it. But then there's like a really high pitched noise, right? Sort of the hairs on my back are like going up a bit. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this. And it's the, the high pitched noise. You had a hairy back even as a kid? No, but you know, Not everyone's got little I hairs on them, aren't they? Everyone's got little tiny hairs on them and mm. stuff. And, uh, and I thought, oh, I can't stand this. And, and I turned around, put the light on, legged it downstairs. Mm. Right? And my mum's saying, what are you doing? I'm going, oh, I don't know, there's something up there. So she said, all right, then watch the telly. So I stayed up for a bit, mm. uh, watching the telly, went back to bed, the high-pitched noise had gone, went to sleep, get up the next day, Charlie from next door comes round, he goes, Hilda's dead, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, my dad said, oh, when did that happen? He said, last night at quarter to eleven. Right. That's, that's when I was in bed. So? What, what are you telling me for? Because it's weird, isn't it? It's that thing of, uh, would, would, would you think it would be weirder that, uh, no one ever died at quarter to eleven when you were in bed? No, but that's when all the weirdness was going on. That's when the tone was happening, my back was getting itchy and stuff. And- Coincidence. And I went down and watched telly, went back up, gone and that, but that's when her spirit had sort of- No, no, no. Ah, okay, right, interesting. No, this is- this is where we get into the facts. So Hilda's spirit- a less whizzing uh, round, whizzing round my yeah. bedroom because my bedroom was right next door to theirs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm just saying, that's, that's one. Why did they? Why do they whiz round when what? they when they die? Why do spirits whiz round when they die? Because they're going. Where am I going? Are they? And they're whizzing round, aren't they? Am I going down? Am I going up? No, no, it's Carl. Oh, no, no but, I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's n it's not going to be easy, is it? How do you think it works? It doesn't work. But once again, it's not proof of anything, Carl. Beyond the fact that you were a child in bed, why did your dad ask what time she died? No, he, he just sort of, you know, what do you say to someone when it's it's awkward, isn't it? When someone gives you bad news, so you just think, well, what can I ask? Oh, what, time oh, did when, she when, when? what time did exactly? that happen? Sorry, no, just, what, you just go what, exactly. What, what time did she die? Um, my no, wife, my wife passed away. Yeah, what, what time exactly? <laughs> no, not exactly. He just said, oh. Oh, oh, that's bad. When did that happen? Right. What time? Mm. And he said, well. Thanks for asking. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter, quarter, quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. I remember. What did, say, what did they say last night? Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Convenient, aren't they? All these it stories. Is, or is it? Or, yeah, I mean, it's either that's exactly what happened, Rick, or he's he's misremembering the. the yeah. I, don't, I don't. I don't know which one <laughs> to plump for. But I tell you this though. Go on. You know, if we're talking about ghosts and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Ilda. Yeah. Uh, choose your bog standard old woman. <laughs> 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 right. I think that's on the gravestone. I know, yeah. <laughs> no, did you, just, did you do the eulogy? No, you know. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> you, you what can we say about Ilda? <laughs> Bog standard old woman. Right, there's sandwiches at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> the most insulting thing you could ever say. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's nothing. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just think about Hilda French... lived her life. <laughs> Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Hilda, who died at quarter to eleven specifically, and was a bog standard old woman. <laughs> Are we burning or burying? But anyway, but she lived to be quite old, mm. which annoyed you. And but yeah, no, in but, a bog standard way. But this is what I was saying about us all living too long and mm. stuff. It just. It just makes it worse when it does come to us being a ghost. I don't know what you're talking about that, again. That sentence made no sense. Just, if you are gonna be haunted, right, say, I know you're gonna say, well, I don't believe in them, so I'm not worried, so don't be going on about it. Mm. But say, like, you know, your new place that you've bought, you move in, and you go to bed, and there's something moving about the room. Mm. You see it, mm. it's a ghost. Oh, no. Okay, no, let, let's, for the sake More of argument, likely, a Siamese cat called Ollie. No, because that's probably got its own room, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, would you prefer to have an old person moving about looking at you, or just a young person? I'd prefer a youngish person who looks normal and he's sort of floating about and you go, right. that, th that looks normal, floating about. No, but, but an old woman would really scare me. Some ghosts are always gonna have a bad reputation because they look scary because they're old. So that's- You talk absolute shit. That's all I'm saying, so- we you believe going... we ever charged for this? No, but look, <laughs> if, if we are going into another life, right, after this- Which we're not- We move yet. on to another life. Yeah. We're not gonna move on. That land, say if it is like another world, where we go and we plough fields and we grow crop- it, Crop. Croppage. We grow crop. Crops. Uh, crops, if you want. 
Yeah, um, well, I would like to use the English language. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's too much fruit about, so just a crop. Just something we need too to get back. Fruit to back. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. That's so we grow some crop. Yeah. yeah. So you grow your crop, and, uh, now if we're all going into that other land or world or universe, mm. old, who's gonna do the cropping? <laughs> <laughs> God! Oh! You- I, I've never heard so much crop in my life. <laughs> it's a load of old crop. I, I had to go for a- an ultrasound, right? Isn't that what you do if you're pregnant? Yeah, but the- the- do you know I've had kidney stones? Are you expecting? Like we talked about like it in the, in the other podcast and that, that we've done, right? Uh, I've had a kidney stone, I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but it hurt, it was painful and that. Well, you are going on about it. No, yeah, there's no, nothing. No, but I'm just saying. It's routine, don't worry about it. It's not routine. Well, uh, well, why did they have to keep going back then? Why did they have to keep going back? You're, you're yeah. questioning me. You're getting into a routine, keep going back. It's better than working it. You don't have to you know, the sell the book. No, no. Holiday or hospital. Holiday or hospital. Holiday or hospital. I don't know. I'll just say that we've got a book out, right? The World of Car Pilkington. It's, it's, it's out now. When he goes on holiday the first week, right? Uh, he, he's in and out of hospital. He's doing no good. He's got to go in again. He goes away with his family like twice a year. Goes away with Suzanne's family twice a year. Yeah, yeah. He's now said he doesn't want to do any press for it because it's boring or he doesn't want to- why don't you- why don't you plug in the book? Well, I mean, if you- if you're an author, you've got to put- get behind I've it. bought books without hearing someone telling me to buy stuff. No, you're- you la buy you're stuff. lazy. You're no, lazy. I'm, I'm not lazy. It's just that I'm sick and tired of putting telly on or the radio and having people telling me, oh, you've got to buy this, you've got to buy that. No, I don't have to do anything. I'll have a look myself when I'm in a bookshop. Let them just find it. But there are hundreds and thousands of books, Carl. They may not find it. Well, you're trying to look. direct them towards it. I'm, I don't want to direct them to it. I just, you know, if you come across it. But most why of have the you books... put all this work into this book? All these illustrations you've done in extra material. Because I enjoyed it for me. Right, but you don't want anyone to read it. Yeah, so they why will just read put it in it. a drawer? They will, they will read it. They'll they'll find it. People will find it. It's in the shop, isn't it? I'm always finding little books on different things and what have you. Yeah, but you don't read them. You read the first couple of lines and you get it wrong. What, you know, it, it. So I went back, right, and I had the uh, the ultrasound thing. Where they they're looking to see what else is in there, mm. uh, and uh, when I was in the waiting room, there was a woman there. I reckon she was about ninety-eight. <laughs> 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 now, awesome. why why are they rooting around in her to see what's up with her? Just let her let her die. Do you know what I mean? If she's not in any Jesus. pain, no, no. All I'm saying, I'm just saying, how long does she want to be around? And the, the the problem is, she went off. Right, I was sat in the waiting room. She went off into the little cubicle to put her, uh, a gown on. And because she's old, she can't bend her arms and that. So she came out with it all open. <laughs> on the back. <laughs> and it was horrible. <laughs> it looked like, like a, a chicken that hasn't been looked after. Right? <laughs> it was all leathery skin and that, right? Now the thing <laughs> is, it's all very well keeping people alive, but the surroundings of the body isn't meant to be lasting that long, is it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The actual skin of- of a body. It's all very well keeping the heart going, checking the kidneys and all that, but we're not meant to be around this length of time. Yet we are, we're messing with it. Yeah. Just do the gown up. You never do- you never get- you, you never see insects or anything like that that look old. You don't go, look at the state of that. Because <laughs> they live about four weeks! Yeah, but maybe that's the way it's meant to be, in the same way we- maybe we were only meant to live to be forty. But why did you go in for your operation then? Why didn't you just think, well, this is it, about the time? If they're looking after an old woman who's about 98, I'm having a go. <laughs> well, Cause of course. Because you want to live on. She, she might have been flirting that. with you. No, she was- <laughs> Keeping it open, just so you can have a little look. But I'm just saying, is that right? Is it right that but you are going in there rooting around and stuff? I didn't like it. I didn't like having it done. You know, I don't like going to the hospital and stuff and the doctors and all that and she was- Pushing the uh, the thing down, and she said, "Oh, you can have a look if you want." So what? Well, down where? On on my kidney. She was pushing like this little scanner thing. Oh right. She was going to have a look. I was going. I don't want to have a look. She's going. What's up with you? I said, "I don't want to see me inside." It's did they have a Did they put a tube down the Indian up? Yeah, they did all that. Well, we've talked about that in the in the other. But you're unconscious, weren't you? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? If you know it's going on, it still bothers you. It's because you're asleep. Well, not really, no. What do you mean? Well, why does it bother you if you're asleep? Well, that's like saying, oh, I woke up and the house was robbed. Oh, it doesn't matter, you're asleep. Well, no, but- It's still gonna bother you, innit? <laughs> no, but, no, but you knew it was happening and you- you did it willingly. Well, it's not pleasant to go in and be made to go unconscious. That's the unpleasant bit, isn't it? And the uh, pain Well, and no, it's more it, the idea of it, isn't it? That's why, you know, doctors telling you everything they're doing. It's like, don't tell me, you know what you're doing, just do it. 
I'm oh, yeah, so it. You know, it's not like DIY people coming around going, oh, well, what you should have done there is, and you can go, oh, I'll have a go at that next time on my own without calling you out. Forget kidney stones again, I'm not gonna go, oh, I've had it done before, I know what to do, I'll stick it up there. Doesn't happen, does it? But I can't, what was I saying? <laughs> so anyway, so she, she was pushing the, the scanner over yeah. me kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Now, it was weird with her, because at no point did she make eye contact with me. Well, I don't understand what that means. Well, she's meant to wink and go, your kidneys are fucked. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, ju it's just weird that she probably spends her days looking inside people more than she does talking to people. I just thought it was odd that she, that's, that's how she sees people. When she looks at people, she probably sees kidneys. What, the, this doctor? The woman doctor. The well, doctor? Uh, yeah. Right. So, what you're saying is, the strange thing is that she often spends more time looking in people, because she's a doctor, than chatting to them. Yeah. And I is just... it weird that Jonathan Ross is the other way around, because he's a chat show host, he spends more time talking to people than looking inside them. No, but even when I was asking- he's got a, a different job. <laughs> when I was asking her questions, saying, uh, you know, does it look alright, uh, what's it doing? Is it moving about, you know, asking her questions about my kidney? She could have quite easily have just turned around and, and give me a bit of eye contact. But she, she was say, looking, shut she was up, looking, I'm concentrating, I'm at work. she was looking at the screen in order to answer your questions. Yeah, she's at work, she's doing something. No, but just- If she was here now going, Carl, what are you doing with that microphone? You'd go, shut the fuck up, I'm doing a podcast. Did she run this scanner over your head? <laughs> <laughs> and if so, did she find anything? <laughs> we like to try and educate Carl, Rick, as, you know, as we have done since we've known him really, and mm. he doesn't really seem to absorb any information. No. And, um, and I, I was asked recently, when I was going back to Bristol, if I would come and talk to a classroom of school children. Oh, right. You know, just talking about careers, and particularly my career. And, uh, I went down there, it was in Bristol, it was an inner city school, quite rough area. You're a son of Bristol, you're uh, Exactly, they love me You're down a there, celebrated right? son of Bristol, you've done, you're a Golden Globe winning. Uh, person who's returned to the homeland. It annoys me when I go down there that I'm not met as I get off the train like the Beatles used to be when they came back from America. By a know? mayor and a brass band. Hordes of people, ticker tape. Forever this day will be called <laughs> Steve Merchant Day. <laughs> exactly. It frustrates me that I just sneak back into town and there's no yeah. fanfare. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, basically they asked me to, to come talk at this school and I sort of batted them away and said I'm too busy. And so, um, they, I foolishly left them uh, the opportunity to, to ask me again, which they did, and I didn't have a decent excuse, so I went. And I was expecting to talk to maybe a room of six formers. Um, they were nine, <laughs> these kids, nine, nine and ten years old. But I realised as I was walking into the school, I was suddenly really nervous. I was more nervous than anything I've ever done. Because I realised that I've not spoken to a child like that since I was a child myself. I just, I've never interacted with them. So I didn't know at what level I would be able to pitch this, this talk. You know, I didn't know what they understood, what ideas they understood. Obviously on my mind I was picturing Carl, and yeah. then I was ratcheting it up a few years. Sort of IQ-wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, so you know, what did you talk to them about? And I, I was supposed to talk about careers, and I realised very quickly that they didn't really understand conceptual Did they know you were? Not really. One or two of them may vaguely knew. One of them went, what's Richard Rage like? And I said, um... you got a deep voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, that was one of the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And, um, <laughs> and, uh, I'm supposed to be talking about careers, how to get into careers. And I start trying to explain the idea of being a writer, and I say that it's very important to be able to get inside other people's minds, you know, figure out how they think, and how, you know, trying to understand other people. But this, they didn't really seem to grasp. They started talking amongst each other. You know, they were just losing interest. <laughs> I lost them straight away. I was <laughs> devastated. Oh, no. So then, and this is the worst thing, right? I started lying to them. Because <laughs> <laughs> I realised that every time I told a slight lie, because I thought they'd be interested. That's they were. Great. So I, I know Justin life. Timberlake. You're not joking, right? They said, one of them said, I understand you used to be a DJ. And I went, yeah, it's great being a DJ because you get to meet pop stars like Robbie Williams and Beyonce. Never met either of them. <laughs> <laughs> Never met them. And, I, and they went, one of the kids went, what's Beyonce like? <laughs> and I went, and I went, joking, I went, you wouldn't like her. And I said, <laughs> I said, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. She's, yeah. lo she's lovely, she's sweet, she's good as gold. I was making it up. Yeah. And, oh, but God. they were loving this, and the teacher was going, oh. would you all like to meet Beyonce? And they were going, yeah. And I was thinking, God, well. We'll bring her, I'll bring her down tomorrow. <laughs> well, exactly, but I don't know why I felt the, it was like I wanted to win the approval of these nine-year-olds. That's amazing. Because my own achievements, I realised, wouldn't mean anything to them. You know, I could yeah. talk about the people I have met, but they don't care if I've met Robert De Niro, but they're interested if I've met girls allowed. <laughs> Well, me and girls alone, some of the times we've had together, it turns out. <laughs>
but uh, it is fascinating when you have to interact with with people with children like that because I've got no concept of how to talk to children. I don't. To me, I can't grasp the difference really in conversation and chat between, say, a seven-year-old and a thirteen-year-old. I don't know at what point they learn stuff and pick stuff up. Do they understand? Do you know what I mean? It's. I find it really. I remember hard. once when I was about nine. Uh, the 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 headmaster the headmaster used to do a little fable I've talked about him in stand up he used to do a little fable there's uh, uh one I remember where um he uh got a tube of toothpaste and he got someone up he said uh, you um come out here squeeze this tube of toothpaste out on this board and he squeezed it all out right and he squeezed it all out and emptied it he went now put it back in and the kid tried to struggle and he goes you can't do it he said it's easier to do something than undo it Okay, go back to class. <laughs> like people are going, oh, I get it. I know what he means. Yeah, yeah. And they're just thinking, don't squeeze all the toothpaste out. Yeah. Just save some. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, there's there's no way they're going to take on <laughs> no, that exactly. metaphor at the it's age too of nine. Conceptual, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just stop misbehaving, or I'll <laughs> smack you. That worked. Carl, have you had to have any dealings with kids? How do you get on with kids? Do you relate to them, or are they just as angry and perplexed by your views as we are? Uh, I mean, it's with everything, isn't it? Everyone's different and that. I can get on with some young kids, all right, and some of them are, like, you know, a bit cocky and what have you. But, um, I'm sort of getting on with a baby at, at the moment, because, uh, I've been made a, like, a, a godfather. Think of that. So, uh... Wow, well, who did they reject? I know. No, who's, I mean, it, it, Who said no? Yeah. Well, well I did, no? I did at first, and Brilliant. then Suzanne said, look, you're not, you know, it's not really a choice, it's not like a job interview or something that you're thinking about, is it a good thing, so you, you've, you've been asked, you should take it on. But what, are they, what if they, hold on, if you're the godfather of this yeah. kid, presumably you're friends with them and they probably listen yeah, to this yeah, podcast. Yeah, they're good friends. So now they're hearing, for the first time, that you didn't want to be Godfather. Yeah, well, I think I think that's good, because they can hear that, you know, it wasn't, I didn't just do it because I was asked, I thought about it, I thought it through. Um, you know, I, I was worried. It was kind of like, is this a job? And, uh, I was, I was just Well, it's nothing it. but tokenistic, is it? You're not Well, really this is what I looked into. I said, we went back and I said, right, I've been thinking about this thing. Uh, I've heard that it's my job. If anything happens to them, I've got to kick in. And I'd have to start looking after the baby. So I said, right, how many of you are in your family? If that happens, am I going to start getting a phone call or what? And they said, no, there's a big family. You're not, you know, you're at the bottom of the list. So I was like, how many? And just finding out what their age is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I've only got a small flat, it would have to sleep in the sink or something, right? So I uh, checked all that out, and, uh, all safe. So this, uh, this baby, he's spooking me out a bit because it doesn't blink. <laughs> and that's pretty weird when you're sort of talking to it and you're thinking, it's not blinking. Are you sure it's not asleep? No, it's honestly, it's weird. If something doesn't blink, it's like it's it's evil. Because blinking just makes something look a bit more friendly, doesn't it? <laughs> and I was stood there, you know, talking to it. I just tell it little stories about anything. Uh, it's lying there looking up at me. How old is it? It's about, must be about two and a half months. Well then, well, why are you telling it stories? Because it likes it. But it's just weird how like, then I'll, I'll sort of forget the story because I'm looking at it going, it's not blinked yet. It's been about ten minutes, it's not blinking. <laughs> so then I forget the end of the story and I just walk away because it's not bothered anyway, it's probably not listening, is it? But <laughs> what a pointless tale! What a pointless tale <laughs> now and at the time. I think it likes it. The kids like stories, like you say, they're not bothered if it's if it's not true or anything. Or if you walk away before the ending because you've forgotten it. That's Brilliant. why it's not blinking. It's so dumbstruck at the idiocy coming out of your goal. No, but you don't need to wear endings of stories. Maybe, like I said That's to the you, point. That's the point of a story, isn't no, it? No, it's not. That's the point why people- that's why people like stories, because they're hooked into knowing what happened. No, because there's loads of films that happen and they have a funny ending. You leave there going, I wonder what was meant to happen, and you make it up in your own head. You go, well, I bet what happened is that person went off and got married to that woman, mm. and they lived that. And then in your head, it's the truth. It's actually what happened. But but I think that's better. Why are we told everything? Because so what would your end be to a story such as the Elephant Man? Okay, he's rescued from the freak show. He's put in the hospital. He becomes something of a celebrity. Then what happens? He discovered he had big ears and he could fly, and he 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 joined the circus and he was the the main attraction. Um, I wouldn't change, change the end that much because at the end of the day, you can't, you can't make something up that's not believable. At the end of the day, he's got an head like an elephant. He's not going to have a good life, is he? Mm. So there's no point making out that 
he went on, loads of women fancied him, and you know, he, he modelled hats. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so, so he's got to die, the elephant man had to die, yeah. but at the same time- Was shot by poachers? Just show- just for his, show a, for his task? A, show a few positives, you know, because I'm sure there was good bits in his life, I don't know what they were, but, you know, l look at everything. Uh, what was he like when he was a little baby elephant? They didn't cover what he was like as a kid. But you can get away with them sort of looks when you're a baby. You can be an ugly baby and everyone goes, oh, isn't it nice? There was some woman in a cafe the other week mm. that I was sat in and she came up and she sat down with a mate and she was talking loudly, going on about, oh, the baby's lovely. They said it's got, uh, got lovely big eyes, uh, really big hands and feet. Now that doesn't sound like a nice baby to me. <laughs> I felt like saying it sounds like a frog. But I thought, I don't know her. There's only... There's only so much you can say to, to a stranger. I don't know what kept, kept me from saying it. That's what I was saying before about there's something- in, there's something- it Sounds like a frog! There's something inside of you that stops you- Yeah, that's amazing that you have the urge to go- yeah, That doesn't sound like a good baby. What, love? I'm just listening to the conversation. That baby you're talking about sounds like a fucking frog. Um, yeah. <laughs> but something stopped him saying it. <laughs> I just came back from, uh, America. And, uh, they love Halloween. They're obsessed over there. I mean, it's a it's a proper proper thing out there. Here, it's sort of half hearted. A few people, a few middle class families, sort of. Uh, but do you, you think know, it'll get up. more popular here though if we do find out that ghosts are about? Well, that would that never happen because they're not. No, okay? but if they did, then but, suddenly that would be a big. Well, Ameri big America makes things famous now um, because of because of film culture and everything. So. Yeah, it's it's all it's all it's all from that. I I, I doubt we uh, celebrated much at all, did we? Fifty years ago, so I think it's crept. Oh, up. certainly over here we didn't. But it's no. been largely introduced over here through commercial ideas, isn't it? Let's yeah, put, we can yeah. sell stuff for and, and and film and 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 things like that. And uh, but um, out there, it's it, it was they they start like weeks and weeks before, and they're decorated like proper proper. And um, but I saw a baker's a little bakery in um in in Soho. Um, and, uh, it didn't look right with cobwebs all over it and spiders on the buns. Yeah. And, but even though it's fake, it just, it's just, I don't think you should do it on a bakery. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah, what you mean? It's, it's a bit think, creepy. That, that's, that surely puts you off yeah. the, the product a little bit. I, I always know. find it a bit depressing, like last time I remember going into supermarkets and you see sort of these old women who, who, you know, in their sixties and they're doing this job they don't really want to be doing, but they've been made to dress up. As a hat, I know. As a witch or as, as Cinderella, and it just... Well, they could do it, it in, like, a morgue or something, just to sort of... Brighten up the place. Well, just so people aren't that scared. Imagine that. Imagine you're going to identify your, 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 your dead relative, and they go, what's the spiders all over? It's, uh, 31st of October. No, oh, but, okay. but just make it a bit spookier and have a bit of fun with it, and let's not get serious about, you know, like I say, passing on. Yeah, but, but those sort of people have to take their job seriously. I remember when um, my mum died, and um, uh, I had to go along, and I was talking about um, uh, the what wreath they wanted, and this this person, uh, quite rightly, had to turn off their sense of humour in a way because I suppose they're so they mustn't offend anyone. So I had to. They spoke like that at all times. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Okay, and what what um, would you like the wreath to say? Um, she was a mother and a, a, a grandmother. I went, yeah, my, my mother, grandmother, and, and uh, what was her name? I said, uh, her name was um, Eva. I said, um, and I made a joke. I said, do we get a discount because her name's short? And she went, well, actually, um, didn't laugh, didn't, didn't get yeah. that at all. She just went, yeah. just answer the question. She went, well, actually, you pay by the letter. I thought, okay, that fell flat. I'll go again. I went, well, uh, a friend used to call her E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Went, I went, I'm joking. She went, okay. Nothing. Yeah. Bad audience. <laughs> bad yeah. time, bad audience. Tough crowd. Yeah, undertakers, so, never known for their- Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Their they don't crack jokes, Carl. A, f a, f a friend of mine, um, was, um, tr trying to be a doctor. And, um, in his first year, uh, when they actually, they practice, they intern at the, the hospital, um, he was watching this patient and, uh, Two other doctors came in, and I won't say his name. Um, they said, uh, "Can you um, can you go and check on Mr. So and So?" He went, "Yeah," and changed his drip. 
So he went in, changed his drip, came back out. The doctors came, after about ten minutes, they came running and said, What did you do? What did you do? And, uh, they went in there and said, I just changed the drip. He goes, Well, he's dead. He's dead. And he was going, well, uh, I just changed the drip. I did this and that. And they started laughing. He goes, No, he was dead when we sent you in there. Yeah. Now, that is almost excusable because it's imperative if you're a doctor Absolutely. to become accustomed to yeah. Yeah. the fact that people die and that it's- Exactly. You know, yeah. So that- so they were making a joke about a- a dead body that means nothing to them other than professionally. Yeah. You know, they were getting through it. He thought he'd just murdered someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he thought he just killed someone. Um, but yeah, they have to be desensitized. But they wouldn't do that in front of the relatives. They wouldn't go- I had a laugh earlier with a young <laughs> intern. Um, when your dad died, we sent him in to change the drip. Didn't even check. I would like a back, crack, and sack waxing, please. I would like my back waxed, my crack waxed, and my sack waxed. Right. Do you do the treatments yourself? No. I'd like you to. Well, I can't. Why not? Because I have to be on reception, taking calls. Well, okay. You can't request who's doing your sack, your crack, <laughs> or your back. There's a woman in the back who does your crack. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> it's fucking insane. Right, that's enough wait, of no, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know who's going to so, learn anything wait, from Wait, this. wait, wait, wait. Okay. So, okay, wait, okay. Okay. Well, ask me some questions. About, okay. Well, I, I don't okay. have to ask you any questions. I said okay. you can be going in ten minutes. Okay. I'm not doing it. I'm working. Um, I'm not paid or qualified to be sorting your wait, ass out. Wait, wait, okay, wait, wait, okay. <laughs> Actually, thinking about it, the hair on my crack hasn't grown back, nor has the hair on my back. But my sack is very hairy. Wait. My sack is very hairy. Um, I, I don't need my back waxed. Or my crack waxed, but I need my sack waxed. Right. Now, I'm surprised you haven't done it yourself. Because it's the back and the crack that's the difficult bit. The sack you can do yourself. Oh. And to be honest, it should all be growing at the same time. No. So there's something wrong with you. No. You've got a hairy bollock. <laughs> when your back, is, your back is lovely and bald. Right. You don't need it doing... Bald. Bald. Fuck's my, sake. my back is bald. Yeah. My crack is bald. My sack needs waxing. Right. Um, right. it's quite an emergency. My balls are very hairy. Can I have them waxed, please? Yes. How much just for the balls? <laughs> 15 pounds. For 15 two. pounds? For the both. For two. Okay, yes. that's good. So, 7.50 each. It's 750. Yeah, but we don't split it. That's that's the price. Yes. You yes. can't have one done. No, it's I have 15 two pounds. I have two balls. I have two balls. How many balls do you have, Carl? Two. Carl has two balls. Are your balls hairy? Average. Okay. Which is strange because Carl's balls are hairy, but he is bald on his head. His head looks like a ball. His head looks like a bald testicle. Carl has a head like a bald testicle, but his testicles aren't bald. Okay, how long will it take to wax my balls? Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's um, 15 pounds and Ten minutes. Um, can you do it? Can you can you do it now, please? No, I won't be doing it. You'll Why? be meeting Leslie in the back room. Uh, oh, I don't really. I'm a little bit shy. I know you. Could you? You don't know me. You've just turned up. Could you wax my balls? No, I'm not waxing your balls. Bollocks. Uh, scrotum. <laughs> um, what else is the test eye? <laughs> if you're having one done. Bollocks. Sack. <laughs> uh, oh. What else is it? Oh. Okay, okay, right. we've done, done that waxing. Okay. At the doctor's. Hello, doctor. Hello. I have a pain. Okay, what's where, whereabouts is the pain? My anus. Of course it is. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
None of this is worth using learning in a language. You go home. If you're ill, go home. No, if, if, if a foreign fella is in this country... He can and go to the doctors and use our, our NHS system if he had an achy arse. He'd get on the first flight home. Why aren't you going travelling? You're here as a tourist. Yes. yes. Right, we'll see London. Instead of worrying about your airy bollocks, see the London Eye. The London Eye. <laughs> That, that could take off. I quite like... I mean, I know you said you didn't want a costume, but if I could get a little costume for you, what colour would it be? I don't need a costume. No, but you don't need it, but if I got one for you, what would it no, have? No, I don't need all that, cos that's just wasting time. That's more oh, bullshit. How do we know you're bullshit, man? How do we know you're bullshit, man? Because I flew in. Oh, what, you so you can fly. fly? So your superpower is saying bullshit, but you can <laughs> also fly? Yeah, but, but also, people know if I've said it's bullshit, they know that you were talking bullshit. Yeah, yeah, but but wait. That's my superpower. Wait, no, 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 no. No, your superpower is surely flying as well. You didn't. Yeah. You didn't. We could all say bullshit. No, no. Yeah. The flying is necessary because of the amount of bullshit that's going but on. But if in you the world. could fly. But if I can't fly, how am I going to get a rep? There's loads of bullshit. <laughs> what are you going to do? Keep jumping in a cab? No way. I'm going to be busy all day. No, I haven't invented this. It's not my fault. You can or can't fly. No. Calm down. I know, but I'm saying if it was my superpower, <laughs> I'd want to fly in. Yes, my point. And I don't want a costume because I'd be constantly wearing that costume because no. of the amount of bullshit that's being said. Yes, I understand that. So you, so your point is this. Everyone can tell bullshit, but you need to fly to get there quick and get it out Just in the open. Can it quick. Yeah. If someone starts spouting How the can bullshit. you hear them? Because so you can you're super, super hearing as well. as well. Yeah. So you can... Hold on. So wait a minute, right. Can you see... Can you see where they are? Or can you just... I'm just can... hearing it. So if there was a meeting, right, going on in Leeds now, and there was a bloke going, well, if you invest in this company, if you give me one million, I can guarantee you, you will make an extra million right. by the year. I will double... I will... I double, hear you. I hear I you. double your investment in one year. <laughs> what? Bullshit! <laughs> that's how it would work. <laughs> you can see how... I know, because, honestly, that's years and years of people spouting it. Yeah. Meetings, ever since being neck-eye. Mm. It's like... That's that's all you ever hear. Okay, but in, how would you programs that? in X so Factor? You... Honestly, X Factor will keep me busy. Okay, it's yeah. Just the amount of shite yeah. that is being told to people in that, and uh, all that crying. That'd be the next one. I don't know what I'd call it. That thing when girls do that now. I don't know where that's come from. When they're getting a tear coming on, they go like that. <laughs> I want to fly. Fucking stop doing that. What are we doing then? Just explain. We just done a photo shoot for um, shortlist. That's why I've got a little bit of eyeliner on. Um, but it was worth it, cos Carl had to dress up in tights and knickers, didn't he? And a lion. Yeah. Not, not even mine. Well, they won't be mine. But <laughs> a woman, a woman had to, like, lend me, lend me her tights. <laughs> Brilliant. Amazing, well, I'm going to do this. This is Mr. and Mrs. basically. Right. So I'm going to ask uh, a series of questions uh, of, of Carl. Quite a simple question of favourite film, favourite food. And uh, Ricky, I want you to write down what you think the answer, Carl's answer is going to be. Yeah. So hide it from, hide it from Carl. Exactly, yeah. And then That's say just leaving the room or going to a little booth. OK. Yeah. yeah. And then Carl, you'll reveal the answer. Ricky will reveal the pad. Yeah. yeah. Right, I can okay. see that. So don't answer straight away. Yeah. Right, OK. Right, so the first one is, what is Carl's favourite film? Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, before he says anything, I'll have to put it down to two, cos I reckon he can't decide between two. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, I'm straight away, I'm going to do that and that. And if I'm right, uh, well, I shouldn't get anything away. OK? Carl, reveal what your favourite film, or indeed favourite film yeah, is. He'll know what it is. It's uh, Kez and Elephant Man. Correct. Yeah. yeah. If you had to choose between the two? Um, probably Kez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Elephant Man's just great, a isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Um, I reckon that really affects you and your kid as well. And well, it's sort of your... Well, it's very much... It's very much what I imagined your upbringing well, to be like. Well, I had a didn't I? Well, yeah. And what was the magpie's name? Maggie. Used to come down and peck his grifter. Um, peck, peck me head. Uh, watching The Elephant Man, you know that bit in The Elephant Man where um, uh, Anthony Hopkins uh, takes John Hurt and John Merrick, or Joseph Merrick, 
um, behind a screen and he's showing it to a load of surgeons and he's going, see the deformation of the skull, the spine, the limbs. The, the only thing that is totally normal and untouched are the genitals. Carl goes, think of that. The one thing you would want like an elephant and he gets the head. Yeah. Good, good film, that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> right, next one. We'll go for the next one. Carl's favourite food. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to be very specific here. I, I, I'm, I, I think we're talking about a meal, are we? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, God. What, an actual main course? Yes. Well, I, I mean... You're, it... you're not going to know this. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a... To get me, okay. I'm gonna. I've gone for something sort of like um, uh, a specific, but that gives me a bit of leeway. Um, so I could be totally wrong here. All right. And you mean one for at home, not going out, not going out. Something because if I go out, I make more of an effort of something that someone's had to do some effort with. No, do do you do you think like? It, uh, yeah, I've done it like it would be a meal that he could do himself as right, well. Right, okay. Sausage, beans, potato cakes. Oh, I've got it wrong. I thought you were meat and two veg. I've put sort of pork or lamb no, chops. I wouldn't mess about making meat and veg if I was on my own. No? No. What was no it? Way. Sausage, beans, potato cakes. <laughs> toaster, potato cakes, beans in a pan. Remember, sausage you, in I a remember you put pan. sausages in the toaster once. Yeah, but... Is that true? Yeah, he yeah, came home... Uh, his girlfriend came home to him sticking a knife in the toaster to get the sausages out that were burning. It's, been, it's the way they spit and I... But why did you put them in the first place? Because I don't like when you've got them in a frying pan and then you turn that up and the heat gets going and they spit and then the grease is going all over the sort of the, the, uh, the hob. So I thought do it in the toaster, let it spit on the inside. Yeah. Not as much mess, but it, it, yeah. It was ages ago, though. You're saying that as if that's before I met you. So, wait, if you're out and he does his sausages, does he, does he pop them on the grill? Does he put them in the oven? Does he stick them in the toaster like a fucking twat? Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I don't that's how you find stuff out, though, isn't it? That's how yeah. uh, inventors and stuff come about. Trial. Trial and error. All right, we'll go for the next one. Carl's celebrity. I've got him like that. Celebrity. All right, okay. Well, we've got, this is one out of two, so we'll go for the third one. Called Celebrity Crush. Wouldn't have one. What now? Yeah. I'm nearly 40. Do you mean a Celebrity Crush? That's, that's, Do one when I'm a kid or something, That's maybe. the point. Let me have a go. This is not based on anything, because he is, you know, obviously he's never spoken about this or given any... Um, when so I'm hold on, 40. 20 still young, uh, old, Yeah, so, so I say... Sort of 14 or something. 15. So hold on, when were you born? Uh, 72. 72. So... So we're talking 84, are we? Uh, 1984. Janet Jackson. She wasn't around in 84. <laughs> We've lost the pen and pad element with a straight one. Oh, when yeah. She, hold on, wasn't she around in 84? No, it wasn't her. Paul Abdul. No. <laughs> you guys can no. So there's an answer. There is someone who at 14, you thought, oh, she's nice, and I've got to guess who this woman is in 1984. Debbie Harry. No. Nope. You don't know yet. No. <laughs> 84. <laughs> Probably um, one of uh, one of Banana Rama. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? Because it's so random. It's Anything you said is funny. Anything you said is funny. But, um, uh, uh, oh, it's also one off! You haven't got anyone in mind! And there's been about nine members of Banana Rama. Narrow it down a bit. <laughs> no, no, come on, which one of Banana Rama? Uh, God. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> it was. <laughs> the darker one. <laughs> the dark hair okay. one. Yeah, good. Next one. Have I had that? The darker one in Banana Rama. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I remember, you got to write it down. Okay. Yeah, we're going to see the Sorry. Carl's favourite book. Oh. Okay, now. You know this? Well, 
But are we talking? Are we talking novel, fiction, or what? I think we're talking any. Just a book. Any, any book. Like if you had to take one book to a desert island, what would it be? You know, I don't know why you why you're not writing it out. Well, shut up. Um, Can have we mate? So what? You, you should know what that is. What your favourite book? Yeah. L listen, I'm I'm thinking of an answer I don't want to embarrass you with. A book of freaks that he carried around for six months. What's that? Oh, that you're <laughs> joking. That's your favourite book. It was a pamphlet. It wasn't a pamphlet. It was about forty odd pages. It was the book. fifty top freaks given away with some dodgy old fucking magazine. It was with FHM, and it was like a freak book. That was interesting. And you count that as a book. Well, what would you put then? <laughs> I've never seen you with a, book, a proper book, ever. <laughs> so don't start lying and give me a load of old shite that it's someone like Nurture or something. Nurture. That isn't. What, what, what book would you put? Friedrich pick? Nurture. What? No, you're right. He was, he was right in a way. It's a, it's <laughs> yeah, a freak book. Book. Let's book of freaks. Let's go for the pad. Let's go for 50 the pad. top. Oh, no, the no, I got that. 50 top freaks. No, no, well, it. 50 right. top freaks, Carl, yeah. Carl, Carl, Do you know what? Do you know how he liked it? Because, um,. Uh, number 50 was a fellow with three legs. He was so excited. No, there was loads. Huh? No, number 50 was a bloke with two heads. Was it? Yeah, because I said, Jesus, what's number one? Yeah. What was that? Was a bloke shagging a chicken, got killed number by one. a rock? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Carl's favourite song. Uh, okay, again. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll have to do. Um, I, I'll tell you that. He's it's got a favourite song. Are you just for going for one or two? Oh, no, I'm going to go for a couple here. I'm going to go for. Uh, they, 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 they've both got a theme, um, and then I'm going to do. For, then I'm going to do um, tune, as well. Okay, I've got yeah, I've got two songs, and then I've got like a, a an instrumental. Right, I go for um, Stranger on the Shore, Akabilk. All right. And then I'd go for Elvis in the ghetto. Is he getting them? Yeah. And there's one more, yeah? Yeah. Rod Stewart killing a Georgie. Oh! Right. Yeah. Now I went with um, uh, Stevie Wonder in the city. That's all right. That's up there. Yeah. Not, not he, likes a so he likes a song with a story. So anything, uh, I'll tell you another one as well. Wonderful Tonight. Yeah, that's... Like that, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, Convinced it's about a disabled fella. Because the lines he puts him to bed, stuff like that. There's a few little hints. To it's not hints, nothing to do with it. Listen to nothing it. Nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with being disabled. No, not, what, at no point is there it is. mentioned. Or, no, it is. no, it's all in your head. Um, any others? Let's go for one more. Oh, this, uh, this is... Uh, I'm, I tell you, I'm gutted about the old pork chops. You've got to be careful with pork. Why? Worms. It's got to be done, yeah, it's got to be cooked right, hasn't it? Yeah, but then, now they do, they do things like pork. This just comes from a man who puts sausages in the toast. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Carl's favourite animal. Right. Wow. So they, you don't mean a pet? No, I, no, I'm I not. Broad, yeah. Just any animal out there. Yeah. Got it. No, it's funny because I reckon he's got this one wrong. Oh. I reckon he's put down monkey. But I'd probably pick sloth. Can we see the pack? I've put chimp actually. There you go. He, he lumps in great apes with monkeys. He doesn't really know the difference. Um, funny you said the sloth because he went to the zoo and he called me up and I went, went to the zoo. What did you do? He said, uh, watch the sloth. He said, it's annoying. I went, why? He said, it's got a huge enclosure. I went, why is that annoying? He went, it doesn't need it, it doesn't use it. Hang it in a wardrobe, it'd be just as happy. Didn't move. Didn't move in all the time I was there. <laughs> Look, dead. <laughs> I actually thought it was dead. 14 quid you pay to get in there, it didn't fucking move. Didn't, didn't do anything. Why is it your favourite? <clears throat> I think because it just fascinates me that this thing... That a dodo died out, and yet a sloth so is still around, even though it's asleep. Yeah. Is that, you know, it's safer in a sort of a dead state. Dido died out as well, didn't she? Dido she died been. out. For years. 
Um, that's the that's, that's the day the one die though. Didn't uh, do anything. All right, let's go one more. If if Carl had a superpower, what do you think he would pick? Wow. Okay. Uh, well, okay, I've got loads of answers here. Um, I think the general public would would know one of them. Oh yeah. But they're not. That's a joke one. Um, no, that was a new idea. But you mean one that exists? Well, like, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Let's not count bullshit, man. Right. That's not really a super bullshit, power, Yeah. That's, okay. a, that's what I mean. That's a made up one. But you're exactly. talking about one that people go, yeah, I'd have that. Yeah, well, I've got one. I've got one. I don't know if it's true. I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 it's a bit weird. But, um, it's one that I'd pick, but I'm still not 100% if it's the right move. Um, I don't think you've gone for it. Oh, I've gone. Okay. Shape shifting. Oh, I, got, I went for invisibility. Mm. We see the pads. Mm, sorry, I went for invisibility. Why shapeshifting? Why invisibility? Um, just because you know what shapeshifting is, you oh. can sort of be anything you want. What would you be now? Uh, on a day like today, probably a blue bottle. Why would you? Why would you be a blue bottle? Just cause it's a right weather for it. But, but I'd only do that for a bit. No, no, they, 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 they haven't. Bec no, that doesn't make any sense. Why is it, you see them in this weather because they're buzzing around and it's their time of year where they... Yeah, but we don't have to be a blue bottle to enjoy the weather, do you? No, but I've got to be something else, haven't I? Yeah, but why a blue bottle? That's well, a... Why, why, what would you pick on a day like today? You wouldn't want to be a, a buffalo, a bison in this. It'd be well hot. So a blue bottle... Why out a dolphin? About... It'd be, it'd be... In London. <laughs> So, so now you're a blue bottle who's got to go on the tube and go to work. Now no, you're I mean, six I'm in London. Bottle, I mean, I'm in, in a... London though. But You've still it... got to be at home. If you're a fucking dolphin, where are you knocking about? I didn't know the restriction was the fact that you had to be caught in the city. Well, I would have. So where's the dolphin? Oh, so you can you can completely change your species, but you can't move fucking town. Well, then you've got to get home again. <laughs> The shape shifting, you know what it is. Yeah, you can change into a blue anything, bottle. Anything, anything. Yeah. But would you be a six foot blue bottle? No, or? just a little one, and then you do that for a bit, and then you change. But why are you else. doing it? What are you thinking? Have you got for your a own... change? Yeah. Well... <laughs> you said it. All right. You picked invisibility. What would you do with that? No, that wasn't mine. My, that wasn't my superpower. I, that was my guess at yours, right? Because once you said you wish you were invisible, so you could go sneak into HMV, you go shopping without having stress, pay for it and leave in the morning. Yeah, but that the, was your Yeah, but that's when C it, CDs secretly. was out. It's not but, worth it now, is it? No. No fuckers paying for anything these days on the internet. <laughs> Download for fuck all. So forget that. There's no advantage. Being a blue bottle. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? So you go, I'm in London. Oh, there's a bit of shit there. Oh, I'm glad I'm a blue bottle. Oh. So, but what if you're shape-shifting, why you be a seagull and go to Brighton for the day? No, it's not the rules, you've got to stay in London. Why are you imposing this rule of it being in London? I'd give everything a go. I just picked that because it was a nice day and okay. I saw one earlier. Okay, what if you could shapeshift, but it was like changing your region on your DVD, you only had three goes. What would you try and then stick with? Ooh. Remember, the world is your oyster. Right. You don't have to stay in Kentish Town for the day. Well, I'd pick, to what, I'd pick what's her name. I've said to you before, I'd be, I'd be a sloth. Sloth. What? Sloth. Oh, you'd be a sloth? I said that. It's still good, isn't it? Because if they're asleep, if I'm not enjoying being a sloth, I can dream about being something else. So it's a safe thing to be. Well, if you're asleep, you can... What's the problem? You can anyway. You can wake up and go, oh, I wish I was a blue bottle. Some I've shit. never seen a blue bottle asleep. <laughs> yeah, listen. I called you the other day. You said slugs don't sleep. No, you called me and said, do slugs sleep? Yes. And you said, what did you say? <laughs> That's it. You got it all the wrong way around. I said, well, sleep as we know it is very different. You know, some have micro sleep, some can estivate, some can actually right. be all frozen. Right, all right, all right. So I said, what do you mean by sleep? Right? So. Butterfly. Why? If I wasn't enjoying it, it's only for a day. And then you die? Yes. 
but then you're dead. <laughs> yeah, but if I'm not enjoying it... But why do you... What? The worst thing would be a tortoise. <laughs> I don't fucking know when. What's that sort of else? I hate, I hate questions like this because you ask me, I give you an answer and you argue with me. I've told you, I picked three perfectly th decent things there. A sloth. A blue a, bottle, a, a butterfly. Right, why did, you, why did your superpower oh, be, be flying? Then you could be Carl Pilkington. Because Suzanne Superman. will be saying no. Why? Because Suzanne will be going, oh, nip out and do an errand. Suddenly right. I'm flying around everywhere, busy, because you're going, it's easier for you. She don't get out for arse enough as it is. <laughs> I, want, I, I, I don't want flying. And everybody would be on your back and, no, definitely not. Then why choose a blue bottle and a butterfly? That's because no job. one's, yeah, but that's as a fly. Everyone's expecting it to fly. And then when I go back to me, I'd appreciate, I've, I've always said to you about not knowing if I feel well. <laughs> Whereas a blue bottle, it spends its day flying around being sick on shit. <laughs> So if I come back to me and I'm like, I feel really good now, I'm not throwing up all the time. And right. So there's benefits to being a fly. I think I'd appreciate life more once I'd seen it through the eyes, many eyes, of a blue bottle. What would you pick? Let's change it, because it's unfair, this. What would you pick? Any, uh, any shape-shifting? I'd pick either a bird or a dolphin, just, 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 just sawing. An eagle soaring, a dolphin, the oceans, the whole world's my oyster. At no point would I think, I'll choose something that if it's shit, I die immediately. That's much better. Well, we're all different, aren't we? <laughs> That's what this is about. Right, let's do one more very quick. We're all fucking different. Oh, fuck me, you haven't got long enough, mate. Um. I don't think you... Oh, it's annoying that you're asking this now, because I've got so much that I'd... I don't know which one to pick. Um, uh, well, uh, it's difficult to write down. Um, Maybe just do a word so that can prove that you would have got it right if... Uh, uh, well, I think it's, um, uh, oh. there is one word and it sort of applies to all the things you might say that annoy him, but I don't know if, what, 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 what's, what's, your, what's your pet take? Just when they shit somewhere. What? Oh, they and this shit somewhere and you can't find it and it stinks. What the <laughs> I hate that. Isn't that funny? I didn't get that. What do you mean? <laughs> just, what have you thought? Faffing. Too much faffing. Like, is people always, like, you can't do that, you have to phone five times, you have to put you on hold. People, oh, you, you just mean an annoyance. What did you think he meant? He said a pet hate. I thought you'd, I thought, right, okay, yeah, I would have said Sorry, faffing. What, what do you mean? What do you hate about having a pet? When this shit behind Okay, good night, like, everyone. Okay. That, I, I'm, that, I, I'm I, worried I mean, like that. I, I've known him for ten years and that surprised me. Hang on, fuck That fucking surprised me. <laughs> I've never, I've never... I'm really sorry about that. Right, faffing. Faffing, yeah, faffing. A yeah, pet hate. When, it, when, when, it, when, it, when you're asleep and it licks your bollocks. What? <laughs> no, all right, I got the wrong end. <laughs> yeah, faffing. Faffing, all right. Yeah? Yeah. Fuck me. That's, that's great. That's great. Cheers. <laughs> that was the Travis and some flowers through my window. <laughs> this is uh, XFM 104.9 of a Saturday afternoon, just gone six minutes past one. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello Hi. there. Hi. Hi. Good to talk to you. Uh, Carl Pilkington is over there. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Keeps it real.
<laughs> yeah. Respect, Carl. Oh. Rick, um, I just think, you know, we want to lift off the show straight away. Yeah. Into the, uh, stratosphere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. the best way to do that, it seemed to me, was to resurrect a game we used to play when we first began the show in old XFM days. Do you oh, remember the game, do you remember the game Make rub, Ricky rub, Gervais Rub me laugh? hard. Rub you hard? No, no. No, no, no that, that was only in the pilot. We never <laughs> actually used that on live okay, right. Um, no, it was the game Make Ricky Gervais laugh. Oh, I remember, and We yeah. used to get people, uh, Carl, you probably didn't hear it, we used to get people to sort of send in pictures and, uh, jokes and stuff. And if I could make Ricky laugh, on air with those. He won a toffee. Then they won a gift of some kind. Yeah. Anyway, um, a lot of, a lot of emails actually saying people love your laugh, Rick. So in a sense, we're giving they, the public what they want. They must be taking the mickey. But this is a picture I found in today's copy of the Sun. So if if uh, you're listening at home and you want to know what the picture looks like, rush out and buy a copy. Only forty p. Yeah. And. Uh, it Are we sponsored by the sun? <laughs> we do white van, man. Exactly. <laughs> it amused me straight away this, because bear in mind, right. it is one of the world's biggest rock stars. Okay. Just check out the face. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fantastic! Look at that. Oh, that is Michael Stipe. Oh dear, with sort of glass, like, looking like I don't know, some sort of Nazi officer. That's not libelous. <laughs> That's not libelous. Mike, you, in your opinion, Michael Stipe. Yeah. He's outside there during the press conference yeah. for Peter Buck's. It's picture. not a good picture. I love. I think I love R.E.M. I and mean, I love most of I think he's a lovely man. But that's a bad picture, isn't it? He's <laughs> got <laughs> big glasses on and yeah. stubble. Obviously, still bothered. He doesn't appear to be looking at anything. He's looking <laughs> right beyond like... everyone else. Can you see <laughs> that? <Carl? laughs> I tell you who he looks like. He looks like Zig, I think, from Zig and Zag. <laughs> It looks like well, he's a muppet go. made of foam. Oh, love it. Nice the, to see that game the, come back. Yeah, the, the, the medium success. of radio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a good picture that is. I hope yeah. you enjoyed it. Coming up soon, we've got <laughs> Sir David of Bowie, <laughs> Nicholas Cave, uh, <laughs> and Travis Flowers in the Window again. <laughs> Play a song. Right. Aerodynamic on XFM 104.9. It's all right. It's all right now. Uneventful, wasn't it? Really? <laughs> so, like, I left a sequence to go in. Yeah. <laughs> Popped out for a coffee. Yeah. I don't want to diss the funny little French lads. Sure. But, uh, you know. Try harder. Are they French? Yeah, oh god, yeah. Sorry, eh? <laughs> Do you speak much French, Rick? I speak un peu. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can ask, where is the Tourist Information Bureau? And, um, uh, I like, I can express my preference in music tastes, yeah. and I can order an Orangina, and that's all I can do. I, I know, um, yeah, blonde. Pression, I think. That means, um, draft your friends. <laughs> <laughs> to, to Emily Music Folk? Oh, that's <laughs> filthy. That's what that means, Carl. No, go on. Really dirty. <laughs> really dirty. To Emily Music Folk. Yeah, you dirty. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you filthy little f <laughs> Frenchy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, do you know, do you, do you know much French, Carl? Um, have you got any fromage? <laughs> 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 That'd work. That's cheese or fish. <laughs> it's it's cheese. cheese. Or fish. It's cheese. Would you not care which one you were given? You like both. I it's think, the, I think that's a whole know. different kettle of poisson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think when you're in in a country, you should have a have a little go. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's a very little go. Yeah. You, you mean like football hooligans have a little go? What do you mean? <laughs> you know, try and have have a go at their uh, yeah their language. And well, that. what I do is I go in there and I point and talk a bit louder than usual in perfect English. <laughs> and if they don't get it, I go mental. <laughs> exactly. Securing the fact that I've tried my best and now I'm <laughs> going to laugh. And oh. that is the, that is the, the prerogative of all Englishmen. Or just yeah. point, point and shout. Yeah, yeah. point and shout. Don't yeah. forget, you, you know, because you can never be foreign if you're English. Anywhere. Yeah. No, yeah. they're speaking funny. Just remember that. Yeah? Yeah. God save us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on then. You were gonna say something else. Yeah. Um, that picture you were showing me. Yeah. Uh, I wish we could post one on the website of Carl. Remember we won that, we won an award ages ago. Uh, what is it called? The British Radio Authority Award. Yeah. And, um, we made Carl get in the picture. And he was a bit reticent. A bit, it, it came us. But, his head, his perfectly circular. <laughs> I put a coin on it, and it, and only the ears popped out from behind the coin. Isn't it perfectly round? Isn't I mean, it? when you've been saying I've, I've got a round head, I was a bit like, yeah, everyone has. Stop having a go. Yeah. And then I saw this picture last week. I thought, God, he's right. Can we? Get, can we? Can't we just pop it on the XM website? I'd rather not. I'll go on. Just Steve, get someone. Have you seen that that man in a jar without a brain? <laughs> 
sorry, you have, you have, is that something, is that a product you can buy? <laughs> <laughs> in like, Sainsbury's? Uh, is it a dream you had yesterday? You wonder if you could, can I, uh, yes, hello, um, could you make my dream into <laughs> reality, <laughs> please? <laughs> no, we can't actually, sir. <laughs> in, uh, plastic would be good. <laughs> sorry, what, what do you mean? In the future, you'd be able to download your dreams and then just, like, act them out again, probably, in the year 2000 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Soothsayer. No, there's some museum somewhere. Yeah. That's got this little fella who was born without a brain. And he's in a jar, and it's just that like he's got a really round head. Right. And when I saw this picture, I thought, God, it, it, it just reminded me of this little fella yeah. in a jar. Oh, and <laughs> what do you mean he's born without a brain? He was born without a brain. So it's a baby? Uh, it's not a little fella. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Do you know the difference? Do you, do you have conversations with, like, people in prams thinking, that fella's little, and he doesn't talk much. Yeah. You know babies aren't, like, little people. Well, maybe... Well, they are little people, but, I mean, they're not, they're not very small adults. They're not, like, midget. They don't do a job of work, is what we're yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah, you're very... There. What do you mean? I didn't read about it, I just saw the picture. And this is where you're going mind. wrong, Carl. This is always your mistake. You see the picture, you don't read the little caption. But what do you mean? How do you, you think... guess at what you think the meaning But how did you know he didn't have a brain? He said something like the brainless man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but people say that about you. It doesn't mean you, literally you haven't no, got no, a spinal cord. I, I, I bet somebody's seen it and, and knows what I mean. It's a famous picture. Right, right? call in 08700 800 1234. Once again, uh, you win a prize if you can tell us what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Just in general. It's an ongoing competition. <laughs> We're trying to find some CDs to anyone who knows what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas, two times. Well, we've had calls confirming that there was indeed, um, a fetus or, or a stillborn child. A pickled born, baby. A pickled baby. No wonder it died. Uh, born without a brain. Um, but everyone has, um, you know, pointed out that it wasn't a little fella. <laughs> it certainly wasn't a little fella. <laughs> oh, no, no. Because it had been in the jar for a long time, I think it had aged a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you basing that on? You do carry on growing, yeah. 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 Well, your ears and your nose. Your ears and your nose. And your eyes don't grow, so, uh, yeah. you could probably, uh, yeah. I'll dig it out for you. Yeah. Imagine if, if, like, there was an experiment where they were raising a child just based on the information that we said on the radio. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What kind of a person? Yeah, like they download, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it kind just, of information would they and have? And it took everything literally. Exactly. And I think, yeah, there was no, there's no irony or, uh, yeah, it was just. They just, everything we said they assumed was fact. Everything and, and Carl said. And they any question, was fact. any question it had about the world, it could only ask Carl. Exactly. And it was. See, now, his... this worries me because without wishing to be disrespectful in any way, Carl, you know I think you're the best man on earth. When you have a child, we could be in a situation a bit like that. Do you know, is it a concern for you, do you think, that, like, when your son's growing up or your daughter and they're asking you questions, you're conscious, I mean, you yourself have admitted that yeah, you, have a, you have a sphere of knowledge which you are an expert on. Ask your mother. You'd say, ask your mother. <laughs> That's good. That's great, fair enough. That's good. And I'd play with it. I think I'd be a good dad. Yeah, I think you would. But I wouldn't be the one who's shouting at it. No. No. I Who would you get to shout at? Yeah. Probably Windsor Davis. <laughs> He'd be good, wouldn't he? You horrible little man! <laughs> well, you know, I'd tell it the rights and wrong. You don't have to be a really bright person to know the rights and wrong in the world. Yeah. No. I think you are bright, Carl. You are. And at what point in their, um, in their life would you tell them about the evolution of the baguette? <laughs> <laughs> which you told us. Or the story of the bee. Yes. That you sc <laughs> scored once. Or the two children. Would you ever get them to meet as <laughs> yeah. maybe like that they could be godparents? <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the friends you had at school. Yeah. With the, the, hands. The, <laughs> big heads and big weird hands. That weren't friends. That weren't friends. I wish we could track them, don't Oh, that'd be great. I imagine they're in a zoo. <laughs> 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 oh wow. Oh, yeah. two big That's jars. Part, yeah. Two big jars. Industrial strength jars. Oh dear. Man. Guess what? Go on. Um, this is one of our last shows. We're going away, I'm afraid, on the, um, 4th of May, isn't it? I can't remember. That's our last show, the 4th of May. Um, yeah, not forever. I, I brought a downer on the whole thing then, yeah. didn't I? There's people cheering. Well, guess who's taking over from us? And I found this out. I was watching Liquid News the other night. Right. No one had called me. Zoe Ball. Well, she's a good presenter, but is, is this confirmed? I don't know. Or should I have said that? Is this true? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah, you've done it now. <laughs> yeah. She, she was in the other day. You watched it on the telly, so. Yeah. But what annoys me is, this is rather like when we got, according to last week's uh, Media Guardian, we got wrapped for, uh, saying the word cock on the radio. And, um, oh. well, we never did, did we? That was, we had to read that on the internet. We yeah. never told us. That, that just slipped out of your mouth, didn't it? What's that, cock? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. And, um, now we don't even get told face to face that Zoe Ball's gonna take over. Yeah, but it was only, like, sorted out the other day, and then I, when I saw you We're allowed to say Ball, aren't we? Yeah. When I saw right. you yesterday, I said, yeah, it's... So we're not allowed to say... 
Oh. No, no. I'm not going to say the word. And we're not going to say the, we're, we're not allowed to say the, we are allowed to say the male bird is a cock. We're not allowed to say the other yeah. one. But we are allowed to say ball. Yeah. What if her and her dad, Bobby, uh, would they be, would we be allowed to say a pair of balls? We'll be able to say that, and uh, I don't know. I don't think he's part of the deal. <laughs> so you don't need to. In fact, if if she's listening, call in and confirm it. We're let on the air, won't we? As long as she doesn't swear. Yeah, don't be rude. Yeah, don't be rude, Zoe. Lou. Yeah. <laughs> don't I mean, be better, chief, basically. Better warn as well not to leave too much nothing lying around, because it'll be gone, <laughs> especially if it's scag. <laughs> Echo and the Bunny Men, Killing Moon, good to hear that again. Yes. On XFM 104.9. Who are you? I'm Ricky Gervais, who are you? <laughs> Steve Merchant. Who's that funny little round-headed fellow over Carl there? Carl Pilkington. The Pilk. Pilky. Pilky. Pilkers. <laughs> well, she hasn't called, so mustn't be true. I just didn't think we were, um, being disrespectful to her, because we both think she's a fine presenter, and I think she'd do very well on it, and I think it's a good move as well. Yeah, yeah. but can you just say it's not, not forever? Isn't it? No, I, think she'll, stand... I think she'll become more popular than us. And I, mean, I, th I, think that, I think I think that'll be the end of us, to be honest. Well, I she think can though. string a sentence together. I think she get lots of PR and And she goes out with Big Boy Slim. Big Boy Slim. Who's, uh, you know... A good DJ. He's a good DJ. And, uh... Is her name Zoe Slim now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, there will be nothing. It's three months in it she's taken over for. Is she getting paid the same as us? I don't know. We'll I bet find it's, out. I bet it's a hell of a lot more. I'll go mental. I bet it's good money. <laughs> it's good money. I'll, I'll, I'll go mental. Yeah. Well, there you go. What are you going to do? I'm, uh... For three months. I, I, I'm going to have Saturdays off. What is you she... Gonna, he, he, are you going to present with her? Are you going to come on and press the buttons? He's not allowed. No, I don't... I hope not. Because, you know, you're our... Yeah. Ripping boy, um, <laughs> co-presenter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like our little fella in a jar. Yeah. We, it's like that's what we should do with you over the <laughs> uh, three months. Keep you in a jar. <laughs> we can have it we, in alternate weeks. Like, <laughs> um, like step-parents or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Just, you can oh, leave Oh, me and Steve are fighting for custody. Yeah. It'll be a big jar, though. You can, you can put stuff in there. You can, oh, you can have, it won't be, oh, it won't be, like, um, full of water or, or vinegar or whatever they do. Or you won't become a pickled car. No. Um, it'd be, it'd be like an air, big air chamber and you're sat, sat there and it'd be like a little, what would it be, an armchair or something? It'd be in an armchair and we'd, and we'd have stuff in there and we'd bring your girlfriend like once a week and she'd go and we'd put a blanket over the top so we wouldn't, you know, see anything. But like the Big Brother household. Exactly. Yeah. Now that's a hell of a documentary. Oh, that'd be amazing, wouldn't Carl it? Carl in a jar. But anyway, that's what, so we're going away on the 4th of May for 12 weeks. It's a long time, isn't We it? were doing the second series of The Office so we can't be around, I'm afraid. And, and, uh, Zoe Ball's standing in for us. And, uh, that can't be right. She's not stupid. I don't think you can say standing in for us. Isn't that right? Taking over the show, I think, would be fair to say. I don't know. I, got, I can't say anything now, can you? I'm don't worried about that. Just because he was up with Big Boy Slim, mm. you've got to be careful what you say. Yeah. Uh, no, you look upset. You're starting to think that we're getting melancholy now, that you're just going to sit at home. What are you going to do every Saturday? don't know. Go shopping. Let's sort out a jar. You've got to do the balloons before then as well. You've got to set you up in a balloon. Maybe you can set you up in a balloon and you come straight down into a big jar. Yeah. And they put another <laughs> big giant cork in straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's a big jar. I'll tell you what we could do. We could set you adrift like Robinson Crusoe set <laughs> the ball and see where you if end you, up. If you find me, yeah. Oh, you might go to an uninhabited island or something. I'll tell you something that I learned in the week. Go on. Just reminded me there about going up in the air. Go on. Right. If cars could drive up, it only took an hour to get into space. Which is great. Going how fast? Uh, about 50 miles an hour. <laughs> you just made that up, didn't you? Guess. You just plucked, you just guessed that. You just guessed it. You just said about 50. Yeah, See, but this is what worries me. If you have a, if you have a son or a daughter, yeah. age fi 50, yeah. he's going to be out in the street with a ramp pointing Dad, into the sky. Dad, how long do elephants live? About a thousand years. <laughs> a thousand or something. I want to say. Dad, how much can an ant lift? About a quarter of a, quarter of a kilogram. <laughs> Probably <laughs> about two bags of sugar. If you guess, it's not fact. Yeah, if just because you thought it, that doesn't make it a fact. Does anyone know how long it would take a car going fifty Let's miles not an hour? People, people are phoning in about anything space. now, Rick. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. asked them to phone in about the jar thing. <laughs> <laughs> Switchboard lit up. 
<laughs> it's crazy. You like you like <laughs> when in about like you know something sensible yeah. like Che Guevara or yeah. you know the life of Mr. I learned about that, There's that, nothing. That is really a demographic sort of snapshot <laughs> of <laughs> our fans, <laughs> our audience. Ask them about a <laughs> dead baby without a brain. Oh yeah, and they're reaching the with their phones. They don't mind what their bill yeah. is that much. We ask them for you know I don't know great quotes or something it, yeah. from a great philosopher. It's nothing. They just ask them where to buy yeah meth. <laughs> Straight on the phone. Oh, do you know the the quotes that Ricky gave me last week and I turned them down? Yeah. I got home. Girlfriend had a go at me. They don't know you turned him down. What you know is that he said he didn't uh, want to take the book at the end of the show. So I'm not taking it. It's too difficult. I'm gonna go and get a nice one and go on. Yeah. On. So I went home and uh, Suzanne said, "Where's the book?" She was really looking forward to having a look at it. I said, oh, I gave it him back, I wasn't up for that. And yet, last week I was ill and stuff, I wasn't in the mood for learning. Yeah. So I'm not having it. She goes, this is where you went wrong at school. Oh. She said, this is exactly where you went went wrong. She said, you know, you liked infants, you liked, uh, you know, you're colouring in and you're painting stuff. She said, but as soon as it gets to the heavy stuff, you just, you know, you're like a horse with its blinkers on. Yeah. She said, you shut yourself away. So I said, no, I, I just, uh, I could have done if I wanted to. So anyway, um, we went and bought a quotations book, so I have got some quotes. Yeah, what's read. the quotation book you bought? So I was asking him to, uh, read Keats and Wild Wordsworth Shakespeare. Uh, what did you buy? It's, it's quotes with, like, Eric and Ernie and that in it. <laughs> No, but it's still quotes. <laughs> They're still quotes. <laughs> the yeah. Sesame Street book of quotes. <laughs> Brilliant. Still no, that's quotes. they're still valid. No, it's a starting point. Oh. It's a starting point. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll have some quotes. We'll have some of that after. We've got, we've got yeah. a lot more to get through before we. We've got a bit of new order. Bit of new order. Excellent. Excellent. New order. Here to stay. <laughs> um, on XFM 104.9. Someone, I, I love our listeners. I really do. Right. Uh, someone just called in and said it's about putting. He went hello. Carl answers the phones. And I said, hello? He went, hello. He said, yeah, about putting Carl in a big jar. And Carl went, go on. <laughs> uh, the bloke went, well, then you could call him Carl Pickleton. And he went, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I love the bothering. I like Carl Pickleton. That's yeah, lovely. That's, that's so sweet. He spent 50p to tell you that, and you were worried. You just saw you going up in a balloon and landing in a jar again, didn't you? <laughs> what have you gone through yet? You've had nothing but good feedback from this show now, and now you're just getting all worried, aren't you? Heat magazine say you're a genius. You've got your picture in that extra X magazine with a little round head. You have Jaffa Cakes. I gave him a fiver the other week to buy biscuits. He's having the time of his life. Yeah. This is best day. This must be your best two hours of the week. I enjoy it, yeah. <laughs> it's all right sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's better regular than this for you? What's a better two hours a week? Uh, Sleep doesn't count. Um, actually, probably right. It might be this. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, about twenty four things good. Right, like that. I'm probably worth sorry. mentioning Suzanne. Yeah, your girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Yeah, well that goes without saying, doesn't oh, it? Oh, he's done it. He's oh. pulled it round. He's <laughs> pulled it round. He's a charmer. If you could come in and sit in the corner, then yeah, it would be the best time ever. That's pretty sweet, actually. Oh. She's not even in London at the moment. Oh, so you want have to say that. Yeah. You have to say it, and you did anyway. Yeah. That's she lovely. Might, she might be listening to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's quite digital, isn't it? There's always that. There's always, always that <laughs> danger. Really, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Steve, over well, to I, you. Um, I just was wondering, because obviously I, I've had an exciting week, relatively speaking, Rick, because yeah. uh, instead of just spending it all with you, yeah. sat in a little room, yeah. um, <laughs> as is our way, yeah. I've been doing some acting this week, as you I know. know. I know. And I don't normally act, uh, but I, um, basically uh, there's some people at the BBC who are making a, a comedy pilot, kind of comedy TV show, and, uh, you know, and I auditioned for it, and the role was uh, to play a sort of freaky looking, sort of lanky geek, you know, and I don't want to say- beat, How did you beat off I don't want to say an arrogant route, but they gave me the job on the spot. <laughs> You know, so it was like, you know, obviously I'm, you know, because I'm not a bad actor, I'm not as good as Rick, but I'm, you know, I'm- What oh, is it? It's, what is it? It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, I play a really tall guy, like a sort of- That's the part of it, that's the part though, isn't it? About, you've got a- I'm a character who's, um, six foot seven inches tall, and I'm trying to win the world's, uh, tallest man. That's it, yeah, yeah. But, uh, there's always a man that beats me every year, because he's slightly taller. But this year, I think, for some reason, because I've been training, I can beat him. That's the and, um, Sally Phillips, I don't know if you know Sally Phillips, she, she's a very good, uh, comedy writer and actress and she's written it. So it was good fun and so we went down there and it was good and everything. It was, you know, a little trailer and everything. It was like the proper deal. It was really good. And, um, the problem was yesterday I had to dance. One of the sequences had me dancing. Now, as you know, I think I'm a pretty groovy dancer. I'm yeah. pretty, I'm a bit of a mover. Yeah. And I have to tell you this, Rick. Do you have anyone's eye out with your elbow? <laughs> I have come to some serious realizations about my dancing. Really? I was moving around like a shire horse dancing. Really? It was terrible. I was just like quick and they, they had this choreographer trying to show me some moves and it was just- It was, was just like crying by the end yeah. of it. 
It was they, they really they bad. Were, <laughs> yeah. It was so bad, but the worst thing about it is, today, my whole body is ravaged with pain and agony. It's, I'm utterly devastated by the, the agony of it. Trying to get down the stairs this morning, I swear to God, I look like Thora Heard. <laughs> Trying to hobble that, it was mad. I was like I'd had several hip replacements. I was like, I had to go down an angle, going down the stairs, it was ludicrous. And I was really worried, suddenly I'm thinking, because I thought I was pretty fit and pretty yeah. uh, groovy and everything. Mm -hmm. And I had been discussing with, um, this mate of mine, my housemate, that we should maybe just start doing some exercise, because mm -hmm. I'm being on a little bit of weight, right, he's quite a thin, tall guy, he has a belly, I don't know how to summarise it. Have you ever seen the film Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, yeah. It looks like that. Really? It's slightly grotesque. So the two of us were up, so we suggested, we decided that we were going to do some exercise together, right? This is what we're going to do. We, each morning we were going to get up, we were going to exercise together. That won't happen. Right. Well, no, but wait, Rick. You see, you're wrong because a couple of days ago I said to him, listen, what we should do is get one of those, like, health videos, you know, those kind of training videos, what they're called, like, um, I don't know, they might have an aerobics thing or a yeah. sort of hour long workout. And I said to him, get one of the ones that's hosted by, like, um, Pauline Quirk. Elle McPherson or Cindy Crawford, you know, you know, someone like that, someone sexy, right? So, uh, I swear to God, we went down this morning, we put it on, right? Just want you to picture this scene, right? It's me and my mate in our shorts, right, nine o'clock in the morning, working out- You didn't actually do it. To Helen from Big Brother's <laughs> video, right? That was- it was the cheapest one, Steve, you told me. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. We saw that advertised as yeah. well. Working out, right? And the two of us in our shorts, she's there, like, you know, she's the closest there is to a living Homer Simpson, right, shouting out and stuff. I just wanted to be reassured, Rick. There's nothing gay about that, is there? Um... There's nothing a touch kind of fruity about that image. No. I mean, I th the ones you do avoid would be to Liza Minnelli, Ryan right, Cow. Yeah. Um, uh, Graham Norton, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um... Dale Winton. Gay Byrne. Right, sure. He's not gay. No. But, I mean, the name's a little bit gay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, So, I think, I, I think, Helen, from me, brother, you're probably safe. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Who else? I don't know what, what else to tell you, really. Um... But, I mean, because I know you've got a personal trainer. I'm obviously not in that kind of state, this kind of state at the moment. I don't have that kind of cash. No. But, um, you know, I'm obviously quite excited. What have I got to look forward to? Do, do I go through a My, my, area? my, uh, my trainer, Pink Eric, we call him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, well, uh, I, um, I sort of box a little bit. But what I'm saying is, do you go through a pain barrier? What, no, 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 I stop way before that. <laughs> right. And I okay. sit down and have a beer. Right. You don't, there's no, there's no point in going <laughs> through pain because it, it just put you off. Sure. So, um, if, if, if you, you know, start feeling any sort of pain or, or any, um, breathlessness or any aches, <laughs> yeah. sit down immediately. <laughs> now, is it right that he's worked out a special routine for you where you don't have to get up? Yeah, when he actually said, I remember the first, was, uh, I got my food diary and he was looking at it. And I could see he was, he, he sort of feared it. He feared taking on this challenge. And this is a true quote. At one point, uh, he, he said, right, um, okay, cut cheese down to five times a week then. I must have haggled from four. <laughs> cheese down to five times a week. <laughs> and it, it's sort of like, I'm my own worst enemy. Because if I cut out cheese and beer, I would just lose weight like It would drop off me in a month. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just, I'm fighting it all the time. I'm, yeah. I haven't changed my sort of eating and drinking habits, but I now work out three times a week. And it's an uphill struggle, Steve. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just so you're just keeping it an even keel. I know, well, I, I, yeah. So I can live longer to eat more cheese and beer. Do you exercise, Carl? Do you do any exercise whatsoever? I, I used to go to a gym in town, but it wasn't the sort of, the hard work of doing the, you know, the stuff. It was just like, it was like 60 quid a month. Yeah. I thought, well, crazy, know, isn't it? That's not good. So I just got out of my way to sort of walk everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Instead mm. of jumping on a bus, like a nice day like today, walking to work, or uh, you know, run up the stairs. You're uh, skinny though. <laughs> you run up the stairs. What? You're really skinny though. No, but I, I do eat a lot of like crappy food. So oh, yeah. I reckon. I mean, what did they say? When you get to thirty, it all just. You go mental, don't you? Yeah, you they say I mean? that, play record. That's, is, who's that? That's the philosophers, no, isn't no, it? You when you get to 30, you go mental. No, oh, I mean, Descartes. Yeah, <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. No. Play record. Better Bowie? Oh, yeah, oh, I brought this in. You'll love this, Steve. Oh, you know this, I think, I'm sure. This is uh, uh, a great Bowie track off Aladdin Sane, one of my favourite albums. And this is Lady Grinning Soul. It's, it's beautiful. Back to John Boy, Silent Sigh on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. You can do your own. Oh, right. Okay. My name's Steve Merchant. Yeah, I'm Carl. I'm Carl. Yeah. Exactly. You've not, you've not lost interest, have you, Rick? Uh, no, of course I haven't. Okay. <laughs>
Go on. I said he just, I've said it once, I, I, get, I was a bit bored with just saying your names. Okay. I don't mind saying mine, because I'm sort of interested in that. <laughs> yeah, sure. But the other ones are sort of more of a chore. Do okay. you know I mean? There's nothing okay. in it for me. Yes, <laughs> there's no actual I'd game. rather not mention either of you. Okay. So, if you want to do it, from yeah. now on. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, listen, um, obviously, still got plenty to come. We've obviously got uh, some great music, Rick, and that's uh, well, I've got, um, a bit of Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds. Um, actually, an album you introduced me to, and I'm gonna play, um, Into My Arms. Looking forward and to you that. know how beautiful that song is. That's true enough. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I was just, obviously, I was talking about this little bit of acting I was doing yesterday, and, uh, not wishing to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved, but there was, um, obviously some extras or supporting artists, as I believe they know, and, you know, all good, good, lovely people, really putting the effort in, doing good work and everything, but there's this one guy I stood next to, and, you know, he's quite a tall guy, uh, not quite as tall as me, but tall guy, you know, quite a good-looking bloke or whatever, and, uh, I just sat there, and he, he obviously gets quite boring, because there's a lot of just hanging around and people waiting and stuff, fixing lights, I just stood next to him, and he just went, oh, he was looking for something to say to me, obviously, and he went, looking forward to the new Guns N' Roses album? <laughs> And I went, I didn't realise there was one on the way, actually. Went, yeah, yeah, obviously they, uh, it, it, uh Slash won't be in it, because obviously Slash is no longer with them, but, uh, <laughs> bloody a sweet child of mine. One of my, one of my favourites. Just started singing some of the songs. <laughs> I went, okay, great. Without went, yeah. irony, I assume. without irony. He just wanted to get onto a discussion of Guns N' Roses, but I'll tell you this, he did not look like a rocker in any way. He looked like a bloke who would work in, sort of, an accountancy, Barclays. uh, agency. Uh, yeah, or Barclays, yeah, behind the counter, something like yeah. that. Very well scrubbed, well groomed. I was saying, there's yeah. nothing wrong with Barclays or the people who work therein. <laughs> That's true, though. Okay. So he goes, yeah, I mean, I, I got into them with uh, Appetite for Destruction, the classic first album, um, but I even, you know, I enjoyed the spaghetti incident as well. I mean, I like all of them. Yeah. And I'm like, right, okay. And he goes, I said, um, uh, I said to him, have you ever seen them live or anything? He went, I have not seen them live, no, but I was lucky enough to be at Donington, Monsters of Rock, <laughs> and, uh, Slash's Snake Pit was playing, <laughs> which was Slash's solo effort. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he went, I've never been, I've never been to, uh, those live gigs before. And, uh, I was down in the mosh pit. Oh, man, I was down there, and I'll tell you this, have you been in the mosh pit? I went, oh, no, he goes, oh, it's crazy down there. It's wild. A guy threw a punch at me, I punched him, knocked him straight out. He knocked me out, someone's in this fight went off. Oh, it was amazing, it was amazing, amazing. Oh, are you gonna go back? He went, no, I won't, because once you've done something like that, you can never repeat the, um, the experience. You know, I mean, I was, they, everyone there was dressed in black. I think I was the only guy wearing a white t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, okay, I could just imagine him tucked in as well. That's, <laughs> why, yeah, that's why I attacked him. Exactly. It's like ants. <laughs> yeah. They, they Slash sort of himself again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a termite in the nest. Exactly. And they just turned on him. But so the very song, I okay, so, so, do you go to gigs often? He went, no, I don't think I'm ever gonna go to another rock gig. And I said to him, why? And he went, I don't think any gig I go to will be able to top the experience of seeing UB40 live. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I uh, almost but, did what you well, that's did. Well, that's why I've never seen him live, because I don't want to end my life. But I almost laughed. No point I then. thought it was a joke. I thought he was making a joke, and I was about to laugh, and I realised he was deadly serious, and I went, you be I went, 40. oh, good were they, he went, absolutely blinding. Um, one of the sure. most incredible live experiences I've ever seen. I imagine. Um, did remarkable. they do songs in a sort of mock reggae style? Apparently they two did. hours. And then he began Excellent. to tell me which, which of his favourite, he went, I, I don't know if, I said, have they done anything recently, or brought anything out? He went, I don't think they're gonna be able to top, um, those classic albums, Bag of Rhythm, and yeah. Right in the Kitchen. I remember once when I went to sign on, Okay, and it, I don't know what year it was, it must have been like 1979 or something. And, uh, and my first, well, I left school. And, uh, um, tell me if I'm wrong if it wasn't out then, but this bloke was at the back with sort of like a ghetto blaster, and he was playing one in ten. Right. Obviously making a point, he was in the dole office. <laughs> yeah. Everyone ignored him, and when it finished playing, he turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he took, wow. took a number and cue. The days when they were a protest. Though. When was that? What year was that? What year oh, did I... I uh, someone can pinpoint that for me. Phone in. 08700 800 1234. I know it had just come out. But, um, but what was amazing is when he said that about you before him being the best low experience I've ever seen, I th it was one of those moments where you thought, I never thought I'd hear someone say that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why that... I can't understand what kind of person you are. I suddenly realised at that moment there was such a chasm between us. Is there anyone out there whose favourite band is UB40? <laughs> Red Wed Wine, maybe. You be forty. You be forty. Yeah. Oh, they're, anyway, they're a great bunch of blokes, though. You see, and they, they, they crack me up when I see them interviewed. They're really funny. But um, once you've heard one, that's pretty much it, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. I imagine. I mean, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm a Philistine. Maybe there's some hidden depths to them that we don't understand. Uh, Maybe some great tracks that you could yeah. know if you're a big fan. Well, I'm never going to go and see him because why, <laughs> why, no, no, why sort of like top your experiences? Exactly. You know. Because you never get a better it. When, when I know I'm definitely dying, yeah. I'm going to go. You'll summon them to play for you. Get me, you <laughs> yeah. get me, me labour of love live. Do, 
Do right in the kitchen. <laughs> now. This is a little bit of a treat, but I thought I would uh, charm you with Rick. Uh, from The Cure's Greatest Hits, this was this double CD that they brought out recently, including 18 acoustic versions of their greatest hits. Yeah. And this is the acoustic what version. What have you gone for? I've gone for, glad you've asked, just like heaven. Wise choice. XFM 104.9. Lovely, that one. Brilliant, isn't it? The acoustic version of Just Like Heaven from, yeah. uh, The Cure's, uh, like double it. CD I'm greatest loving it, hits. loving it, loving it, loving it. Now, again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And, uh, we were chatting, and having a, having a cup of tea, and it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes, was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't, yeah. Oh, God. Kurt so it was the tree that did it. <laughs> I mean, he was probably the only- and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the radio, but I told him this story, um, it was a- it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, s a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash, you see, it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate and he was going, Dave. And he sort of, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror, and then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> Imagine remaking that film when it's two chickens in horrendous car crash. <laughs> it Their would, own fault for driving me. <laughs> <laughs> it would work. No. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went out of five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly and some of that, when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's, he's, he's annoyed, yeah. Like, I you wanna, have it. I wanna see it. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. But they should have thought it through a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite, uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he says, I can get you out of here. He said, what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that when, means there's a, been a, yeah. a dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into, like, the, uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the, get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out and you can run away and escape. Yeah. Right? So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right, and then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's that, the point. That doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. All it right, really matters. Okay. Listen, I, I don't right. know if I'm going to ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back, and she has to get no, buried alive. Be better than yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. She, right. she, she does it. She gets into the coffin. Yes. Yeah, go on. Right. So she gets in the coffin. And uh, she's lying there for ages. She's buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere, so she's thinking, this is it, I'm getting out. And, uh, yeah, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd, he'd help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she is buried alive and yeah. can't get out. Yeah. 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 Makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, actually, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. This isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having told yeah. that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? That, that's a good one. And, um... Let's see if anyone knows what the finger is. When that bloke oh, was yeah. under the ground, wiggling we're, his finger. We're talking about one with, uh, some fella who's stuck in the ground or something. <laughs> There's a, this is a motif I noticed in the, your particular <laughs> favourite ones. <laughs> yeah. Right? People no. stuck in the ground. Go yeah, on. right, so she's, she... It's a fella, see, it? yeah, it's, yeah, a fella stuck. Now, I seem to remember it just being his foot, to be honest, being stuck in a hole. 
I'm no, he was under the ground and he had a, he got a little thing out of the pavement and he put his finger up and wiggled it to try and attract attention. Then you see a woman come along and her stiletto heel just knocks his finger off. You see, I'm wondering if it's the same one as I saw. Yeah, it could be two like that, couldn't it? <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, they were running out of ideas by the last year. It's a big theme in Hollywood. <laughs> or, um, what was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, this is, now, this we? is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right, I saw one, um, on Tales of Space, right, and it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like it might be a priest or a doctor or that, and they'd go on and say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died and he owes uh, a hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want them, so they'd just pay him, yeah. right? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And he did it, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve, is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but more than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. I can't nodded like yeah. you me out. Yeah, what sound were you here? Do, 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 Ooh. do, 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 do. Ah. Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just... Noises, occasional it? groans. Yeah, right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> but I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. Now, yeah. thought of that. Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. Yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, but she's great as only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a good looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>what have you got you going to do? I've got to do As far as December and then that's it? Uh, I don't know, when does the diary end? 31st of December usually. Yeah. Do do it the whole typical, way always the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when I'll do it too and then uh... Why do that? Why just, why be conformist? Why, why end on December? Why not end on January the 31st? Weird that you should go, don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me ma'am called me to ask me to like, fuck me, you're right, that like, look, that should be. My mum called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue there as to why you, you, uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's, oh, you know, I mean... Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin, brackets, astronaut, has got some evidence that aliens exist. Mm. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> they've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. To fly. <laughs> adds up, oh, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel! Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. 
I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> I love it when Susan like, goes. She never indulges. No, it in scares her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of. It doesn't scare her. It, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. I'm knackered today, and the face feels dry and spotty. Oh God! What's wrong with it starts off. It starts off moaning. The first thing he does is start moaning. He wakes up and goes, oh, fuck me, I didn't die. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I'm knackered today and my face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away. Or it could be all the- <laughs> It could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> but what's I'm the Madeira burst. cake? The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? <sighs> well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's <sighs> one of the little pleasures. <laughs> oh God, put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine for my mum. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, <laughs> showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just that Oh, you were? were? No. I, I well, you were. studied them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was looking for it. UFO data. I don't yeah. know where they put it. I don't think you find evidence of other worlds around men's pants. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. <laughs> he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag, but no. no. but it, it reminds me. You want to be right. specific. Of, yeah. If I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. Oh, still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkeys 50 quid, alpacas 20 pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, as long they as do. They of course, they don't. They don't. They don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people, thinking, "I hope people buy this." They're going to put them out there. Yeah. They're, they're, but uh, at the end of the day, fifty quid's fifty quid, and they're not bothered. If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah, and I'm saying, "Can you get one to London?" To them, that is less hassle. Right. Th that don't, th uh, Carl. That's not how it works. You can't just go and say, "Oh, I'll have one of them." They're not bothered. It's for charity. Oh, of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for twenty quid. <laughs> Christ, all my plus posters and packaging. They're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages, but <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh food and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> 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 oh God! We've got to publish this diary. There's some dynamite we've stuff. We've in got here. to publish the diary. I mean, this is never mind, peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special CD? I I, I just, it's amazing. You got you can't you can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work, and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus! <laughs> it's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I look tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira, okay? We don't know. <laughs> Always been going to every news agency in London, looking at gay magazines. <laughs> she taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed though because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> Oh, it's the theories! It's the it theories! It is such a noisy world though, isn't it? It is. Well, London is noisy. Very noisy. I think just everywhere. Just noise in general. They were yeah. saying how, like, every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because- I don't have no idea. I, I, every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, 
the same noises are being used again. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker have... when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah, some, some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's, there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument, yeah. noises um, are a byproduct. They're a machine, they don't go, watch me make this <laughs> noise, make this machine. It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing but something. But why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the who's noise. Picking I know. The noise? That's that's printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah, you so know, printing... a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going, oh, can we make this make a different noise? No, it's, it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. You said the byproduct is because of something that's happening, right? But it's yeah. the physical action, isn't it, and the way that that impacts on the uh, the surrounding air. That's what no you know how noises are manufactured. It's when, not a when, choice. When Stevenson's yeah, rocket came, I went. <laughs> They went, can you make it go, It's what, that's the noise it made. I know, but then, say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for f what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was gonna sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises, nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like <laughs> a Ford Escort, or... <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, there there can't be so many because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and escort so far. I can't explain it. But the problem it. is a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro. So I, I know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, you're ripping off the turkey, <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that is competition time. <laughs> I think my worry there is people might get confused with it because that jingle is very yeah. similar to the monkey news jingle. There's aspects of it that's similar, yeah. Yeah. But some people might have just heard that and they might have just heard chimpanzee and thought, oh great, it's monkey news, but Carl presumably is too lazy to have actually prepared any monkey news. Oh, I've got some good news about monkey news, actually. Have you? If you are craving monkey news, then there is a special monkey news poster in the, uh, in the CD, the three CD box set, um, the Ricky Gervais show. Got everything. It's got the the twelve shows and MP3. It's got the best of, and it's got an extra hour of brand new material as well. And um, the reason we did it on CD is because uh, some people were saying I've heard about this, but I can't listen to it. I haven't got an iPod. I haven't got a computer. So uh, buy that for a friend who uh, who can't listen to these. It's the perfect Thanksgiving gift. It is the perfect Thanksgiving gift or Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've, uh, we've signed, um, one that's going to a lucky winner. We did a competition, uh, on the last podcast, um, to give away one of the CD box sets, the, uh, uh, World of Carl Pilkington, and, uh, we've signed that, and, um, Flannels of the Deep, uh, the new, uh, book in the series. Can you remind us, Rick, of the quiz question? The quiz question was, do you want these? <laughs> okay, and what was the correct answer? Uh, it was yes. Well, we've had, uh, it's amazing actually how many people didn't realise that was, we've had a lot of people saying no, uh, I'm not interested, um, who are you, why are you bothering me? But, um, amazingly, Rachel Bolland from, uh, Glasgow has got the correct answer, she said yes. Now then, we yeah. need a new question, Rick. Yeah, should we give those away again? <laughs> so we get, yeah, let's give those away again, the same yeah. things again, not obviously okay. these, we'll send these no, to Rachel. Different we'll ones. Separate you time. get so, so you get, do you, do you want a signed CD, the World Cup Hilton and Flannimals of the Deep, okay? Plus, we can also add to that, Rick, the forthcoming Extras script book. Ah, not just a script book, Steve. No. It's got some wonderful pictures but that were taken by Rich Hardcastle of um, people like Ben Stiller and Sam Jackson and Kate Winslet behind the scenes. In their off-duty moments. And it's brilliant. It's really good. We'll put some pictures up on the website. Go to wickedgervais.com and you'll see, you'll see what you could, uh, we'd be winning. Yeah. Yeah? So we've got that perfect collection of stuff but we need a new quiz question. Okay. Um, okay, th th so, so those prizes, uh, does someone else want them? Does someone else want them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you know the answer to that, then get in touch. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck. It's a tricky one. Oh, good luck anyway, because I never read the emails. <laughs> well, that's the end of, uh, the second in this, uh, series of three special podcasts. That was the end of the Thanksgiving edition, uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. See ya. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. They're doing a great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, and welcome to our Christmas podcast. 
with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering, Rick, if having done so many podcasts this year, because we very much started the whole podcast revolution ourselves single-handedly roughly this time last year. Yeah, that's right. Have we perhaps exhausted the podcast phenomenon? Is it time to pack it up, pack up the equipment and move on to something new? Well, this will be the last one for, for a little while, I think. I think, you know, we've done, we did, uh, I think 24 and then these specials this year. I think we started it about this time last year. Well, I don't know about you, Rick, but I'm bored of the whole podcasting thing, and I know that uh, you probably feel the same way. Well, let's stop for a while. We might get back together again, but it won't be for a while. It's the, you know, we had a year. It was the year of the podcast. In a weird year, isn't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you look at it like that, when you think about all the podcasts that we've done. Yeah. Over a year. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's Looking back at the year, a year in which we've seen, you know, um, increasing violence in Iraq. We've seen uh, the advent of more fears over global warming. We've seen George W. Bush take a massive battering in the midterm elections. We've seen many major world events this year. Carl, what's stuck out for you? What event do you, if you think, oh my God, if you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Uh, the, the grub. That was, that was eating biscuits on the windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's just a little bit more up there for you than the capturing of Saddam Hussein and his sentencing to death. Just because, you know, it's, uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So what exactly- What, the capture of Saddam or the grub? No, the, the grub. The grub. It was just, I, I was there on the computer. Yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit. Uh, I put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why um, would you do that? What, why? Why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Window because I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. Yeah. Oh, and so some ruffian stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and uh, I was enjoying it. Put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea. And uh, I saw- Planned out. This is, <laughs> I bet, well we read about this later in the diary. So, and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer and there's an insect that is see-through but with legs. And, um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see-through things. And they were obviously all like, oh, I got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that, That's exactly what they were saying. <laughs> we they got were going, biscuit. biscuits over here! But I that, what, Come what, on, what, what was it, like I say, it was amazing because it was, they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet- Not that far. They're, but, but they're still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird. That that happened. I never thought that would happen in two thousand and six. <laughs> and that's, that's you never thought that would happen in two thousand and six. That's what's He's nice, isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the na you know the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods. We can bring out better vacuum cleaners. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up. And to see this see through thing, you do eating a biscuit. Uh, that's that's mind. where I've sort of gone this year. I'd say out of a a anything. I've sort of gone out of my way to, to learn more stuff about weird stuff that's happening. I don't know what you've learned. You've learned that, uh, a creature which you can't even identify that or you name. don't know, right, you, you, you don't know what it is, right, um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that, what is that, how is that useful? Just because everything is, is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was. But Carl Or where thinks, it happened but, or why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that, that the grub has an inkling, has a, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl does. That's why yeah. he's from Mace. He's thinking, as, I can't believe it, they, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as opposed to just being, yeah. it, it, taking the starch and anything. the flour, yeah. exactly, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But, they're eating biscuit. <coughs> and that was never meant to happen. So, so it's changing it. What but I mean is you might start getting fat insects. That should never have happened. You, you, you don't normally see a fat beetle. You go, oh, look at that, that's a bit fat. Put a bit of weight on. And now that's gonna happen because they're eating sugary stuff. The, the squirrels in the park. Because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything, they're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. <laughs> now over time, 
You know, they, they're going to cause more trouble than they what are now. Have you got what evidence have you got that they get Just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they, they're really, like, cocky. They come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of uh, attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now. They want a bit of croissant. And that's, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. They've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub having a biscuit. Everything's trying different food out. You'll want a gatto soon. Well, in the same way that, you know, you, you look at people around the world, how they're eating weirder stuff. They're running out of, you know, ideas on, on how to cook food differently. And we're eating weird stuff. So our insects, everything's moving on. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish, memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. Everything's... Time, yeah. time makes you more intelligent. Well... No, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more because more stuff's going on, and you soak it up, and that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the internet, right? And somebody had had linked up a cockroach <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> Some I can't even be bothered explaining it, but but uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Everything everything's moving on. Yeah, but but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man. It's like from the 1980s. Yeah, that's so, oh, God, he's God. Got a date. Get a life, it. man. Hello, PlayStation Three. Yeah, hello. hello, hello. Yesterday's cockroach. <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. What was he listening to? MC Hammer. Christ Almighty. Fucking hell, Pac-Man. <laughs> Get a life. High five. Man. I was in the supermarket recently, um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms yeah. on the way to the pornography, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, thought, you know, it's worth perhaps, you know, getting a stocking, you know. Get a stocking? No, get, getting some condoms. What, to put over your head? <laughs> You're not still doing that, are you? No, 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 no. No, I, uh, I thought it was worth getting some condoms in, you know, it's, it's, it's Christmas party season, and, uh, you never know when you're gonna run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and I was weird, because the, the, the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage, in a plastic cage, so it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them, because I took them off the, ca the the thing, and I was trying to open it, so, because I thought that they, they would, it, you had to open it. Try it on. You, try <laughs> it on. <laughs> exactly. okay, they're just, you know, in case it doesn't fit. <laughs> Bring exactly. it back. Yeah. Bring it back, yeah. And, uh, and do you do alterations? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do, yeah, it's five pounds. <laughs> and, um, so I'm trying to open this thing and, and this guy who works there, sort of this middle-aged guy who works there, he goes, you, you, you have to, um, you have to take that to the, uh, checkout, so you can't open that yourself. And I was just, cause I, I don't know, I still find it very embarrassing, you know, dealing with any of that sort of, you know, prophylactics and things, the novelty of that is still very embarrassing to me. And, uh, so I just left it, I thought, forget it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take these to the counter, cause you never, it's like if you get served by a, by a woman, it's, it's still a bit embarrassing, particularly if that's all you're buying. <laughs> you know, because she knows what you're up to. Um, yeah. You're going to fill them up with war and throw them at students. <laughs> and um, but it, anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought for his girlfriend for Christmas. Uh, was it a uh, two pack? A two pack of yeah. What was it? Condoms. What, wasn't it about buy one get one free? Yeah. It was a bumper family. Pack, wouldn't it? Yeah. Not a family, obviously. That'd be, that'd be weird. Yeah, a family pack of condoms. <laughs> 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 One for the kids. Take them down, enjoy yourselves. <laughs> um, but um, so that was a couple of years ago, Carl. The famous uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? Uh, not really. They they were the early days. Um, Do you mean the early days? You've been going out with them for about eight years, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I, I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so do. sorry, that was a bumper year, was it? That was that was a hell of a. She went. Oh, I remember. When, I remember when you used to buy me stuff like condoms. It's gone downhill since then. Well, no, she your didn't presents. know she was getting them. What I mean is, there's less. Of course, prizes. she didn't. That's what. That's what I mean, though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her, and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on, no, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult, is what I mean, to surprise someone in it over, no, over no, no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't if if you're if you always get something good, it's like the three wise men. What did they get the second year for, for little baby <laughs> Jesus? Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like 
Oh. I've, I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself there. I've got to get, I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And next and year, get him the gold. Step it up a bit or whatever. But don't you understand, because what, what, I don't want to criticise you because you're a lovely man, but having read the diary and read much of this diary, one of the things I notice is the complete lack of romanticism. The number of times Susanna says, book us a lovely meal out, take me out tonight, and you always write like it's a massive chore, like it's a headache for you. Oh no, I've got to spend a romantic night out with my girlfriend. Because it's the same reason I don't like Christmas and stuff, is the expectations. I prefer it, if I want to take Suzanne out, I prefer to meet her at the bus stop, and she comes back from work and go, you want to go out? But you Rather don't do than, that. No, I do now and again, but it's that thing of, oh, we'll go out tonight, I want to leave it to you, book a place, da da da, it, it builds it up too much and it can never live up to it. It's like how you, you know how like people make a big thing out of, you know, having it away for the first time and they go, oh, I'm going to do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> That's a quote! <laughs> That's an amazing quote! That'll be up there with uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. No, but like That's I've said, amazing. Like I've said but you lot. can't just spring it on someone. You have to at least ask her. You up for it tonight? Just see how it goes. That's what I'm saying about Christmas. I might not be in the mood for it on December 25th. For Christmas, having turkey and everything. That's what I mean about, you know, in the last podcast, stuff coming round every year. Don't plan it. If you fancy a Christmas, have it. If you don't, just carry on. It'd be nice to live in a world like that. They say, you know, it's a world of freedom or something now. It isn't. No, they do, I don't know what that means. No, no, they don't they just make up things they say. They say. They? they say, like, you know, today's world is a free world or something. Someone said something along them lines. When it isn't, <laughs> everyone's still being told what to do, when to do it. <laughs> Christmas is a big thing, isn't it, that we all have to go through. And it's stressful. It's You're not a happy such time. a miserable sod. You really no, are. No, but Christmas is a big, it's a big upheaval. It is a it, out of all of those special days that go on, Christmas is the one but that's. What are you doing with your time? It's the question we return to again and again. No, we why, read it. Why, you're uh, visiting your parents. You're hiring yeah. a car. You're going yeah. down the calf. It's yeah. not like you're you're taking your work away. You're doing yeah. some important neuroscience work, yeah. and we've had to take you away from that for three days. Yeah. No, but what you're I, not doing anything of any value, no, Carl. But, no, but, no. What I might want to do, but I can't because the shops are shut because you know, they want to go off and celebrate Christmas. You know, it's it's a it's an upheaval. Easter's all right. It, it comes and goes. Do you want an egg? Not really. Don't have one then. You're not forced an egg. <laughs> You're not forced an egg. I like Easter, and everyone can afford an egg. There's no one being left out. Whereas Christmas, everyone like goes back to the family and they have a big meal and all that. And there's there's a lot of poor people out there who can't do that. So it's more of a if you're going to mm. talk about religion and you know the religious sort of occasions, mm. Easter's one that I'd keep. If you plan everything. You probably won't do it in the end. Whereas again, that that as a soundbite is gobbledygook, mm. isn't it? No, what I mean is, say like um, holidays when you know they're coming, you never enjoy them as much as one when it's surprised on you. Who surprises you, someone with a holiday how can unless you, you win it on a game show? How can you really go? Bloody hell! I'm on holiday. Suzanne did it with me. She sorted it all out and booked me time off work without oh, me knowing. Oh, that's a lovely romantic gift. Oh, yeah, nice. and I went along with it and we had a great little holiday. Yeah, so, so maybe you should do something like that for her. No, she wouldn't like it as much and I won't pick the right place and I know she won't like it. You are one of these people that washes up badly so you'll never be asked again, aren't no, you? No, that's my job. That's the only job I do. Washing yeah, well, it was a... Me uh, but to be honest, that's, that's, that's doing me head in at the moment because I've outgrown the sink. <laughs> He talks about himself like a crab. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Gotta get a new sink for Carl. Why? Uh, he's outgrown it. No, just he's thirty-three now, and his knees around his head. Oh, he can't bath in that anymore. No, just my back's been playing up a bit, and I think it's because of the height of the sink. But hold well on, you haven't grown. I think I have. Well, you haven't. Bit. No, you haven't grown at thirty-three. Well, it's it's definitely something. It's just not very good. Subsidence. I don't know, I've just said to Suzanne, I said, this, this isn't as good as it used to be. It's not <laughs> this isn't as good as it used to be! <laughs> this washing up! Oh, he says he's got nothing in the flat, that's why he has to do a shop every day, because he's got nothing in the flat. It's easier that way, isn't it? You don't know what you're gonna want to eat. But that's why you get a- but d you don't have a different meal every day of the year, do you? You rotate maybe a, a dozen meals, don't you? 
so you can get in enough ingredients that any time you go to the fridge and go, oh, am I gonna have chicken? Or am I gonna have fish today? Or maybe I'll have some pasta. I do that every day. No, but well, I always come down to one of a uh, half a dozen meals. You've got a freezer. We haven't got a freezer, have we? We've only got a little fridge. Oh, you've There's got too much time There's nothing wrong with nipping to the supermarket. There's nothing wrong with that. So you've got too much time on your hands, boy. Uh, you it had one thing, you had to do one thing this year. Promote the book. Couldn't be all, bothered. Couldn't be bothered, mate. Could not be bothered. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Carl in an interview with him, I haven't seen him on the TV. Oh, he was on the TV, um, a while back on the thing called The Culture Show. Oh, yeah. Lucy too. And I'll tell you what, he was sat there, looked like a little frightened frog in a chair being interviewed, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not being funny, but his head looked fucking round. Did it look fucking round? Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally yeah. looked like a little fucking round-headed twat. Yeah, I'm doing that. And right. that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Last sailor, poor, misguided fool. Well, it's time. Well, go on. That time, isn't it? Yeah. Play go the on. jingle. Yeah. Why the van man, <laughs> Carl? <laughs> Brilliant. Recorded at great expense, that jingle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is where we just uh, hijack an idea from the Sun, which is um, White Van Man, where the Sun asks, um, in this instance, a cabbie by the look of it. Oh no, um, a fruit and veg shop owner. Ours is ours is uh, ours is slightly different because the Sun sort of like. Um, uh, pick on a perfectly normal member of the public. Exactly. So that's where we've got the, yeah. <laughs> the upper hand. Yeah. And, uh, they ask him about the, uh, you know, the hot potatoes. Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you, well, your, just your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sisson's Not asked and the probing questions? Uh, no, I thought it wore a burgundy tie on. I thought, that's it, yeah, he just had a, it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See, that, that's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving her a, a, a bit of coverage, <laughs> and showing, you know, what a, a, what, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like funeral cards and that, and s and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think you know when you send. What, what, card, what would you What would you suggest? Well, you know, um, whoopee cushion, but on the vicar's chair. What What? How would you lie with the Just little little things in the card. I mean, you're just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy, so oh, that'd be good. So when, so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card, and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe like if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah, or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why? Have, why has everyone got to be so sad about I someone agree. dying? No, what annoys me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone nan, nan dies. She was 102, and um, what you know, I mean, it's sort of like I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's I, a picture in the paper I today. I don't understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the uh, the funeral. Uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday, and there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. Well, she's she just tired that, and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just people what are we doing when their nan dies? Exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tiny tubbies? No. The Queen Mum. <laughs> oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. <laughs> it's just like, oh dear. I mean, I, I know, I'm sure, you know, I don't know much about her, I don't know if she was a great woman, and obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies, but it's like, it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing for hours upon hours to see her yeah. dying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be if you're over from Sweden, and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's like, Oh, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um... I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh... <laughs> What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. 
Are you worried about you, these? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it just uh, choosing, it, it, choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or, this is the, this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide, uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what, how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that, you know, where, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot, cause What I will us three look like in the future? If listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be, we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's no, a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought, that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but well, listen, right, because I remember when, when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So, I'm growing up on this estate and there was a, there was this woman about four houses down, right, it's a bit rough. <laughs> All right. Didn't fancy her. Oh, God, no. Right, but she had a <laughs> baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So, like, a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, did she look like? But anyone can clean up. Looked like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it place look nice. Yeah. Right? But she didn't, and. A kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did he get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Mustard on. Is using water? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? Was <laughs> <laughs> it just tied up with a bit of? <laughs> right. Um, oh, that's great. I did Big out. Jake. I'm <laughs> looking <laughs> for it. I, I did <laughs> out. So. <laughs> oh. no, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or. <laughs> 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 where did he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, where'd you get that from? I bought it, alright then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it. <laughs> open the patio door as well, I'll be- Looks like we got us a runaway. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think he you know, had a horse. Yeah, right. So that's I, why the family didn't have any money. They'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway, yeah, it's so nice to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they could not, be in the room it's next not door. Buying it is keeping it as well. Oh, well, so, I, so I was like in the car with my dad coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, okay. And uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! This, what? And when I, when I was doing it, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This like, is genius! Went, <laughs> it just keeps coming! What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? Well, wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Because the story's going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track. It's going deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created the whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is real. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Louis de Velvet Underground and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto genetically, uh, genetically modified babies. But and somehow then Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was. Because you lived on an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's right. You relevant. don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but, but what, what I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand. What, what, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be poorly. Did she have any tats? Did have any tats? I never got that close to it. Okay. All right. So, and so, who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, a daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse. Yeah, from I don't know where there was a. I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they they kept the horse in the house with. Them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long? No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No, in what there. happened was I was. Um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity, and they said you can do anything to to raise money, and they came out with all these ideas, and I thought that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget. Well, I don't know. I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good way to make a You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings of them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it. Yeah. Selling them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Just tell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut- you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they wanted to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, oh, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, cause I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Cause it's a bit rough. So, as I went- The horse went, thank god for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Save his pizza. <laughs> Save his feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> so I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where- no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. That beauty right? was on. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a central you know, heating? Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that! <laughs> no, but I was saying this the other day. And an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Covid on sixty four. Yeah. Rubbish. Exactly. Walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And you know, like homeless people, always have dogs. And yeah. she said, "Oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it." And I said, "They've got that dog is happier than most dogs, right? Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat. I mean? But other than that, <laughs> no, it does eat though. They're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse. Was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know what I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Is that the first start? Yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit. What were we talking about? It was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah, and uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right. Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen. This is you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and that. Good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in their, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but he used to run around, he used to play out till like 10 at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. Right. It was a bit. <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. no. <laughs> he used to chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. Now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? It's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can, uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. Ooh. But am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. Finally, white van man, what do you make of the fact that Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins? <laughs> 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 is, is that, that true? a concern for you? Is that true? Apparently so. Why? Don't know. Like it's easier to stack. Uh, this is what the guy in the uh, sun has said. That should be interesting. For <laughs> 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 that should be. 
<laughs> he's going on Sainsbury's abbreviated square tins. Is no, is that should be interesting for meatballs. <laughs> Right. Ricky's just oh. collapsed on the floor. Let's just play a song, Carl. I don't think even you can top that. Black level marks that occur. Whatever happened to my rock and roll. Well, near the end of the show, it's yeah. time for uh, the re education of um, Carl revisited. Mm -hmm. Still got Nick Cave to come, haven't we? Absolutely. Uh, now, Carl. You read a, a quote book. What did you learn from it? What, what, to, to some pearls of wisdom. Just g keep it down to one or two, your favourite things and why you like them. Right, well, you said, like you said, you said just pick a couple. Yeah. Right? So I wrote a couple down yeah. last night. And what, what I did, so they, so they weren't boring, right? I've sort of- Don't think uh, you can ever be boring, no, but No, 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 but what I've done, I've, I've took like different ones, so I've took a, a good one, that I think, yeah, that, that's a good quote, that was worth putting in a book. I put one that isn't really a quote, so I don't understand it. Oh one, yeah. One that isn't clever. <laughs> and um and a funny one. So a bit of variation or out, out of one book. Oh, how long did this take you? What did you do? Did you sort of like sit? About half an hour last night. And did you sit sort of like quietly at a desk or well, something? Uh, no, nah, just in the lounge with the telly turned down. Oh right. Just to give a bit of light to the room. Just sure. had it on but turned down. Have you figured out lights yet? So uh <laughs> <laughs> so the first one, never heard of him, uh, this guy called Dean Axon, right. and this is a good one, he said, the memo is written not to inform the reader, but to protect the writer. That's good, yeah, yeah. stuff, that's very good. That's yeah, it, that's... Yeah. Very, relates a lot to, you know, office life and so on. Yeah, modern world and that. Mm -hmm. Right, so then, thought, yeah, right, so I wrote that down because I liked it, and that's yeah. what he said to do. Second one, isn't really a quote, it's more of a, a poem. Okay. So how does that work? Well, yeah. let's just okay. read it, just read it. Right, well, I want, it's about suicide. Okay. Right. Razors pain ya, rivers are damp, acids stain ya, drugs cause cramp. Gun, guns aren't lawful, nooses give, gas smells awful, so you might as well live. Lovely. That, is that that's, from uh, Dorothy Parker? Uh, I tell you it what. Is, yeah. It, I hate it. I hate that. Why? I just, it's, no, it's nothing to me, that. I think that's- What, what, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. a weak, right. shallow All piece right. of well, this mock is, comedy. This is, this is why I did it in that order, cause that's what I thought. It's sort of like, it's sort of like a, it's like a zany vicar would write from living in Froome when he's right. about 55 and get it published in the- it, I hate it. Alright, so you're saying you're not a fan of Dorothy Parker's work, right? right? Now the next one, Oscar Wilde. Yeah. Right, he's known, isn't he? Yes. Look, look what he comes up with. <laughs> All art is quite useless. Well that's- what, what's up with that? Well it isn't, I did art. No, I know, but it's- go on next. But how did- how has art helped you? How has it been useful to you? It was a bit of a- it's- it's one of the only things I like doing at school. Right. Do you know what I mean? When I made that little clay man, getting it- fixing a car. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. made a clay how man can, fixing a car, I forgot about that. How- how can he- I- I think that's stupid. And especially that it's gone in a book. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Okay. It's easy to- to diss things. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's hard as you're right. Exactly right. Um, I, don't, I don't think art is useless, by the way. But then you don't have to agree or disagree with some of these things. Some of them are, you know, so that someone, some, sometimes it's just their thoughts put eloquently or poetically, isn't it? And it's just, you just know. Just to provoke a reaction as much yeah, as anything. Yeah, yeah. Mm, well. And the good one, Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, the <laughs> irony, sorry, but let's go back there. The irony is that that is art, that he, he, he was an artist, wasn't he? So, but you, you don't, okay, so you don't like Oscar Wilde, but you <laughs> prefer Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> yeah, go on. Ozzy Osbourne, crack him on this. Funny and educational. <laughs> I bit her head off a bat the other night. It was like eating a crunchy wrapped in a chamois leather. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. boy, you're right, you're right, Carl. Yeah. yeah. So, there's- What do you like about that? The way he's described what it is like- I think, yeah, if someone, I mean, that, you can imagine what it's like. Because I like crunches. Yeah. And, it's like and, a simic, yeah. and that a chamois leather's really chewy, so you, you can imagine that's like the skin. So you like and his you, you like his descriptive yeah, writing. The crunchy bit is like the bones and that. Yeah. So perfect. But you know, Carl, it's interesting because you've analysed Aussie there, and in a way, that is the first step on maybe doing a new English GCSE. Yeah, you know, you've, being you've able to said, study said what you like to and You said because it describes what about you've never eaten about yourself. Yeah, but my teacher, Mrs. Kane, if I would have come into school with, uh, you know, a quote by Aussie Osborne, she wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> really? Do you know what I mean? And that's the difference between She'd my go, group. right, Carl, get your horse and go home. <laughs> well, listen, though, we were talking about all the quotes. Yeah. Um, Neil Armstrong. Yeah. Do you know his one? Yeah. What one? Giant leap for mankind. Do you know it wasn't meant to be that? 
You know, it's, it says, um, it's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, right? Yep. It was meant to be, this is one small step for a man. Right. I yes. me, the individual, uh, on a microcosmic level, one giant leap for mankind. And he mucked it up, because if you say, this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, it, man there means man. I know, I know, I know, it's embarrassing. So he, so he, oh, so he shouldn't give people, he's not a trained actor. <laughs> That's true He's enough. more of an astronaut, to be Has honest. Has he won any awards? Uh, really? No, there are no awards. Has he buffed and nominated? Don't think so. <laughs> well, listen, right, he said another quote, as he, um, as he got back into the rocket. Have you heard about it? Go on. Well, we run out of time, and I'm just wondering why it's worth saving as a bit of a teaser for next week. <laughs> what did Neil Armstrong say as he got back into the rocket? Yeah. Is it going to be away? something like, uh, that was boring, wasn't it? <laughs> the mic's not still on, is it? Yeah. They're not still listening. Well, that's what I was saying to you. He could have said that, and it would have still not gone down. Geez. It would have still <laughs> gone down as an amazing <laughs> quote, wouldn't it? Well, listen, I, I think you should say, Carl. You tosser, I was meant to go No, first. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what we'll do, Carl. We'll squeeze it in before the end of the show, because, Ricky, you've got to play your song for the lovers. Oh, we'll just, play this. Oh. I don't think we'll fit in. We might have to save it. Don't worry, we'll see what we can do. Well, next play, week, uh, by the way, you've got Happiness Quotations, a collection of thoughtful words and beautiful paintings. I'll just give you an example of one. Happiness is a perfume you can pour on others without- you cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself. It's lovely that, isn't it? Brilliant. You can't be happy with that. Okay, this is Nick quick. Cave in the Bad Seed, uh, from the Boatman's Call. It's a beautiful song. Any song that starts off, I don't believe in the interventionist God, is alright by me. Mm. And this is Into My Arms. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, uh, Into My Arms. Well, that's it. We've run out of time. We have indeed. So no, no time for, um, Carl's quote. That'll have to come next week. Yeah, we'll save that for next time. Armstrong. Um, well, I hope you, uh, enjoyed it. Goodbye. <laughs> Alright, Rick. Come on, I'm saying a bit of cheer up here. It's not that depressing. Why, well, yeah. Sports next. You know how excited you are. Go on. You love the sport, do you? New Order and Here to Stay on XFM 104.9. Well, we're here to stay, aren't we, Steve? True enough. Well, for another four weeks anyway, then we're, uh, then we're off. The That's four right. more shows. They'll have to order a new DJ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was genius. <laughs> hey, oh, wow. oh I'm Ricky. Simple as that. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitchell, and <laughs> oh. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh man, did anyone uh, read the uh, Guardian yesterday? It was Steve's big. We, we were interviewed together. Steve I've never been interviewed before in the paper. I've certainly never had my photo in a national. We were very paper excited. Before. We loved the interview. It was talking about our top ten albums between us. We loved it. We talked really fast, like school kids. We were excited. It was a great interview, and all the way through, it was Ricky Gervais <laughs> with his writing partner, Steve Mitchell. <laughs> Stephen Mitchell. It's he not even gutted. like Merchant. He phoned me up the night before and he was gutted. And I know he fit. It's, it's awful. And it was big letters and just all the way through in the caption. And it's just like, oh god. But it's embarrassing. Do you know what I mean? It's embarrassing because it's like I was trying to get in the paper. I couldn't believe my luck. And then that just draws attention to the fact that I'm not a celebrity <laughs> and consequently they can't even remember my name. Uh, but the worst thing was that, um, uh, one of my favourite albums of all time, like I said in there, was, um, uh, Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. And I said, because, you know, I think one of the most beautiful songs ever is if you see her say hello. And of course these people were sort of transcribing it from, you know, a dictaphone. It came out, um, my, my favourite song of all time was If You See a Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> if, you see if You See a Sailor. Oh, hello. <laughs> Fruity. Oh, Bob, Bob Drillboids. Uh, <laughs> Blood on the Trab with Where's the Sailor Gone to? Uh, with Ricky Gervais and Steve LeMichling. <laughs> oh. I don't know. How, they must have thought my name was, was Mitchell all along. They obviously well, never uh, knew. Uh, the evidence is there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why. It was like they, they reported in the paper that we'd be nominated for a Sony, and it said, uh, Ricky Gervais, who hosts the breakfast show on XFM. And it's that sort of, it's just guessing. It's like, uh, presumably someone's gone, Does he host a breakfast show? Someone's gone, yeah. And that's, that's their research done. <laughs> yeah. But there was a thing about, um, uh, The Office set in Swindon. That's someone going, I'm just writing an article about The Office. Where's it set? Swindon, I think. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Even Pathetic. we research the show now and again, don't we? Yeah. Even we look things up, well, actually people phone in. Usually yeah. that fella. What's that fella's name that calls in who's not got the website? He's got a funny name. Oh. Gilbert <laughs> or something. James. Phone in if you remember, uh, uh, what his name is. Yeah. He's James. All... James that lose control. Yeah, what's his surname, though? Oh, for goodness sake, this is just uh, gonna be interesting to him! Yeah. And his friends! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah! <laughs> you remember? We better play another record. Yes. Come, oh, I'll tell you what, if Johnny you like- Johnny Mango. Mango, that's it, yeah. Now, if you like Alvis Costello's Alison, <laughs> or maybe <laughs> Rick, Freeze, Freeze, um, My Brother Jake- One of my favourites. Stay tuned. Badly Drawn Boy, Silent Sigh. Cracking tune. XFM 104.9. Maybe there'll be a few silent sighs around London on the 4th of May when, uh, that's it, we're off the air for we three are months. Yeah. Wow, you're really getting into the DJ patter today. Yeah. Brilliant.
Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. The, the <laughs> it's only taken, what is it, five years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you're finally uh, as good as Foxy. Coming up. Yes. That anecdote that Carl didn't get to last week about Neil Armstrong. <laughs> oh, right. I can't <laughs> wait. It's because he took three links telling us about the horse. Yes, of course. Of the course. horse. Think yeah. of that. Oh, yeah. Um, I went out with Carl on Thursday night. Right. Right. It was one of the most enjoyable nights. I, 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 we just, I, like, went out for about, what, five or six pints, a little crawl, and adventures happened around Carl. Yeah. And just me sitting talking to him was just incredible. I'm thinking that a competition would be win a pint with Carl. Yes. Just, you know, be they hell just of a have gift. to go for a pint and they can ask him anything they want. Yeah. He's just, <laughs> he's just great. Um, we met my friend, didn't we? Tell him all about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah. did you enjoy it as much as Ricky, Carl? Um, yeah, there was things I learned as well, like, which was, which was good. Okay. You, you know his mate Robin, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, You'll I'll, discuss that later. I'll tell you later about He's got all his near-death experiences to come. Win a pipe. And, of course, coming up, um, uh, Carl. So homework was uh, the quotes, and Carl's come up with a great idea to show that anyone can do quotes. He's he's invented a thing like faking it, where he's got two real quotes, right? right and he's made one up. Okay. And he's going to fool us. I I I bet we won't be able to. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, what was the challenge last? Look at him looking at us. What's the matter with you? It's just that before you were like, no, this is good for you, but what? now it's turning into a game. <laughs> At your expense. Yeah. yeah. Have you only just, has only just dawned on you? <laughs> Carl, well, I'm joking. It's great, honestly. It's really good. What was the Carl challenge last week? You said it, I thought we did the quotes last week. No, but, um, it, 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 I gave him a, um, a book happiness. On happiness. It's all about happiness right. and what, the, 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 you know, pursuit of happiness. Mm. And it's in sort of like quote form and everything. But, um, Carl's gonna do a couple of ones and faking it just to show. I mean, cause he's been coming up with fables all week as well now. He comes up with something, he goes, that's a fable, isn't it? <laughs> and he tells me the other, so he's, he's getting good. But now. Have you got to it all? play another track? Or have you got something, you got something oh, special? I brought in, um, uh, I saw, um, uh, Alvis Costello on Jonathan Ross a couple of weeks ago, and he did just an acoustic version of Alison. And I forgot what an amazing song it is. Mm. And it, it's just, he's, he's fantastic. He's, he's, he's the man. Listen, this is a guitar sound. It's so beautiful. My aim is true, to provide quality <laughs> entertainment <laughs> of a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Alvis Costello and his attractions, and Alison on XFM <laughs> 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Mitchell here, uh, and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Oh. I, uh, father, isn't it? He's going Right, it's going right. I um obviously been doing some acting, as you know. I mentioned it last week, doing this uh, this sort of comedy pilot. This week, Carl, you're going to be loving this. I've been doing stunts. <laughs> I swear to God, I've been doing my own stunts with the guy that once made Christopher Reeve fly as Superman, right? And I was doing stunts. I had to do a thing where I, the, my character has to, commit, has to commit suicide. <laughs> I don't think we didn't bring that up. <laughs> Were you anywhere near that horse? No. Fine. Let's carry on. <laughs> and um. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, I had to, my character has to commit suicide and he has to sort of, uh, leap off a building. Mm. So the first Don't think shot- that's a- for something for comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were up on a roof and, uh, obviously they had the crash mats and stuff and I had to kind of leap off, um, and land on the mats and stuff. And obviously I was petrified the whole time because I was wearing my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> petrified that they might get broken. So I was like not really doing it properly and kind of leaping like, like, well, you know people when they can't dive into a swimming pool and so they put that one foot out first to sort of Is break it you, Was it you that told me that, that you, you could never get into fights? No, I could never get into fights or go in a mosh pit because of my glasses. <laughs> I've missed out in life because I can't, That's because if, if I was in a fight and I say, come on then, you are, you know, and, and I was in a pub or something, they just have to whiff, whiff off the glasses, <laughs> just knock them off, I'm done for. I, I got, I love nothing. Are you really short sighted, are you? Yeah. But, if, uh, but anything's an advantage in a fight, isn't it? And the fact that they're just a blur <laughs> is bound to hamper my otherwise brilliant, you know, ninja skills. Uh, so, yeah. um, so yeah, I've never got into a fight, I've never been in a fight at all, I've never Sorry, it, been in a fight on the wire. So this was making me sort of a bit worried, um, yeah. uh, and anyway, so then I think, well fine, I've, got, I've done my stunt, and I did it, and everyone clapped, they were pleased with it, and the guy who said I was very good. So then they drive us to the next location, right, I'm thinking, I've done my stunts now. There's a crane, I think, what's going on here? Now they need to shoot me, like, I've already done the stunt where I've sort of f leapt off the building, now they've got to actually see me falling, right? So I have to get strapped in with this huge belt, and they click wires onto me, and they hoist me about 30, 40 foot into the air, on this wire, and I have to, and then they drop me at great speed, and I have to scream and shout. You know, it was partly acting. <laughs> <laughs> and, glasses um, on. Glasses. Uh, by this time, I'd managed to get some wire fixed to my glasses so they wouldn't come off my head. I assure well, they you. Was, they were stunt glasses. <laughs> they, well. were stunt they were glasses. doing stunts. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um. 
so they hoist me into there on this thing. They do a couple of sort of, uh, sort of demo versions, you know, and just to gradually ease me up higher and higher so I can become acclimatized to it. And, um, they get, they get about 30 feet up, and they've got these huge crash mats, like those great big ones you always see because stunt people have. And they set up the camera and stuff down below, and I'm, while I'm up in the air dangling there, they remove those crash mats, and they replace them with those really thin ones that you always see, like, um, teenage gymnasts using on Blue Peter. Do you know what I mean? The really yeah. thin ones they used to have at school, right? And I'm looking down at this, and I'm thinking, now, they may as well have shouted up, if you fall, you're done for, but we might be able to protect the equipment. Do you know what I mean? It was so rubbish. But you weren't gonna land on the floor, presumably. Well, the idea was that the wire would stop that. Oh, I see, but yeah. there was no safe- that, that was their safety. That was the safety net, Why did they not leave the real ones in? Because they- they had to- they, I don't know, for yeah, the shot the floor, and stuff. I they had to- uh, they right. had to be able to do it. But anyway, what was particularly joyful is one of the other actors pointed this out, right? This is the, um... <laughs> this is the health and safety statement from the stunt guys, right? And they, they obviously have to write up this health and safety statement about how they do it. And it says, We confirm that we have proper safety policies, procedures to comply with the Health and Safety Act 1974, and that we will not do anything which compromises the health, safety and welfare of your production crew, actors or members of the public. If the above situation changes, we'll advise you immediately. <laughs> I mean, if they think that maybe they do want to hurt members of the public. Look at that fat one over there, just try and hit her. Yeah. And bring him down. Don't worry about that one. Don't worry. Yeah. She can take it. She can take it. But, uh, so that reassured me, obviously, and, um, now my whole body's racked with pain. Limbs, arms, head, neck. Uh, well, unbelievable. Well, is the shot worth having? I you, mean, you, probably not. You, you'll wish you had- Do you want the cameraman whispered to me? The cameraman whispered to me, he'd probably never use it. Yeah, Steve, you'll wish you hadn't told that wimpy tale when you hear three, just three, random tales of near-death experiences that Carl told me. Right. Coming up. I mean, honestly. Really? At least you had stunt people and crash mats. Yeah. yeah and you got yeah. paid. Yeah. yeah. The things that he got up to, just through stupidity, <laughs> well. will put you to sh what? Mm. Which what what one what one of them wasn't through stupidity? Cakes. I'm already excited. The cake one. Yeah. Which one's that? Sorry, you had a near death experience involving Hold a cake. Hold on, I've got three. I've got the I've got the paper mm. round, the the snicking slate, and the the Mister Freeze. What's the cake one? Yeah, I suppose. Look at the cream cake. Oh. Yeah, right now you're record. talking in riddles. Play Can you have these next? Yeah, 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 play records. <laughs> Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Six <laughs> FM, one four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they you? should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else? Easy, Joyful. easy. Well, yeah. So uh, m me and uh, me and Carl went out uh, for a beer, and it was uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoy Start, yourself. We started yeah, off, and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin? That Robin, you learned? do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He. Uh, what I can remember is he he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get them. He never answered me. He was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. But I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about where? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah. Did he mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin... why would he get so sort of uppity about it. Well, imagine because if- it's not true. Imagine if he- it, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was- um, just met them. He tells that- he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> oh, Robin! I also told him- That's a fable. I also- I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms- yep. Was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said, tell so, you why, though. I said, so Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. Well, Steve, right, do you remember that story about th ooh, three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army, he went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever, he was messing about in the woods, um... Messing <laughs> about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? Whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something mm. on, on something, and some worm of some sort 
crawled in the in the gash. Yeah. And um, it, it was in his body and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part or something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrapped some Where the bacon. skull is? So they wrapped some bacon. <laughs> He did. Ah, that's all right. Everyone... So he's gone in by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard, the skull. There was, there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they um, stuck some bacon on his head. And As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. <laughs> It, because the worm was in in his body, and they said every you know everyone likes to smell of bacon. Including worm, even a even a Vietnamese lake worm. They <laughs> they they. Oh, they remember love remember bacon. last week? Remember last week when I said about the little fellow with the bone with no brain, and you were proved wrong. No, Please. no, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last Right, week. hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese, there wasn't a Vietnamese, there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little white maggot or some sort, <laughs> like you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the body, they strapped bacon to his head. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what, the worm or the bloke? The bloke. <laughs> oh, dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story. Um, right. Just, it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G.I. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when, And so what, the, wor the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So I this is that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Cause, right. Because in a way, you know, Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do you really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you do you do daft things like that as a kid. <laughs> right. He's the telling Ricky Gervais though. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away and he <laughs> knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you, can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it, I haven't spoke to him all week, so let me run it by him. Okay, play a record. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's- Yeah, teams. well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it, though my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually, bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, and this is called To You, it's a good track. <laughs> Um, Clute, a uh, track called To You from the, uh, Teacher's soundtrack that's also got, uh, I noticed the Electric Soft Parade, The Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder, uh, Turin Break, Smoky Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation he's looking smug because someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> Strokes, hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes, yes. So, Carl, concentrate. You go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped around the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle. Yeah, always carry some. Bit of Danish. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. Did you enjoy that interview? Not really. Why? Well, I, this is, I met a guy, funny you mention that, I met a guy when I was in France recently, and I met a guy, he wasn't a Frenchman, but he was over there, and he saw me, he was a bit drunk, and he came over and he went, Carl Pilkington's got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, and I high-fived him, we agreed. I thought, isn't that nice? <laughs> you know, uh, even when you're abroad, you can find someone oh who speaks God. sense. Yeah. And they shaved your head more? No. It's just the they way sort they... of greased it up a bit, just to get a bit more reflection off it? No, they, they put a lot of makeup on it. They said, do you want any makeup? And I said, not really. And that's when I was like at the back where they could have done it. And then I, I went and sat in the chair and there's like a live audience there. And the woman goes, no, I best do some colouring in. And it was like, le must she have been about 50, 50 people. No, no, she, she started colouring me head in. And she was like, like had some brown powder. She's 
co- doing my head, doing the top of it and stuff. And I was going, isn't that enough now? And everyone's looking and sort of laughing to themselves that I'm having my head coloured in. <laughs> I'm sure she was doodling on the top. She took longer than anyone else who she was doing. I watched, like, other people who were on Well, she's got more flesh to do. When you do usually powder someone, it stops at the forehead. You just have to go round to the fucking back. Yeah, but the camera wasn't at the back of my head. She was just kept going No, and but going. the shine, the shine for the cameras that would get in there. people's not, eyes. They've got to be careful. Health and safety, the light will bounce off into the eyes of the audience. Yeah. Them. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't happy with that anyway. So I'm not doing it again. How do you cope with this newfound, um, interest in, in you? As a person, I've got an idea, Steve. By the way, you know, but my, the, for me, I want Carl to be famous so it gets him hassle in the street. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Sure, when they see him in the yeah, street, yeah, with yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. round-headed face like a fucking orange. Yeah, right. I'm gonna do a tour um, next year, okay, called Fame, okay, and everywhere I play, if I, I hopefully play to, to millions of people in, uh, you know, I might even go to America, but I, I'll make sure at the theatres I play. Or whatever, there's a picture of Carl on the seat, right, that they can put in their window. Uh-huh. So next year, I want a picture of Carl or in every window. With. Or, yeah, yeah, or whatever. But if you can make this yourself, put Carl everywhere. So, to have you seen this bald headed twat? Please yeah. make up the posters. Just send I'll, emails to friends. Uh, absolutely. I want to see pictures. Uh, on sh- if you own a shop, put a big picture of If you just, even if you're, you know, uh, uh, your own home, your own flat, get it everywhere. Have you seen this bald headed twat? This is Carl Pilkerton. He's got a head like a fucking orange. Get it everywhere. I want to see the world papered with Carl's round head. Happy New Year. He's only gone and written it down for a whole fucking year. <laughs> that, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. This is the last one of both 2006 and uh, on any podcast for a while. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I also Carl think Carl it's the last time ever he will make uh, an entry in this diary because um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. But I found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Well, you say that, but well, let's let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. No, I have. I, I read a bit in the news about people being injured while trying to cut open avocados. Hmm. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. <laughs> if it's a hassle to get into, we'll leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided coconuts and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> The amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the joys they give. Yeah. It's the same reason I never bought a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in like the 80s. You know, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. (laughs) You've you've got to unlace them, you know? Yeah, I mean, (laughs) since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. Just the way, I, I don't understand why laces- Is it because you can't tie your laces? No, I can do it, but it's wasted time. You're I so can... lazy. Wasted time. That gives him more time to sit around and look at insects How eating biscuits. How long does it take to take off a pair of boots? Well, it's ridiculous. Seconds. He can't fit his days as it is. No, but I don't understand how some inventions sort of catch on and other things don't. But uh, this is what I mean, he's got too much time on his hands. Sitting around at home thinking, why are we not using Velcro more? <laughs> but there's why one Velcro not? manufacturer going, yes, at, at last. last. He said what needed to be said. Why don't you get it sponsored? Because you could wear a Velcro toupee. Because <laughs> that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head, pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. But no. why necessarily reduce it to a toupee? Why not some kind of carrying device? You know, he could carry goods and, uh, things around in there, sandwiches. Yeah, he doesn't look like carrying a bag. Well, what about that? A little thing you carried around, a little Velcro thing that carried a pot on your head? For, for your sort of, like, keys and trinkets and money and that. Well, no, I've, I've, I've told you about that idea that's out there but hasn't caught on as well, the, the tie. Right. The tie with loads of pockets and stuff in it. Yeah, but you've got to wear a tie. Yeah, but, th- but that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I've never <laughs> wore a tie because I always think, what's the point? It's just standing there in the way. <laughs> Can you imagine this image of Carl walking around <laughs> in his big Velcro shoes, a tie with an apple stuffed in it, <laughs> car keys, <laughs> yeah. iPod? No, but don't you think it's a good idea? Would you wear it with a shirt and collar or just a t-shirt? Um, no, wear it with a shirt. That's what I'm saying. It's an invention that will smarten up the world. Now, a tie, what does a tie do exactly? Yeah. What does it do? Nothing. Right. So I'm saying make it do something. But I'm saying don't wear it at all. Pop your keys in the trouser pocket. No, because, take a bag. Fo- because the world is getting more and more scruffier, isn't it? 
When you look I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. When you look back at, like, Victorian times and everything, everyone wore a hat. Right? They wore a tie. They wore a suit. And it was a nicer looking place to look at. When you see it on pictures, you go, what a smart world that is. Mm. Well, you can't see cholera and things on pictures, but sure. No. No, but I'm just saying it's better to try and cover it up with a bit of, you know. Cloth. Yeah. Yeah. The world looked nicer with, with more cloth. Whereas <laughs> now everyone's roaming about scruffily. So, so what I'm saying is, if we make the tie more useful and give it a purpose, it might come back and the world will look tidier. But a tie, its purpose is to look smart, really. Well, originally it was because we didn't have buttons, so it kept the collar up at the front. That was the invention. It was a useful invention, the tie. Yeah, It right. was called a tie. It tied together, okay? Yeah. So then, when we, uh, we had buttons, that we didn't really need the tie, but it was a symbol of, of smartness, like saying, I've made an effort, yeah. okay? But now... That would go away. So now you wouldn't look smart with a tie. They go, oh look, it's like a bag round his head with his with his apples and oranges and his his keys and his sticks. He's making a nest out of. So it would it would be scruffy. It would make the tie scruffy, so it would defeat the object. So now when you're carrying stuff round, I mean, crawling on all fours because you're shopping so heavy round your neck, <laughs> they'd go, look at that scruffy fucker on all fours. Oh, oh, oh look, but look, look at his lovely head of hair. <laughs> it's Velcro. <laughs> it's a hat. Yeah, well, that's the other problem, isn't it? I can't go back to a wig now. My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. It was a story <laughs> about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news though, is it? It's olds. <laughs> <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? Just reading the olds? <laughs> no, but what, what I mean is, if, if someone- Take if the you, video on of, uh, last week's news, I just want to catch up on the olds. <laughs> yeah, but, but then it's still news. If you, news is something that you don't know, isn't it? If someone tells well, that's you something- everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But, but news is information. No, and the what, key, the key with news is the word new. <laughs> No, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's, it's it is. just, it's just information, but they tell you at ten o'clock at night. It's like, what information's gone on? Bong. Here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before, because you couldn't have, because it only happened today. Bong. Yeah, but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days. It doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. Bong. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it news, though, because it's misleading. We'd get done. It's called olds. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. What I'm saying is, is that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want it's Christmas and that, I don't want to bring the tone down, but someone dies in your family. Mm. Now say if you're away on holiday, and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday, mm. and you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead, and you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news, Frank's dead. But because everyone's got over it, Time is a healer. That's what that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But yeah. But according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't matter when you uh there was an earthquake, when was it? Yesterday. Phew, that's all right then. Often the aftermath is worse than the actual event. Two, you only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, You got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right then. Doesn't make sense. No, but the world uh, but you're is- You're not- you're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset personally. It wouldn't make any difference when you- when they told you. Yeah, but it- it is everyone else's emotions that- that make it worse, I think. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? What about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a- I don't like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in. I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be useful it might to be know important it. important information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Yeah, I, I don't know if I like it. It's, it's sirens, you see, I don't like sirens, do I? I've, I've said to you, I think it's a, a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it- There's like a I voice. Said, Hiya! Oh, could you just move out of the way well, It can be us. anything, as long as we know- it can be a chicken noise. But as long as you know oh, that's, that's chicken not gonna noise- that's freak people out. <laughs> no, but it sort of makes you smile, but you'd- you'd go, oh, let's get what, out of the way. What, you're cycling along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken behind you? And you smile, because you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> there's something <laughs> clucking in my way. Do 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 do
Go into my mum and dad's today. Oh. Uh, I'll cut to the chase, Rick. They basically, it's like, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh, Jesus I'll Christ. skip past that, because it yeah. takes fucking forever. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad, his mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just pop that <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> just pop that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose mum was a witch. <laughs> whose man was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <coughs> because it probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't, she knows she's gonna die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out, put it into perspective for her. You <laughs> will be dead when this happens, don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. You know, everyone's got to fill that little <coughs> worry, worry hole with worries, and that's it. Worry hole. Everyone's got to we've fill the worry hole with worries. We've got to assume that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. I, I, feel feel I love the fact that people, you know, uh, doctors in the million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry <laughs> hole. <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Suzanne and I decided to sleep tops and tails because it made me get a bit more room. My dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes, <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm -hmm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roll Dowl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think a anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what, how long that is, but he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in your nut. Is he, is he, someone took his brain out of his worry hole? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! He saw the mattress and all. So we decide to sleep tops and tails. It just gets stranger. It's so strange! Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the, with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What, a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been, yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some, some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So he's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable. Oh, hey, man alive. It's like- Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our, uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of, you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So, we bought a bed, right, but there's that rip-off thing with beds where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it, mm. which I've never understood that. Because it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed. It's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go there. You go. Well, that seems cheap. Well, there's no engine in it. So we bought this. We bought this, like you know, uh, flat, what have you? And we bought the bed, and then uh, like, oh, we haven't got a mattress. So my dad got one from Uncle Skip. Alf. <laughs> no, well, from that Uncle Alf fella, because he had one in his van that he used to use now and again if he was like <laughs> travelling round. He'd just keep in the in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke who drove around in a van with a mattress in the back. So Uncle Alf. Place. So Uncle Alf, right? It, well, tell me about Uncle Alf. Well, you know about him. He's the one who slept in a dinghy. He's the one because his mattress was in his <laughs> car. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't he go? Oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> blow up the dinghy. I'm not going to go out and get the not at this time of night. So mm. anyway, <laughs> me, me dad got me got me his mattress and uh, and it just stunk of diesel. <laughs> And Suzanne was like, oh, I'm not happy with this, and I think she realised sort of what sort of family- She got herself into. Stuff. Wow, she landed on her feet when she S got you. So now she? she's always a bit touchy about, you know, mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> the fire engines were too late. No, <laughs> no, no one got out of the way because they were laughing so much. <laughs> The mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. The old man down the road. Yeah. The old woman next door whose mum's a witch. <laughs> Uncle Alf who lives in a dinky. <laughs> this is like, it's not a real place. It's like fucking it's Narnia. A, it's a children's TV <laughs> program. Unbelievable. Oh, God. Oh, just all of them there on this broken mattress trying to find the golden <laughs> ticket. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God.
The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with them and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> <laughs> it's not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not playing with them, is he? Well, he's, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think he should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but, but uh, that's just it, isn't it? It's like, you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't get on. And it's the same with them. Don't have bees. I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the, the only thing he does is the honey. And it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Bees are kept for a very good reason, aren't they? What? For honey. Yeah, no, but like I say, you can buy honey for next to nothing. Where do you think- what do you mean? But wh where does the honey come from that you buy? Yeah, from- from some proper bee farm. Let yeah. them do it. All he's doing, he's not making loads of pots of honey. Mm. He's looking after himself. And the thing with honey is it doesn't go off either. No, it doesn't, no. So- so, get ten bees. Yeah. Get the honey made, kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you eat the honey, that's the point. Yeah, I know, but it that's doesn't honey. You can't eat it and then it's still there in the jar. It's not magical. Maybe in your world, no. your un Uncle Fred had that never-ending jar of honey. But how much honey do you eat? What I'm saying is, it's one of them things in it that you buy and you can move into a new house, buy some honey, and when you leave that house, that honey's still in the cupboard. You don't <laughs> eat that much of it. So get ten bees, get your honey's worth. Ten bees! Imagine keeping ten bees! Well just get them to do- do the graft. If you got loads of bees, they're not all pulling the weight, are they? Cause they'll go, well I'm not doing any, cause I'll leave it to the others. No! So if you've got ten bees, y you know that none of them are pulling the weight if there's no honey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no! They don't- no! It's not a workhouse. Bees <laughs> don't knock around saying, ah, oh, I've got a bad back. Anyway, back to uh, this reading from the twits. <laughs> The news covered a story about a fish that knocked about 400 million years ago. Mm. It was 33 feet long and had a jaw strong enough to eat a shark in one go. Mm. All the dangerous stuff seems to die out, and yet things that you think wouldn't stand a chance, like worms, are still here, yet they have no legs or eyes. I saw a future human in the news article the other month about the future woman. She had three breasts. They looked all right. Well, no, that's not- I, I, I can't see how that's gonna ever evolve. No, well they say about how, um, about evolving and that, I read that, um, there's gonna be ugly people. People are starting to go ugly. Yeah, they're still gonna have bilateral symmetry, I imagine. I, I don't know what that means, but well, I'll, tell well. you, I'll tell you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're talking about, like, people who are just like, you know, you look at them and you go, oh, what kind of state of that, right? Mm. And it'll get to a point when we're all so ugly that no one will have it away and we're just gonna die out. Well, that's not true either. <laughs> that's not true either. That, that is the biggest worry. Well, no, so- That's the world's so, biggest so worry. So as we evolve and we change, uh, our mindset doesn't change. We're still going, oh, I wish we'd- I wish we looked like they did a million years ago. I don't fancy anything. No, but look at, um, look how things do change. But why are we all gonna get ugly? I don't understand. It's just the air and stuff, isn't it? It's just, um- The air? Or yeah, the just, hair? you know, the, the air that we breathe and stuff mm. and, uh, the food we eat. Everything's changing, and we're not going to look that healthy, and uh, we're just all going to go ugly. You've only got to look at some stuff that's in the sea, and you think, look at the state of that. What's and that's because with the human evolution. But, but the stuff in the sea is still longer. propagating. Yeah, but they've been around longer than us. But it's still reproducing, so your theory falls down. But they're deep down, aren't they, in the dark, so they probably can't see what they're having it away with. <laughs> If they were up on the outside, they'd have died out ages ago. Why? Because they wouldn't fancy the other stonefish or Yeah, because they're really sea slug. odd looking. I can't remember the name. I think it was a viper or something. It's the, it was just a head. But Carl, a the fish reason- that's just a head. <laughs> it was well ugly. Watched a programme about the twins this morning. It was filmed 16 years ago. They are mental. They did everything together, including the vacking up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, <laughs> I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat. just someone I've been sort of working with. Do you mate of yours? He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're gonna have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. Same rule with women. <laughs> I don't even normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. No, if you're gonna have something new, make it- make a change. It's like that fella who was going out with a woman and then left her and went out with a twin sister. 
Not worth it. <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? Because it's exactly the same model. I watched the final of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It was between singer Jason Donovan, singer Mylene Class, and singer Matt out of a boy band. I had my money on Donovan, but Matt won it. I think it was because of his last task. He ate a fish eye, some grubs, a big fat insect that they have on every year, a crocodile knob, and a kangaroo anus. I feel like That's we've uh, we've we've come there, Rick, to to where we entered. It was this sense. time last year when we first started the podcast that um we were talking about I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And you coined the famous phrase, I could eat a knob at night. Yeah. So it's full circle, it's just, the, the, the last series, uh, finished recently. And it was astounding that he ate a crocodile knob, he ate a crocodile eye, he chewed up and swallowed a kangaroo's anus, which I, I, to be honest, I didn't know was a food stuff. Could you eat any of that? Um, if I had to eat any of them, it would have to be the anus. What, really? Yeah, more than the other stuff. I couldn't eat anything that's still alive. No, I agree. Uh, I couldn't eat any of that. I, bit I don't know under what circumstances I'd have to go, right, that's it now, we're not going to survive, the ship isn't coming, there is nothing on this um, island I can eat, give me the, the cat crocodile's penis. So it wouldn't bother me. Wouldn't I, wouldn't, I could eat anything. I could do almost all of the challenges on that programme, but I couldn't cope in the camp. I couldn't cope with the lack of food and the uncomfortable bed. That's all that would do my head, and I'd drive people spare, whinging and complaining. I, I couldn't cope with any aspect of it except the physical challenges. I couldn't cope with sleeping with people snoring, the, uh, things crawling over you, uh, oh, I'm not, 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 not so squeamish about that, like snakes and things, that's alright. But the eating would, is, is ridiculous. It's out of the question to eat a worm or a grub. I, oh. It doesn't concern me. I don't know why it's, I don't see really what the difference in it. The texture's probably the same as lots of other things. What would hunger do to you, though, do you think? Would you think I would change? Do you think, if it really was a choice, if someone said, and I knew I would die if I didn't eat worms. I think that... you would, yes. I think you'd complain and you'd whinge for a while and you'd try and put it off and you'd hope a ship would turn up. But when it didn't, you'd start chowing down on a bit of uh, crocodile anus. But then where's the rest of the crocodile? Well, yeah, that's I a good point. I say he's been eating that. <laughs> How come I've got this? <laughs> you know, you're meant to, you know, work together as a team in bad time and yet I'm being handed an anus. Forget it. Let me starve. Well, thanks for listening. That was the, uh, the Christmas podcast. Um, we should say the winner of the last competition we did. Um, they can win the, um, the podcast book and, uh, Flanimals and um, the extras book that's out still available, all available, and the CD, the three, the, the three CD set of the, yeah, of the best yeah, of the podcast, yeah, is that right? The, series the, one, a brand new. hour. if you haven't got that, get out. Maybe you've got some record tokens. Yeah, if you've got record tokens or book tokens, those are the perfect uh, things to spend them on. Or fifty pounds from your auntie. Exactly. Don't go and buy one of those. Um, and the winner was uh, Stephanie Prowl from the Wirral. Well done, Steph. Well done. Well. Thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. That's the end. That's the end of the Christmas podcast and the end of this uh, this team for a little while. Yeah. It's been great. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye and Happy New Year. And goodbye from Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. That was all right, wasn't it? Yeah, it's good. It's all right. What um, are you doing now? You got time for a coffee or something? I can't now. I'm going to the, um, you know, the orphanage for uh, terminally ill kids. Oh yeah. I'm going down there, I'll go down there every Christmas and see what they entertain themselves. Oh well, yeah. I bet that's lovely for them. Yeah, no, I've uh, actually written a song I'm going to perform and they, they see The Office and see that I sing and that. I've, uh, You've written a song for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, could we hear a bit? I mean, what? I don't want to put you on the spot, but have no, you got, I, you got sorry, the guitar there, is it? Yeah. Um, I wrote this for a, a kid, he's a brave little guy, he's only about ten, but um, uh, it's, just, it's heartbreaking and he's... Uh, Don't cry, it's Christmas Santa's coming soon Though you ain't got a mommy or daddy Santa still loves you And he's riding on his reindeer To trample down the gloom So don't cry, it's Christmas Santa's coming soon Don't 
cry. It's Christmas. Santa's feeling kind, though you know you'll never see him. He's not just in your mind, and it's not that he's invisible. It's because you're going blind, so don't cry. It's Christmas. Santa's feeling kind. Don't cry. It's Christmas. Santa's on his way. Though he's got a billion children, and he's only got one day. You've got slightly less than that. If I were you, I'd pray. But don't cry. It's Christmas, and it sounds a little gay. Why is that be quite moving for everyone? Yeah, I'm just, I would. Mean, I just. I would ask you now to not play that song. Oh, no, too late now, they're expecting me. But I d I'm not but sure it's going to be as well received no, as you perhaps hope. I think that's better than any gift, and I don't really want to give gifts because they're expensive. Sure. Good advice, <laughs> lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh, well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they'd do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying, like a pig in, you know, I, I loved it, it was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He nearly said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right, so, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's in a bit in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions, because he's exactly. a producer, <laughs> so technically oh. that twat's in charge, yep. go on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, some chocolate biscuits, and, uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. So, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. It's <laughs> like feral children. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <gasps> <gasps> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it was, it, what did you sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? <laughs> so, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yes. Yeah. So well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Right down it, yeah. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? What, so I what was like, your oh. shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh god, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd eat. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so f f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh god, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I've got like a small throat. But, <laughs> but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, f a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. Oh, <laughs> so, so anyway, she's going, oh god, what's he picked up on it now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, he hit, his, hit his nose with a stick. So I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my me, me dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away and he'd gone his to- His share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever, <laughs> in a lounge. And I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And uh, my dad comes in and, and sort of starts shouting at me saying that's what you get for being greedy. <laughs> he didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, certainly. So he's there like that and my mum's going, oh look at him, and my lips were going purple and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And uh, you know, winded me and it came up and I was alright. What, the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, you see, that's what I don't understand. Cause, 
No, no, just nothing it, there. No, I mean, just a little bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it. So it went down the, the sort of like your epiglottis. It went down the wrong way. Like it went into your air canal instead of your so throat. And it, it sort of it. It, it sort of spasms, and that's the that's the fear. You just got to calm it down and relax. So, so in time, I would have been alright. Yeah, anyway. um, well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's so so so, so, so that's hang on. So, but, but, so no, no, no. But the weird thing is, like for like three days after that, I felt like a sort of a uh, special person. <laughs> I was I went to school. Oh, I did, that? I'm saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> Yeah. I went- I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't, like, wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days. Turn everything <laughs> yeah, in the Yeah, care. exactly. I'd After have... three days, you thought, screw it. Yeah, well, did, did the quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. But yeah. have you ever had that, where you've, like, felt like I've been given another chance here? Mm. Right, next that one. That's Popsicle. That's Popsicle Hell, we call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right. Can I ask very quickly, did your life flash before your eyes, like they say it did? No, I just sort of went really calm and like, I'm ready for this now. Right. I wasn't bothered, do you know what I mean? I you had no scared. regrets? No. No. Um, it was weird. It was really weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you oh. know, you, you, <laughs> you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. <laughs> just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're spreading information well, yeah, to people, yeah, vital information. Yeah, giving a service, yeah. and no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike, it's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's riding <laughs> around. <laughs> I can't. Oh, so, <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so I anyway, I, I loved it, and even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four, and, uh, go and do the round, and, um... Why'd you get a bar pass for? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at 5.30, so I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then, then go, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah, so is it a good job or not? Go so 4.30 4 I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow, I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it, I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold, they had like a big anorak on, with the fur on, and like waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag, and uh, I went downstairs to get out, and tried to open the door, and it was locked. I thought, oh, God, so, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out, so I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out of the window, and I, I, I'm like, trying to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, the yeah, little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding onto the, like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, he, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing, a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just that hold on for your day life and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't then, he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's at right. that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so- And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! Pink Panther. Hurry up! Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. Yeah. And I would have, you know, that would have been nasty for Fel fell to the concrete pegging, sure. so. Well, and, uh, there's, more, there's more to come. Should we play a record and come mm. back to this? Because he's got more. Oh yeah, no, 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 no there, there must no, be one no, of them no. where you did fall on your head. This is the one I'm waiting for. 
There's gotta be one. That was explained so much. Yeah. I nearly did. Nearly brought me back. Jeez. Once. My dad said, I bet I can't kick me out. And I said, I bet I can. And, uh, I, <laughs> I don't remember this. You didn't tell me this one. You, you, no, I bet you can what? I was in the garden, summer's day, and uh, it was that era when, like, doing kung fu and all that was really popular. Sure. And I was, like, messing about in the garden, punching the tree and, and stuff. <laughs> and my dad said- <laughs> oh, What a kid he must have been! My dad said, I bet you can't kick your height. Kick uh, your height? What, yeah, you mean yeah. kick as high as yourself? Yeah. yeah, so I must have been, like, five foot or something yeah. then. And, uh, I said, of course I can. So I bet you can't. But instead of doing it on the grass, I did it on, like, the, the concrete bit. <laughs> Kicked it. Actually did it. I went, there you go! But then, like- Get me foot down quick enough and land oh, on Oh, you, you pause to- pause to say there, I've done it. Yeah. As opposed to putting your foot back on the ground. And, uh, landed on me back and uh, I- I'd still get back trouble now. Do you? Cause you say that, don't you? So, he's- I'll uh, uh, just cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well I don't check my balls. <laughs> Right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check don't your like balls? the feel. Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> right. Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track, let's come back to it. Oh, right, I've brought in this, uh, this is, uh, free, um, you know, uh, you'll know from the Jeans commercial. Yeah, all right now. Long time ago, yeah. all right now, yeah. But this is a great little track. This is, uh, My Brother Jack. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas two times, XFM 104.9, into the last hour. Yeah. And then three shows to go. That's true enough. Until we're off the air. I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> With him, Steve Merchant. Carl. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go and tell you. Um, you we we cut short last week, weren't we? You you had a you had an amazing story about Neil Armstrong, didn't you? Well, we've been doing quotes, haven't we? Like famous quotes. Sure. Yes. I've you know gone down in history. Yeah. And um, I was saying you know quotes don't really matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more the situation that you're in than than the quote itself. Go on. So like Neil Armstrong, yeah. if he'd have said. What? Um, I, you know. Tie bacon round your head. I'm as happy as a pig in dust. Yeah, that would have yeah. still gone down in history as like being the thing that Neil Armstrong said, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But. Space is driven in mental, probably. But, but, been, yeah. but, 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 but he chose to say something <laughs> profound and yeah. meaningful, uh, to uh, befit the situation. It's, well, he got it wrong, actually. It's, uh, uh, a small, small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, but he was meant to say- yeah, We discussed this last week, well, yeah, yeah. showing off. Well, no, but people might not have listened last week. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, matter. I can't imagine well, people- we better tell them every week, then. Yeah, but uh, he said, uh, he should have said, this is one, uh, small step for a man. Yeah. But anyway, he had a good effort, and that's quite- And, and that's, that's an example of, and, of what I'm saying. The fact yeah. that he got it wrong, but it still went down in history. Right. But anyway, the bit that, uh, and it didn't happen anyway, did it? What do you mean it didn't happen anyway? That's what a lot of people say. That no one's actually been on the moon. Ah, yes, of course. They they filmed it in Teddington Studios. Well, they were saying something about there was shadow on the film and you wouldn't get a shadow on the film. And uh, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things. You know, these people that you always quote as they. <laughs> Who are they? Are, are they living in jars? Are they little fellas in jars? Look. Go on. You know, do they appear to you in dreams? I've spoken <laughs> to different people about it, and there's loads of little things that if you watch that program, that you know, of of them being on the moon, there is no way they could have done it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> done. Fine. Yeah. Done. Anyway. That's put to bed. Yeah. But Good. anyway, as he was getting back in the spaceship on the moon, or whether it be a TV studio, yeah. he said, uh, "Good luck, Mr. Croucher." Right. Have you heard this? No. And the reason he said that was because when he was a young kid, and he was pl I think it was Croucher, but when he was playing as a young kid in, in his garden, he was playing baseball with his mate, <laughs> and he chucked the ball to his mate, and his mate hit the ball, and the ball went over the fence to the next door neighbour, right? So he goes, right, I'll have to snip over and get the ball. And as he was getting the ball, the window was open to his neighbour's house, and he heard, like, the woman shouting at her husband, saying, I'm not going to be giving you, uh, a bit rude, so if you've got a kid in the car or whatever, turn it down. What, yeah, that's covered that, yeah. Right, um. Genius. I'm not, I'm not, um, no matter how many times you ask me, I'm not going to be giving you oral sex. <coughs> the day I do that, man would have walked on the moon. 
Right. right. Yeah. He grows up, he gets on the moon, and he remembers all that story, and as he gets back in the spaceship he says, good luck Mr. Croucher. <laughs> now, do you know, now we'll have to say, I've heard that story before, but when I heard it, the woman said, the, 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 the day I give you a blowjob is the day the boy next door walks on the moon. Which makes it all the more profane Impossible. and enjoyable. Yeah, and unlikely. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard the same story, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Look how pleased he is. I love that. Right, so not only have you remembered that anecdote, which may or may not be true, but of course you've also proven the that- The day uh, I give you a job, even... that kid in the garden is probably gonna walk on the moon and say something about <laughs> giant leaps. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, you must have heard the thing that it never actually happened. Yes, we've all heard yeah. it. We've all dismissed it as nonsense. <laughs> and moved on. Yeah. Yeah. And got on with our lives. Right, Carl. What? Should we do uh, White Van Man? Oh, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't prepare me for that. We better play a track and then I'll uh, okay. it, I'll fish out the newspaper and stuff. Oh, oh this is uh, oh, this is a good little um, a little bootleg track here from um, uh, Meats and Poultry. Here they've um, mixed um, um, A with uh, Outcast. Right. Of course, it's great. Is it highly illegal? It is. So people shouldn't rush to their tape machines now and press okay. Play so record. whatever you do, don't don't record this now if you're recording. Hold on, don't say anything. All well, that bootleg's going into the name of. Uh, um, nothing, Miss Jackson, I think, by, uh, Meats and Poultry. So there you go. I do love these bootleg things, because they're so pointless, but they're so enjoyable. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's fun to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're they're, really they're, good they're fun. great. But, um, not as much fun as White Van Carl. White Van Carl, absolutely. Um, do you want to explain the premise? Well, um, we take some uh, the son asks someone else and ask Carl. It's simple as that. That's the right. son of just taken a normal person, we flipped it. <laughs> We're gonna ask Carl the same questions about the week's news. Yeah, just basically your opinions, Carl, as ever. Um, um, what do you make of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot? Is this a uh, big concern for you? No, nah, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, cause you know, to, to like, be in the World Cup is like the main thing for him, isn't it? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and, uh, I don't think he'll give up, I reckon he'll still turn up, uh, he'll be alright, and, uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You know I like David, I'm not gonna slag him off. <laughs> what <laughs> <is> <laughs> <words>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says that like he knows him. <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. But, um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday, I think maybe th maybe Thursday, uh, The Sun printed a big picture of, uh, David's, uh, foot mm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you, do you believe in that? No. Do you have any belief in that? No, you're going down the old, like, you're a gallery, aren't you? Mm, sure. And it's, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, it's nice effort and everything. It sort of cheers everyone up. Hold no. on. <clears throat> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and um, licking toads. How, uh, wh why, why is that any more stupid and all those things? It just, it, it's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, what about this then? There's, uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like, uh, make of that? it's a huge thing and you just, you, you live on it and it's, I mean, in theory. How big, how big is it? It's, um, it's mental. Do you it's know like huge a like town in the centre. Do you know how like people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger and, yeah. No, but actual line is a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the biggest thing, yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 God! <laughs> oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but you know That's what I mean. Right. It was like we're, a, we're thinking of moving. We're seeing yeah. the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer <laughs> area. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. <laughs> oh God! Oh, that's they fantastic. They steal your tires. That ship's so big that was rough areas. Oh, how how big is this one that, that you're talking about? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't give me the spe specifications here, but they stay huge. huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's it's that thing with um. Uh, it's obviously marketing, but um, they're gonna um. Uh, solve uh, the uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I can see that because I mean, <laughs> think about it, right? I've been talking to Ricky about it. I was open to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the all the wasted space, like with the Thames. All it's doing is like collecting crisp packets and stuff and yeah. coke cans, and people have to clean it up. Whereas if you think if you got a load of boats on there, yeah, problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you live Problem on a solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Bergeron? Noah. 
<laughs> Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat. I think it's quite- was That was a shoestring. No, I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> no, uh, I'd like to see you, um, living in, in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it, it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and it's gonna be more water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because that's that, that's, that's, that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. is melting? Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they said, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube and it's gonna freeze it up again. Do you, are you with me? Not no. really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube. Yeah. The size of the Empire State Building. Yeah. Stick it in the water. Yeah. It's gonna make, uh, that, it's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? Well, it no, uh, only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it, it will freeze this... up. The water's well, gonna get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put, when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice not, if you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, <laughs> it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm, that, you see, that I'm using my fables. Imagine the world. <laughs> Use your brain instead! Imagine the world, imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's, we're all right, I don't know why everyone's <laughs> worrying. Oh, guys, God. thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Should we play some more music and then come back to work? Yeah, this is, this, this is better this, than ever. This is this dynamite this week. <laughs> Hi, Ninja, on XFM 104.9. We're doing White Van Carl. Got another one there? Uh, well, it's just uh, another, your thoughts really on uh, the Queen Mum's uh, very British send off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a, I, I don't quite understand why there was so many people there, um, who were like getting really upset, do you know what I mean, really upset, crying and stuff and, you know, you can lose someone who's r like related to you and you don't, you don't cry like that, you sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff and, and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the queue thing, it was, wasn't it like miles long and stuff? Yeah. It was, yeah. Right, I was sat watching this, we see- Twelve Superman. hours queuing. Yeah. It never got to and twelve hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, but how you know. long is a queue when they're just like you know walking along? Think how far you can sort of like st you know stagger in twelve hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. God. Yeah, but again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have. It's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they use their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done. Remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right. Um. And don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? <laughs> yes, they, they cut him up, yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well, they cut up Che in order to try and, um, would they, you, you, you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and trace other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as, as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the, the people, like, one to... Yeah, uh, my, my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, you know, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to, well, to a make him like a martyr. A little bit like that. I've, like, I six can cues, see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think, I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. <laughs> and it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand. Can I just head. say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to, to cut down the queues. So don't phone in, he's not suggesting we should have done this, he genuinely well, he is, is. is, well, but I mean he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or, or, you know, he thinks this is a good idea, so. Can just I just throw a thought to do with Che Guevara, who was like a, a powerful man who did a lot for the world and what yeah, have you? Yeah, yeah. And. Have you, are you aware that I, li I feel slightly responsible for this because, have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. 
Okay. Steve, next one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues. Each could see each hip she had. <laughs> That's true enough. Because she's, she's had about nine of them. Yeah. So it'd just be, uh, uh, if you want to see the whole body, it's 12 hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips. Here's another suggestion for you, I just <laughs> thought. Right? <laughs> but instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley? <laughs> And wheeler past everyone else. Running. So <laughs> yeah, you could have you could have some students on rag week and they can combine <laughs> it. But like when they're always pushing a bed. Yeah. You know, they could just run it along oh. the queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be fantastic. That, that'd be disrespectful. <laughs> right, as opposed to the chopping up. So sure. Right. Right. But just just an idea. Just I apologize now. Anyone yeah, yeah. offended? Anyone offended, I'm sorry. But yeah. Okay, finally, um this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low apparently at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press now that she's had a child. That's a good place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elton John's house. Yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with Elton John. Yeah, don't they? Every celebrity. Why did he pop into Elton John's house? What is he running into some sort but of But it was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict, he went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and it was the Elton other fellow that went there as well, was someone to you know, to recuperate and uh, cry shoulder to cry on. <laughs> is, he, is he giving out false yeah. f passports? I like, don't know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of, you know, I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but, you know, uh, maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you think? I think it's just genuine oh. mates with him. I think he's I just like so. a friendly I bloke. Think she's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's <laughs> part of the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> High five, Carl. That was a genuine joke from Carl there. And he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> Oh, that was no, my man. I agree with you. Why? Why can't she just go around to her mum and dad's or something rather than Elton John, where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's <laughs> the point, isn't it? Yeah. So that was good. Yeah. Very good. Oh. Yeah. Right. What music we got? We got uh, a bit of flaming lips. Flaming lips. Excellent. There's the, the classic race for the prize. Should have been a big hit. Never was. Sadly. Sadly. The Flaming Lips and Race for the Prize. Just playing that rip for everyone who emails us thing. We get a lot of emails every week, but uh, obviously don't really respond to them because we're very lazy people. But uh, we obviously appreciate it. And I play that particularly for uh, Claire, who's emailed in saying uh, her friend Sarah Prosser would like some Beatles. We're not going to play the Beatles this week, but uh, Sarah apparently loves us more than words can express. More than Carl could express. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to stop you there. Do you want to <laughs> Spread your love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Mitchell. <laughs> and now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's, it's the re education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to, or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film. You'll know what I mean. Um, uh, and uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff and general well being. He's not a big happiness uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, yeah. the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that program on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um, <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel yeah. 4. You're just gonna get yeah, a bucket on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, come in, come call. in. Yeah. TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Alright? <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then, go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine, and we'll sure. see how it goes. Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm l I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know. <laughs> Don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, no, no we, we know. We know. We can't there. see. Yeah, Shall yeah. I call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on. Okay. In. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh God, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Well, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point, no, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put with the rain. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright. Alright, yeah. Okay, no. Nope. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> <laughs> Cat food, go on. He stinks of it. <laughs> but 
if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Imagine they're faking it. Imagine their faces when he says that. And they're going, oh my God. Oh, Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that's just amazing, Carl. Just read them again. Two, two were real, one was fake. Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is, uh, nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, I swear um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put it with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yeah. make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with a rain and the rainbow, but well, that's why good. do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, even, well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so, see, so I, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at? Uh, I, I kind of thought... Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, bigger. Well, no, the way I... I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow, rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on, what, I've what, used what, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So, like, um... My girlfriend, yeah. Um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff. You got to feed it. But because you love it, you go well. You know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes, and then I can like squeeze its head later and give it a little. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Can we can we go back? You know, stroke its head and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry, it was a bit of a slip, was it? <laughs> Squeeze its little head. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but that's Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> No, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> a bit of a nutter! And he, he came up with the Life is a Box of Chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you'd say, oh, yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> No, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, Obviously, planning to get out. <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on his mind, and it's <laughs> the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the like the lid ripped up a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. he's got nothing else to think about. <laughs> and I'll be looking up there. Yeah, and it's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I could have eaten me down the market. <laughs> Well... Oh! Oh, God! Are they dangerous? Could I just say something? Are they dangerous? I think the salamander's thinking exactly the same things as you. I mean, to look at you, you've got the same expression on your face. You know what I mean? Uh, you're dressed in green as well. He's, you've got a little round sort of Hamburglar-type head, <laughs> like the salamander. Very similar. And yet you, you know, you, I think, and you bonded with it, didn't you? 
You yeah, would've... but I, I probably would have tried to get out, but my little paper round bag would just hang on the spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, can we have more nepotism on the show? I know Go that on. we uh, did that earlier with the uh, teacher. We haven't got long, have we? We yeah. have my uh, housemate. You remember I was working out with him last week to uh, head in from Big Brother's dance exercise video. That's just frightening. Yeah, we, we, we've we've kind of let that slip a little bit. I've got to be honest. But anyway, he's joined this band. They're called uh, Fujia and Miyagi. Slightly difficult to pronounce. But uh, anyway, this is a track that I think has been getting some play by uh, Nick Luscombe and John Kennedy on XFM. They got a gig this week at the pool on Curtain Road. Uh, that's 18th of April Thursday. Uh, let's play it. Because Sal got a fridge freezer for Sal. 400 quid or nearest offer. <laughs> Fujia and Miyagi performing live uh, Thursday the 18th of April uh, at the pool on Curtain Road. Admission is free, Rick. So you'll, I imagine you'll be heading down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. Well, I've enjoyed this show. Yeah, it's been a good one. It's great. It's been great. Carl, any more? I'll oh, tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about. Well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to uh, sort of do do your bit for the local area. Oh God. By taking the. Uh, the yeah. forest, the forest yeah. gump yeah. people to to Blackpool. Yeah, is that what they're called now? The forest gump people. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> for them to <laughs> refer to a like? mini bus with <laughs> exactly. uh, life is a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly. dot com. Well, oh. Forest gump type. Uh, it yeah. must be. So you work with these people. It these was pe a, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The people with learning difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so he got five of them in the uh, in the cab. Yeah. And he had to go to Blackpool, and four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff. But there was one who was just causing loads of trouble, and he couldn't control him. Oh, and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's it's not good for them. It stresses them out, and and you could end up with a bit. Thanks, Doctor Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now. And he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool, and um, he took the one out that was causing problems, and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. He oh, did what? God. Oh, he God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin. He was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> Can you stop saying it? <laughs> Him? Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked him <laughs> up, and it, he was fine. He had a good. What time. he left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool? No, he left him there not not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. <laughs> one of those one. What he tied him up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella. And like he managed to get him in, so his arms were down the side like that. So it was he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel so <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but anyway, that's I didn't really want to talk about it. You just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you did, do his you know family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> <What? laughs> he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus, <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall, and yeah. it was miles away. And um, he took him there. There was no problem. About about ten old women in a in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble. <laughs> 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 so he pulled over. It. <laughs> no, right. So he took him there. Uh, Everything's fine. He dropped him off. They had a lovely night. Yeah. Right. They had a lovely night. Won a bit of cash. Coming back, it's a bit of a late night, and they all started moaning at him, going, "I want to be dropped off here. Take me there. I want to be dropped off first. I've got to get up early. Blah blah. You know, my husband's expecting me. I'm already late. Take me here first. Take me there. And he just pulled up. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, said, get out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he made them get out, and they all called for taxis. <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking them home in the minibus, and he got the sack. Well, a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I want to be dropped off first, take me here first, don't you? Yeah, so he acts like a madman. <laughs> 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 good. Oh, that was all right, great. We've got, uh, we've got a crack on, haven't we, really? We got, Says uh, so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nick Drake, a song for the ladies this week from the album Brighter Later at the time of a city clock. That's Goodbye. it. Yeah, Goodbye. See you next time. Bye. Good Fortune, PJ Harvey on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, Steve, Carl. Um, I've got a real one for you. Uh, this is a logic question, not a stupid one. Um, just very quickly. Um, uh, ten, uh, uh, black balls in a bag and ten white balls in a bag, mm. yeah. How many balls do you have to pull out to ensure you've got a pair of the same colour? 
Um, well, what's stopping you putting your hand in and pulling out? Oh, Jesus. Four. Four, um... Because I asked for the minimum number. So what's- well, how many do you have to pull out to ensure you've got a pair? That doesn't- doesn't say all of them, that'll right. ensure it. No, what's it, the minimum number you have 11, to pull out? Eleven. Because you- you- if- if the- Why do you need eleven? What? Because- so there's, there's, there's ten black balls, ten yeah. white balls, yeah? Yeah. Say if you're- f for some reason, you pulled out all the ten black balls. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You'd have a pair, wouldn't you? You'd have a pair- After the first two? Yeah. So what's the minimum number you have to pull out to two, ensure- Two. No, because you might pull a white one and a black one. Yeah, but- I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Sometimes I get that impression, the way you look at me like Helen from Big Brother. Yeah, but- I've always assumed that. Look, right. right. What's the minimum number you have to pull out to ensure you have two of the same colour? Three. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. You can use that one. Yeah. That's a good one. So what's the minimum- what's the minimum number you have to pull out to ensure <laughs> you have four of the same colour? Oh, God. Uh, f eight. <laughs> Was that I, a guess? I don't know. I understand the first one. We've done it now. Okay. All right. We'll leave I it there. It's good. Good. Okay. Mm. Now, White Van Carl. Uh, this is uh, yeah. This is where we. Oh, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd have seen his face, then his his eyebrows all went down while you were doing that thing. <laughs> he genuinely looked pained. It's like you're back at school, isn't it? Well, it's, yeah. It's starting to get hard work now. No, okay, we'll just do White Van Carl then. This is this is your opinions. You can't be wrong on this, can you? There's no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> okay. All right. But so this is where we ask Carl his views on the uh, the big news stories of the week. Basically, we've we've stolen an idea from the Sun newspaper, and um, so this isn't cruel. This program is it? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Picking it's on not, me? It's not, is it? Uh, it's weird because a few people have said, "Oh, you're picking on me." It's, it depends how you look at things. Isn't sure. It? Yeah, but you do do you like it. We- I mean, we can look at it like it's a laugh, <laughs> so yeah. it's not fun for us. You know we like you, you know you're, you're our favourite- yeah. I'm gonna say thing in the world, but I don't mean that, you know, in a derogatory way. No, no, I'm cool with that. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay, so, uh, your views please on the fact that, uh, attitudes are changing to the possible marriage of Charles and Camilla. Oh, what do you think of that? Um, the- the roars at the moment because of recent tragedies are, uh, apparently, uh, high in the polls. And people are coming round to the idea of Charles and Camilla getting hitched. What's your thought? Um, whatever really. I mean, if they're happy with it. The thing that <laughs> comes out of it most is it just goes to show, right, that there is someone for everyone. Just because, I mean, no disrespect to Camilla, I'm not a good looking person either, but she isn't a stunner and yet she's gone and picked up a royal. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think it's good for things like that to happen because it cheers you up, do you know what I mean? Uh, gives you a bit of hope. Thanks, Carl. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, you know, if, if they're happy. If anyone's happy, it's a good story, innit? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's had a bit of bad luck. And, uh, and now he's, he's got someone else, else in his life, so. I'm just- while well, he's doing this, I'm just doing a list of questions to ask him what he thinks of things in the world. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, just, yeah, no okay. problem. Um, okay, what do you, uh, make of- well, now listen, this is maybe a non-story, or it may be the biggest story that's about to break. Ulrika Johnson and Sven Goren Eriksson's affair. Are you familiar with this? It's over the papers today. Apparently, uh, Ulrika and Sven are going out, although there appears to be no evidence for this. Yeah, I don't even give it time of day. Do you know what I mean? Right, well done. Doesn't- doesn't affect me whatsoever, as long as he does his job well. Yep. And what's she doing at the moment? Presenting dog eat dog, I think? Right, you know. As long as she does her job well. As long as they both do their jobs well. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. that's going on with a lot of people out in the world, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just cause he's an England boss, as long as, you know, we win the- win the games and that, he's yeah. doing his job. Mm, mm. If she's, you know, gets a dog winning a prize or whatever. <laughs> no. He was- okay. It's not yeah. it. Carry on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... <laughs> dog within a... I haven't seen Dog Eat Dog. What's okay. going on? It's alright. It's... Right, no, so, go on. so that's it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay what about this then? Uh, are you, uh, disappointed by the nation that, uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of St. George's Day? 23rd. Is St. George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, that's... Are, you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St. George is the patron saint of England who, uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, 
Mm. By Christmas, so you buy t presents and that for each other, then people will remember it. But there's so many these days with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because you know people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know. People. There'll be like busy. Gareth Gates Day in 50 years time. It's just weird. I mean, I remember being a kid, right? Going out on a Sunday and shops will be shut mm. because it was like you know the day of rest and all that. People don't care now. It's like, well, we can make some more money. We'll open the shops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's Is that a good or a bad thing, Carl? Uh, it's good because I remember I used to have to get up early to go and get some bread if we didn't have any in. <laughs> Because the shop would only be open for a couple of hours in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas now I'd be able to. Yeah, I remember that. In. I remember that shop shut, and you couldn't get aspirin and stuff. Exactly. Certain things. Yeah. Nightmare on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. And pubs didn't open oh, for twelve. Do you remember space operas? Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Um, um, can I ask you something? Go on. Okay, I've got a little list of things. Um, what do you think of like those pug dogs that are bred and they can hardly breathe? It's evil. Yeah. What do you think of um, uh, gays? Uh, they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like straight people, you get bad ones, you get good ones. Exactly. Hey. We've learned a lesson today, haven't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Let's play a record. Yeah? What do you fancy? A bit of radio ed? Yeah. <laughs> you don't mind though if people think we're gay, for instance, when we go to the Baptist tomorrow? No, right, that's no. terrible. I don't want that happening. I Why? Hey? Why? Because I'm not. That'd be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like lying. If I was, I'd say I was gay. Yeah. But I'm not. We'll say you were. Just pretend. We won't gain otherwise. No. Just a little kiss and a cuddle. So I'm, I'm a bit gay. No. I'm not gay. On XFM 104.9. Wow, well, nearly the end of the show, isn't it? You had a yeah. good time, Carl? It's been all right. I, I knew it wasn't going to be a belter today. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? What's up with it? Because what happens, the, the last two weeks have been quite good and we always tend to have two good ones and then one that's just all right. Well, let the listening public be the judge of that. Well, yeah, well, and, and the Sony committee. Yeah, we just want to do a, a clip show of the best. We should do that for our last show. People should vote for their favourite <laughs> hilarious link, yeah. and then we can put it together on a tape. Right? Is there a record out there that wants to release the the, the <laughs> bit like I love? Including my favourite says, "Do you like gays?" <laughs> ah. <laughs> and uh, this lad, he had a horse. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I s scored once. I was stung by a bee. Ah, <laughs> uh, and who could forget? That's lovely. Should you do that? Can you, you, have you kept all these on tape? Yeah. So can you do a compilation? Oh, People phone in. Work, no, this, the next two weeks, phone in for your favourite clip. Uh, Carl, well, how can they get hold of you, Carl, in the week? What's, what's your email? What's your email? Number? What's it's your email? My, it's my name with uh, xfm.co.uk. So, Carl Pilkington. Carl dot Pilkington. Carl with dot- With a K. Carl with a K. Yeah. Carl dot Pilkington at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Vote your favourite link of the last- it's three months, and we, we should make a little compilation and sell it. And mm. we get like Radiohead, they'd love, they'd love to be on the compilation with us, wouldn't they? Mm. <laughs> wouldn't they? Oh, well. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. Right, do you know, like, you're always giving me questions in the week, you're always saying things like, <laughs> if I put you in this situation, <laughs> what would you do? Like what? Like, like, like what? Like what? bizarre things. <laughs> like um, what, though? Say one. If you had to lick... <laughs> Barbara Cartland's face. <laughs> yeah. Would it be the right cheek or the left cheek? <laughs> or, or Sorry, does Barbara want her face being there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying if she, if that's what she's into, then she's I don't mind dead. popping. She's she, dead. Yeah. So isn't she? she? Isn't she? I don't think she just is. Just be, be careful because you can't libel the dead. So I want to make sure she's dead before we start saying horrendous things. But she, I don't know. I don't think she is dead. I'm almost certain no. she's not. I don't think so. No, she's not. So is, is Barbara Cartland dead? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. I'll have to get Chris in. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, right? So so anyway, he always calls up with like bizarre, uh, <laughs> bizarre stuff like that. And mm. I was watching a program the other night about uh, snakes, <laughs> right? And um, it was like, don't walk th through a river that's full of snakes because good work, good advice. They, um, they'd, if you got a kid in the car or in the house, turn yeah. your radio down if if you don't want them to hear stuff like this. But. Uh, yeah, they go for your, uh, for, y for your tackle. Why? I don't know, they just do. I think it's another little snake. Maybe. With... With swollen with cheeks. Earrings. <laughs> with earrings. With <laughs> yeah. So, or, uh, or an anaconda in, uh, <laughs> in my case. With one eye. So, I'm really uh, joking. So yeah, yeah, and I, I said to Ricky, what would you do, right? Well, it's very scaly. You two in the woods, 
You, you're having a wonder, Steve. Having a, <laughs> having a wonder. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, you, you walk <laughs> through, you walk through the river. What, and, me? And, yeah. Okay. Because you're tall, so it's like you can check out how deep it is before Ricky goes through. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which you do that do, do. You do do that yeah. sometimes, don't you? Yeah. But a snake bites <laughs> your tackle. Yep. Yeah. And... Say penis. Yeah. It's the correct word for I it. It's know, not I offensive. It's, it doesn't sound nice. Say it, say, say yeah. it. Penis, but I don't Oh, you dirty it. little... No, you no. dirty little slut, Carl. You no, a dirty it's just, little... It's just one of those words. Right, yeah. carry on with the... Let's yeah. carry on. What's the story? I'm wandering through a, a river. Yeah, yeah. And, and the snake bites, bites your penis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and... You know, you know Ricky, like, doesn't leave, like, <laughs> WC1. <laughs> Why on earth are we going to be anywhere near a river where there's sort of well anyway snakes? In, yeah. Anyway, yeah, you are in this situation. Yeah, right? the snake bites you, and I said to Ricky, if it was a matter of life or death, would you suck out the poison? <laughs> 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 what do you think he said? Uh, well, and, the, and the bit I made because he was thinking about it, and you know, like, oh God, well he's you know he's my best mate and everything. What will I do? And I said, and then. Steve starts sort of groaning like he's enjoying it. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to remember what I did do. What did happen in that instant? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, so I've been bitten, I've been bitten on the penis by a snake. Yeah, there's poison in there's you. There's no poison in it. Yeah. I've had a go at trying to suck it out myself. Yeah. Yeah, but you've, know, you've never mastered that <laughs> I one. I've never been able to master that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, just a long spine and such a short, stubby knob that he's got no chance. Yeah. yeah. So, um... What so I have to get- He's even had lip extensions, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> yeah, go on. And I- and would Ricky suck it out? Almost certainly not. Yeah, that's the answer. Yeah, You'd let me die a I'd, hideous, I'd just, horrible death. I'd go, is there anyone you want to tell? Do you want me to call your mum and dad? Yeah. How should I tell them you died? <laughs> is they tell them I died taking a bullet for a lady? Yeah. Yeah, I was- I was- I was beating up some- yeah. Some nasty people. Yeah. Would you at least run into the woods and try and find some kind of animal that could do it uh, for me? I'm, I'm, uh, some of those monkeys look like they've got, you know, they've got a good technique. <laughs> right. Stop it. One more song. Yeah. Only time for song for the, uh, the what's it? Oh, we've got to share this one then, but we're, we're doing this I one. I thought there was two. Can we no, go? No, we've run out of time. Well, this is for, this is in the Guardian because they print oh, my favourite song is If You See a oh. Sailor. It's If You See a Say Hello by Bob Dylan. Okay. A song for the ladies and lovers. Mm. Yeah, that's it. And I can't believe we weren't allowed to talk about monkeys giving blowjobs. <laughs> Since when is that taboo? It's nature, Carl. They go absolutely mental. They love it. Absolutely. Stone Rose on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilgrim for the last time. I'm Indeed. afraid. Yes. So, um, you know, we're going to have a little bit of a chat. We're sewing up some things with Carl. Indeed. We're giving away that, that prize, that BAFTA bag and, you know. Playing some great music. And we're just, I mean, we're, I'm bringing in my favourite tunes. I'm bringing the Smiths, Radiohead, Cat Stevens, David Bowie, Neil Young, the classic. Steve's doing the same. Indeed. Um, well, Carl, the last time for, uh, yeah, I've, apparently, um, someone's got it a bit wrong. We're not actually away for six weeks. We're away for about... So, we'll be back in, uh, August, won't we? What the hell? Yeah. No, don't swear. Yeah, that's outrageous. On the last show, you have to say that. Already brought the tone down. Yeah. Cheapened it. And I think it's blasphemous as well. Yeah, no, it's not. No, hell isn't, is it? Isn't it? No, I don't think like, that's not blasphemy, is it? Taking hell's name in vain? Yeah. Yeah, but what was it you were saying the other week about the Queen Mum used to have the right mouth on her? What? I don't think we said that on air, Carl. What? No, no but last week you, you yeah. were saying about ba bad language and I was saying, oh, it, you know, there'll come a time when bad language isn't, you know, doesn't matter anymore. You can F and Jeff and stuff. Oh, I know what he's talking about, Steve. Really? Right, let me explain to you, the listener at home. Um, Carl was worried about swearing and as a joke, off air, it was last week, we were saying that um, the qu uh, in the 1940s and 50s, the Queen Mum used to say things like, and we were quoting things she'd said, yeah. like, I'm saying, oh my God, but putting Fs and Cs in there, and you believed us. Oh, so this whole week, you've believed that we somehow, somehow had knowledge that the, the Queen, Queen Mum used, used to, to swear like a trooper. We were doing uh, fake quotes from her in her voice, but putting in Fs and Cs, and you believed us. I mean, I didn't even think, I thought you were going along with a joke, but it obviously made a impact. Carl, we've said this, you've got to question and query everything. You can't take things at face value, certainly not if they come out of the mouths of Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, sorry about that, Carl, it was a little, a little trick. 
Uh, is there any other things now that as is you look back over these times we've said that you would think about that I can tell you now that was a lie? Anything you've maybe queried or questioned, you, you know, you thought, oh, that doesn't, that doesn't seem right? That maybe Ricky's told you? Something might come to me okay. later on, but... Okay. Well, what about Carl? I mean, it's, we, we love you. Right, obviously, we know that. We've, we've, got, we've got great affection for you. We look forward to this. I'm gonna miss you, really, but, and I'll tell you what, you've got a heart of gold. Now, wait till you see what the record is, Steve, you'll see what I've done. Is it a heart of gold? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Alright. That's why he's a bronze award winner at the Sonys. I don't get up for bronze. I don't get out of bed for bronze. No, that's a waste of our time. <laughs> I'll focus on over there on XFM 104.9. Winner of a bronze award at the Sony, at the Sony's. Radio Awards. The Radio Oscars. Man so Phil Jupiter said. That's what he called him on Liquid I'll, News. I'll tell you this, Rick, I'm not used to being on a table with losers at an awards ceremony. No. I, I, I don't, at least I, I'm glad, I didn't want to come in to do the final show. No. You know, no. I went straight over and sat with Pete and Jeff, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I went <laughs> over Radio the, uh, 4, I went over with Paul Gambagini. I went I over said. to BBC World Service. Yeah. You know, yeah. It was a lot funkier. A yeah. Lot cooler. Won an award. Yeah, won an award. They swept the boards. Yeah. I don't, uh, bronze is nowhere. What was the mood, uh, what was Silver, the mood here? Silver's, what was the mood here? The mood, uh, Cause the day after, cause people were, I mean, I, let me tell you that, I think XM deserved an award and I thought it was, it was criminal actually. But what I did like about, that's quite, that we certainly had the room, because Pete and Jeff said good luck to us and Christian, that was really nice. And then someone else mentioned it, so James, James Nesbitt. James Nesbitt yeah. said, uh, uh, XFM and stuff, so yeah. it certainly Paul, Paul had Gambagini the- said something about it. Yeah, did so it's Paul certainly- Paul yeah. It certainly had the room, and for a local, you've got to realise it's a local radio station, yeah. you know, and uh, it's, it, you, it can't compete really with Radio 2 and Radio 4 and but what was the mood uh, the day after here um, at XFM? It was alright. I mean, I think we expected a few more, but, but you shouldn't take this thing seriously anyway. No, but, what I yeah, but what I didn't realise, but what I didn't realise, never take Rick, awards seriously. But what I didn't realise is you have to pay thousands of pounds just to nominate, just You're to joking. get, just to get into the running for an award. So you've already, you know, they've squandered thousands of pounds. No, just it's not a thousand. It is. is it? Well, it, it mounts up because you pay for it to enter. And right. then the table. You've got to buy like mini discs and that to send your stuff in on. Which sure. Ends up with Sony mini discs. Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying, oh, yeah, Carl. I'm not saying anything. No. Um, and also then you've got to pay for the table. Right. And, and the food and the drink. I mean, it's a few grand. I swore on live television as well that night. Yeah. But I've never done that before. I mean, I've never, I've sworn before, but, but never accidentally. And we, we were being interviewed for, um, and Christian was sort of like quite, you know, being a bit boisterous and he must have brought out the worst of me and I actually just accidentally said the F word and I apologised straight away. I didn't want to embarrass Phil Jupus. <laughs> He was doing a good job. He does that himself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was thinking about yesterday and you're saying a bronze isn't worth having, right? Yeah. But, say like... <laughs> we're only joking. They're, none of them are worth having, but they're very nice. No, very nice no, to no bronze is pointless. <laughs> <laughs> but you say that, cos like, bron bronze is like coming last, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you tell me the name of the person who won the marathon this year? No. Yeah, but that's cos we're not sporty. Well, I'm listen, sure there's lots that can. But yeah. then... The guy who came last, who was in the swimsuit, <laughs> people <laughs> remember him. And no, he I don't remember his name either. No, what's his name? No, no, but he was six days late. I mean, he was really. Yeah, but what's his name then? Uh, you see, well, no one's remembering either. No, but if someone said who won the marathon, I'd go, I don't know, but there was that guy in the swimsuit. Well, I'd say I don't know. It was a woman. Yeah, she had, she had shorts on and trainers. I'm just trying to make My point is, what they will remember <laughs> is that we were losers. That's what they remember. <laughs> they may not remember our names. Yeah. They're just point and shout losers. We're all winners, aren't we? We're all winners, really. For taking part, sure. Well, yeah. And it's all subjective as well, isn't it? Go on. I mean, I'm not going to moan about awards because you've won a lot of them. It's like saying they don't mean jack. But yeah. at the end of the day, right, there's some shows that won awards and you go, yeah, that, that's, you know, that's worth an award. I, got, I, th I think you've got to treat it, I mean, some awards actually boost your profile or career or your cachet or anything like that. Some it's just a nice night out when it's nice to win, but I don't think you should really take any award that seriously. What worries me though, Rick, as I mentioned on the night, is that I, when I was at school, was, I mean, you look at me now, you probably think he's an athletic kind of guy, he's a sporty dude, you know, but at school, bizarrely, that was not the case. No, what were you, I a bit of a lanky bean <laughs> <with the laughs> It turns out. Yeah. You're joking. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, uh, but, and yet I got a silver, uh, in the high jump. Yeah. And I've done better in the high jump, right? Did no training whatsoever, did no yeah. practice, just turned up. You were two and a half foot taller than every other well, person people in your class. Yeah, but wait a minute, people think that if you're tall, that makes you easier, it makes it easier for you to do the high jump. Surely not, because I've got all that leg to get over the pole. That don't, makes it harder, harder for me, surely. Don't talk rubbish. What are you talking about? Well, of course the taller you are, the more chance you got the high jump. Well, explain that to me. Any... Oh, well, uh, uh, are you, okay then. 
so is it harder for a six foot man to step over a matchbox or a baby midget? A baby midget? <laughs> that is <laughs> tiny Rick. Hang on. <laughs> Here's something I've learned, remember? Go Going on. Back to like show four or whatever. Go on. What show is it? four? The flea can jump over the London Eye. No! No, it yeah. can jump the equivalent of if it was a six foot man. It can jump about six inches high. A flea cannot jump over the London Eye. Y yes, it can. Yeah, it can. And <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell your kids that. God. Oh. Remember. Oh, a flea can jump over the London Eye. And an ant can lift <laughs> three Volvos. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you're talking about fitness people and that. Remember when we were in the pub, right? Yeah. And, um, your mate Johnny was in there. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. And he was talking about that guy who got done, right? Because he entered a wheelchair race. Yeah. And, he sh and there was nothing wrong with him. His legs were all right. Yeah. yeah. Now, he got done because he shouldn't have been involved in it. Yeah. But don't you think that really he's really good for doing that because he's not normally in a wheelchair. Sure. So he's not used to how they move about. Yeah. His arms aren't as strong as the other fellas who are always in yeah. the wheelchair. Sure. He had his mate pushing him. That was Surely. the problem. <laughs> yeah, it was motorised. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give him a gold plus. <laughs> just, just, uh, uh, you know, you're taking a bloke who's not used to doing something. He does it the first time and beats the people who are at it. Well, what about that woman, though, that was disqualified in the shooting, because she was in a wheelchair and she was just in the normal, uh, able-bodied Olympics, it was just a, you know, she ended right, but she wasn't allowed to rest her elbow on the arm of her chair, because that's such an advantage. So she was in a wheelchair and she's shooting, but she was getting unfair advantage, and I said, you, you cannot put your elbow on the arm of your Sneaky, wheelchair. aren't they? <laughs> no, they are. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. <laughs> Do you wanna play a Some of them aren't even disabled, it turns out. <laughs> Hold on, though. We're talking about athletes, aren't we? What record should we play next? I'd love to hear uh, that, that single that was out a couple athlete. of months back by Athlete. athlete. Let's have Athlete. athlete. Man alive. <laughs> West Side by Athlete, a track that I know you and I have enjoyed. Uh, yeah, it was one of our favourite new tracks of the year, that one. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. More, more of our favourite tracks to come on XFM 104.9. You know what? Me, Richard Mays. And you, Steve Merchant, and uh, Carl Perkinson. Sure, go on. Uh, you know, I was mentioning Shoot. the high jump. That yeah. high jump. Uh, do you know the reason I didn't get the gold? It's quite, it's faintly embarrassing because the guy was it was just neck and neck me and another guy. In fact, he was slightly shorter than I was, and I was using the traditional Fosby flop. Is it the Fosby flop? Fosby flop. Fosby flop. And um, and he was using a method which I can only describe as the Superman, where he was running at the bar <laughs> and diving headfirst over it. I've never seen this technique before. It's illegal. That's Absolutely incredible. Is it not yeah. allowed? <laughs> The first one only works because his shoulder and that are going over before his head. Right. That's that's they got around the wall. You weren't allowed to right. dive over because it was obviously no one monitoring that. Yeah. No Just one, the games no. teachers having a quick fag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was his name again? The the yeah the fag. Uh, I think his name is Mr. Woodbine. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, he um. Anyway, so he's using this method, right, and, and it gets neck and neck, and uh, I don't know how many chances you get to knock down the bar, but anyway, it got to the point where basically I had to get over the bar, or right. I was gonna come second. Sure. And I decided at that point to use his method, because <laughs> he'd seem to be doing so well with it, I thought, well, I'll try that then, that looks oh, easy. Oh, dear. And ran at the bar, launched, didn't actually get my feet off the ground, just hit the bar like I was someone finishing a, a race, you know. Did the you It was so pathetic, it just got out everywhere. I just want to get this picture of, of you at the age of what, 15, 16? Yeah. Yeah. Six foot five already, probably? Yeah, probably, yeah, uh, yeah. Probably what, about nine stone? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did you have your glasses on? <laughs> of course I did. That you must have looked pretty and probably, sexy. Probably a small bum fluff tash. Yeah. Yeah. As well. That must have been good. That was was good it true looking. once, when you were about 16, you decided to wear a dicky bow to school? Yeah. That yeah. must have been great. That was during my PG Wodehouse phase. <laughs> 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 you thought yeah. you'd be a hit with the ladies if I you were thought, more sophisticated. Well, not only that, I thought it made me kind of kooky and eccentric. Yeah. Like I wasn't already. <laughs> Six foot seven, yeah, goggle yeah. eyed. Yeah. <laughs> like they're not already thinking there goes a weirdo. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, a weirdo yeah. with a bow tie. Yeah. Brilliant. Does it spin round, mate? Yeah. What? Because you're catch. getting me hot. <laughs> exactly. Oh, dear. Yeah, I wore that for about, um, for about six months, and it was in school colours, because we had to wear a tie, it's a school colour, this is a bow tie. I mean, now I don't, oh, man. I can't believe I don't it. Know what I was Carl, uh, when you were um, uh, a little Pilkington, right? What, what was if you had hair? What would it be like? What do you mean? <laughs> well, you obviously had hair then back then. What was the uh, style? Um, it was like uh, sort of. I had I had quite sort of uh, <laughs> fine, uh, sort of straight hair. Yeah. Right. Um, hairdresser once said to me, "You've got hair of a Chinaman." <laughs> He was a wise man, wasn't he? <laughs> what do you think that meant then? Oh, 
He just said- <laughs> he, ju he just said you got the same hair as- as a Chinese man has. Very straight, <laughs> quite fine. Um, <laughs> why is- why is he telling you? I just imagine this part going, oh, the arsehole did well, didn't it, sir? <laughs> do, 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 do. Should I have something on that? You got that you have the hair of a China man. <laughs> I'm sorry, nothing. <laughs> You're not the spy. No, I'm not. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> oh, it you're not like Yeah, lovely. It you have the feet of a fish. I'm sorry, nothing. It's not you. Okay, next. You have the hair of a Chinaman. It was, one, it was one of those barbers, um, it was a cheap one, just on a, on a railway bridge. I don't believe that. Go on. On a railway bridge? <laughs> That's why it was cheap. It was very low rent, so he could charge. That wasn't a barber. Bit. That was a man with some scissors. <laughs> yeah. Did you go? Oh, I have to move you there, sir. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back in the chair, sir. <laughs> no, I imagine one. them on one of those things you always see in old films where you've got you a to pump it up and down, yeah, like a the truck. Yeah, that's, that's not as good as that. It was just a normal chair, little wooden hut, and <laughs> it did have to stop when a train came past because it used to. <laughs> well, because he had to change the signal. <laughs> Just making a few extra bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love That's that. That's Manchester for you. Oh, I, God. I, I always oh, it wasn't him. Bernard Cribbins, was it? <laughs> I always remember him saying, do you want your hair washing? And I said, uh, is it free? You know, does it come with it? And he said, yeah. <laughs> so I said, oh, go on then. He said, hang on now, I'll just have to wash these mugs up. <laughs> he had like a sink full of mugs. Oh, God. So I'll God. just take these out and then I can wash your head. <laughs> oh, no. <And> that's <laughs> why. Why did you go to this man? It was cheap. It was How like, much was it? About two quid. And when was this? Uh, God, at eighty, eighty-eight, eighty-nine. All right. Yeah. So what happened to your uh, your Chinese hair? Uh, when did it start coming out? You, you have the hair of a bald Chinaman now, yeah. don't you? <laughs> You've got the hair of a Chinaman in a box now. <laughs> 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 oh. I used to just, um, work a, work a lot of hours, and I think. <laughs> That's what made it fall out. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, it's, no, it's not. It's genetic. You can't it's stop it. It's not genetic. Because it is. Is your dad old? Uh, no, it's, um, it's got more hair than me now, I think. Is your mum? Uh, Kojak's got more hair than you, Carl. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't have a go at Carl's hair. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> oh, look at his little what, face. What did he say before in that book about going bald? It said, uh, it had a little tip, didn't it? We'll- we'll go over them later. Oh, it says, uh, if you're going thin, doesn't it say, um, cut your hair short and something like so that So it too. makes you look thicker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh thing. yeah, we got, um, people are offering Carl lots of- we're, we're coming up to that in yeah, a few, well, we'll few minutes. Yeah, we'll give you that, sorry. Obviously we, uh, that BAFTA bag. Shall I remind people what the competition was? Yeah. Um, last week we, uh, were giving away this bag that we got signed by various celebrities at the BAFTAs, and, uh, we asked you to, uh, email or, uh, write in with your suggestions as to what you have that you could swap for the bag, and it has to be something that will enhance Carl's life. We've had quite a, a lot of, uh, suggestions, I'll go through those a bit later, but they're, um, some of them are quite eccentric. Meanwhile, I'm gonna play one of my favourite songs off one of my favourite albums. I look forward to hearing it. It's Radiohead, it's the Benz, and this is Black Star. Go for it. Sugar Cubes. Hit. Yeah, on XFM 104.9. Our last show. Our last show till August. Absolutely. Sorry about that. We, we'll miss it. We, we, we can't avoid it, really. We've got to go away and do some filming. And, uh, they're only gonna miss you anyway, Carl. They can do without us now. Zoe yeah. Ball's on. Yeah, Zoe Ball. And who else is after her? She's not doing the whole run, is she? Um, yeah, I think so. Is she doing the whole, the, the whole three months, is she? Yeah. Tell her not to get too comfortable. Uh -huh. Right? Don't let her feet, uh, don't let Big Boy Slim come in with her, because he mixes up the records, doesn't he? And ruins them. Yeah. Hey, it's talking of DJing. Go on. You know, I did that storming set the other night, well, uh, yeah. for XFM. Yeah, sure, yeah. Go on. Uh, this was down at a little club, in case you weren't aware of it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I went to the, uh, Sony's the other night. Yeah. Carl Pilkington, uh, sidles up to me. Yeah. Slips me an envelope. Go on. Oh, 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 200 big ones in there. Did he get paid cash for that? Yeah. 200 Did pounds. Taxman won't know about that. Cash in hand. No, the taxman won't know, because I mean, obviously no one who ever works in tax is listening to local radio. Oh. Yeah. Well, so... No, the taxman will know about it. Yeah. Because I'll declare it. I, I would. Put it, yeah, it's going straight down. I'll do it when I get home. <laughs> do it when I get in later on. And don't write off rubbish that you buy anyway, like, you know. No, yeah. I won't. No. I'll do it all above board officially. <laughs> Fill it all in correctly. And so I'll send it now, I'll send it tomorrow so that you get it early. So it's not too busy oh. for you, sir. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, also, uh, did you see, uh, Liquid News last night? No. It what is uh, Liquid News? I don't really watch it. It's the thing news. on, um, um, Choice, right? And it's, uh, sort of celebrity news, yeah? And, um, uh, Julian Clary, uh, was on. And, uh, they were talking about the Sony Awards the night before, which we went to. And they said, uh, Something like, um, 
a relatively unknown had won the Entertainment Award that we were up for and Chris Chern and Chris Moyles and Jonathan Ross said that, um, uh, uh, beating off bigger people, not he was beating off bigger people, <laughs> they weren't suggesting he was- Was Julian <laughs> Clary beating off other than <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it said, so, uh, the people who didn't win resorted to silliness and it cut, right, them, I don't know where the camera was, it must have been miles away because it wasn't us, cut to me making a little hat for you out of a Budweiser box, a little dark thing, and then forcing it on your head and you sort of struggling, do you remember that? I do remember it. Yeah. Th so th they were- They're always well, watching. they were filming us. They were filming it, yeah. So, yeah. That's really scary because some of the things we were doing- Because I was tying scarves around your head, wasn't I? We were, we were, uh, we, we were touching Carl we in an intimate way. We were gaining him up. Gaining him up. To make him feel all uncomfortable and everything. Cause he doesn't like that sort of thing, do ya? Can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be giving you a cuddle about five to three, seriously. Yeah, we are gonna be- On the way out- And I've got roaming hands. Yeah. Do you know them girls who came up from the Radio Academy and sort of said, oh, so you're Carl then? Right, yeah. yeah. A couple of fans went up to Carl. Yeah. Uh, just, just on the way out, I said to him again, I said, look, I'm not gay. <laughs> because they were convinced I was. Yeah. That's because they, we, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we, we teased Carl that he had to go as Steve's partner, and um, to the BAFTAs, and they really meant partners. You know, after the show, when he was walking home, he was uh, gonna go buy a suit, I actually said, they will, they will ask you. He went, well, what if they say, and they, uh, as we walk in, Steve Merchant and his boyfriend, Carl, uh, well, they might say that as you walk in, they might overdub it on the television, so, he's going, well, what about my mates in Manchester? <laughs> and he said, I'm not going. <laughs> the risk of someone in Manchester thinking, thinking that he was going, going out with you, mind you, it wasn't, it was probably right, going, Carl, well, uh, if he was gonna see where you're going, going with if, if you were gonna be gay, you wouldn't choose Steve, would you? No. Who would you, who would you choose if you were gay? Uh, if you could go out with any bloke, who would it, who would it be? be? That's a good one. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. He thought about it before. Go on. No, 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 of course not. No, no, no. no. no who would it be? Who, 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 if, you know, if you were gay, what bloke would you go out with? God, probably, uh, Jonathan Ross is alright. You gay! Oh, you, oh, you fancy Jonathan Ross, you Bender! Oh, oh Bender! Oh, Rossi! Bender. Oh, oh you've got his Jonathan. number, haven't you? We should get oh, contact. I love you, Jonathan, you! Oh, no. Jonathan, I love your film show. You're so funny and handsome and well done. Feature educating Ricky, which is a bit of a play on words as well. Right. Do you know the, do you know the film, Steve? Educating Rita. Yeah. I well, see what you've done. I see what you've done. <laughs> Go on. I'm doing that and I teach Ricky stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. what, 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 what do you teach me, Carl? Well, I've got a few different topics. Um, Go on. Do you know, like, how you taught me about Hitler and Che Guevara and Winston Churchill? Mm -hmm. I'm going to come in with topics every week and this week I've got, uh, hang Ghosts? No. Hanging Bacon is one of the topics. Say that again? Hanging Bacon. Hanging bacon. All, all the titles. Francis Bacon. <laughs> no, all the titles are sort of named to sort of make, sort of tease you and get you more interested in it. Hanging bacon? Well, you've right. certainly intrigued. Go on, what's another title one? Uh, Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Could I, I'm going no. for that one. Could if, I, there I mean, a, if there was a university degree yeah, with that yeah, title. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go for Hairy Chinese Kid, and I think. the final one, yeah. a Alien Gives Man a Beard. <laughs> Right, I Alien gives burst. man a beard. I am gonna burst. Right, listen, Carl, you've gotta tell me. Right, to first, right, let's do it in reverse. No, we're order. not, we're not gonna do it now anyway. What do you mean? You, we've got to do it now. That, that, I mean, that's, this is the first interesting thing you've said in an hour, okay? The listeners have just, uh, been subjected to rubbish and, ah, uh, oh, and mistakes and everything for the last <laughs> six months. Please, we've gotta do Alien gives man a beard. What is that? Tell us that. Right. Um, sorry, this is just you telling me something, is it? <laughs> well, this feature is you telling me something. I'm teaching you something, educating Ricky. Right. So, are we playing it now? We're already into this feature, <laughs> well into this feature, are we? Yeah, I suppose we are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should there not be a jingle or something? Yeah, can we have a well, jingle? there's no point, cos look, I come up with ideas and you dismiss them straight away, so I'm not wasting my time making stuff. Right. If you don't like it. Well, okay, it. let's play, let's play educating Ricky. Right. Brilliant. Go right. Wah 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 Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling. Educating Ricky. Right. What we going for then? Hanging the bacon. Airy Chinese kid. Alien gives man a beard. I think Alien gives man a beard. I'd like to do that. Right. There's this fellow. I think it happened in America. Uh, and he saw a bright light in the sky. And God, if you're bored. And he stood there. This is a true story, is it? Yeah. He stood there. <laughs> yes, yeah, cause it isn't, Steve. 
<laughs> and he saw this bright light and it came closer and closer and it was a UFO, right? <laughs> yep. And he looked at it and it disappeared, <laughs> right? And he gets back in his car. He looks in the mirror. And he looks in the mirror. Yep. He's only got a beard. He has. <laughs> you sure it wasn't it. someone else who got in the car? And he was still standing out there? No, right. What? And it turned out, yeah. he got home and said to his wife or, or his girlfriend, uh, it's a bit weird. <laughs> so I just got out of the car to look at a bright light and I, I, I got back in the car and I grew a beard and she said, never mind your beard, where have you been for three days? <laughs> and what had happened is- He the, passed out because he was pissed. No. <laughs> Ah! The, the UFO had taken uh, him for three days, yeah. but he'd only thought that he'd, he'd only looked at it and it went away. Yeah. But what had yeah, happened is, yeah, he yeah. took him and yeah. he grew a beard because he hasn't had a shave. Um, so, right, okay. D d I mean, was Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones anything to do with this at all? Did, uh, you, did you see this on a video maybe and thought it was an educational film? No, it's from a book that some kind person sent in to me. Here. Um, Can I just ask again, just, just again, I'm just throwing this right back at you. Um, do you think there's any other possible answer here? Right? A man is absent for three days from home. He's the, grown the a beard. The length of time that it could take to grow a beard, lest we forget. Um, what if he hadn't actually <coughs> seen a bright light in the sky? What, what if, if he, he was lying? Drunk? What if he was lying? He'd got knocked unconscious, mm. he'd had a car crash. Just lying. No, things. just lying. Or he was just lying. Yeah, he'd, he'd been on a bender, getting pissed for three yeah, days and with his mates. that was his mates. excuse to his wife. And they went, what are you gonna- what- Dennis, what are you gonna tell your wife? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. not gonna believe I was out with you, lads. Uh, yeah. Just say you're only away for a minute. No, she didn't know I wasn't away for a minute because of the beard. <laughs> oh yeah, it, lo it looks like you've been out for three days. Well, we have, that's- <laughs> exactly. Right, okay, we've got to cover that then. <laughs> uh, alien abduction? Great one. Okay, let's try that. Do you see? That's a little scenario there that could have been played. So with. when you say educating Ricky, what have I learned from this? Never listen to you again. That's all I've learned so far. Never listen well, to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more in here, right? To well, no. Uh, what do you mean, add a little bit more? We'll add a bit more to this. To this, what I'm educating you about. Go on. Right. Um, there's only a law in America that says <laughs> if you touch a UFO, you're going to get done. Now, why would they make a rule? I don't know that. Do you know, like all their rules have a code. Uh, Carl, I, I, I genuinely do not know what you're talking about. Right? Do you know, like how here? Do, do you know? I have no idea. Right. Okay. Do you know, like over <laughs> Rick, here? I'm listening to Capital and these headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got Foxy on from yesterday. Uh, right, let's let's bin that. No <laughs> way, it's crazy. No, I, I want to hear about airy Chinese kids. <laughs> but we've got. Um, thanks for staying. Listening. Um, right, okay, educating Ricky. What have we got? Airy Chinese kid, go on. Right, yeah. This is the, uh, I didn't want to do this. What really. do you didn't want to do it? Well, I wanted to give you three and I, I, and I gave you one. It was like the alien uh, man gets a beard or whatever. Yeah. And Which was total rubbish, so uh, this one should be better, maybe. Hairy Chinese kid. Right, well, yeah. we've talked about airy people in the past. <laughs> 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 True enough. Aren't we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the little kids who grew up in woods and hung around with wolves and that. Yeah, again, you're confusing it. Yeah, they're not, they're, they're not, there were some people that were born a, a very hirsute. They were mm -hmm. not the yeah. people who were brought up with wolves. Yeah. You just put that together in your <laughs> Homer Simpson type mind. Right, well, this is like a sort of, sort of close to that sort of story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the weird thing is, right, Chinese people aren't that hairy as a, as a nation. <laughs> No, seriously, that's that's a well-known fact. <laughs> they, they don't they don't have that much body hair and right. stuff. Okay. So this little kid who was born over there, um, he was like covered in stuff. Was he? And it was only his nose that wasn't hairy. The rest of his body was caked in hair, right? Mm. Um, and his hair sort of. What grew. sort of hair was it? Was thick, it thick, thick hair? <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean is, was it sort of uh, uh, like a pony's mane? So he just looked like an Ewok. You know what I mean? Just like hanging down, sort of straight, dark well, it hair. Looked, in the picture, it looked like uh, it grows <laughs> from his downy? eyebrow. It grows from his eyebrows quite thick, and then it just goes all the way over. You his don't head. think it was just really long eyebrows that he'd done a comb over? <laughs> no, th it was all over his body. It had a picture of like his back and that. Yeah. And um, had he styled it? Had he styled it at all? Did he, did he have it a quiff or? No, it was just it was just, just hanging all over, over him. Yeah. And um, and they were like, you know, this is a bit weird. Happening, uh, happening in China, mm. where, where we're not normally that airy. <laughs> <laughs> that was the scientist speaking <laughs> oh, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the press, the local press and that were getting him down, calling him monkey boy and all this. Oh. 
And, uh. Um, thinking Chinese press. But the doctor. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, they're <laughs> cruel, aren't they? The doctor. It's like those game shows. <laughs> well, That's Japanese, isn't it? Yeah. That's what that. Yeah. And the doctor said, um. I was talking through all that time where we were just like talking <laughs> to each other then. Because I, I turned around and I still saw he was talking. <laughs> Go so on. anyway, the local press came in to see the hairy boy, the monkey yeah, boy. Yeah, they were like being tight, taking the mickey out of him, and the doctor said, uh. Throwing him nuts. Said he's only, he's only hairy. Said, um, he's a healthy young kid. The only faults he's got is he's got a little bit of eczema and a boil. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he said everybody should just treat him the same, and yeah. I think he grew up a healthy, healthy kid. Um. Yeah, so that's, that's the, uh... That's, that's the end of the story. That's not it? a story. Why? Well, but, but I've got nothing, I don't know what to say to that. So someone was, someone in China was born slightly hairier than the rest, <laughs> and he was normal apart from eczema and a boil. That to me isn't a story. <laughs> but that, I, that I, if it is, I've got a million. I mean, it, it's sort of like, bloke from Manchester, went a bit bolder than the rest, got a job on radio. He was normal. I mean, that's not a story, is it? Do you know what I mean? All right, then. Um. Hang on, hang oh, on. Hold on, he's got the big guns. You're not gonna give us hanging bacon, are you? Yeah. <laughs> come on, then. Come on, then. Right, come on. The we really come on. To. This, this is it. No, this is a good one. This is the one. And this is a story, right? Um, do you know the saying, uh, chewing the fat? Good one. It's one of my favourites. Yeah? Yeah. Do you know what it means? Talking. Right. Well, do you know where it came from? No. Right, what they used to do years ago, when people didn't have much money. Is this the same as the ba throwing the baby out of the bathwater? No, it's not the well, it's not the same saying, but No, but I mean, is it as wrong as right, that was? Well, let me tell you, and we'll go see. On. Okay. Um, like, people go out to work, and with the money, they'd buy food. Oh, yeah, go on. <laughs> this is a good system. What, what, go on, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? People go out to work and with the system- And if, if, you, if you were quite well off, you might treat your family to some bacon, right? But do you know, like in these days, if people earn a lot of money, they might buy a nice suit or or a oh, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, I don't know, what are you saying? You're saying. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get this straight. You're saying that it, you go out to work and get money to to buy things to to live, and if you get sort of enough money to live, and you've got some left over, you might treat yourself on like a suit or a car or something. Is that yeah, what you? Yeah. Oh, but back on. then, back then, if yeah. you earned money, they'd say, "This is olden times." Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get some bacon in, right? <laughs> and what they'd do, they'd hang it in the kitchen. Or to show it off? To show it off right. to all the neighbours and friends. Because if you were- if you had hanging bacon, it was like, he's doing alright for himself. Yeah, yeah. It's a lovely bacon. So he had loads of bacon hanging up, and people would come round, right? And whilst they stood in the kitchen talking about whatever they're talking about- In olden times. They'd say, uh, do you want a bit of rind? And they'd- and they'd rip a little bit of rind off, and whilst they're having a- having a chit chat- Chewing the fat. Chewing the rind. Well, I think that's probably true. And I, I say, haven't heard that, but that one to me sounds true. Do you see the difference between that one and- a man was abducted and grew a beard. Do, 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 can you see the difference in yeah, why I accept that different, story? Different stories for different things. <laughs> different stories for different things. <laughs> so, see, that's a nice, that's a nice story. If it's true, I don't know if it's true. I mean, but it seems totally possible, viable, quite interesting. I won't be quoting that myself until I've verified it. But that's, you know, I won't be telling anyone the bloke got in the car and he had a full face beard. <laughs> <laughs> Why has his car been towed away? Because it was a quiet road. It was it? It wasn't in the way. <laughs> okay. Are okay. you filling in the blanks again? <laughs> that wasn't in the book, was it, that you read? <laughs> See, that's yeah. the thing, sometimes I think you make up bits of the story as though they were fact. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Well, that's all you can do, isn't it? <laughs> so, so that's educating Ricky, will we? Brilliant. Do that next week. That is brilliant. No, I think Carl. that was good. I, I, I did, I mean, I enjoyed that. I learned something from that. I mean, well, just, just, I, I wanna get a, I mean, this is all from one book, is it? Yeah. That's an interesting book. Um, with the, with the, I, I, I don't wanna dwell on it, but with the, uh, with the hairy Chinese kid, what, what, what did they say about that? What did they, what was the, I mean, was it, once there was born a kid who was slightly more hairy than everyone else, but he, he's all right, he only had a boil. Oh, how did they word it? How did they, how did this capture your imagination? There was well, a it was a picture that grabbed me, first yeah. of all. Yeah. Sure. And uh, it was like, God, what, what's up with him? And that's when <laughs> I read it. Did you see the boy in the X-Mall or just the hair? Th no, you see, because his face is like, just under his eyes is sort of nice and smooth and his nose is sticking out and uh, that's not hairy. But the rest of him, it looked like he had the sort of a balaclava on or something. 
and then and then I read on and it's like this is a hairy kid in China. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Anything else in there? Because I mean, I like. I like. No, I like we'll, we'll do more of that next week. How, how is that alongside um, hanging bacon, alien abduction, abduction, um, uh, a, a hairy Chinese kid, and uh, a little interesting fact about the derivation of a phrase? What do you mean? He didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> so, last week we started good sort of play on words that we had going. Go on. Um, the well-known film educating Rita. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's become, thanks to Carl Pilkington's brain, <laughs> it's become- I've tweaked it a bit and now yeah. it's educating Ricky. Brilliant. Right? And that was a new feature we started last week, if you weren't listening, where I teach Ricky stuff. What did you teach me? Uh, taught- taught you about that little Chinese hairy kid. Yeah, you yeah. didn't teach me anything. You said there was a kid that was born that was slightly hairy as another Chinese people. I taught where the saying chewing the fat came from. I enjoyed that. That was good. That, that was, was interesting. Good. And, uh, and a man who had a beard because he was man, being abducted uh, three yeah. days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, that was rubbish. <laughs> lest, that did, that, lest we forget. That taught me more about you than about alien abduction. But what happened last week is, go on. Uh, we sort of talked about it all in one go, and you can't. Where is this? Week? You've done what? You've spread it out <laughs> over the show. Well, I spread it across the two hours because I always found that if you try to be taught too much in one go, you just can't take it in, and it'll be wasted. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that your experience of school? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They taught you in three minute bursts. Yeah, yeah and, and not every day. Yeah. Every other When month. you felt like it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do, right? Uh, so we've got Educating Ricky coming up. That's educating Ricky stuff. across the two hours. Okay, look. And, and what I do is, I've made little headlines again, and you decide which story you wanna go All for of them. first. Well, give me the first yeah. headline. No, 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 not yet. We'll do that in Well, a give bit. me a teaser. Hang on a minute, I'm telling you what else. Right. right. So. Okay. The way this works is- What would you rather be, Carl? I teach you- uh, Superheroes. Three things. A frog boy. Right. Yeah, that you could leap- you could leap onto a house, but you had to go- the frog, you had to go bleh, first and leap onto a house. You're- you're- you know, this frog boy. Right, and, th and that- that could be useful, couldn't it? <laughs> That's very useful, yeah. Right, um, amploid, where you've got your- your hands are microphones, and you can talk into your hand and your whole body. You can, it's like a hundred decibels, you can go, OI! COME HERE! And you, people can hear you from a miles away, amploid, right? <laughs> right? Or, or saddo, right? And that means that you can go up to anyone and go, alright? And they just, they don't know why, they just get fed up for the whole day. <laughs> Which of those would you prefer? <laughs> don't answer now, have a think about it. Have a think about it. <laughs> the frog thing, do I look like one or. <laughs> No, you're just you and your little Ben Sherman shirt and everything. And they go, and people walk along and they go, oh, look at that young child! From on that roof, he's gonna fall. Which frog boy was here? And you go, blah, blah. and you go down. You go, blah, blah, blah. and they go, here's, here's him. And they don't recognise you when you're squatting. They go, well, I don't know who you are. Mm. And you leap up there and say, and you come up and they go, where's frog boy? And you're standing up and you go, I don't know. He went that way. Yeah, I'll probably have that one. Would you go with frog yeah, boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Okay, go on. Right. So, uh, did that just go out? <laughs> what? All that. <laughs> <laughs> God, I've got a bad. Hey, look, Rick. Carl's really planned this show. He's, yeah. he's really worked out. He yeah. came in early. He was writing things down. And there's me just it. coming up with rubbish. And like you're just talking rubbish. So, Carl, I know you've right. been thinking this through. What have you got? So, educating Ricky. We did it last week. It's where I teach you some stuff, but rather <laughs> than just teach you something, a teaser, so you want to know more, so you want to yeah. take in information, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> if only people had taught you like that. Carl. So, and also, it's the name of a film, sort yeah, of, yeah, nearly. Yeah. Coming up soon, Henry the Eighth and his well, how many wives? <laughs> Come back tomorrow, Carl, to find out. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, well, uh, the little, the little uh, headlines have got to sort of tease you with the story. Yeah, this is gonna hurt me, and I'm not very well. Go on. Right, we've got. Uh, <laughs> so, so this is what. Sorry, I'm, I, I've just got lost for a minute there. It's educating Ricky. This is educating Ricky. Yeah. And these are the stories that you're. These are the things you're going to tell him. Yeah. But these are just headline versions. These are headlines. This is not the actual fact. Then I think people will remember things. Okay. All right. So you. Yeah, yeah, sort of bullet points. Who can forget points. hairy Chinese boy? <laughs> Indeed, mm. I shall never forget that. Yeah. So. Go on. <laughs> first <laughs> headline. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Don't do that to it. You know it can't live without an head. <laughs> I've got no idea. It could be about the French Revolution, it, it could be about anything. I know what it is! <laughs> you, no, you think you do. But, no, no, right? it's, it's not what I taught you! Is it, is it the fact that cockroaches can live for nine days without a head? That's part of it, but it's something different as well. That's oh, what I thought I'd bring okay. Up. Okay, brilliant. So uh, that's something to Next do one, do you want to work it out? Um, if only it was raining. <laughs> brilliant. Okay. And the last one, uh, 
What's tomato with you? <laughs> <laughs> What's tomato with you? Yeah. <laughs> Look how pleased he is. You so you're you're obsessed with puns, aren't you? At the moment, Kay. You, you, it you just works. It. I think it works. Yeah, <laughs> we love puns. So there you go. So okay. which of those are you going to choose, right? Oh well, I'm going to have to choose. Don't do that. You know, you can't live without it. <laughs> Carl, what's the story then? Right. So what what did you say you're going for? You've got your three titles, your three teasers. Well, I think I'm going to go for don't do that to it. You know, you can't live without it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. Right. right. So this is uh, educating Ricky for those yeah. who have just tuned in. Now, something that Ricky told me about when he was educating me was that a cockroach, if he cut its head off, um, it lives for a week. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only reason it dies is because it can't take on water. Sure. It, it doesn't have a great time in that week though, does no. it? I mean, it doesn't no. get much done. I don't know. It just it just needs water because it can't find any. Uh -huh. by its eyes. It eventually dies. Yeah. Right. No. So. So it what? No, it's not. That's not. It's, it's anyway. it can't drink. Anyway. So, with the, have you heard that one about worms? <laughs> okay. All right, I've gone. If you cut a worm in half, yeah. um, a lot of people have said in the past that it'll turn into two worms. <laughs> right. But that isn't actually true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> no, it's a, it used to be like, you know, uh, kids, kids at school said, said it on, yeah, kids at school and stuff. You'd, yeah. You'd, so that, you know, a lot of people think that. Don't pick him up on stuff, Steve, it's bad enough. Sure. So, but what they can do, if you get a worm, right, and you find out which end its head's at. Right. <laughs> if you sort of, you've got its head there at the left hand side, right, and if you sort of cut it in half. Right. But not in half. So there's more of its neck than the tail. If you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The bit that you've cut off will sort of die, and the rest of the worm will get better. So in a way, you can cut it in half, and it'll survive. But only one half will survive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what have you learned? I wish you hadn't chosen that one. <laughs> 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 I know, I know, because it's not, it's nothing, is it? <laughs> yeah, you know that joke, you know that joke, um, how would you tell a worm's head from its own? You put, put it in a bowl of flour and wait till it farts. Yes. Right? I told my mate that, right, and he went, what if it coughs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You, yeah. So, it is, there is a bit of truth in, in that myth of cutting one in half. Where did you get this information? I don't understand where you get this that, information from. That was from, from the Fatian Times. <laughs> it was right. like the myth, the myth about worms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big, that was the big arc of that week. Did it take you as long to read that <laughs> article? <laughs> <laughs> as it took you to tell us just then. <laughs> I like the fact that it starts off debunking a myth yeah. that we have known of anyway. <laughs> exactly. You know the the big the big thing about cutting the worm in half and making two worms. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. What's the other one? What's I the mean, other it's not like? the thing to do either. By the way, don't don't go doing it. No. Cool. It's not very nice. But, it's cruel. It can get bad. And it's pointless. Do. Yeah. There's no scientific worth. Yeah. In that. Well, there you go. Okay then. So the others now. You what see what I do? What's no, I tell you the other titles. You're not having them yet. That's that's the whole idea of this. People will be driving or about to go out doing the shopping. They'll think about that now. What was the other two? Well, the other two. They were... won't think about that. They've forgotten <laughs> no, that. No, they will. <laughs> they will. <laughs> no, they've forgotten that already. If only it was raining. And what's tomato with you? Right, that, you've I'm looking tell forward to that one. No, you've got to tell me no, tomato no, with no, you. <laughs> look, look what's happening. You see, you already want more education. And this is what listeners will be doing. You, I tell you, you, I wish you were a teacher. I so <laughs> wish you were a teacher. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? And kids would be saying, I know it's half past three, but I don't want to go home, I want more. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm doing with you. I'm teaching you. Why are you teaching me <laughs> things about not to cut worms in half and what's tomato with you? <laughs> Please tell me what's tomato with you, Carl. In a bit. In a Carl, bit. In a bit. Rick, what? I tell you, he, he's, he's thought the show through, he's yeah. teasing the audience, you're excited, they're listening. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, no, it's Educating Ricky Part 2. Oh, is it? Yep. I wasn't even listening. He's doing all the work, I wasn't even listening. Oh, and he spilled some water down that. Right, what's this one again then? Right, uh, What's the uh, teaser headline? Teaser headline is, what's tomato with you? Brilliant. Yeah? yeah. Brilliant. How excited were you when you came up with that? You couldn't wait to come in and tell us, could you? <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I think it's place. a good one because you won't forget it now, will you? Okay. I mean, like the worm one. What's so special about the worm? Uh, you know, a lot of people think that if you cut a worm in half, it will, two worms will grow, but no. What happens is if you cut the head end slightly nearer the tail than the head, the tail will die, um, but the worm with the head will be okay. So, um, 
It's exploded a myth, Anna. <laughs> taught me something. <laughs> right, so <laughs> the second one, part two of educating Ricky. Uh, what's tomato with you? Yeah. What this one's about is, uh, ages ago. <laughs> this is scientific. No, it's, never, it's never, there's never a date. It's never, never a country the location. <laughs> okay, settle down, children. No, this is A level history. Right. Once upon a time. Stop. Yeah, yeah. In a, when a mental place with swords was a king. <laughs> Forget his name, but he was a loony. Uh, yeah. so, and it was, we literally ages ago. Yeah. So, uh, good luck <laughs> in the exam. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, like, you know, all right, many years ago. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Cleared that up. Um, Go on. They thought tomatoes were poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Um, because what the, what the- Hold they, on, are they gonna be proved wrong at the end of this story? Well, what- Cause I don't want to give away the ending, but is it something to do with the- d Are they poisonous tomatoes? No. Nope. Oh, you haven't done that. <laughs> I don't believe it. But, go on, but go what, on. Are they gonna be eating tomatoes all this time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve, what's tomato with you anyway? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, I'm thinking, what's let's just recap with you? quickly, recap quickly, many years ago, yeah. when people thought tomatoes were poisonous. Yeah. Go on, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they, they didn't know they were poisonous then, because they were still eating them, but what was happening Well, they're not. Was, but they're not poisonous. Ah, but hang on a minute. All right. It's not, I, I'm just gonna listen. I'm okay, not even gonna yeah, talk. No, okay, I'm not gonna tackle So, anymore. if you remember, <laughs> years ago, they didn't have, like, pottery plates. <laughs> they had, <laughs> they had lead plates. Right. <laughs> what are you talking? Just let him talk. Sorry, what year is this? Let him talk. Come on. <laughs> Plates made out of lead, and right. what they'd end up doing, they'd they'd say, right, do you want a tomato? And they go, yeah, all right. And they'd put the tomato on the lead plate and cut it, and because of the acid in the tomato, right, it would sort of, uh, sort of uh, make the lead runny, and the lead would go into the tomato, and they say, oh, it's lovely this, and they'd be eating it. They'd get food poisoning, lead poisoning, what have you, and they'd be really ill. So, they thought tomatoes were poisonous, so they didn't eat them for many years. And, and when you say they, do you mean the happen. people of Narnia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this did not happen, Where was Carl. this happening? Uh, sort of in, in Britain and that. <laughs> <laughs> you put him on the spot there! Oh, I hope there's no, uh, uppity pupils at this school when they go, what do you mean, sir? Oh, if you're gonna, oh, I'm fed up <laughs> with you. Do you understand? <laughs> No. So, so the, the No, 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 you've got, no, 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 right, right, okay, first of all, Carl, where do you get this information from? Where did Fourteen times as well? Do you know, I, I, You can't remember. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> I don't know where I got it from. <laughs> but, but, what, I don't, why don't you think that makes sense? <laughs> but, but, <laughs> what? Someone once got lead poisoning from a tomato? No, not just one, loads, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> No, no, no. Why is this educating me? Because I'm telling you that tomatoes. You <laughs> I them. can't take anything away from this. Yeah, I don't know what to take away from this. What have I learned? <laughs> what have I learned? Don't mix lead with tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this educational in any shape or form? What are you to What are you telling me? A long time ago, in the land of Glunk, <laughs> right, where the ninnies did slib, right, they thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate plates of lead. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, but we all know tomatoes aren't poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> is what are that you, what, is what are that you what talking we're taking about? From the story? Is that the moral of the story? Don't believe these people that I'd never heard of before. What are you talking about, Carl? I just, I think it's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit weird, yeah. Is these the same people that were spreading those malicious worm rumours? <laughs> <laughs> My hangover's coming back. I've got to get some We've yeah. got, um, Go on. educating, quick, quick. educating Ricky, where yeah, teachers Because well, you, you taught me that people used to eat tomatoes off lead plates in the land of Narnia yeah, last week, which was we good. Week. Yeah. No, Is it th only tomatoes they eat off the lead plates, by the way? Why, why didn't they think other fruits and vegetables were poisonous? Be no, it wasn't. It was because tomatoes had acid in them. That was the problem. You see, you don't, you don't, don't listen. listen, right? Well, lots of fruits have acid in them. Yeah, but they didn't eat them back then. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have bloody kiwi fruit and stuff. Don't they say then. bloody. You're a producer. Come on, you'll start, I'll start saying uh, shit and cock and stuff, you start saying bloody. Tits. <laughs> right, so, right. Uh, What is this? What are you doing now? This is educating Ricky, right? Oh, good, I'm gonna look forward to this. Yeah, Three Ricky. topics that I teach you every week. Yeah. Okay. Now, obviously, um, I should just remind people, you normally summarise each of these in a kind of bullet point heading, which you tease us with, so yeah. what have you, uh, reduced them to this week? Right, we've got, um, Stocking, Aitken and Waterman. Stocking <laughs> Aiken and Waterman. Good. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? <laughs> We've also got, uh, what else is it? It's not his, his vault. Yeah? It's not what? It's not his vault. Okay. Yeah? And we've also got, get a lobe of this. 
Get a lobe of this. Yeah. Carl, they're genius. Before we do educating, uh, Ricky, this is where Carl thinks he can give me something of interest and teach me something to take away. Last week I found out that, uh, somewhere in a strange land people thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate them with lead. Um, things like that. Um, what was the other one you told me? Uh. What else was it last week? Uh, bit so of worms. Cut yeah. me off. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, sent him a text message. I was on the train, a bit bored, and, uh, I read in, I think it was Metro, scientists have found out that, um, uh, worms get stressed, and they found out that, uh, the fat ones, um, didn't live as long, and when they checked the thin ones that lived longer, they found out they had a gene for de-stressing them. Right? Carl, what, did you remember what you said? No. He went, well, that's stupid, isn't it? He said, did these uh, other ones die of natural causes? <laughs> I went, yeah, he went, all right. Because it could be that the fat ones couldn't get off the pavement quick enough and got squashed. <laughs> so maybe the scientists go, yeah, we didn't- <laughs> Yeah, they used to come to think of it, they were flat as well as fat. The I think the reason that the, uh, worms are getting stressed is because, uh, people like Carl are cutting them in half to try and make two snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two worms. Well, yeah. Well. That's the concern. <laughs> he huh? said, he said they can't even commit suicide if they're stressed by cutting <laughs> their throat. <laughs> I also sent him what I thought was quite interesting that the scientists have found that, um, the elephant hasn't got the best memory. The sea lion has, uh, right. based on, uh, they've, they've got a sea lion and they, uh, got it back into the old, uh, laboratory. Ten years after it had taught it a simple trick and it could still do the trick. What did you say to that, Carl? I'd say they don't go up to much anyway. <laughs> so if you do teach you something, it is going to remember it. Sure. Because it's got nothing else to do. Yeah. yeah. And then it also, I mean, I like sea lions. They look nice and everything, but what do they do? What was that? <laughs> sea lions? <laughs> yeah, what, what are they here for? It's another jellyfish, so, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like, it's there and people know about them, but what do they do? Mm. Yeah. What, does what do we do? do? What do we do, Carl? Well, what do we do? A cat, a cat, first, Steve said, is good for your heart. So you, you Why is it all geared to what's good for us? Well. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's, yeah. uh... Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? Do you like the fireworks? I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Is yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. No. Even as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks and lo yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out and- But I also think just the adults tears. think the kids love it and yeah. they're everywhere and, they're, and if they just got together and said, should we go this year, they'd all go no. Yeah, let's not absolutely. Go, let's not go yeah. this year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last one to the moon is a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, <laughs> I'd pay to see. That's a fireworks <laughs> display I'd like to see. As <laughs> it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. Is that your feeling, Carl? Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. Bone <laughs> marrow. Genius. We've had, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Ricky, educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, we though. We can do that at the end. We can win. Go on, then. But we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just oh, do educating Ricky. Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on, then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I t spoke to you in the week, and I had much better things, like when I tell you about, Brian Blessed climbing Everest, and for some reason it made him, uh, it, it played havoc with his belly and what? he followed through and he had to clean up. Shut using, himself? Yeah, using, um, using ice and stuff. Why are you telling, why are you telling me that Brian Blessed, what, what, in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he, he, was climbing Everest, right? Right. I give it to him, he's an actor and that, but he, he gave that a go. Yeah. Right, it played- What's the know, point of that, you'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's, he's, you know, he's Oh, good. so he's alright. Uh, me, me doing a boxing match, there's no reason he's rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself- Yeah, he did it's, that. It's commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point, yeah. Good. Been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, have well, probably cleared right. it up by now. Right, but, uh, <laughs> it, it slip on it. I can't really go just telling you this one, cause- Come on! Just honest, do it, or do it now! Steve, how we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means! Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, Talk. Right, right, listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people- <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be the judge of that. The, th the, thing that <laughs> the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even be bothered. Yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Right, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the, t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's way. <laughs> what was the that bonus for? Fight. And blind blessed shitting himself. What are you, what? No, don't you fucking, oh. no, tell me. That now, you nearly made me swear then. Just, I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this back, Carl, or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl, time's running out. Not that people, years ago, when people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And, to, and so you never forget the <laughs> time. Because if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope. And to cut it up into little pieces, and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of rope to people. And See, the, to the, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's, you, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope, and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all I have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Carl Pilgrim, in the chair now, the, um, oh, the talked about. The acclaimed educating Ricky. Right, well, just in case anyone's new, doesn't mm. normally listen. Yeah. Um, basically, I'm educating Ricky. Yeah. Uh, do a bit of research in a week, find stuff, news, history, anything that's interesting. Um, three stories, I give them a nice little headline. You take your pick. Yeah. Between now and three, you're going to learn three things. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the headlines are. Um, I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give us that again. I'll be no buying one of them. Nice, okay. Yeah. Uh, Creamy. we've also got, uh, Hippopotter News. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, uh, Chicken You Believe It. <laughs> chicken You Believe It. <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna go for Hippopotter News. Hippopotter hey, News? Hippopotter yeah. News. Right, well this one, it's, uh, uh, I'm not gonna take the credit here. I heard Christian talking about this on breakfast, right, because it's a good, good, uh, good story that happened. Um, basically, I don't know if I told you about it last week when we were having our spaghetti, but, um, no, oh, I think you did. Right, I know what it is. I know what this okay, is. Yeah, I've not heard this. <laughs> right, there's a little midget. Right, there's a circus- I'm loving it already. Circus going on somewhere, I think it was in America. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> is that present day or old times? I'm talking like in the last three weeks. Okay. Right? Uh, little midget, uh, <laughs> circus, really <laughs> packed out show, people are loving it. Um, <laughs> Steve, you'll ask the same question I did, I know. <laughs> so, um, so there's a little, little midget jumping up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> That's not a circus, <laughs> Right. I just take good money to see it. So, everyone, everyone's clapping and he's getting carried away. Because um, <laughs> he can't believe he's like, he can't believe they're loving it. I didn't know they'd like a little person on a trampoline, but they love me. But you know what it's like when, uh, if there's a crowd of people sort of encouraging you to sort of go higher and stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew he was, it was getting out of hand. <laughs> But he was jumping and he was coming down the road going, hi, yeah, and he's going really high in the air, right? So he's, he's doing this, crowd are clapping. There's a hippo, right, just sat next to the trampoline getting ready to come on and do his act. Oh, right, I thought he was in the audience. <laughs> no, no. There's a hippo getting ready to do his act, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the he's a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's sitting by the trampoline waiting to do his act? Because it's, Why do they sit in the dressing room and they go, five minutes, <laughs> Mr. Moss, five minutes, Mr. Moss. So, anyway, right, <laughs> so the hippo's there, uh, <laughs> He's getting annoyed, is he? Because this, because the midget is going, going to his I'm follow oh, this. I'm yeah. gonna, this is really thinking, annoying. Yeah. They're gonna be, yeah. oh yeah. no. So, <laughs> he's thinking, <laughs> he's already done the trampoline, my pogo stick out, he's never gonna work. <laughs> yeah, go on, so there's it, they're waiting. Uh, this, this, see, it's a great story and I just know he embellishes it or it gets slightly wrong. Go on. So, so there's a midget jumping up and down, the hippo's yeah. getting annoyed. He the crowd are going the mad, the midget's loving it, can't believe his luck. Although we think, you think, he probably knows is dicing with danger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, next thing you know, they're all saying hi, hi, hi. He gives it one big, like, heavy sort of landing on the trampoline, goes really high, but goes off at a funny angle. Oh. Hypotenuse. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and sort of flies up. <laughs> I've been used! <laughs> I've been used! Sure. Flies off at a funny angle. Ooh, dear. Hippo's there, swallows him whole. <laughs> Crowd are clapping, thinking that's why the hippo was waiting there. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> It's not rubbish, though. I but mean, no, maybe the, uh, there was an accident in a, uh, a circus with a midget and a hippo, eh? But at no point was this hippo waiting to go on going, come on. The midget flew off at hypotenuse and landed in the hippo's mouth and was swallowed whole. <laughs> this well, is- this is what you embellish it. That is great. And what's I that? I have to say, though, Rick, when I heard midget trampoline hippopotamus, I was thinking actually what had happened. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe. I mean- It is it. That, 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 you should never put those three together. <laughs> never. It's, it's a recipe for disaster. Everyone textbook. knows that. Midget trampoline it, Thomas. <laughs> Are you mental? You're asking well, for trouble. Well, you, you know, when he told me it, he said, and the midget, he didn't, he didn't mention the hippopotamus, <laughs> and he said, the midget went on like, and soon he fell off, and the hippo ate him. <laughs> and I said, sorry, what was the hippo doing there? He went, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a circus having a hippo. No, what do hippos do? What oh, can they do? You can't train them, can you? <laughs> what do you, what do you Aren't they, like, very deadly? They're yeah. huge, aren't you they? You can't have a hippo in a circus. Are you sure? You're not thinking of Zippo. <laughs> He's neither clown. Yeah. He did, no, 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 you know, no. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't some sort of, where Zippo was eating a midget and it's, it's some sort of horrible sexual act. No, it was definitely, I heard it on breakfast, right? Um, oh, okay, it sorry. No, it's definitely fact. Yeah, okay, it's definitely right, truth. okay, good. Uh, well, let's play a record then. So, um, uh, I'd like to play a, a classic Springsteen, we're all fans of Springsteen there. This might be his debut album, I'm not sure, Greetings from Ashbury Park. I think it is, yeah. Um, New Joysy. Um, and this is Growing Up, it's great, it's classic. Mm. Sorry, it did. Educating Ricky, part two. Right, what's the what's the clues right, left? Well, we've uh, we've we've got left uh, the headlines. I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> yeah. And we've also got uh, chicken. You believe it? Chicken. You believe it? <laughs> so <laughs> they're the two that are left. Which one's right. you for? Chicken. You believe it? Is not that picture, is it? In it that we saw. Which picture? The bloke with the. No, 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 no. Right. No, no. Okay. God, um, that was bad. Right, okay. Um, um, so, I just better explain we that. We can't really discuss this on air, can we? Well, we can. Um, uh, Steve brought in Carl, the best book ever, which is what is it? I, I found it when I was moving house. It's an FHM publication. It's kind of like lots of grotesque pictures and stories, and like the book of the uh, a book of freaks and weirdos and. And grotesque. Carl opened it, and the first one was like at the back. At the, the back. Well, you couldn't believe your luck, could you? What was it? What was what was number fifty? A bloke with two heads. And he said, "What's number one?" Yeah. And then number six, there's a bloke who's a squid or something. Uh, octopus. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's loving it. Uh, and number one, he said, well, it's just a fella under a rock. And I went, oh no, read on, I think I know about this. And it's the fella that was found, he caused a landslide while having sex with a chicken. And they pulled him <laughs> off and there he is, the chicken owner. Right, so Carl so could not believe his luck. So it's not that. Chicken, you believe it? I love that one. You're going for that one? Yeah. Right, well, we've talked a lot on the show about, um. We've talked a lot on the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, about <coughs> animals without heads. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't! We haven't! No, we talked about cockroaches could live without a head for well, seven days. Yeah, we talked about that. And then, of course, there was the, um, <laughs> the well known one about the, uh, the fellow who had his head cut off. And he, he, he blinked and he said to his mate, Count how many times I blink when my head comes off. Yeah. We, as you, when, when you told it to me, you said his head came off. And he said, <laughs> as he said, in the basket, quick, count how many times I blink. <laughs> And it was Nick Frost that had to go, no, Carl, no, he, he said it before. I went, in there. That was, that was lovely. So, uh, yeah, we've talked quite a lot about things, Ed's coming off. Go yeah. on, then. Well, this one. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> back in 1945. Oh, you looked it up the date. It's got a specific date, uh, boy. Mate Jonathan sent this one. You know him as well. It's lad at the BBC, right? He emailed mm. this one in. Mm. So, thanks for that. Um, chicken. It's called Mike. There's, There's a chicken uh, called- sorry, I, I missed a bit there. There's yeah, a chicken, chicken called a Mike. A chicken called Mike. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, what happened was, it was living on a farm, mm -hmm. right? Loads of chickens knocking about. <laughs> and, uh, the owner of the farm is like, you know, getting ready for tea and his wife says, uh, go out and get a fresh chicken mm. cos me, uh, my mum's coming round. Mm. So he thinks, well, <laughs> I, I, I want to get a good one in cos, uh, I want to impress her cos yeah. back then, even then, they wanted to impress the mother-in-law on that. Uh -huh. So they said, alright, I'll just nip out and get one. So he sees, uh, he sees Mike. Chicken running around. Is this during the war or after the war? 1945, I'd, I'd say that was after. No, it ended, well, it ended know. in 1945. Yeah, okay. September, go on. Right. 
Yeah. So, um, chicken's mm. running about, he thinks that one looks, uh, you know, that looks alright. I yeah. love that one. Mikey. So he picks it up, um, and he cuts his head off. Oh. Puts it on the block, cuts his head off, runs about a bit, like they do. Um, he thinks it'll stop in a minute. Keeps running about. Hmm. Oh, what's going on here? Right? He's, he's, he's now like chasing the chicken without an head. Yeah. He's saying he should die in a minute. Anyway, doesn't die. Chicken's walking around with no head. Um, lives for 18 months. Yeah. Chicken with no head. Yeah. What do you now, think of that? Well, I'll tell you, I've heard this story before, Rick, and, uh, my, the explanation as I understand it was that, um, certain vital cords, spinal cords, weren't severed when the head came off. So yeah. that was why it continued to, to yeah. live. Yep. I don't know if that sounds plausible. It's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, how did it take on, uh, protein and energy? The fella who yeah. owned it, he said, well, hang on a minute, he said, I could, I could kill it now. But I've got a wonder chicken here. But he's thinking, it must really want to live. Sure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if it survives that, they sort of got something here. Yeah. So we, uh, what he does, he gets a little, um, eye droplet thing that he used to use on it. Obviously not, not anymore, right? And he filled it with grain and water, and it had a big hole in its neck where its head used to be. And he, uh... <laughs> Incredibly. And he dropped... You know what, there's, there's, I mean, that, that is possible then, if it, you know, without, without infection. Without, 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 without infection, if he's taken on things, it is, it is possible, right? Why? <laughs> Why what? Why did he do it? How cruel is that? I mean, that was not cruel, because the chicken obviously, you know. He said, he said if he thought it was a bit fed up, he would have killed it. He said, but right. he was running around quite happy. Well, it wasn't <laughs> fed up at all, because it had no brain. <laughs> well. What do you mean, well? I'm just saying what- It what was I nothing. Meant. It was just, it was just sinew and nerves and electrical impulses breaking down energies, right? That's all it was. It, it didn't have a brain. So it was- but I- I'm worried about the psychology of keeping a pet without a head. <laughs> I'm worried more about what the farmer was thinking than the chicken. I tell you this, what I'm- uh, the question I'm asking is, was the mother-in-law impressed? <laughs> I mean, that's oh, why he's out. That's why he's out to shot this Mike's is, head This off. is lovely, but it's just the head where you don't kill a chicken like that all at once. <laughs> I thought we were having chicken for dinner. Come and look at this. <laughs> running around the yard. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, dear. So, there you go. You've learned something there. Yeah, I have learned something. Yeah? Yeah. So, the, one more. That farmer, I've learned that farmer was very strange indeed. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I have to say, to be fair to Carl, I've been feeling like when I read it, the reason he kept it alive was as a novelty. He sold, he, you know, he, he got charged people to come and see the incredible headless chicken right. called Mike. Right. So, <laughs> there we are. Yeah. That's great. So, Educating Ricky, right, number three. Final one. You've had uh, Hippopotamus. News. Love you had, you had Chicken, you believe it. <laughs> and the. <laughs> The last one is, um, I'll be no buying one of them. I love that one. Alright. Um, interesting one, this. I, th this. I mean, I spent probably three days looking for this stuff. <laughs> Alright. And another one that I came across, right, and, um, I was gonna use, I was a what bit a like, great life you've got! I was just, you know, going on the internet and that, and I also, looking magazines, found a story <laughs> about a bloke <laughs> who, um, I don't know, he's messing about with a chainsaw and he's-, he's <laughs> 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 oh. I don't know, he's messing about with a chainsaw. Um, he was juggling a midget and, uh, well I was taking and his alligator for a walk and, um, go on. And his arm, uh, come off, right? Come off? What do you mean his arm come off? The chainsaw took it off. Oh, yeah, so okay. Like, oh. Again, it's anyway, going, 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 oh no. Oh. So, uh, there's a picture of him on a exercise bike, sort of just with a, a little stump sort of balancing, but he's getting on with his life, he's happy and everything, everything's fine, he's not complaining, it's his own fault, he's got no one to blame, right? So anyway, he goes to the doctors and the doctor says, I can do something there. So he goes, well, it's alright, you know, I'm, I'm getting by alright, don't worry about it. And he goes, no, no, we've got an arm in, right? We can, um, we can attach that a real arm from someone who's, I think they've passed away or lost an arm or something and uh, <laughs> They lost an arm and didn't want it back. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, I'll have it. Are you using that? <laughs> yeah. No, because I know someone. Because <laughs> I know a bloke actually. Yeah. Well, can't you just put this one back on? <laughs> wow, it's first come, first serve, really. I was just, I, listen, I was just building a bionic man. <laughs> We've replaced one arm with a robot's arm, so we got a spare one. <laughs> so, the doctor's going, let, let me put it on, he's like, well, oh, all right then. So. <laughs> So, I'm they do, grateful, bastard. so he does the operation, right? 
<laughs> Everything's fine. He's loving it. He's, he's happy again because he said he can brush his teeth. Right. Okay. If this is if this is going to be <laughs> he's something loving like it again because now he can brush his teeth. Right. If this is going to be, and it was a leg. Or no, no, no. it was a chimp's arm, <laughs> or, or it was the arm it of was, a killer. It was yeah, it was two left arms, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to s kill you. Oh, let's let's leave it then. <laughs> what is it? So, What's the answer? No, it's not that. I'm just what missing. is okay. Right, right. So um, so he says, uh, go on and do it. So he, he he sews it on, and uh, like I said, he's happy. He's brushing his teeth. He can have a pint in the pub. He's lifting a pint with it. All mm. his mates are happy for him. Uh, it goes on for about two years. Everything's fine. Then it all starts going flaky. Oh, I knew it would. Right. Was it made of chocolate? <laughs> all right. So it all goes all like gammy, and then for some the reason, the arm going gammy. It goes gammy, and it gets longer. <laughs> <laughs> of course it does. So there's a picture of him, right, stood in the magazine. <laughs> He's stood there with his arms by his side. Um, one arm's normal. The other one is like past his knees. <laughs> it's re he can pull his socks up without bending over. So it's is really this going to be? They gave him, they gave him the arm of an eight-year-old child who would have been the tallest man in the world. No, he just said, "Oh, what am I going to do?" And the doctor said, "Oh, there's not much we can do," and left it. <laughs> What so, what, what, wait a minute, you can't leave it there. That's not a story. So, Carl, what, you've got story. to tell us the explanation. What, what, what Was what? it an incredible plastic arm? An incredible expanding arm? Did he fight crime later? No. Well, that's the end of the story. You've got no yeah, scientific that's explanation why, that's as to why- didn't, That's why I didn't pick it. But you just told it to us anyway! Yeah, but I'm just saying the sort of knowledge I come over when I'm looking for the good knowledge. <laughs> yeah? So <laughs> why did this arm grow? Lift? Why did this arm grow? He must have had an adult arm. They couldn't have given him an arm. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just what I'm. <laughs> it's rubbish again, it's isn't not, it? Well, well, I don't. It's an interesting story, but you should have. It's not. And it's rubbish. You it didn't happen. To the end. There was photos. <laughs> <laughs> Proof. Yeah. But you should have read to the end of the article, Carl. No, I did. And he said, uh, you know, he's not happy, and he wishes he he wouldn't have had it done, and all that, and you know. Did you sure this wasn't entirely unexpected? No, seriously, he was saying, you know, his teeth are nice and clean again because he could brush them and that, but his arms getting in the way. <laughs> really. <laughs> Ruining his shirts and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll leave that. Let's play. Let's play. Tune this. Come back with the next one because I love the fact that that this is like Ronnie Corbett telling one of his jokes. That's <laughs> ironic. <That's laughs> that wasn't even the story. He was gonna tell it. Well, Carl, that's that's about it. And uh, we got sidetracked on the last educating rookie. You telling me about a man whose arm grew. Well. Something, well, something went wrong. I'm not saying it's, it grew. Just saying. <laughs> what? 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 The rest went, of him shrunk. It, it went long. <laughs> it uh, went long. What is that growing? There? What do you mean it went long? Uh, did it grow or what? Did it come loose? That's that's what I was thinking. Oh, so it was hanging by a thread that's made it look long. Yeah. Within the skin. It's like how you can stretch a pair of tights if something is too heavy. Or... Arms are very much <laughs> like tights. They so, are very much so the like one, tights. the one that we didn't get round to on educating yeah. Ricky was uh, I'll be no buying one of them. Go on. Um, are you familiar <laughs> <laughs> okay. with the with the same white elephant? Something is a white elephant. Yeah. I don't oh, think so. Hold on. You phoned me last night and said, "What does white elephant mean?" <laughs> <laughs> and I told you. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I know where it came from, but I just was wondering what it was about. So how, in what way is educating Ricky, you calling <laughs> me up and asking me something? <laughs> well, do, do you know how it came about? You've given away some of the secrets of the show there, it would appear. I didn't realise he was phoning you for information. Well, he just asked me what, what the term white elephant meant in sort of like colloquial. <laughs> did, he sa did he say, Listen, why, why, why are you interested, Carl? No reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, go on. Well, what it is, ages ago when- So what do we understand white elephant to mean? It's- Well, some of that's useless that's like a bit of a, you know, a, 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 a you know, something that you wouldn't want around that's just, that's just stood there doing nothing. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Carl. So, uh, <laughs> so years ago when, <laughs> when people used to use elephants Years more, ago, go on. More, <laughs> when people used to use elephants? Yeah, go more, on. more than they do now. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> more than they do now! This doesn't involve a midget, does it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, um, so you know, they'd use them in the workplace and stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah, as factories. Sort of, yeah, yeah. yeah. To move stuff Tea around and that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> security guards. Yeah. Can't trust them with the buns, though. <laughs> 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 That's why they stopped using them. Oh right. god, go on. So there was loads of you, loads of elephants knocking about, about and the thing so is right. You couldn't if, move from. If you have a lot of something, uh -huh. you also have a lot of demic ones, don't you? you a lot, lot of what? 
you know, sort of demicky ones, ones that aren't right, really. Demicky? Demicky. Well, you know, like, it, they weren't, they weren't properly. They weren't- They weren't properly! <laughs> they weren't Sorry, demicky what, or Carl? properly! What are you what, doing? Right, I'm getting to the story, so what I'm telling they you were, is- They were a bit demicky, so they weren't properly. Have you started making words up? Right. Yeah, and <laughs> you Stanley Unwin! <laughs> Listen. Reincarnated. What? Demicky? What? Yeah! There was a lot of albino elephants knocking about. Okay. Where? Where is this? Um, old Africa. Clothes. Africa. <laughs> Uh, should we say Africa? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If an answer's got a question mark at the end, I'm well, not sure. It's either answer. Africa or India, but I'll give you a clue. Were these elephants, do they have big ears or little ears? Um, I didn't sort of notice the size of the elephants. I noticed, what I noticed is they were white because they were albino elephants. Okay. Right? So, <laughs> that's why they're heading albino buying one of them. Okay. Albino buying one of them. So, <laughs> what would happen is, people who didn't know what they were doing, like, you know how you get people making a mistake buying cars that are full of problems and that, back yeah. then when, when people were buying elephants, they'd go up to someone, say, I'm after an elephant, and the fellow would say, yeah, I've got one here for you, sure. this is a nice one. Mm -hmm. And it was all white and stuff, and it had, like, blue eyes. You should never trust a used elephant salesman. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this elephant that's white with blue eyes. Right, so, <laughs> this is um, great. So, yeah. uh, so, a yeah. fellow who didn't know what he was doing would buy the elephant, and he'd get it back, and it'd be all sort of lazy and stuff, oh, and we'd be doing the stuff. Yeah. Mm. And he'd say, what's, what's up with this? And his mate, who's a bit of an expert with elephants, and go, oh, where have you bought that from? And he'd say, oh, I got it off that fella, and he goes, oh. All this embellishing <laughs> nonsense <laughs> he with the story. You shouldn't have bought that. So he goes, why? And he says, it's only albino, isn't it? And he's like, what does that mean? And he said, oh, it's, it gets tired. Yeah. Um, it's not that good at doing work and that. You shouldn't it have bought it. It steals from you. But elephants back then were like a god. You know what I mean? Right. You couldn't, you couldn't say, oh, I'm sick of this, then I'm gonna abandon it or anything, okay. because ele elephants were seen as, like, pretty high up on the chain of things. So <laughs> they'd end up being stuck with an elephant, that's an albino, yeah. couldn't do much, gets tired, basically gets in the way, so they said, that's where they're saying, like, you know, oh, but a bit of a white elephant there. <laughs> <laughs> what so, do you reckon, Rick? <laughs> I, I feel, I don't, I feel like I, I haven't been educated. I feel like I've lost something. <laughs> so at that time in my life that I can never get back. I feel like I've sort of been soiled and I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm angry. Sure, yeah, I can see that. And all that rubbish around, look at his little face. Well, what was that, all that shit about a second-hand elephant salesman and his mate knew about elephants? <laughs> what is it, what are they, they had blue eyes. What are you? Well, there you albinos go. have red eyes for a start. Uh, oh, that's it. We've run out of time. Oh, what? What? The, I mean, Sorry. what are you going to do about this next week? Are you going to actually do some w educating next week? And what about Rockbusters? Are you going to make the clues proper cryptic clues? Well, that's the teaser, isn't it? That's what we'll leave them with. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be any? Oh, I need some learning. I need some knowledge, Carl. Well, educate me. I might be able to help you. Go uh, on. Uh, we've got three things, as always. I give them a little uh, mm. heading to tease you uh, yeah. as to which one you want to learn first. Yeah. Uh, first one is, uh, is the tip included? Is the tip included? I like it. Um, second one, I want to come here in hindsight. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have come here in hindsight? Yeah. Okay. And the third one, how am I going to have to thump you? How am I going to have to thump you? Mmm. Okay, oh, and you've trawled what the internet. So, I, 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 so, I, so if I can get into the mindset of this plan, uh, is the tip included? Well, obviously, that's probably not going to be about a waiter. It's going to be like, is that if that's someone losing the end of his knob, I assume. Um, arm are going to have to thump you. That's a man who lost his arm in a fight, but then picked it up with the other arm and smacked <laughs> him with it. Um, what was the middle one? I want to come here in hindsight. Hindsight. Hind. Heinz sight? Uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah, it's someone was blinded by baked beans. Sure. So what are you going for then? Uh, I think I'd better go for, um, armor oh, gonna have to thump you. Alright, well this isn't- I've been struggling again, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, searching iron low for stuff and- and some of these I had to leave till this morning. So right, because there's just not morning. enough knowledge out in the world, is not there, that you don't on. know about? I found out about something in the week about a guy who, um, I uh, was playing tug of war. This is bonus material, <laughs> he isn't it? He was playing tug of oh, war. Oh, uh, his arm came off. His, only his arm came off. Yeah, he got caught up in the rope. Yeah. No, no, no. He didn't. He didn't get caught up in the rope. He just was trying that hard and didn't want to lose. He kept holding. He allowed it. his arm to be pulled off. He really wanted to win. And well, the other no. team, the the other team pulled it and his arm came off. No. Well, I don't know who to believe. Well, uh, think about it. If he's gripping, yeah. 
As soon as there's tension, like the, the, the arm coming out of the socket, the hand might release. I think his arm got caught up in the rope. And so it was involuntary, as opposed to him going, well, my arm's coming off, but I'm not gonna lose this! <laughs> you might be anyway, right. That's the, that's the fact that's you're a not bonus. That's a bonus fact. Yeah, well, that's that's educated uh, me. Well, a man lost his arm. <laughs> oh, interesting. Go on. Um, arm are gonna have to thump you. Yeah. Do you know the saying, uh, shut your face? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, so? I've heard the well-known Shakespeare, innit? Yeah. Do, you know, do you know how it came about? Uh, no, Joe Dolce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, go on. It's, uh, ages ago. Oh, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> like, uh, knights who wore armour. Okay. That's, uh, armour going after something, yeah, that's how it came about. Okay, armour. Um, like. they, they wore all the stuff and they had the helmet and say if they, they guarding something at night. Mm. Stood outside a castle or something. Yeah. And there's probably gonna be two of them. Mm. Right. So they stood there talking and that. <laughs> and, uh, talking about stuff. And. The future. Sort of, yeah. Medieval what, stuff. One yeah. of them, one of them's like, oh, we should shut up. You know, I've been stood here for hours and he's going on and you on. Get, yeah, sure. So he'd say, shut your face. Meaning, shut the guard down on your helmet. The visor. And I can't hear you then. Uh huh. So shut, shut your face. Shut your face. And that's okay. how- that's how it came about. Well, I suppose that's- It would be interesting if I could just rely on it as- I'm a, not sure it's true, yeah. I know, I just never know, I can- <laughs> It needs to be cooperated. It's like, I don't know where he got it from, but anything via Carl mm. is- precarious. Yeah, though. I mean, I feel like maybe you should give us your sources next time. You know, tell us where I you know, got I'll tell you. from. Got it off the internet. Yeah, but where on the internet? I can't remember where that one was. I mean, I- I always go through, like, the news pages and stuff. And I, I, I came this news should be updated because <laughs> they've only reached the 17th century, <laughs> which is last week with people eating um, tomatoes no, off no, lead but plates. Then I look at news and there was stuff about a woman who was in a shop and she, um, I don't know, some they had some workmen in, workmen in doing the shop up, and they had some wood glue left out in chest for some pear juice, and then the guy went and thought the glue in the thing was the pear juice, and she went and drank that. But that's not really. News. No. So I thought, well, we're not, not really that. I wish you hadn't told us. There was one about. So there's some poor woman now whose ties of tiles have fallen off because she tried to put them up with pear juice. Yeah. See, that's the that's the danger of mixing up pear juice with toxic glue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your wallpaper and your tiles and everything just yeah. fall down. Um. There was, there was also Be careful, everyone. Be please. careful. There was something about uh, kids having hamburgers. It makes them fat. Hamburgers. Uh, ju- hold on. What you having? Food with high fat yeah. content can make you put on weight. Yeah. Don't believe it. You're an idiot. What's so, the next one? Well, no, um, let's play tune. No, let's play tune. You've still got to come. You've still got. I want to come here in hindsight, and you've still got. Is a tip included? Carl just uh, said to me, "Hey, Art, here's something. You can't hold your breath to death." <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried it, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> it's just another little lesson. <laughs> 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 oh. There's someone here who's in a really low ebb. Yeah, They've been listening yeah, to a show, yeah, they were going to commit suicide. Yeah, they yeah. just started holding their breath and thinking, yeah. oh, screw it. <laughs> well, what oh. did you learn in the week, right? I'm always doing all the educating. I asked you, you were talking about watching a program about jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, that'll be interesting. I'll try and find some stuff out, but I couldn't find anything that I didn't already know about them. Mm. <laughs> it must mm. be difficult for you to find anything you don't already know. So what 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 did you learn about jellyfish? I, I agreed with you by the end of it that they should be wiped off the face of the earth because they're balls of water in membrane, right, that go around stinging people to death. Uh. Let's lose them, Carl. Let's lose the jellyfish. Yeah? That's, that's what I think. Because mm-hmm. I, I was stung mm-hmm. by one, did it, you know? Oh, you got stung by yeah, one? Yeah, I was on holiday and got stung by one. Yeah. And I, d- I don't understand. No, I don't you're understand not, them, not a fan of them. So yeah. that's, that's that. <laughs> oh, good. So well, that's <laughs> sorted out the jellyfish conundrum. <laughs> We've <laughs> solved that particular worry. Right then, yeah. so, uh, take your pick then. I asked him his, what, if he could have any animal the other day. Did I ask him on air as well? Don't know. Off air, he <laughs> said, I've got it down to two. Right, and this was, he said, he said uh, what favourite animal we're looking at, or could I own one? And I went, you could own one. And he went, right, but could I own one, or would I have, would I have trouble? I went, Carl, you've got all the expertise, you can just have it in whatever it needs, and you go down there, he went, right, and I won't regret it and get fed up. I said, no, Carl, just what animal, if you could have any animal, what animal would you love? He went, I've got it down to two. I went, what is it? He said, either the rhino or the hippo. What's your logic? Well, I've... 
I, I don't know. That that was then. I mean, ask me tomorrow. <laughs> and I might have two other favourites. Do you know what I mean? When was that? It's a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> when was that? Well, you were there. Yeah, but, uh, you know. What, so what, what are they today? Quickly now. First animal quickly, that comes Quickly now. Any animal I want. You could have any animal in the world. Right. From party, one that's maybe extinct. Anything you want. Right. I might have, um, I might, just for today. Just for today. I might have a scorpion in a, in a little box. A little scorpion in a box. <laughs> what's your what's your thinking? It's the chimp every time. It's Just the chimpanzee or the gorilla. N no, but have I told you that program about the scorpion? How they all help each other out. Right. Have Scorpions all help each other out. No, no, no. This is brilliant. Right. Somewhere in the desert. Okay. Um. There's these <laughs> in little. In the desert. It's like these little monkeys that are underground or something. <laughs> and there's there's holes. Is this beneath the planet of the apes? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth in the series. Are they I think, talking apes? Oh, I forget it actually. No, and you've got it wrong anyway. They're not monkeys. There's little monkeys under the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what are monkeys. they doing down there? They're Pulling lizards. Into underground mines. They're lizards, if you remember. And the lizard goes to sleep, and the bloke comes along. You've told this. And the oh, we've done it. All right. <laughs> monkey from monkey. Right. That's <laughs> what happens in his mind. From lizard to monkey. <laughs> oh, evolution would have been so much easier if Carl was around. Oh, right. uh, turn it into a monkey. I'm fed up with a lizard. Just so promise me <sighs> once again, Carl. I've asked you before. Promise me you'll never have children. <laughs> <laughs> go on, right, okay. Right, what are you having? Right, is what's- the, what are they again? Is the tip included? Yeah, go on, that one. Right. In Turkey- Nice. Um, <laughs> it's not, actually. Mm -hmm. mm. That's where I went and there was them little fellas after Suzanne in the kitchen. What? <laughs> what do you mean? We stayed in a- we went to Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Turkey um, and there yeah. were some little fellas. Well, they had quite a few sort of midgets working in the kitchen. Why? Mm. Is, it, is it a theme? No, was it a theme just, holiday? Just, I don't know. Might get them cheaper or something. Was it a week? So, they, they <laughs> were get working- Get them cheaper? They were working in the kitchen and one of them fancied Suzanne mm. and kept sort of eyeing her up. Mm -hmm. And she was winding me up saying, oh- Not eyeing up and down, just eyeing her up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, so what anyway. was she doing in the kitchen? No, it's like a pick- pick what you want to eat type buffy, but you have people clearing the tables and that ready for you to come along. Are they low tables? And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, he was just keeping an eye on her. Well, what did he say though? Was he? What was it? Was it? It was Turkish. So I don't know what he was saying. But he was. Was it? Was it? Was little fella. Yeah. Did he? What do you mean, a little fella? What do you mean, little fella? Sort of dwarf like. What do you mean dwarf like? He had magic powers, or he was four foot. What do you mean, Carl? A little bloke, just like a normal bloke, but small. If you stood him in the desert, you wouldn't know. But he'd be hot and Right, Carl. He should watch out for the monkeys. Yeah, underground. There's underground what, monkeys. Look, look, you can't just say there was a little midget fella who was eyeing up my girlfriend and then leave it. What do you mean? Do, what What was happening? This is a story to us. This is much more interesting to us than and she was deaf, right? And she hit her head. That's much more. I don't understand how this ma how it manifested itself. Did he come over and say something? No. Do you know? You know when it's like girls know, don't they? When when some someone fancies them. What do you mean there was lots of them as well? Do then? they? That's worth knowing. Listen, <laughs> 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 right. Come on. Right. So you went into this. You went to this holiday, yeah. Yeah. And like you went it. into the, the what the dining room or something. Yeah. yeah downstairs. And you looked. Room. You thought this is all. There's no one serving. Yeah. And they go, <laughs> Wait a oh, minute. Hold on. You looked down and there was a little waiter. There was loads of them running around busy. <laughs> Why though? Why did they get the summer? What do you mean? Because it was in summer. They had more they, of them they, they come out in summer. They come out in summer. What do you mean they had more? What, what do you because mean? Because it's busy, isn't it? Well, no, they 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 know, in the why were they all midgets? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't heat stunt your growth or something. No. Uh, well, they just happened to. Maybe it was a thing that they did for tourists or something. I don't know. I just got on with my meal. It was a holiday. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Go this on. Right, so, 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 some midget serving. I'm not going to ask any questions. Right. Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're all little fellas running around, and <laughs> this one always was like, you know, oh, do you do you want a new serve yet? You know what I mean? Going out of his way oh, to sort of turning on oh, the yeah, charm. Yeah, he yeah, oh. was going out of his way. The others weren't. Right. Um, I think what was happening is he'd been working with Santa all the winter. <laughs> yeah. Or a sort of little summer break. This this one he was your waiter, and so he was being polite to you. Maybe. 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 But what did Suzanne say then? When well, she was what, using it to wind me up. What was she saying always? Oh, just like, you know, look. look he I've may be him. small, but he's well built like a- Yeah, he's all man. So- Were you jealous of a midget then? You were jealous of it him? It is a bit annoying, isn't it? Why? Uh, it wouldn't bother me as much now, because I've been with her for ages. Right. But at the time, that might have been one of our first holidays, and it's like, you, you know, what, what's going on? I've paid for this holiday. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, you get off with a midget? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So anyway. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because you got chatted up by a bearded lady, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell yeah, you what, yeah. I'll tell you what. No, that's got nothing to do with that. <laughs>
<laughs> what were you gonna say? Oh, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say the hotel was half bored and maybe. Oh, right. I yeah. thought you were gonna say it's just one of her shortcomings. So listen, right? Play, play a record. Paddy drum, Paddy drum boy, uh, born again. Right, just get this educating Ricky out of the way. So turkey, yeah. So what is this again? Th this is educating Ricky as a tip included. Right. Apparently, a fella was on holiday in Turkey. Um, it's just having a normal holiday. Weather's good. You know, he's having a good time. And Weight is all normal height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's having his meal. He hears a load of screaming going on in the kitchen. Mm, hold on. Has his girlfriend wandered in there? <laughs> and they do, um... With a step ladder. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. the circumcised people in the kitchen and apparently... What are you talking about? <laughs> whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. We were Sorry. sidetracked there for a minute. What are you talking about? Well, I'm just excited about two things at once here. One, they circumcised people in the kitchen. <laughs> two, I guessed it was someone losing the end of their knob. <laughs> he did, yeah. I started <laughs> thinking like Carl Pilkington. Extraordinary. That is amazing. Apparently it was- it was going on. It wasn't just a one-off either. Well, when I say a one-off, I mean they did it more than once. Yeah. Right? Um, and there was, um, he was there for a week and apparently the first night it was quiet and then the rest of the week, every day, it'd be like having his- having his breakfast or even his lunch or even his tea. Yeah. Right? He'd be doing it all day. Oh. You'd be hearing- Lunch and breakfast, fair enough, really. Yeah, so it's it. tea time. And don't do that. Um, and apparently it's a tradition over there. You can't even make a complaint about it. It's like, well, you should have, you know, should have found out before you you come over. See, here. I can't believe this is Sorry, true. I'm a little I bit can't lost. believe the, the, this is he true. He was in a restaurant, uh, in a hotel, and there were people having circumcisions in uh, the in the kitchen. Yeah. In the, is that right? I, 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 I'm even worried that we're bordering on the racist here, suggesting that that is tradition that Turkish people cut the end of their cocks off in the kitchen. Yeah. At meal times. Mm. I think you're wrong, Carl. This just sounds ludicrous, Carl. No, I don't think it happens everywhere. Right. I think this just in this, oh, this, this, in this hotel. Certain certain places. <laughs> certain hotels. Certain hotels. What is it like two star? Yeah. No, I, I don't, that, that, Why did he go to the foreskin inn? <laughs> <laughs> it was his own fault, wasn't it? <laughs> so that that. Sorry, that that's it, is it? Have they clued? So, so, no, wait, wait, wait. That's the story. Y you educated me, right? <laughs> Once a fella saw some <laughs> Turkish people cutting the tip of their no, I'm off in the kitchen. Thanks very much. Oh. Thanks very much, Carl. Got any more? Well, there's things you can learn from it. Either don't go to Turkey. No! <laughs> uh, don't have calamari when you're over there. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Okay, Carl. One more. Can we just- Don't get the ump, just because so far you've come up with nothing. What's the la last one? Give us the teaser clue again. It was, um, I want to come here in hindsight. I wouldn't have come here in hindsight. Yeah. Right, give me thinking. some education. This will be the thing that teaches me something. I can feel it in my bones. Come on. Uh, there's a kid in Kenya. Uh, -huh. uh he was messing about with some beans. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. We talk. guessed that as well. You did, yeah. Um. He's fed up because we've guessed his puns, I think. He put one of them in his ear. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the mum or the dad said, uh, oh, what have you done that for or whatever. Yeah. Um, so they'll have to take you to the doctors now. So they took the kid to the doctors and the doctor said, oh, he said, I can get that out, I can sort that out for you. So, um, he took it out and the doctor said, right, that's, uh, that's £3.50. <laughs> <laughs> and the dad said, I've only got two seventy on me. And the doctor said, right, well, and put, he put the bean back in his, his kid's ear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, a couple of questions from me, very quickly. Are you sure that those were definitely the sums involved, were they? <laughs> well, the equivalent of whatever right. whatever the deal with in in Kenya. Yeah. It was the equivalent of, of you know. Oh, so 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 you so what currency was it, Carl? That you you translated into sterling. <laughs> I don't know. No, it, no, it was saying in in the thing. It said the equil equivalent of three pound fifteen, two pound seven. Did yeah. it say that? Yeah. Sorry. Did it like, say that? Yeah. Did Carl look at me? Look at me. Did it say that? Yeah. It said. It said that's that. That was the. Uh, did it say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> it, it, it definitely said that. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just like I suppose. I don't know. I mean, all these things. The idea is, it's not like a lesson. It's like. I'll tell you this, see what you can get from it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so you yeah. look at what I've told you already, the, the yeah. knights who said shut your face, that's yeah, like- that's- that's amazing. That explains itself. Yeah. Um, turkey with the circumcisions in a restaurant. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that'll hold me in good stead, yeah, go Don't, on. don't go there or whatever. Yeah. This one, um, if you're in Ken, you don't put beans in your ears or something. I th <laughs> doctors <laughs> or are- Or carry three pounds fifty or the equivalent I mean, of. I, it's just the idea that the doctor put it back in his ear. He, yeah, he forced it back in his ear. So is it still there to this day? I mean, is there any update on that stuff? Or did he go back with the 350? I presume he either went and got a, like a second opinion, see if he could get it cheaper. Right. For another doctor. Yeah. Or he said, right, I'll come back next week. Yeah. After I've been paid. Or he saw how the doctor did it and thought, well, I'll have a go at that. Sure. I'll get home. Yeah, for free. But he never said what it, how it ended. No, no. But. I mean, I, I, I apologise for this week. I mean, I, I, I haven't got that much out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on the show, we've got educating Ricky. I'm not happy with this. Oh, really? Because the, the last few weeks have been genius. <laughs> what is what is the drop in quality? Is there of the education of me? <laughs> well, it's, it's just like I said, I've wasted a lot of time this week searching on the web. Right? Um, you waste a lot of time searching on the web because you come up with things that aren't true. Why don't you look in books and verified sort of like journals? The web is the new book though, isn't it? No. The it is, web the new is the library. new book. <laughs> That's what's going on. Yeah. Well, so I've been searching, there's hardly anything. I spoke to you in the week. Um, yeah. About Monday or Tuesday. What did you say? Two there's days. nothing happened this week in the world. There's nothing from... going on. There was a new car wash that you can put dogs in. <laughs> <laughs> there was a car wash you could put <laughs> dogs in. That's the only thing that's happened in the world. <laughs> and that and the jellyfish. <laughs> and we've covered that. So. <laughs> Can you just quickly tell us about the car wash with the dog in it? Well, that, I don't know what's the that story. That didn't make the top I three. Did, I, didn't, I didn't waste that much time on it, to be honest. What did it, it just say? Said, it just said, um, you know, how busy are you? Uh, have you got a dog? Um, <coughs> how about saving some time? There's some car wash out. Um, it's, it's not a car wash, it's dog wash. Um, you take it down there, put your coin in, put your dog in, and it comes out clean. See, there's nothing in is it. This, is this called a bath, isn't it? No, but it's like a machine. Right. There's a machine. But, but we'll look, you know, that's why I didn't pick it. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, come on then. Right. I need some education. I no, need, it's uh, Rockbusters. I know, but I need says. education. I need I some know, education. I know, I know you're you know, but we've promised some Rockbusters. Educating Ricky, I will be ditching before Christmas. Why? <sighs> it will be going. Really? Why? Because there's nothing it's, out there. It's just struggling. I was thinking on the way in today, I can either do, um, doing something more with Steve, because we've done, like, the Ricky angle. Either yeah. we can do, uh um, Educating Steve. <laughs> No, either like a, a bit of a call my bluff type thing, but it's like a con merchant, and I have to like trick you. Okay, right, con so merchant, I'm the I like con it. And the other merchant, and then mm. or I was thinking something that you just do do some work and you have a moan for a bit, okay. and that's a bit that, that's like a wine merchant that you just like <laughs> whine on about something. <laughs> Again, I just, I just, I the just pun comes these, first with yeah, you, doesn't it? Yeah. You've worked out that first. Yeah. That's like, um, okay. I told you I've come up with a couple of sitcoms for me. Go on. One is I've got an imaginary navy called Merchant's Navy. Oh, yeah? just, I've got yeah. a navy in it. And the pre premise is I've got a navy. Yeah. And another one is I live in- And that's as far as he's got as well. Yeah, that's just all I've come up with. If, you, if you've got any ideas there, uh, Carl, yeah. that'd be much appreciated. Yeah. Another one is I live in quite a salubrious part of North London, and that's called Merchant of Little Venice. And I live in Little Venice. Uh, I d again, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens, but, uh, mm. any ideas, Carl? <laughs> you know, I've got one when I play an Italian waiter, and it's called Shut Up a Gervais. Yep. That's so, uh, good. We're, we're, that's the one we're working on now, actually, to follow up with the office. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, yeah. We'll do something with that. Yeah. We have still got Educating Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to uh, it. Go on, let's well. have one, let's have one. No, I'll give, I'll give you the titles. Give me the titles, yeah, go on, yeah. Right, you've got, um, three bits of info that's gone on in the world. Yeah. Or, uh, or possibly sort of, sort of uh, information. Older times. Old Never go further times. back in the seventeenth century, do we? Well, no. Uh, let's, let's 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 make it clearer. There's three bits of information <laughs> that people have put on the net, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whether or not they're true. Well, <laughs> yeah. Different issue. And that he still gets it a little bit wrong oh, in translation always, yeah. and sort of adds bits to it. <laughs> yeah. Go right, on. So we've got. Uh, I love it when he plays out those historical dialogues. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. like the fifteenth century where he goes. So anyway, a bloke says to himself, <laughs> "I'll tell you what I'll do." <laughs> so the horse isn't happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go on. Right, so the three that you've, uh, you've got to pick from, you've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. let's get your kit on, we're off down the butchers, yeah? Uh, we've right. got, um, wash up with you. <laughs> <laughs> wash up with wash you. Wash up with you! Ah, yeah? 
And yeah. uh, the last one, I couldn't really think of a, a good title for, so yeah. it's just, uh, <laughs> why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something? <laughs> It's my, it's mine and Steve's favourite bit of the whole show. This is what we do this show for now, educating Ricky. Yeah. Go for it, Carl. You said that learning can't be fun. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, I'll go for the one, what's the one about the butcher going down the butcher shop? You've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. Yeah. You going for that one? Yeah. Well, do you know the saying, oh, um, <laughs> don't let the cat out of the bag? Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what it means? Yeah, well, don't give away a secret. Right. Well, do you know how it came about? No. Well, uh, ages ago, <laughs> before, like, <laughs> ages ago. 17th century? Yeah, before, like- Yeah, yeah, 17's <laughs> good. Yeah. Before, like, you know, proper butchers and Jewhursts and supermarkets and that, you used to get these blokes. Who, oh, right. who sold meat. Right. right? Butcher, butchers they were called then, I think. Yeah, yeah, but the difference was they didn't stay in the same place, they moved about. Right? So they'd turn up on a street corner. Right. And he'd have like loads of carrier bags of like- Carrier uh, bags? <laughs> yeah, with, you know, with meat in and that, and people would Plastic be like, carrier bags? Yeah, yeah with whatever. mobile butcher on them. Yeah. yeah. Right, so, uh, <laughs> And an email address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. People went, right, yeah, I need some meat. Right, so they'd, uh, <laughs> they'd go up to this bloke, and uh, say, what have you got? And he'd say, well, I've got a, got a, you know, you can have a, a bag full of pig, or you can have a, whatever, a bag full of chicken, whatever. Yeah. And they'd go, yeah, how much? And they'd go, oh, you know, call it, call it a fiver, whatever. Yeah. And um, they'd, they'd buy them, and to, to make more money, they didn't always fill the bag with what they said was in it. Oh, I knew, I thought that might be the case. Right? Yeah. So what they, they used to do- Did they put cats in there? Yeah. But I don't see what, what- Okay, so sometimes they would put a cat in the bag they put and a pretend cat in it the was bag. chicken or whatever else. Yeah, so- but why was a cat any cheaper than a chicken? Because cats are wandering around the streets, aren't they? Chickens aren't. So they'd, they'd get a chicken, they'd put a chicken on the top so that when they look in it, they'd go, yeah, that's all right. Got a bag full of chicken. They'd get home to make the dinner yeah. and they'd be like, what are we having tonight? And they'd go, well, you'll never guess. <laughs> and they'd, they'd have like, you know, well, you can have a chicken leg and, you know- But it wouldn't got, be, it'd be a cat. Yeah. <laughs> they'd have to defrost a pizza. Yeah. Sure. Did they mind that they were eating cat then, in the, in those days? He didn't say. He just was saying about the saying, uh, don't let the cat out of the bag. It's like, you know, uh, if they see that, they're gonna go mad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mildly disappointed with this story. It's all right if it's true, but you know, there's something about it's just... I want to know more. He always leaves yeah. it. Is it Carl doesn't quench your thirst for knowledge, he creates more. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, yeah, he's like the pot noodle of information. Yeah, do you know, I, I, he never, I wanna go- I got nourished by it. It's, uh, if he, if for every fact he tells me, there's ten others that spring yeah. up that yeah. I have to get clear. Well, yeah. So it was the people that were doing this, it was the, it was the dodgy butchers that coined this phrase. Were they saying to each other, don't let the cat out of the bag? I, <laughs> what I mean by that, Jack, is don't let them see the cat. Yeah. What yeah. we've stuffed in there. Yeah. Dodgy butcher, that's another phrase, isn't it? <laughs> So that's that's the first one. Uh, is that a euphemism or is that yeah, dodgy butcher? As his meat delivered round the back. Sure. So that's that's that one. So let's get your kit on. What does that mean? It's a, a euphemism for uh, homosexuality. Okay. And meat, presumably, in that means different things. It doesn't. It, it's it's a word that is also a male would it, would bird. Would it mean chicken or cat <laughs> necessarily in that context? <laughs> yeah. Or well, I suppose it could. Yeah. 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 Carl look, just looks- look at him. It, it, Carl looks at you like a cat. Yeah. Whenever we leave him behind, if we don't talk, like, straight at him and let him see our lips moving, mm. and it's, you know, monosyllabic and very- very sad. Look, he's lost- he's lost in that conversation there. He just drifted off, didn't you, Carl? No, I just was also thinking on animals and that something else I was gonna use. Go on. Was, um- is This it... isn't a radio show, is it? I just suddenly caught or something. This I is no- this that. is nothing. I told you that before. It's- it's been bad today. No, but I mean, it's the way, this, this casual way that it's like w we almost have no regard for our listener. And I'm not proud of that. I just don't know what to do about it. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know how to do this properly. I, I mean, we're just chatting here. I mean, it's only Anderson who's seen through us. And <laughs> yeah. that surprises me that more people haven't. I mean, what are the figures like? Do people listen to this show? I'll find out for you. You keep saying that. But, um, yeah, there's this parrot. 
Uh, <laughs> apparently, it was I mean, in. Rick, it's unique. <laughs> if nothing else, I mean, when you wake up with Woken tomorrow, you're not even going to yeah. hear him start alive. <laughs> there was this parrot. Go on, there was this parrot. Yeah, go on. And it can talk, and that someone's obviously, t you know, taught it out how to speak, and that, and yeah. um, it flew away. Oh. And it's living in this church, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, people are at the church doing oh. hymns and that. And then Trouble's brewing. In, be in between if the that hymns. parrot we, uh, was owned by an old uh, miner who used to swear a lot, yeah. well, then the vicar is going to be is going to be really annoyed. That vicar, yeah. that vicar's going to go on. I just hope he stays quiet <laughs> during the vicar's sermons. <laughs> yeah, go on. Have you read it? No, go on. Have <laughs> <laughs> you read it? No, go on, no, because that's that's what happens, right? Go on, in, tell us, Carl. During, during the hymns, it's sort of effing and jeffing and stuff. Effing really. <laughs> and jeffing. Yeah. And everyone's like going, oh, you know, it's quite funny, really. You know, it doesn't know what it's doing. Everyone's yeah. having a laugh. Yeah. But it's causing a havoc at funerals. <laughs> 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 when did this happen? Uh, uh not, and not years ago. John uh, was a much loved man. He was a wanker. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, so that was another what story. What can you I... say about Uncle John? Bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love, I love the fact that when you look at things, you go, "That's interesting." A parrot that swears at funerals. That would be amazing. And it stays with you. You see, for a simple man, you retain an awful lot of knowledge. It's just all rubbish. It's all Do you know what I mean? If you just replaced all this rubbish with good stuff, mm. you'd be an intellectual. Yeah. Really. Cause, I mean, your, your retention is fantastic. Yeah. So- Did I lose you again there, did I? So, so Was it the word retention? <laughs> right, Carl, come on in, educating Ricky. So, don't let the cat out of the bag, that's where that uh, comes from. Mm -hmm. Comes from a crafty butcher. <laughs> right, go on then. So the next, uh, little headline is, uh, wash up with you. Wash up with you, go on. You wanna know about that? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> it's a survey that they did. <laughs> survey that they did this week. They? Yeah, some some university did some survey. Brilliant. Did a world test on yeah. washing up. Yeah. And uh, each country were given 140 pots to clean. Um, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Turkey were the slowest <sighs> at washing up. The Turks. Uh, it's not because the little fellas that work in the kitchens with no, is it? They can't reach. Spain. <laughs> Spain were the cleanest and the, uh, Germans were pretty good as well, so. <laughs> I don't know where to start with this. <laughs> I, I, honestly, Steve, I don't know where to start with that. I Look at his face. It was really light, right? We've had the <laughs> parrot, right? These are things that I found. Found the parrot, right? I've told you about the dog in the car wash. Right, you didn't tell me about that. You said there's a car wash for a dog. That's all you told me. Yeah, but- The parrot, you said there's a parrot, what? It's a problem at funerals. Yeah. That's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. And, Do you understand? And-, and uh, uh, they used to eat cats. What else have we got? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. Why? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. I'm interested. Why? Um, some- <laughs> Tap I, dancing? I, <laughs> why? So See, yeah, I didn't write He's trying to about. break Roy Castle's record. <laughs> <laughs> He's still going. Come on. Come on. What is it? What is it? Think. It's an uh, elephant and it was really old. It was about 76. Right. And it had sore feet. Because it's old and, and they don't make stairs and the that roads, big, do they? roads are bad and that. Yeah, go so, on. So um, they said, "What we're going to do?" And the <laughs> town was like, "Oh, you know, we're used to seeing it around. It's part of the thing. You know, we don't want it to have sore feet." Yeah. So they got some slippers made for it, <laughs> <laughs> and it had like a picture of the elephant looking happy wearing some slippers. <laughs> I love him. I love Carl. His world. Think of it. Where did you see this picture? That was on the internet. <laughs> right. That's a lesson though for any elephants listening. You know, don't wear stilettos to work every day because no. you can do your feet in. So that it's but don't, a, have ele don't elephants have really bad memories? No, they, they have, have really good memories. memories. Oh, do they? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good then. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, just, I, I just thought they'd forget where they put them. I thought there was something about, <laughs> about elephants having bad, <laughs> bad memories <laughs> and that. It goes on, where's my slippers? Yeah. I sure I left them by the test. So, so, sorry, there's a, the elephant walking around wearing slippers? Yeah, yeah, there was, th that's in, uh, what in India. What kind of slippers? Those sort of old man ones with the sort of checkers. Well, round design. ones, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big yeah. round ones. There was that going on. And is it happening? Is it happier? I mean, does it feel no, more satisfying? No, it looked it, looked it. Did it look- <laughs> 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 How can you tell? How can you tell please? Uh, uh, what else is there? Uh, hmm. there was a woman who's had a- had a breast in show for 150 grand. Right. Okay. Okay, okay is what? What? Third party fire and theft? 
don't know, it just had, it had a picture of her with them, like, you know, out. <laughs> 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 and I just thought, yeah, he should get them covered. Oh. <laughs> he's done another real joke! Oh, yeah, that's a proper joke. He's done uh, look at his little face, he smiles! I'd like to see you on one of the sort of TV panel games. If they could bring back sort of celebrity squares, yeah. it'd be amazing as the centre square. Oh, that would be Wouldn't incredible. Be or um, on that countdown in Dictionary Corner. Diction- I imagine him in Dictionary well, Corner. Well, come up with cat. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. helps at all. Yeah. Mem- Memdlint. <laughs> yeah, what does what? that mean, Carl? It just meant anything you want it to mean. <laughs> oh, what I've got. <laughs> There, there's a dog that's got a cough in <laughs> Singapore because it smokes twenty a day. <laughs> right, okay, another one. So no, 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 it's, it's the last one in it. So yeah. we'll save it. The last one we've got is why I don't. Sorry, what was that? Wash up with you? That was it. But they, 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 they was that it? That they was what? Survey of washing pots and pans. I didn't understand. You said who? You said Italy were the cleanest. No, it, Spain. No, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. Well, we were the quickest, but Italy was the, the Spain cleanest. was the cleanest. Turkey were the slowest. Yeah. yeah. Spain were the cleanest. But why weren't we clean then? Because we were washing it. Why were we not paying attention to? We the did it rubbish. We did it quick. We did it quickly, but but. Oh, I don't know what it was oh, being no, rated it was, on. Who was doing it? Was it Lynette Newman or Ainsley Howard? She's yeah. quick. Both of them are quick. Yeah. Well, they've yeah. got like kind of loose slaves that do it for them. Did we? Did we use? Did we use fairy liquid? Don't know. It didn't. It didn't. Have did we use a whole bunch of boys' games? Didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> just like did it. <laughs> <laughs> it just said, uh, you know, that that that. Did uh, we, who did had the softest hands? Who had the softest hands? <laughs> So it didn't, it didn't say I didn't. Why is it we don't get notified that this is taking place? I don't know. When I was a kid, no one ever said, you know, we need recruits because we're we're doing a survey on who can wash yeah. up the quickest. Are you disappointed in yourself with that one, Carl? It, it is pretty dull, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> and that is why we've got to bring in either con merchant okay. or a wine merchant or, or shut or, up with your face. Yeah. <laughs> would you be able to, if I asked you, if I put you on the spot in the next, sort of after the next record, would you be able to give an example of how Con Merchant would work? I mean, is there something you could do just to sort of s- experiment Should we play there? a record? Should we play a record? <laughs> no, <laughs> play I've got a record? I can do better than that. Yeah. What? Ads. Go on. We're doing Educating Ricky. Right, final one. Come on, Carl. Right, what was it? <laughs> it was, uh. <laughs> why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write on? Yeah. Yeah. Cause Snappy. I couldn't, well, I couldn't think of a heading for it. It's basically, uh. Go on. People who have tattoos have never understood it, right? Um. That they have something put on their arm. Right, sorry. Have we started the educate? Is this part of it? Are you educating me? This is something that I, I, will be useful in my life that I didn't know about. Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> no, it's just like they've got, they've got a machine now, right, right that, um, does tattoos. Um. Tattoos. You, you, uh, you come up with a design you want and you sort of, it, this machine scans it and, uh, you put your arm in this thing and you press print or whatever and then it, it does the tattoo on your hand or on your What, arm like loads of little needles that follow a pattern? Yeah, the computer, basically, is it, yeah. Is it a real tattoo? It's a pro- proper It's a proper tattoo. one. The fella said, um... Well, as long as it goes out, it pierces the skin with a- with a- I just a, wondered a if it's one of those kind of, you know, those kind of- No, it, it must be lots of- lots of little needles or moving needle that can- go Sorry, but how is this cleaned, like, in between each person? Dunno, probably. I dunno. Well, no, as long as- it's only that if it's one needle, it's just the head, isn't it? If it's one needle that moves, right. does it like a- like loads of little- um, what are we gaining from a, a machine doing it? Just because you know they're gonna sort of mess it up. But hold on, how do you keep your arm still? Because your skin moves slightly. It's, it's a machine it's sort of strapped to your arm. Right, and so the fella, it's spread I mean, so the fella it... said that the tricky thing was in all this, it was the fact that, um, you know, nobody would let him test it out on anyone else, so he had to do it himself. But did it work? Because the thing is with the tattoo yeah, eyes, they yeah. can see when your skin's moved and they can see what they've done and they keep wiping it and looking, whereas the machine's just got to trust itself. Yeah. So, I think one needle would- could go wrong. If it was a lot of needles that just, that it just came down, like, you know, a thousand needles that was an imprint. Yeah. But, no, th- yeah. obviously I'm asking someone who's- I, I hasn't delved any further than there's a machine that can give you a tattoo. That's all you've got at the moment, isn't it? Well, I'm- d- yeah, basically. That's what you've got. I mean, that's that's what I've got because I'm not a fan of tattoos. I don't. But where did you read this again? This was internet. Uh, this was on the internet. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. And I, d- I just don't understand why people do it. That's that's what got me attention. Because me. Um, so what have what have I learned from this? Um, that if you if you wanted to get one, you know, you can get one done by a machine now. <laughs> you know, people say machines are sort of taking over and that. And and there's another one. But it's just the fact. I mean, I don't know. I, I so w- give us the snappy title of this this education <sighs> Why again. Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write it on? 
<laughs> That's why I always think when I see people with with loads of tattoos, like there's that fellow who we were talking about the other week in Scotland oh. who, who was covered 99% in tattoos. Yeah. It's just like, what have you done that for? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't get rid of it now. You've 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 done it now. Yeah. Um, my one of my uncles, right, tattoo Stan, he <laughs> he um he's just caked in them. Tattoos. Right. <laughs> I don't think he's my proper uncle, but it's just like <laughs> me, me dad's <laughs> got. Too stamped. No, my dad's that's, got. That's that's a province in Russia, isn't it? My dad's got loads of mates who. When like, you say he's not your proper uncle, I do you know like when someone comes around with the school? Right, uncle Stan? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it was like there was um, my dad had loads of mates like that. There was John the Screw. <laughs> <laughs> right. So <laughs> he either works in a prison or he likes to have sex. Cabby. <laughs> Cab driver. <laughs> okay. There was Jimmy the Hat. I don't know what he did. Jimmy the hat? Yeah. Oh. And, did uh, he wear a hat? No. No. There was, um, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. You sure he wasn't a relative? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fred the Veg used to get us, like, big bags of potatoes and that. Fred the Veg, okay. And there was, there was Tattoo Stan. Right. And he was just caked in them, and I used to always look at him thinking, why have you done that? I must have only been, like, you know, six I or suppose seven. If, if you're born with a name like Tattoo Stan. <laughs> Exactly. You're desperate, Sorry, aren't and you? Were really? they like a 1950s gang? I'm worried yeah, about. Like, it, I'm worried about doing a bank job. What was his name? The Hat. What was his Jimmy, name? Jimmy the Hat. I'm worried mm. about Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Not having a hat. <laughs> I don't understand it. Are you sure he didn't have a hat? Not when I met him. Did he ever wear a hat? <laughs> I didn't see him that much. Do you think it was a joke, like you know, when um, y your mate sort of like you know uh, eight foot and huge, you call him? Little Shorty. John or Tiny. Mm. Do you think? Well, the fact that he never wore yeah, a hat. Yeah, they went. Hold on, I've, I've noticed some of that about Jim. Go on. No hat. And I go, oh, true, let's call him Jim the Hat. <laughs> Jim the Hat, yeah. But me, um, me Uncle Stan, he had like loads of them, he did. Did them himself. Oh dear. And it was always <laughs> that thing. <laughs> what was it, what was it things like? It was, he had like the- A cross. Cut here cut one. Cut here, on made the in Britain. And if you're going to do them yourself, I'd say at least make sure you're, good, you're sort of a good drawer. Yeah. And, and don't it, do it in the mirror so it comes out backwards. Well, that that was the other thing. But, like, I remember he did, um, I mean, names are all right. He had, like, all his kids' names down his arm. <laughs> and, right. uh, what were they called? Yeah. Oh, God. It's <laughs> that's, that's Tattoo Stan Jr. Yeah. And, um, Paul shits the bed. <laughs> um,. I'm trying to- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Wabai Kate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he had- uh, <laughs> Frankie never amounts to anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. So he had like, uh, <laughs> 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 Johnny, I don't think he's mine. <laughs> so he did uh, all this stuff. Oh, I don't even know why I'm telling you about that. No, 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 I, Carl. Hey, so, I to be I, honest- I don't know that if- I don't know if- maybe just have to picture this, but my picture- my <laughs> sister took, had to take a photo once. She was working in like a factory. Not to denigrate people who work in factories, but there happened to be a particularly oddball, kind of lank-haired, weird guy living, uh, working in this factory. And he made his own- he did his own tattoos. And she took a photo of it because she was so extraordinary. He'd drawn it himself. Now, bear in mind, it was the kind <laughs> of thing you saw when you were doing art when you were like <laughs> 15. <laughs> this was the sort of person who designed their own, like, rock- heavy rock album cover. <laughs> yeah. He's that sort of person. <laughs> so, pr I mean, like- Was it, was it a dragon draw? with breasts? You're not far off, Rick. No. You're not far off. I'll tell you what it was. He had this tattooed on his back. It took up his entire back. She took a photo of it for me. He drew it himself. He had it tattooed himself. And it was just too much detail. Too yeah. much detail for a tattoo. It needs to be fairly simple, I think, to make it a yeah. tattoo. Mm -hmm. It was- <laughs> It was a, a naked female vampire having a shower. <laughs> why was she having a shower? Having a shower. Well, that's why she was naked. Yeah. And so she had. She she'd been out. She'd, uh, she was uh, presumably. Uh, she'd been, uh, been, been out. Been out. A lot of blood. Yeah. Well, she 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 uh she was naked, so she, you could see her her her, her naked body. Yeah. Uh, she's quite a beautiful vampire, yeah. relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, although the symmetry of her face was somewhat off. Yeah. The only thing I think that gave well, her away had a bad spine was that she had um she did have some pointed teeth. I right. Mean, I think that was how you knew she was a vampire. Right. Was she looking? But, um, she, was the she, fact looking that she was having a shower. Was yeah. That, that is specific. weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it well, but he sort of drew in. All well, the, he, all said the, the, he said to the eyes, said, "Listen, I I want a, a naked bird, right? But I don't want to be." Gratuitous. He goes, well, you could put her in the shower because then they went. Pop well, her in the shower. That at least gives some kind yeah, of justification. That's the plot. That's the plot. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's justified <laughs> within the story. <laughs> exactly. if she's in a shower. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have that. So, Carl. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, any other nicknames your friends of your family had? What was your nickname, Carl? Just uh, Pilky. Really. <laughs> because for a minute I thought Carl the Veg would have made a lot of sense. Yeah, Carl the Veg. <laughs> and what? What? Why has your dad got a little tattoo, dopey twat, on his arm? <laughs>
Yeah. Can I just interrupt you guys, because we've just had an email here, um, I hate to query you, Carl, <laughs> and your educating Ricky section, because I know you put a lot- don't read this, let me just read it for you. Um, just had an email here from Olivia, and this has also been corroborated by someone else, I, I forget who, who it was. She was just- she just tuned in, and she just heard you explaining the expression, letting the cat out of the bag. So. Uh, it was all to do with cats that were put in bags yeah. by- by dodgy butchers, <laughs> possibly the 17th century, we're not too sure. <laughs> um, anyway, she claims- well, uh, let me see, she, she says, uh, she uses both the words twaddle and crap. <laughs> Uh, in relation- in relation to your definition. <laughs> oh. uh, she says, letting the cat out of the bag is an old shipping expression from when sailors used to get flogged for their misdemeanours. The cat the is cat, the cat of nine is. tails, of course which uh, it is. is a kind of whip thing that you- they used yeah. to keep hanging in a bag below deck. If yeah. it was discovered that a sailor had done something wrong, the cat would be let out of the bag yeah. and you'd get a whipping. Of course you know, it is. Don't let the cat out of the bag, that's meaning to cover something she, up with a She's secret. talking nonsense, right? No, she's not. That's she the is, truth. That's because the, the truth. one I read about that was, there's not enough room in here to swing a cat, right? And that was people who worked on a boat. Yeah, well, that's the same Well, that's fine, they're the same one. For the they're not gonna thing. keep going on about people working on a boat to get those- <laughs> <laughs> You can't have two phrases about the same thing! Can't they're not gonna be going- They're not to do with their time. Think how many- just coming up yeah. stuff Think like how that. many metaphors have birds in them and, you know, uh, uh, it's ridiculous. Why can't you have- you can have as many sounds as you like about anything, Carl. Yeah, There's well, not a rule. Whatever. They don't go, we've made one up about yeah. the cat and nine tails. Well, cheers for that, Oliver. Um, <laughs> Olivia. Olivia. Yeah. Don't- don't see your email coming up with the Rockbusters answers, so <laughs> well, let's- uh, You better give us the answers Let's again. give them out. Uh, the first <laughs> one was, um, you know, he, he wanted to stop educating Ricky, cause nothing had happened. He said, he said, look what happened last week. I scoured the net, he said all I found was a dog in a car wash and a parrot and a vicar. Uh -huh. right? I'll tell you what, there ain't well, much more going on this week. Well you're talking sh well, listen, me and Steve, yesterday, we took a day off to prove you wrong, and we've come up with two of the most incredible things I told you about, and they're amazing. So there are things out there, or is it just, ju but just go for truth. Go for truth and science yeah, yeah, and discovery. Do, do. Yeah. The, the yeah. fact is, is strange than fiction. You don't have to revert, revert to oh, sort of yeah. like God and ghosts. I know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the funny thing is, you know, like, last couple of weeks I've been saying there's not much going on. Yeah. I found out when I was looking that there was a day in 1930, right? It was right. a Good Friday, there was no news. There was nothing going on. He had to put a music video on or something on the telly because there was nothing going on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the all new Ricky Gervais show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello and Carl Pilkington. All right. You say uh, all new, Rick. What, in what way is this all new? I mean, it seems very similar. It's me ah. and Carl. I suspect we're going to be talking bollocks. I tell you what's new about it. This time you have to pay for it. <laughs> well, that is a nice new development. Yeah. Uh, but what about within the content of the show? Any of the classic features? Monkey News? Well, I think Carl retired Monkey News. I don't know why. Why so did you been axed? It's just that we, we'd sort of done it all. Do you know what I mean? The, but will he be coming back in the future? Uh, we might do something with it, yeah. Yes, I think there'd be a campaign, you know. If I know uh, our listeners, and I don't want to, <laughs> then they'll be doing an internet campaign now to bring back Monkey News. I just want a quick, quick question, because I'm a bit confused. Is this show 13, because we've just done 12, or is this show 1 of the All New Ricky Gervais Show? I didn't know where we show are. Show 1 of the All New Ricky Gervais Show. Right. Is it though? What do you mean? Well, that that's like that question that I put to you about Say, say if like we, I don't know, we we do something wrong to this world, yeah. um, runs out of whatever we need. I don't know how it works. Mm. Um, you put yourself down. I think you do, and I think you. No, probably just just whatever, whatever on. the reason is. If it, uh, you're talking, right you are talking yourself out of a job with NASA, putting yourself down like that. I think you know exactly how the world works. No, no, no but you know, just like um, say if we had to go to another world, mm. right? What year would it be? Yeah. I, I explain. I d told you it depends because it doesn't matter where you start, right? It depends what a year is. A year is a year because that's how long it takes our planet to go round our sun. A day is a day because that's how long it takes the world to re uh, revolve. I once. know, but you can't you can't go to another world and then start changing everything because people are going to be a bit unnervy about being on different soil. So but it's not their saying. choice. You can't go to a planet and go, mm, we've got to speed this planet up, it's not all going through the space quickly enough. Yeah, but everybody's- you know, like, especially older people, they set in the ways, right? I don't think older people set in their ways are gonna pack their bags and go to Mars. No, but if they have to. Anyway, that- that isn't the point, all, all I'm well, saying- Well, they're gonna be moaning about days are shorter here, or days are longer, aren't they? Well, yeah, <sighs> you know what they like. 
Dog change. people don't care, they like short days, they don't get out of bed, do they, until late, they've got nothing to get up for and they go to bed early. Yeah, but it's not just that, is it? What I'm if it's a longer day, Steve? <laughs> oh, nightmare. That's your point, isn't it? But I'm talking about stationery, diaries, everything's gonna be a mess. Right. So what do you do? If I was in charge, go on. I, I'd just say, yeah, carry on, it's, uh, 2007, it's September, it's a Thursday, get on with it. Brilliant. I think, I think, because people 26 are Twenty-six be... hours later, uh, with a new day, and uh, well, 480 uh, days later, or oh, it's another year, 2008. I was trying to explain to him yesterday, uh, in a cafe, about um, the telescopes that can see back to the Big Bang. Why? And, Did you do well, that? Well, I was trying to explain what a light year was, then I was explaining to him that, you know, you sit down, you, you put your, your telescope on, you're looking at a star, the star explodes, that star exploded a million years ago and he couldn't have it. I was going, you're literally seeing it explode a million years ago because that's how long the light got. And I started telling him that, you know, um, someone on another planet far, far away could be watching the 1980 World Cup final if they had a strong enough telescope because it, that's yeah, how long it yeah. took to get. Uh, it, it, look at it, look at his face. It, I can see his head bleeding. I just don't... So are you saying... Why did you start doing this in a cafe? Was it a 24-hour cafe? <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> but are you saying then they could be an alien fella? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that just like we can see things happening in other uh, on other planets, other solar systems um, that happened millions of years ago, um, there could be a little alien fella with a telescope uh, watching the Battle of Hastings if he was far enough away. Do you understand the concept of what Ricky's saying that light? is travelling at a certain speed, which means it so, hasn't necessarily arrived here yet. So we could all relive history though, is what I mean. No, if we couldn't, because we, we- No, but we're backwards. We, 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 well, no. One, you'd have to travel faster than the speed of light. Yeah, I know, but say if we can do all that. Well, that, that's the big thing, you can't. No, I know, but, but you know, it's only a matter of time, isn't it? Why haven't we? Hmm. No, but we're not in a rush to do it, because we can just go back in time. Well, but if time travel's possible, right, eventually, then it's already happened and they've come back. Yeah, I know, but what, what I mean is, it's one of those inventions that we're not in a rush to do because- No, what I'm saying is, if it's, if it's possible, then it will happen, and if it will happen, it has in the future. Yeah, but we don't know about that yet, do we? No, but you see my point? Not really. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it's not that great just because you're, you're seeing that far because there's nothing in the way. You're looking at nothing, space is nothing, what are you looking at? Mm. They say. What do they say? I don't know. If only you had a saying there yeah. at your fingertips. What I mean is the universe, they say it's it, it's non-stop, there's no sides to it. No, they don't say that. Scientists have never said that. Hems of it. Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in, he says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, Okay, so f somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got you've got him for one day. What would you do with this? What would you What would you make him do? What would you uh, What conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say I'm not bothered, and that'd be <laughs> the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does he does he think the same way? Look the same way? Exactly the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which That's one I was? That's incredible. No, because- That is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? I mean, uh, out there, listen, people are, have you heard anything more stupid than how would I know which one I was? It's the most stupid thing any human being has ever said by definition. But think about it, this other person's going, alright, thanks for, uh, meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you, you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. And then suddenly you'd start doubting yourself. And you'd go, should I be leaving? Or, so how do I know if I am that real one, if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because yeah, you're but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, yeah, it is a bit weird. But isn't you it? know the truth, you, know? you idiot. Because How would I know which one I was? So anyway. But bear in mind, you what could, would pass, you do? You could I, pass him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play tricks with Would you, uh, you know? You could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? Like jackass? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, wouldn't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. 
Mm. Otherwise, everyone will be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, it wasn't me, it was me doppelganger. <laughs> it can only- I wouldn't want it, to be honest. It's a- it, again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because <laughs> he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. That is unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was we, like that was like experiencing what it would be like there was two cars. <laughs> yeah, he's having a discussion with himself. We could have left in yeah. that time and come back, and he'd be arguing still. That that, that is officially the most stupid thing. If the Guinness World Records, it, it, has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But does this mean? <laughs> does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean, though, that I could just sit at home and not do anything and just send me out on- Yes. And any- any- when he- when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No. No, 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 no. no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger then. Well, you're identical twins then. You found out identical twins and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little, again. But I said to you the other week about twins and that, how I, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's a, it's alright when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike, do they? They just stuck together. You don't go, oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't, they don't carry that thing on, do they? That normal twins do. Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say, have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They've just got their arse stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head! It's unbelievable! Okay, we're trying to get more cerebral now in this- in this podcast. There's a lot of science here, real science. Um, maybe we should call it a spodcast. Mm hmm Okay, Carl. This is a- 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 a, a logical- um, uh, uh, conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right, because I don't know anyone who's ever got this right. The pressure is, one, are, are asking sensible questions, okay. and when I've told the answer, to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so, there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical, you can't tell them apart, okay, 50-50. Right. Obviously you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, yeah. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door, okay? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which- which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one? Yeah. And what, one to- to both? No. One to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. Because the rules are, you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's- it's a leap of imagination here. And I've- I've- I've definitely got to answer- I've got to ask them a question, I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> they're identical. You stand a few yards away, you cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which, they're identical, the guards are identical, but the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole. near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. What do you ask? What do you ask? What question do you ask? Come on, you only got one. Quick, this is it. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same, they're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's gonna lie? Yeah. Well, you want- the one guarding hell always tells a lie, the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. These- these things you know. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that close? <laughs> Why- <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get I'll on. I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. 
they know who they are, and they know that the one God in hell always tells a lie, and the one God in heaven always tells the truth. So I know that. No, they know it as well. It doesn't really come down to this, Carl. This isn't what's gonna happen when you die. But when is this useful, then? Because it's a logical- well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh, No, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? But there's, there's no shame in not getting it. It's there's no one. shame in not yeah. getting it. It's a really hard one to get. The, what, what, I mean, the shame is the ridiculous questions you asked. Um, and now I'm gonna tell you the answer. No, hang on, right, so you go up and yeah. you go, um, you Right, go hang on, well, let's, let's imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right? But we have to, um, uh, uh, well, well me, and, me and Steve would decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm, uh, look, look away, Carl. Okay. Right, then. So we've decided. Okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right. Um, I'll just say to you, Steve. I'll go. Uh, uh, got some. Uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right. You've got some post for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe the right, question's right. coming. I got. You got some post for God here. Yeah. Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish. He's, he's got in because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want to, do you want to get him? Just uh. Well, no, you've only got one question. So you are, you're asking Steve. Is God in? What's the answer? Yes. You ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what am I gonna do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, cut, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. It doesn't help. That doesn't help. But let me tell you the answer. You ask either one of us, you say, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? Then whatever they say is the door they're guarding. Because if you happen to ask the one guarding hell, right, so I'm guarding hell by the way, I'm the devil, Steve's God, okay? So you ask me what what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm gonna lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say, he'd say hell. So you know I'm guarding hell. If you ask Steve what door I was guarding, he'd tell the truth, right? So he'd say, He'd say heaven because he'd know I'd lie, so he's guarding heaven. So the the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers, is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you ask me the same, and I'd say heaven as well. Right. So who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what lies. <laughs> <laughs> but as opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that, he's written it down, what? <laughs> uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's diary. Still a very popular feature on show one slash thirteen. Uh, here we are. Got a book sent to me called Freaks. It's a bit heavy, but it's got some interesting pictures in it. Read a bit about the two-headed nightingale. She slash they was on tour in London years and years ago. It cost two shillings to have a front row seat. She slash they had two heads slash two arms and four legs. They are called Siamese twins because the first twins that were born stuck together were Siamese. On one of the pictures, they are playing chess against the doctor. That hardly seems fair. <laughs> <laughs> two heads are better than one. <laughs> so it's two heads, two arms, and four legs. That's just two women in one dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's two women with an arm missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall, was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, 
you know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he, he was a gay fella, right, which was a bit like, oh, what's he been doing without me and that? But- <laughs> that, that was, <laughs> What? No, just, you so, know- just, What? What? what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what has he been doing? Why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental in what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? Out of whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I am what I am and just checking out their no, each the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, which Carl, you're not having a go as well, No, I'm not. I'm not. This is what, why, well, but, what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasizing what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your- I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was, I try. I was gonna take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, mm. you know, it could crack and- Cause it's the size of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it took up a whole wall. Right. right, so like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought I can't take that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right. You you wouldn't know what have you? But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. Because if I put a nail in. And it, what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept, specifics. Just, um, the way some people like, you know, the ones you've got where it's just like a block of colour on a bit of canvas. It's like, what's, what's that? Just abstract. It's just abstract. It's, it's, you know, it's a vibrancy of colour. It's a, you know, an attack on the senses. Or it could be, there could be something in there that you might see. You might not see first time round or it could be, you know. Yeah, but there's loads of stuff to look at without having to do that. But you've got windows. I can understand if you had a cell and there's no windows and you want a bit of colour. But you got oh, a window yeah. to look out of, and and you've got like just a big block of. But I was explaining on. this to you that the the, the the photograph where people before um you know the art was photography it was realistic it was realistic and uh, you know they had to make it look like the subject but then when cameras came in that's when people started yeah, doing I, surreal stuff and I understand it, it, that they, otherwise yeah. there was no point to it they had to find a new way to represent things that f uh, photography couldn't do as such. No, so I, I, that's that's like when we when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas, and there was that picture of fruit for seven hundred quid. <laughs> like, we'll just get some fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah, I understand that, but there's nothing wrong with like having a. We'll, we'll get. Don't don't invent cameras then. One or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, "We've got to invent something else." Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone? Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because. Was it a Dali? Going melting know. clocks and stuff. No. I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put put one of them on it. Put, Have put you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because it's it's just, it's not it's not. I mean, what I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened. Um, he had some artist mate round, mm. right? And, um, I don't know what happened, uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating- That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And, uh- That's handy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Telephone. of- Started saying, oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? <laughs> Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed <laughs> on the phone. It bounced off his mate's head. Went on the phone and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> well, um, you know, as you mentioned in your diary, your favourite artist is Lowry, because you can look at them for ages and see someone different every time you look at it. All I'm saying is, art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know colour's out there, there's loads of colour. <laughs> we don't need to be reminded of it. <laughs> <laughs> but colour's part of our evolution, and so it does something to us. Just Only like sounds, just like sounds. Yeah, but I'm saying do a picture. Smells. Colour it in. Still use the colours, but mm. draw something with it rather than just going, bit of yellow, bit of red. Like that one you've got, just red and black. 
What, what, what's that meant to do? Well, it does something. What? Well, I like it, I enjoy it, so it does oh, something. Yeah, yeah, you have it then. I'm just saying, I, I prefer it if it was something. And so, so you, uh, what, let me just get straight, you had a mirror on one wall, so you, you padded that wall. It's just and sort you of- padded the just, others. Uh, it's just sort of, uh, wallpaper on it. Right. Amazing. And there's no other art in there, not it's just an empty cell. Well, Suzanne w likes some art, just like, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art, there's no point, just wallpaper. I'm just saying, we've got three, three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Some new words have been introduced into the dictionary. Too many words. <laughs> We should have some system where we can get rid of words if they aren't used a certain number of times. Well, that, that we do. They do die out, don't they, eventually? Like what? You don't have to use them. No, but they don't, do they? They keep adding them. And I just worry about, uh, you know, th this is the problem with, like, your head can only hold so much, can't it? Yeah. It all very well when Adam and Eve was knocking about, there's no history, they don't have to remember anything. <laughs> All I'm saying is, fine, bring out a new word, but once you bring out a new one, bin another one. The dictionary is getting bigger and bigger. No one's keeping an eye on it. <laughs> well, I think they are. They're not. They just they keep adding. It doesn't grow. It, they don't just dig it up one day. It's so, got bigger. What have you done? So you're happy, it out. you're happy for them to stick in iPod, let's say. But you we know. can pride ourselves on having more words in the English language than any other language. I think we've got twice as many as the second. Yeah. Uh, I, I think maybe Russian, I'm not sure about that, someone, I'm sure someone at EMS, but- But we don't it's... talk the most, so there's a lot of clutter there. <laughs> what do you mean we don't talk the most? Well, you'd, you'd have to, you'd, you'd Nothing say Nothing as expressive as the English language. Yeah, no, cause we've got a word for everything. I just, I'm, I'm just saying that's, that I don't use all these, all these words that are coming out, and I just think, like I say, keep an eye on it, some sort of, I don't know how it can be controlled. But Shakespeare invented words. I think Shakespeare invented about 1200 words. Yeah, and we're probably still using a lot of his. So why yeah. don't we keep sticking more in the pot? Right. Stop using loads of words. People are panicking in New York about the snow they're getting. It's two foot deep. They're saying it's to do with global warming. I don't get it. Two days ago they were saying the world's getting warmer and the ice is melting on one of the poles where the polar bears are. As long as we get snow on the world, does it matter where it goes? Read on the internet that heads are bigger now than they were years ago. Brains are getting bigger, apparently. This is because we're being told too much information. <laughs> we are told too much swelling. stuff about things that we wouldn't have known about years ago. You've just made that leap, haven't you? Presume maybe br heads and brains are getting larger, but the fact that it's because there's too much information cramming in them. Where well, have you it got is that from? As, as time goes on, isn't it? It's that thing of um, we're being taught more and more every day. As the time goes on. Something's happening every day. You've got to remember that. No, you haven't. You have. It's the same, like I said, you know, with the Adam and Eve thing. They didn't have that much to remember. They come on the world, they go, what happened yesterday? Oh, not, not much, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just well, yeah, just sure, annoyed about sure. it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he'd probably had a better day than me. <laughs> Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. 
<laughs> and that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that. Well, I... you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket? I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> Twenty-five minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? I gave that a go. Um, for about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that, you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right, body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And, um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was, they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they, they were, like, using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that. So I said, oh, I've come to have a dance. And like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, a waste, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to recap, you're convinced then that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you. Um, and then to continue the diary, as there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, <laughs> without dying. If it was a competition, the cockroach would win as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean, like, say, say, if, you know, they run out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do... They sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're going to do now is tech out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, go no, on. No, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What, what I'm getting to is... Have the, you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> what I mean is the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. But, <laughs> That's what the program's called. It ends the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires coming out Look of it. Look what we can do with science. And he's going, Goodbye. Oh, I feel Ill. Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today, it was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you're one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means an ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing Who's that right? Who's using that word? Woo? Who is woo? using that it word? Was, it was just W-E-W-E. -W -E. Let's call it a woo. Mm -hmm. An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. <laughs> I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. We got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word.
I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way, I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. <laughs> it's like a child in, like in one of those kids' TV shows. I know. Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington. They said. <laughs> There was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this, as a fish having two heads ain't going to solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. Good point, though, isn't it? Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the tally only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a program on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that or not. You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever I'm sleep. Not sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. Don't know how you put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? What's going on? As you said, it would get a bit boring, you know, your sleep is your rest, your time off, it get, it, it, it helps you uh, detoxify, it helps you sort of um, think things through on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, well, don't it, you ever get it where, I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like... that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to waste some hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this. Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise and going to the toffee shop. How <laughs> <laughs> All right, just doing a little advert for Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. I mean, I, I don't know what you're doing. You might be going out and that, doing something nice, which, you know, if you are, then fair enough, go out. But I'm just saying, if you're staying in, you've got new green wing, right, that's nearly ready. You've got my name is Earl, the It Crowd, all funny stuff and that. Don't know about you, but, you know, I'll be staying in watching it, just having a bag of crisps and stuff, so... If you're staying in, put the telly on, do that. If you're going out, go out, have a nice night. See you later. Call Pilkington! Well, it's that time again. If you'd give us the jingle, please. Oh. Jim Pantry Dive. Fucking news! Okay, now that surely cannot be fair on anyone's ears listening. <laughs> right, um. Ages ago, right, about about the 1950s. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There was this gangster knocking about, and do you know, like, were they called Hairy Fingers? Do you know, like, a lot of gangsters like <laughs> to get into gambling and that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, like all these all these peers and that, all these all these mates who are like gangsters and stuff. Mm. They've all bought horses, right? That they take, you know, take racing and they make money from them. And that don't they? Yeah. Mm. So anyway, he and was Chuckles like... Chuckles the Seagull was no different. And, and he was like, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good thing to get into. I might, might get into a bit of that, right? So he gets himself this horse, right? And it, there's a big race coming up. That's why he's sort of... It's he, a bit of a last minute. And the, and the jockey turns up and it's fine. He's a human jockey and it's fine. Excellent. Okay, well, that was so, another podcast. So anyway, so... Um, please listen oh, hang next. On, there's more, there's more. Oh, hang on. on. So, oh. so anyway, so uh, this big race is coming up. He's, yeah. he's like, I've got to be involved in this yeah, because I can make a lot of money out of my horse here. Choose the jockey wisely, then. So he says to his, like, mate, he said, look, uh, I've got myself a horse and that. He said, we just need a jockey, get someone, oh, yeah. sort it out, and yeah. what have you, so we can get in this race. So, Go to the jockey so club. His, his mate's like, yeah, all right, I'll have, a, I'll have a word and that, have a look round and that, see if there's anyone decent. And the good out. thing about jockeys is there's never been a shortage of jockeys, because a lot of them don't make the grade. So there's 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 always too many jockeys to go round. Normally always too many human jockeys. Yeah, yeah, there's, you, there's never a problem getting jockeys. Fine. Go on. <laughs> so anyway, so... Was that true in the fifties as well? Absolutely, it's always been it's true. It's always been true. It's always, it's always been true. There's no, that. there's no lack of jockeys. So it's sort of close shot. People are trying to do it and they don't make the grade. So, but in the fifties, from your knowledge, there was never, there was not like in 1951 a shortage of jockeys for just one year. Absolutely never. I've known about <laughs> okay, that. I'm fine, quite you, yeah. keen. Right. Go on. So anyway, right. So his mate says, "Look, I'm having a problem getting a jockey." Seems odd oh, because no, Ricky's just weird. been saying. No, 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 he's just been saying it's not a problem. What do you mean? So just because the main problem was, go on. A lot of jockeys were aware of this gangster and were saying, "I'm not getting involved with this guy. The chances are I won't get paid." You know, is a gangster. It's not no, worth it. No, you would do it if it was a gangster asking you. 
You'd be scared of the consequences. So anyway, he's saying, look, don't be coming to me with problems and that, right? I've got the horse, I want it in the race, sort it out. So they're like, oh, but boss, and he's like, don't give me any of that. Go exactly. They do what he says, so any jockey would do it. Go on. So anyway, so the day before. The big race, yeah. <laughs> left it to the last minute, okay, but yeah. fine. <laughs> and, uh, he says, have you, have you got a jockey then? They're like, yeah, but, and he's going, D don't worry about it, have you got a jockey? Yeah, but, and he's like, well, look. He wants to say, sure, he wants, yeah. So, yeah, they uh, out. he's saying, has he ridden the horses before and that? He said, well, yeah, he has, but mainly, and he's like, like brilliant. And he goes, yeah, but mainly in like a in circus. In the, in the jing. No, like in, in the, in the circus and that. <gasps> he'd worked, he'd, he'd worked with horses and stuff. In the circus. It's fine. Yeah, so yeah, he's like, that's, fine. that's enough. That's, that's all I need to know. Well, they'd be too heavy, cause circus. So People so are quite built, aren't they? They're, so, they're he a bit so heavier than the jockey, because the jockeys are about eight and a half stone. He said, brilliant. Get him down there and that, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the race happens. He didn't want to meet him beforehand? He wasn't worried no about No point. That. Not no, bothered. No. As far as he's concerned, he's, it's put all his, sorted. he's putting his money on it and what have you. Yeah. Sure. Right. What happened is they were trying to make him put on the jo jockey outfit. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't fit that well. Sleeves that, too was, short, legs too, too long. It's that sort of problem. Okay. So they let him, like, you know, wear his stuff that he wore. In the circus and that, because it's 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 comfortable with that. Yeah, he's happy yeah. with it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That's yeah, what he's exactly. happy with. Yeah. Anyway, race starts and what have you. Uh, this horse straight out of the trap and that high speed, right? This this jockey's got a really big grin on his face. He's loving it, right? Everyone's cheering, going, "Who is this? Who's this jockey?" Here? Yeah, it's amazing. Never seen him before, and yet look at him. But they can see his face clearly. Anyway, gangsters happy in that because he's he's won. But I just said the crowd the crowd can see the jockey, can they? What? The crowd can. D I mean, it's, it's yeah, but it's so fast and what have <laughs> the you. The blur, it's a blur, it's all a blur. He's really, he's good at it. I mean, apparently right. he was close to falling off, and people were like, he's, he's gone, he's a goner. Right. He's got such a good reach that he managed to grab hold. Oh, sure. good reach. Oh. And right. when they could tell he was smiling, they could tell he was smiling, but they couldn't see the, the detail of his face. Is that right? Just well, to clarify it's just, that. It's just, it's just blur and that. Sure, just but they could tell truth. he was smiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they knew he was happy. At the end of it, do you know, like the winner sort of rides around the crowd, but yeah, like, sort of you know, show off and what have you. Yeah. And all the women are there, and you know, like women are all dolled up at these events. Sure, yeah. they've all got big, big hats on. Uh, Sometimes they got through on those hats. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and one, one of the women, In one the of the women, particularly oh, Carmen God. Miranda, was very popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the women had like, like you say, fruit and what have you on it, yeah. a little, little banana. Right, right. right. some kind oh, of they're Cuban. Not real. They're not real though. The hats, though. They're, 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 <laughs> they're not real fruit, is it? Yeah. Of not. Never. So but I don't know who. Were, I thought they wore those sort of kind of Cuban yeah, entertainment even, shows. Even I didn't realise they wore them yeah, at events. Even if it's like a big event, you know, you might have a hat with fruit, and it, it's sort of joke, but it, but it's it's fake fruit because it would it would it would perish. Well, this this jockey didn't understand that. He'd never seen false fruit. I don't understand. But what? why did the, why did the jockey suddenly? Why was he so desperate for fruit? I don't I understand. So anyway, so meanwhile the gangster's collecting his five hundred quid winnings. Yeah. Right? He's over the moon. Yeah. He kicks off because of this woman with the fruit. Yeah, I don't understand. I still don't understand no, why the jockey would go. Everyone from... noticed. Jockey, little monkey fella. Oh, that makes sense. If he was a monkey, that would make sense. Yeah. What year was this? Because I want to. It was it, it was nineteen fifties, and that's where the saying comes from about do you know like in Cockney slang, five hundred quid is a monkey. He, he sort of put, he, you know, he put a monkey on it, and it all goes back to the time so when- So this happened in this, in, in, in England? In this country, yeah, yeah in, in England. So someone could well still be alive so, that we could easily yeah. contact that Well, would that's it, we always, you know, there's no time length on this monkey news, if you've got any, if it's history, you know, if yeah. it goes back- Or you know, if it's years made ago, up, bullshit. Just, just send it in. If it's bollocks. Uh, if it's actually bollocks, please send it in. That's this week's monkey news. RickyGervais.com <laughs> Well, that's the end of uh, the tenth podcast in the series of twelve. Only two more to go. Um, one more hour of the uh, the drivel that is um, the thoughts of Chairman Pilkington or Dilkington, as he should now be known. Um, this uh, podcast was brought to you by Positive Internet. Those great guys at Positive Internet host the world's number one podcast. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. If you want to get in touch, remember it's podcast at rickygervais.com. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Hello and welcome to number 11 in our series of 12 podcasts with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello, uh, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, Carl, you have become a phenomenon. Okay. Right. right. This uh, is a, a new story that's gone everywhere. It started, I think, in New York, Reuters, and then that's been taken up by every Reuters network everywhere, India, uh, all over Australia, England. Okay, here it is. The headline is, 
podcast makes Britain an unlikely internet icon. Britain there, B-R-I-T-O-N. Okay? Now, this is uh, the story by Mark Egan, and it uh, came out of um, New York originally. Unemployed British radio producer Carl Pilkington has become an unlikely superstar by using the medium of podcasting for his bizarre statement about eating an animal's private parts. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was more about, like, that reality show. That, right. Well, it says that here. It was during a discussion on yeah. the Gervais show about a reality TV show where contestants were asked to eat an animal's penis. Uh, Pilkington um, made internet history while talking about this, it says, right? First, he said he could not eat an animal's penis in the morning because he had a delicate stomach. He then proclaimed, using the British slang for penis, I could eat a knob at night, okay? <laughs> His knob sound bite has become so popular that a Google search for I could eat an ob at night yields more than half a million listings, okay? <laughs> Among them are T-shirts featuring the slogan, okay, and Pilkington's bald head selling for $17. Why did it have to make a point about your bald head? I, I, I don't know. What's, why, why is that getting a little mention? <laughs> wow! <laughs> it doesn't matter. I see the T-shirt. Have a look at it. <laughs> what, what, what is bald? I'm not buying one, then. It's not going to make any difference. Either you, you want a T-shirt with me, head on, or you don't. It's not an issue. <laughs> all it says is, but among also, them are these... t-shirts featuring the slogan and Pilkington's bald head. I also liked it when it said, Pilkington plays the village idiot on the Ricky Gervais show, okay? Now, plays the village idiot suggests that he thinks you're a character, that character being a village idiot. The problem is, the fact that you're not a character, to me, suggests that you are just a village idiot. A global village idiot. Yeah. Mm. Now... Just on, uh, the, on the websites, though, when it said... There's loads of websites about eating a knob at night. Yeah. Have they looked at each website and gone, yeah, that's to do with the podcast? Yeah. Or is it just like gays and that saying, oh, I love a bit of knob at night? <laughs> <laughs> it's a valid question. It's a valid question. That's why you're an internet icon, Carl, because you say things like that. After Gervais mused on the show that the soundbite could be used in a dance remix, it took just a few days for the internet to be awash with songs using the soundbite as a hook. So what do you think of that, Carl? Oh... Uh, what, I mean, is, is it big in, in India? Well, I don't know. It's all, it goes around the world. This is a story. I know, but I just can't the believe world. the problems that... If I was in India, I wouldn't be getting upset about someone in London talking about a knob at night with the problems they've got. Well, I don't think anyone's getting upset in India. No, He's just saying, saying that the information... I can't world. imagine people walking around India. You know, have, you, have you heard that song, Knob at Night? <laughs> I can't imagine that happening with the... You know, they're hungry in that and it's dusty and everything. <laughs> That's your don't. image of India, is it? They're hungry and it's dusty. I, I assume it's, you know, the parts of India that aren't dusty and in poverty. There is a lot of poverty in India, but there was also, you know, yeah, but these it's, parts it's of the major civilization and, uh, uh, and the people uh, that, that live in apartments with, with uh, uh, computers, they probably might tune in. But, but I don't think it's an issue all over the world, is it? Because there's some places where they eat dogs. They'd go, no, at night, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a bad thing. You know, why, why is that out on a t-shirt? I had one last Wednesday. <laughs> no, not an issue. What, what, what do you mean? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Again, if there are cannibals listening, if it's, it's you know in places that, that you wouldn't travel to, and that they get hold of a little laptop and an iPod, and they listen to that, I can eat knob at night. Then they're going, "What's the problem? What's the big deal? We all, we we love a knob at night. Yeah, we so. love a little knob at night. Yeah, bollocks in the morning, knob at night. That's the rule. But what about the fact that? They're saying you're a phenomenon, a global phenomenon, because when you were, you know, a tiny little um, round-headed mank mm -hmm. growing up in Manchester, you could not surely have ever anticipated that you would one day be described as a phenomenon, an international phenomenon. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I went to that school, you know, with a kid with a big head and webbed hands. <laughs> now he should be being talked about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's maybe he doesn't want to be talked about. If if you've grown up with a big head and webbed hands, the last thing you want to be is talked about. He wants to he wants to put on he a pair blend of, into society. He yeah. wants to put put on a bit of uh, a pair of mittens and paint his head like a crash helmet. So people think, oh, it looks like a big head, but it's probably just a crash helmet. Yeah, just go about his business. Yeah, yeah. unnoticed. We won't get stopped on a bike or anything. Yeah, but I say if you've got something that's a bit weird, use it. That's what we're doing. That's exactly what me and Steve are doing. We have got something that's a bit weird, and we're using it. And I want to uh, speak to the people all around the world. Thanks for listening. But how famous can you make Carl Pilkington? Are you a journalist? Please write about this for people who probably haven't listened to Carl. Uh, talk about Carl Pilkington. Put a little poster up in your window. I love Carl Pilkington. Print a badge. Give it away. 
email your friends. Tell uh, tell one person about this podcast and let them discover the the amazing beauty that is Carl Pilkington's mind. Right. As ever, Rick, there are hundreds and thousands of emails coming in. Um, people contributing all kinds of stuff, pictures as always, and uh, little video clips that I think might be of interest. And of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from uh, Jade Ramira. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because I mean, your school experience was a bit, if you got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, she's four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so teaching them the, 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 the quest for knowledge. Uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out a bit as well, just going like... <laughs> See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking, you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? To be a human? Or, or, or teaching to... them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that, you know, teaching them the love for learning. So, yeah. you know, get them up to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas... He, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email, like, how there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Woo, what? Right? But it's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's say, not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't Get happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher a on Mars. Why not? Because... Yeah, how, why not? Why did it... How did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like... Not dishwashers. What, you think that the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? They're going to do stuff sort of half assed aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day? So... It didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash-landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars, and it, it, it got up, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't open But But the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. floated up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it has, it's, it's, all, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So... Ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would no. they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up in the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want to be who's going to do that? You know, that means... Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram yeah. th out of the Earth's atmosphere? So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people do it take to fly a rocket? I... <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right. Say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it, one to, like, be going, yeah, we're all right. Yeah. One, one, one to make the... some hors d'oeuvres. One, one, one... one to stop at the petrol station no, to well, get what, more. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing They haven't got up... a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about, say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking about ages ago, how would you have lived with them? Get on with it, see you later. Well, they didn't, I've told you this before, you, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, alright then, here's a different question. Go on then. Would it be better... Um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst yeah. we're here. Because I, I put that in my diary the other day, that, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. We're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Yeah. There's speed bumps to slow people down. Zebra crossing. Cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not, not as many as they should be, because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm yeah, saying is I it's... there's still people dying. I think, I think there's still people dying. Not that many, though. Yeah, I think there's still a millions handful, of people a handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Lo yeah. Loads of people are living longer, and yeah. that's, that's a problem. So, so you feel that you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex into, say, about, London, about. 
Just having wandering around, just picking people off. That's what. Just, just you know, just sort of random and that. Because I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know dies and that. But all I'm saying is, I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go, oh, Neil, yeah. Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And, and Nora's be, had her head bitten off by a. Whatever. I just yeah. think it, then it is survival of the fittest, which yeah. is we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. You just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They, 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 can, they can do too much now to keep people going. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking, have you ever been in a physical fight? Um, once that I can remember. It was over a, over a woman. <laughs> well, a girl. I was at school. Yeah. Um... And it was because, like, it's hassle, innit? Right? Relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And, uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh,. I, I didn't sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco, <laughs> and um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on, and I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it, and she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be dealing with this. Right? You know, what's up with you? It's old, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that, and saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. No. Right? So she's crying her eyes out. I said, it's over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's over, you saying? Right. In the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No yeah. more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right, and uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order, you know. I'm saying, what are you on about? So you, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven -year yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> but sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. Ah! Get out of my face. <laughs> So oh. I, I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved and all that? <laughs> <Why> <laughs> yeah. Two seven year old. Yeah. Why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Right. Wow, is it like a proper... Sorry, this is like someone from Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. I just, uh, so I'm... you put you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What were I you wearing? Know, football boots? I just stood boots? on it. Just... <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so... got a hole in it. So, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got he so arm locks and head A little bit of wrestling and sho shoving about and that, and it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, and and his tooth hit the sink, yeah. right? And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly, uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you." Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, "Oh God, there's a copper here talking," and it like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. But did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, think... he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. Some of the questions coming in now, Rick, are just I don't know what they're intending, what what response they're hoping for. Really, this is one from Rob. He just says, "I was just wondering, what are Carl's views on the human appendix?" What do you think, Carl? What do you think of the human appendix? Never worried about it. What? Well, no, I think Rob's point is that it's sort of pretty uh, redundant now. The appendix is, used to be a, a, an organ that, that was packed 
with um, these uh, these enzymes that help break down things like cellulose. But because of our diet now, and because the uh, you know cooking and uh, and other things, we we don't need to eat a lot of cellulose. We don't eat very very low grade things like 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 rabbits, for example, huge appendix and cecum, and they they use it to break down cellulose. They actually eat their own. Uh, feces to get it through again but we get a lot of nutrients out of food now we eat very rich food so we sort of don't need the appendix and also when something goes wrong with the appendix if it bursts it can infect you and you can die from it so sort of what's the point in having it we don't need it and it can only cause us harm that was the question i think that rob was putting to you so now what are your thoughts on the human appendix so th this is kind of what we've talked about before where he always says that. He always says something like, oh, we've talked about this and, and the thing that we talked about is nothing like it. Yeah. There's, there's never... Go on. No, but just like um, in the way that we've messed with our body and we've messed with the world too much. Yeah. If we've got an appendix, we, we must need it. If it's dangling about, right? Well, no, because su such is the human evolution is uh, that... that as you said before, you know, it's no longer based on survival of the fittest because we can, we can fight nature and combat it. So our evolution, if you like, socially and, and everything else, it, it, it is, is been much faster than our biological yeah, but what, evolution. Yeah, what, what I mean is we've, we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way. And, well, and we, well, we have done. interfered, yeah. yeah. we shouldn't have done. Because it's, mm. it's the same way, like, uh, if, we'd, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, the answer's no. Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the Cause way... Because he's right, is it? Because he's right. No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of like an ape to man. Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, <laughs> yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this... Because, I mean, we started, uh, you know, dabbling with a plane maybe 100 years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing we were scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. Of behind, well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't room. have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. What would happen? Right, here's, here's another question. This is one that I'd chuck out to kids as well. We were talking about education, teaching kids stuff. Sure. What would happen, right? Uh, we ruin this world, right? Goes wrong and that, right? They shut it down. They go, we're moving. We go to another planet. It's as simple as that yeah. in his world. It's as simple as that. We can't go to uh, Mars because it's full of stuff that used to be in Dixon's. It's like a tip. Yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so we can't go to there. We go somewhere else. So you find another planet, wherever it is, right? Yeah. Wherever um, it is, yeah. easy. Something that I've always wondered about, if we do that, do we start New Year's, or do we carry on? What, do you know what I mean? Do we say, oh, it's still 2006? Or do we go, oh, it's world, it's world new, or whatever, yeah. new world? That is definitely the first priority. You it's know. year one, right, we've sorted that out. Right, now... Well, it depends, doesn't it? Because a year might not be the same on this planet. To, we'd sort that out. Right, we'd sort out what, what year it is and that. Well, no, no, um, no, no, what I'm saying is we, we'd have to start again anyway because the planet might not take one year as we know it to to go around the sun. It might not take a day to turn. A day is, is a day because that's how long it takes. Yeah, for but the, we'd have to carry on as we know because we don't want to start doing longer days and that. Otherwise, it'll just kick off and say, this is rubbish, this new world, what are you doing? No, I'm we doing wouldn't a have a choice. Hour day. We wouldn't have a choice. A day is how long it takes no. the planet to... But to, a day, to turn, a day and a year is how long it takes that planet to go around no, the but, sun. But once. a day is man-made, really. There's places in the world where they're working in the dark, isn't they? In Iceland and that, but they don't go. Well, it's dark all the time, so I'll stay in bed. Uh. Well, no, but there's still a day. It's still 24 hours in a day in Iceland. Yeah, but that's we only work by that clock because that's what people use at the moment when they go. What time is it? You go. It's 20 past. No, 1. no, no. We use that that because that's how long it takes the planet we're on to to. to I, I've turn. never worried about it like that. I've just always. Well, no, I'm telling you, well, that's because you weren't asked to get involved when they came up with the idea. I'm telling I'm you, just, that's what a day is. It's yeah. how long it takes your planet to to. Yeah. What would you mean? The way that, what? No, I'm I'm just saying that's fine and everything. But if when I was born, people said there's 26 hours in a day, I'd go fair enough. I'm not going to argue. I'm well, yeah, gonna, we could have I'm made that by long an hour, is yeah. We and, could have made an hour shorter and get 26 well, in. Well, they're saying they're going to do that. Because, well, no, because, they're not. No, they are, because no, there's so not. many people in the world. Yeah. This is what I was talking about before. They've got to create more jobs. The only way to have more jobs, keep shops open, take on more people, everyone's happy. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> right. Safety's 28 hours in a day. Yeah, it'd still be 24 hours long as we used to know it. No, you'd have, you'd have like, oh, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's like 20 past, uh... 
25 or whatever. <laughs> well, you're not, you're not <laughs> making any sense at all. No, I'm just saying- The that. Earth would still take 24 hours as we know it now. It, forget it. <laughs> Hang on a minute, I want- uh, there's more interesting territory here. Let's say we've got to our new planet, wherever that is. It takes 14 hours, okay, to, you know, to, to do its turn, so we call that a day, right? So we've now yeah. agreed that 14 hours is a day. But nothing, it's gonna take ages to get the town centre built and that. If people are- if you've only got- I'M GOING WITH YOU, I'M DEFENDING YOU HERE! Alright. So we've got- so we've got that, we've established what the day is, we've established what a year is, right? It's year one, it's Carl year one. What next? All right, we've got all the people. We've moved to another planet. You said you had a bunch of other questions. Don't forget, our sleep patterns have evolved on a day. The reason we sort of like go to sleep at night and have about eight to ten hours sleep is because that's our evolution. No, but that's only yeah. That's just because what that's what we've got used to, isn't it? Yeah. You look at a sloth. That's asleep all the time. Yeah, that's got the same watch as us. It's doing <laughs> yeah, what it wants. But it, it evolved differently, didn't it? Yeah, but, but, it's, was, but it's um, living now in 2006, so wake it up. Right, you can't get away. <laughs> You're not getting away with this anymore. If you want to live now, join in with us. Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? <laughs> well, Carl's Diary. You didn't yeah. explain what it was, Carl's Diary. Actually, as some one person said, if we are going to get it published, we could maybe publish it as The Diary of an Idiot. Very good. So, um, you know, a little riff there on one of the most famous diaries. Sunday, got up. Sunny day, so I went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. I I'm whistling is so inane to me. But yeah, but it'd be... <laughs> it's sort of like going, I'm, I'm, I'm content, I'm... Uh, it, it really is that thing, that if they go, uh, you go, Well, um, Mr. Mellows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. <laughs> Won't happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't well, whistle it, when yeah. you're sad. The other place you hear, of course, is uh, changing rooms. And that's men going, <laughs> I'm whistling so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating on whistling. <laughs> <laughs> the lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. They were sat on the edge of the lake, waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? Yeah, they were just sat there looking, sort of going, oh, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know, I, how, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne, <laughs> why ducks don't use their wings much? They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. <laughs> The old excuse! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Gotta I've... phone my mum. Mm. There was a marathon type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. Uh. <laughs> Why were you walking on the same route? Because uh, it was when we lived on the Docklands. Oh, uh, brilliant. There was, there was no other route. The flat was just about 100 oh. yards down the road. They're going, look at the bloke with the bald wig. <laughs> He's yeah. carrying a lamp and a bin. Took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam. It was just old t-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it. I don't think anyone will buy them. But the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is. <laughs> oh, Jim Pants, that is only gone and written it down. <laughs> The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until, Carl? What have you got? You going to do? I've got to do as far as December, and then that's it. Uh, I don't know. When does the diary end? Thirty-first of December, usually. Yeah. Do do it it the whole way there. Go always the same. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when I'll do it till, and then. Uh... Why do that? Why just? Why be conformist? Why? Why end on December? Why not end on January the thirty-first? Weird that you should go. Don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me mam called me to ask me to like... Fuck me, you're right. That like, look, that should be. Me mam called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I said, <laughs> I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue there as to why you, you, uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's, oh, you know, I mean- Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got news story about how Aldrin, brackets, astronaut, has got some evidence that aliens exist. Mm. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. To fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel. Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in <laughs> Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> <laughs> I that love it when Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, in it. No, it scares her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of- It doesn't scare her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today, and the face feels dry and spotty. Oh god, what's wrong with it? starts off! It starts <laughs> off moaning! The first thing he does is start moaning! He wakes up and goes, oh fuck me, I didn't die. <laughs> oh, oh god! I'm knackered today and my face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away. Or it could be all the- <laughs> It could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> but what's I'm the Madeira burst. cake? The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? <gasps> well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's <sighs> one of the little pleasures. <laughs> oh, God, Susan put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine from a mum. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just that oh, we you were. were. No, I, I well, you studied them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was looking for it. UFO data. I don't yeah. know where they put it. I don't think you find evidence where the world's down men's pants. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. <laughs> he, the he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag, but no. no. but it, it you reminds want to be right. me. You want to be specific. Yeah. If I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. Oh, still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkeys 50 quid, alpacas 20 pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, as long they as do. They're of course, they don't. They don't. They don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people, thinking, "I hope people buy this." They're going to put them out there. Yeah. They're, they're, but uh, at the end of the day, fifty quid's fifty quid, and they're not bothered. If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah, and I'm saying, "Can you get one to London?" To them, that is less hassle. Right. Th that don't, th uh, Carl. That's not how it works. You can't just go and say, "Oh, I'll have one of them." They're not bothered. It's for charity. Oh, of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for twenty quid. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, all that plus posters and packaging. They're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages, but <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh food and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! We've got to publish this diary. There's some dynamite we've stuff. In we've here. got to publish the diary. I mean, this is never mind, peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special I CD? I, I it just, it's amazing that you've got you can't. 
I, you can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus. <laughs> it's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I looked tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira, okay? We don't know. <laughs> always been going to every news agency in London, looking at gay magazines. <laughs> She taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed though because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. is such a noisy world though, isn't it? It is. Well, London is noisy, very noisy. I think just everywhere, just noise in general. They were yeah. saying how like every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five <laughs> times? I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because- <laughs> I don't know, I have no idea. I, I, every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, the same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah, some, some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's, there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct outside yeah. an instrument. Yeah. Noises are a byproduct. They're a machine. They don't go. Watch me make this <laughs> noise. Make this machine. It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing but something. Why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the who's noise. Picking I know. The noise? That's a that's printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah. You so know, printing... a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going. Oh, can we make this make a different noise? No. It's it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. You said the byproduct is because of something that's happening, right? But it's yeah. the physical action, isn't it? And the way that that impacts on the, uh, the surrounding air. That's what no you know, how noises are manufactured. It's when, not a when, choice. When Stevenson's yeah, rocket came and I went they went, can you make it go, It's what, that's the noise it made. I know, but then. Say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for f what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was gonna sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises, nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like <laughs> a Ford Escort, or... <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, but there can't be some many because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and escort so far. I can't explain it. But the problem it. is a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro. So I, I don't know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, you're ripping off the turkey, <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I think my worry there is people might get confused with it because that jingle's very yeah. similar to the monkey news jingle. There's aspects of it that's similar, yeah. Yeah. Just, be... Some people might have just heard that and they might have just heard chimpanzee and thought, oh great, it's monkey news, but Carl presumably is too lazy to have actually prepared any monkey news. Oh, I've got some good news about monkey news, actually. Have you? If you are craving monkey news, then there is a special monkey news poster in the, uh, in the CD, the three CD box set, um, the Ricky Gervais show. Got everything. It's got the, the twelve shows and MP3. It's got the best of, and it's got an extra hour of brand new material as well. And um, the reason we did it on CD is because uh, some people were saying I've heard about this, but I can't listen to it. I haven't got an iPod. I haven't got a computer. So uh, buy that for a friend, who uh, who can't listen to these. It's the perfect Thanksgiving gift. It is the perfect Thanksgiving gift. Or Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've, uh, we've signed, um, one that's going to a lucky winner. We did a competition, uh, on the last podcast, um, to give away one of the CD box sets, the, uh, uh, World of Carl Pilkington, and, uh, we've signed that, and, um, Flannels of the Deep, uh, the new, uh, book in the series. Can you remind us, Rick, of the quiz question? The quiz question was, do you want these? <laughs> okay, and what was the correct answer? Uh, it was yes. Well, we've had, uh, it's amazing actually how many people didn't realise that was, we had a lot of people saying no, uh, I'm not interested, um, who are you, why are you bothering me? But, um, amazingly, Rachel Bolland from, uh, Glasgow has got the correct answer, she said yes. Now then, we yeah. need a new question, Rick. Yeah, should we give those away again? 
<laughs> we get, give, the, give those away again. The same yeah. things again. Not obviously okay. these. We'll send these no, to Rachel. We'll get them them you get so, so you get. Do you do you want a signed CD, the World Cup Hilton and Flannels of the Deep? Okay. Plus, we can also add to that, Rick, the forthcoming extras script book. Ah, not just a script book, Steve. No, it's got some wonderful pictures, but that taken by Rich Hardcastle of um, people like Ben Stiller and Sam Jackson and Kate Winslet behind the scenes in their off-duty moments. And it's brilliant. It's really good. We will put some pictures up on the website. Go to wickedgerays dot com and you'll see you see what you could uh, we'd be winning. Yeah, yeah. So we've okay. got that perfect collection of stuff, but we need a new quiz question. Okay. Um. Okay. Th th so so those prizes. Uh. Does someone else want them? Does someone else want them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you know the answer to that, then get in touch. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck. It's a tricky one. Oh, good luck anyway, because I never read the emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of, uh, the second in this, uh, series of three special podcasts. That was the end of the Thanksgiving edition, uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. See ya. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. They're doing a great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Mm. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, and welcome to our Christmas podcast with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering, Rick, if having done so many podcasts this year, because we very much started the whole podcast revolution ourselves single-handedly roughly this time last year. Yeah, that's right. Have we perhaps exhausted the podcast phenomenon? Is it time to pack it up, pack up the equipment and move on to something new? Well, this will be the last one for, for a little while, I think. I think, you know, we've done, we did, uh, I think 24 and then these specials this year. I think we started it about this time last year. Well, I don't know we? about you, Rick, but I'm bored of the whole podcasting thing, and I know that uh, you probably feel the same way. Well, let's stop for a while. We might get back together again, but it won't be for a while. It's the, you know, we had a year. It was the year of the podcast. In a weird year, isn't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you look at it like that, when you think about all the podcasts that we've done. Yeah. Over a year. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's... Looking back at the year, a year in which we've seen, you know, um, increasing violence in Iraq, we've seen uh, the advent of more fears over global warming, we've seen George W. Bush take a massive battering in the midterm elections, we've seen many major world events this year. Carl, what stuck out for you? What event do you, if you think, oh my God, if you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Uh, the, the grub that was, that was eating biscuits on the windowsill. <laughs> right. That's just a little bit more up there for you than the capturing of Saddam Hussein and his sentencing to death. Just because, you know, it's, uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So what exactly- What, the capture of Saddam or the grub? No, the, the grub. The grub. It was just, I, I was there on the computer, yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit, I uh, put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why would you do that? What, why? Why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Window because I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. Yeah. No, and so some ruffian stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and uh, I was enjoying it. Put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea, and uh, I saw. Planned out. This is. <laughs> yeah. I bet, well, we read about this later in the diary. So and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> Yeah. So I look down closer and there's an insect that is see-through but with legs and um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole and then when I looked I noticed there was loads of these little see-through things and they were obviously all like, oh, I got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they were saying. They were, we've they were got going, over here. But I thought that what, <laughs> what, what, what was it, it, like I say, it was amazing because it was they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet not that far. They're, but but they still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird that that happened. I never thought that would happen in 2006. <laughs> And that's what- <laughs> You never thought that would happen in 2006! That's what's nice, isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the nat- you know, the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods, we can bring out better vacuum cleaners, um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up. And to see this see-through thing- You do. Eating a biscuit. Uh, that's- that's mind. where I've sort of gone this year, I'd say out of a a anything, I've sort of gone out of my way to- 
to learn more stuff about weird stuff that's happening. But I don't know what you've learned. You've learned that, uh, a creature which you can't even identify or name- you don't know, right, you, you, you don't know what it is, right, um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that, what is that- how is that useful? Just because everything is- is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was. But Carl Or where thinks, it happened but, or why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that- that the grub has an inkling, has a, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl's does. That's what yeah. he's from makes. He's thinking, as I can't believe it, they, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as opposed to just being- uh, yeah. taking the it starch and anything. the flour, yeah. exactly, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that- these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But, they're eating biscuit. <coughs> and that was never meant to happen. So, so it's changing it. What but I mean is you might start getting fat insects. That should never have happened. You, you, you don't normally see a fat beetle. You go, oh, look at that, that's a bit fat. Put a bit of weight on. And now that's gonna happen because they're eating sugary stuff. The- the squirrels in the park, cause people are feeding them Mars bars and everything, they're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. <laughs> now over time, you know, they- they're gonna cause more trouble than they what are now. Have you got what do you think? Violent? Just what cause when I'm sat in the park and- and what have you, they- they really like cocky, they come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of a attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now, they want a bit of croissant. And that's- that's what I'm saying, they've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub, having a biscuit. Everything's trying different food out. He'll want a gatto soon. Well, in the same way that, you know, you, you look at people around the world, how they're eating weirder stuff. They're running out of, you know, ideas on- on how to cook food differently. And we're eating weird stuff. So our insects, everything's moving on. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish, memory's got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. Everything's time. Mm. Time makes you more intelligent. Well, no, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more because more stuff's going on, and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> It was on the internet, right, and somebody had- had linked up a cockroach <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to some- I can't even be bothered explaining it, but- but, uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, everything- everything's moving on. <sighs> yeah, but- but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man, it's like from the 1980s, Yeah, that cockroach is so God, 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 Get alive, it. man. Hello, PlayStation 3, is yeah, hello. hello! Hello! Yesterday's cockroach. <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. What was he listening to? MC Hammer? Christ almighty. Fucking hell, Pac-Man. Get a life. <laughs> High five, me. I was in the supermarket recently, um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms, yeah. on the way to the pornography, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, thought, you know, it's worth perhaps, you know, getting a stock in. You know, get case. a stocking. No, getting getting some condoms. What? Put over your head. <laughs> You're not still doing that, are you? No, 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 no. No, I uh, I thought it'd be worth getting some condoms in. You know, it's it's, it's Christmas party season, and uh, you never know when you're going to run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, and I was weird because the, the the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage in a plastic cage, so it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. Because I took them off the, ca the the thing and I was trying to open it, so sort because of, I thought that they, they would it, you had to open it. Try know, it on. You, try <laughs> it on. <laughs> exactly. Okay, they're just you know in case it doesn't fit. Exactly. Bring exactly. it back. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah. And, uh, and do you do alterations? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. Yes, yeah, five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm trying to open this thing, and, and this guy who works there, sort of with his middle aged guy who works there, goes, you, you, know, you have to um, you have to take that to the uh, checkout. So you can't open that yourself. I was just because I I don't know. I still find it very embarrassing, you know, dealing with any of that sort of you know prophylactics and things. The novelty of that is still very embarrassing to me. And uh, so I just left it. I thought, forget it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take these to the counter because you never. It's like if you get served by a by a woman, it's it's still a bit embarrassing, particularly if that's all you're buying. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> she knows what you're up to. Um, yeah. You're going to fill them up with war and throw them at students. <laughs> and um, but it, anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought 
for his girlfriend for Christmas. Uh, was it a, uh... Two pack. A two pack of... Yeah, what was it? Condoms. What, wasn't it about buy one, get one free? Yeah. It was a bumper family pack, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a family, obviously, that'd be... That'd be weird. Yeah, a family pack of condoms. <laughs> 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 one for the kids. <laughs> kids <laughs> enjoy yourselves. <laughs> um, but, um... So that was a couple of years ago, Carl, the famous, uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? Uh, not really. They, they were the early days. Um. Do you mean the early days? You'd been going out with her for about eight years, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I, I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so do. sorry, that was a bumper year, was it? That was, that was a hell of a, she went, oh, I remember when, I remember when you used to buy me stuff, like condoms. It's gone downhill since then, Well, no, she didn't presents. know she was getting them. What I mean is there's less Of course prizes. she didn't. That's what, that's what I mean, though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her, and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on- No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult, is what I mean, to surprise someone, innit, over, no, over no, no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't- if- if you're- if you always get something good, it's like the three wise men, what did they get the second year for, for little baby <laughs> Jesus? Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like, oh, I've, I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself there. I've got to get- I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And, and next year, get him the gold. Step it up a bit or whatever. But don't you understand, because what, what, I don't want to criticise you because you're a lovely man, but having read the diary and read much of this diary, one of the things I notice is the complete lack of romanticism. The number of times Susanna says, book us a lovely meal out, take me out tonight, and you always write like it's a massive chore, like it's a headache for you. Oh no, I've got to spend a romantic night out with my girlfriend. Because it's the same reason I don't like Christmas and stuff is the expectations. I prefer it. If I want to take Suzanne out, I prefer to meet her at the bus stop when she comes back from work and go, do you want to go out? But you Rather don't do than, that. No, I do now and again, but it's that thing of, oh, we'll go out tonight, I want to leave it to you, book a place, da da da. It, it builds it up too much and it can never live up to it. It's like how, you, you know, like people make a big thing out of, you know, having it away for the first time and they go, oh, I'm going to do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote! That's an amazing quote! That'll be up there with uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. No, but like That's I've amazing. said, like I've said a lot- But you can't just spring it on someone. You have to at least ask, are you up for it tonight? Just see how it goes. That's what I'm saying about Christmas. I might not be in the mood for it on December 25th. For Christmas, having turkey and everything. That's what I mean about, you know, in the last podcast, stuff coming round every year. Don't plan it. If you fancy a Christmas, have it. If you don't, just carry on. It'd be nice to live in a world like that. They say, you know, it's a world of freedom or something now. It isn't. No, they do, I don't know what that means. No, no, they do they just make up things they say. They say. They? they say, like, you know, today's world is a free world or something. Someone said something along them lines. When it isn't, <laughs> everyone's still being told what to do, when to do it. <laughs> Christmas is a big thing, isn't it, that we all have to go through. And it's stressful. It's You're not a happy such time. a miserable sod. You really no, are. No, but Christmas is a big, it's a big upheaval. It is a it, out of all of those special days that go on, Christmas is the one but that's- what are you doing with your time? It's the question we return to again and again. No, we why, read it. Why, You're uh, visiting your parents. You're hiring yeah. a car. You're going yeah. down the calf. It's yeah. not like you're, you're taking your work away. You're doing yeah. some important neuroscience work. Yeah. And we've had to take you away from that for three days. Yeah. No, but what You're I, not doing anything of any value, no, Carl. But, no. But, no. What I might want to do, but I can't because the shops are shut because you know, they want to go off and celebrate Christmas. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an upheaval. Easter's all right. It, it comes and goes. Do you want an egg? Not really. Don't have one then. You're not forced an egg. <laughs> You're not forced an egg. I like Easter, and everyone can afford an egg. There's no one being left out. Whereas Christmas, everyone like goes back to the family and they have a big meal and all that. And there's there's a lot of poor people out there who can't do that. So it's more of a if you're going to mm. talk about religion and you know the religious sort of occasions, mm. Easter's one that I'd keep. If you plan everything, you probably won't do it in the end. Whereas- Again, that- that as a soundbite is gobbledygook, mm. isn't it? No, what I mean is, say like, um, holidays, when you know they're coming, you never enjoy them as much as one when it's surprised on you. Who surprises you, someone with a holiday how can unless you, you win it on a game show? How can you really go, bloody hell, I'm on holiday? Suzanne did it with me. 
She sorted it all out and booked me time off work without oh, me knowing. Oh, that's a lovely romantic gift. Oh, yeah, and nice. I went along with it and we had a great little holiday. Yeah, so, so maybe you should do something like that for her. No, she wouldn't like it as much and I won't pick the right place and I know she won't like it. You're um, one of these people that washes up badly so you'll never be asked again, aren't no, you? No, that's my job. That's the only job I do. What's yeah, well, it was a me uh, yeah, But to be honest, that's, that's, that's doing me head in at the moment because I've outgrown the sink. <laughs> He talks about himself like a crab. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Gotta get a new sink for Carl. Why? Uh, he's outgrown it. No, just he's thirty-three now, and his knees around his head. Oh, he can't bath in that anymore. No, just my back's been playing up a bit, and I think it's because of the height of the sink. But hold well on, you haven't grown. I think I have. Well, you haven't. Bit. No, you haven't grown at thirty-three. Well, it's it's definitely something. It's just not very good. Subsidence. I don't know, I've just said to Susanna, I said, this, this isn't as good as it used to be. It's not- <laughs> This isn't as good as it used to be! <laughs> this washing up! Rock and roll with me, David Bowie, off, uh, Diamond Dogs. Another one of my favourite tracks. Cracking. Great track, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's time for, um, Carl's Room 101. Carl was too shy to obviously ever do this for real, but, um, we thought that, and, and the, uh, the run of this with, uh, things that Carl hates. Yeah. We, we know the thing he likes, we know the- so, uh, Carl, okay. We should just point out that we've, uh, been inspired by the TV show Room 101. We didn't come up with this ourselves. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> this is Room 102. <laughs> yeah, we'll be Paul Merton, and you be Carl Pilkington. Right. right. You can try to banish to Room 101 all those things that you dislike, never- they're never to be seen again. Will you please welcome Carl Pilkington? Right. Who? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Carl. So, what's your first? What does this represent? And imagine me putting some on a right. on a table next to you. Go on. Right. Well, first of all, right, it's dead hard to come up with like five things that drive you up the wall. Okay. Right. It's not easy because there's so many things. Yeah. But it's just like you know, picking five. It's like someone saying, pick your five favorite records or five favorite films. Yeah. Sure. It's hard. So, you know, in Desert Island Discs, where they you you always get the complete works of Shakespeare in the Bible. Yeah. I think you should include Ricky Gervais. I think you should always be there, already in Room 101. They don't have to nominate you. You al you always go in. <laughs> go on then, go on then. Right. Go on. So, so don't bother putting him in. Don't bother putting Ricky in, Carl. He's already yeah, there. He's al I'm already there, waiting. Yeah. Go on then. Right. Yeah. First of all, right, I thought- I thought of like, uh, things that we've done in the past. Sure. And like, quotes and that, that you yeah. were talking about. Yeah. That- that- that quote that people say that, uh, you know, money doesn't make you happy. Yeah. Right, we're just- we're just rattling through some here. Yeah. That- that annoys me. What? Well, money the quote, doesn't money doesn't make you happy? Yeah, cos it does, it clearly does. <laughs> <laughs> right. W without it, life's pretty dull, isn't it? Yeah, good. Right, so- okay. So that's like a little short- short thing and- and, <laughs> you know, then- then that sort of makes you think about people with money. There was yeah. a programme on in the week, I don't know if you saw it, Steve, the- the one, uh, Posh Loaded- That was brilliant, wasn't it? That was great show. So annoying. Oh, yeah. There was a girl on there, right, who's from a- from a rich family and that, and, uh, you know, it's not her fault that she's from a rich family. No. It's like how posh people annoy people. That doesn't annoy me, because the way I sound is because of where I'm brought up and that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you- if you sound posh, you sound posh, it's- yeah. you know, it doesn't change you as a person or whatever. Yeah, it's quite But this true. girl, right, um, did you see it, Steve? I did. You didn't see it, I did you, Ricky, right? This girl goes shopping. She buys like four t-shirts and a crappy little handbag. Yeah. Spends about thirteen hundred quid, and she's just wasting it. Going, you know, the woman's saying, uh, "Oh, you love these? You know, they're really in fashion." She says, "Oh, whatever. I'll probably only wear them once anyway." And it's just that sort of thing annoys me. Yeah. You know, people with money, you know, who have grafted for it, are good, but like. Um, you know, people who- who just get money given to them from the rich parents trying to make the world. There was another point, right, where she's in a shoe shop, right, and, um, she- she's like, got these big boots and stuff. <laughs> uh, but part of the problem is, right, she's quite odd looking and that, right, but she's got a lot of money so she makes herself look half decent. Yeah. <laughs> problem is, <laughs> she's got fat ankles. She's got what? Fat ankles. Right. And they drive her up the wall because no matter- I mean, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's almost like God has gone, yeah, you can have all the toffees and stuff you want, you can have, like, your nice t-shirts, but at the end of the day, love, you're stuck with these ankles and you can see- <laughs> I love the 
<laughs> I do, for God's sake. Right, you can have all the toffees you want. Yeah. And you have nice handbags and that, but you're stuck with these ankles. Oh, God. And, and I really wanted to get a job in that shoe shop where she was going in, blowing her dad's money, and she was calling up her dad saying, oh, daddy, is it all right if, uh, you know, I'm just out shopping, I've just bought some shoes that, that have cost like a grand, mm. and I really wanted a, a job in that shoe shop, just so I could sit there, and when she comes in, you go, oh, hello, love, whatever her name is, lovely to see you here again. Got some lovely new shoes in. Got look at these nice new boots. Everyone's wearing them. Victoria Beckham, and you know all the it girls are wearing them. Yeah, I try them on. Oh, you can't because your ankles are so fat. <laughs> you can't get into these. <laughs> Never mind. Here's some boots. <laughs> she really annoyed me, and I'm not a nasty person. You're but not. She she brought it out of me. Oh, oh I'm worried though. This idea of you getting a job in a shoe shop. I'm not sure you're qualified. <laughs> I like the, all the, the, that's way around it, that yeah. some people go, oh, I'd like her to lose all her money or something. He'd like to actually yeah. bother go through getting the job in the shop. Yeah. And then just wait in there. You'd be too busy mucking around outside, like, on some kind of trolley stuck in a little leak. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, <laughs> but interestingly in that show, I was watching that show, and at one point, um, you mentioned that her fat heels or her fat ankles. Yeah. Um, her, her, she said, I'd like to do, I'd like to have various changes to my body, I'll pass it through, I'd like to do this to my face, and da 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 da. And, uh, her mum's there, and her mum's going, no, don't be so, that's like, no, you're my daughter, you're beautiful, da 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 No, you shouldn't, I'm not gonna let you have those, da da She went, I'd love to have an operation on my fat ankles. Her mum went, yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a mother does that? <laughs> oh, how bad can fat ankles be? I know. What were these ankles like? Well, tell us, Rick, like... you must know. No, <laughs> they, they, do you know what I mean? They were no. like, if you said to a little kid, to a four-year-old kid, draw a person, that's, they draw her legs. Do you know where there's no sort of thin bit and then it comes out a bit for your knees? Oh and yeah, and then just ankles. It was just like two logs. People go in and say, I like your new flares. What do you mean flares? They're <laughs> leggings. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> Awful. Oh. So, you know. It's okay. So you're putting in f posh girls with fat ankles. Yeah. yeah? Okay. What's, what's your next one? I'm in 101. Right. Another quick one, really. Go on. Um, people in supermarkets. <laughs> <laughs> right. What, the people um, who serve? Yeah. Ma it's mainly um, these, these shops you get around in London that are like open 24 hours, right? Yeah. You'll go in and you'll buy your, uh, your, you know, you don't do your main shop there, it's mainly just little bits in it, your, yeah. your carton of milk and, uh, sure. maybe a loaf, a couple of balm yeah. cakes and that. Yeah. And you go in there. <laughs> Who still buys balm cakes? <laughs> right? Do they have them in yeah, London? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever no. ask? Would you be annoyed if I said balm cakes without those down here? They're rubbish. That's happened before when I asked for gravy and they didn't know what gravy was. <laughs> In a chippy. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you say? Have you got any gravy? Uh, just, just because you, you do, you, up north you have chips and pie and gravy on it. And yeah. I didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Right, okay. So that, that annoys me actually, stick that on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, You've got fish men up north. But, but listen, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, we saw a sign in the north, right? It was a little shop and the sign said, we sell bread. <laughs> it was, it was handwritten. It was like, there was probably a, like a rush with those people in <laughs> exactly. Germany going, what's this bread got... you talk of? Yeah. Little, little <laughs> headscarves, little women running down with their little, oh. <laughs> but anyway, these shops, right, so you go in there getting your stuff and you'll go up to the till and they don't say hello to you. They, they don't sort of smile. They just bleep the stuff through. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you how much it is. They just sort of, Expect you to look at the till to see how much it is. Yeah. You can get your hand in your pocket, give them the money, they'll give you the change, and they won't say goodbye. Yeah. So yeah. It's like they just can't be asked so. to have any sort of hello, how are you doing? Yeah. I don't. I don't want a big chat. I don't want to know what they're getting up to and sure. what you know what the dad does for a living and all that. I just want <laughs> like how are you doing? You know, you're well, right? Uh, oh yeah, this, this spreads you know, popular or whatever. Uh, right, that'll be <laughs> five pounds. You, you, you need to keep abreast of which bread you're selling well. <laughs> oh, Mother's Pride, that's a good choice. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, so, so seventy percent of our old last time. So, that really, no even though, you know, it is a twenty-four hour I'll be honest, I, 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 I would err on the side of silence. Not, not rudeness, I hate rudeness if they do that, but I, I, I would rather, um, I'd start to go, uh, one pound fifty please, and that'll be fine for me. Any more? What about, uh, hello and goodbye, have a good day? Not in an American way. It doesn't way. bother me. I've got, I mean, I, I prefer people who say have a nice day and, and don't mean it to people who don't say it at all and don't mean it, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't worry about that mock sincerity because I, th I think it. No, no, it, no, it no does it's just job. normal, yeah. isn't it? No, no, I, I mean, I, I'm saying I don't, I don't, I, I like people who say, I don't care. They say, oh, nice to see you, come again, have a nice day. It doesn't bother me. But a chat. I, I, hate, I hate people who think they're the life and soul. No, 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 no. I don't, don't mean like, I mean like, nuts. you know, if you go through a door, you hold it open, you go, there you go. You know what I mean? You yeah. expect a thank you. 
Yeah. That's yeah. not at all. Yeah, uh, and also when when do you come in at the, uh, like a narrow walkway and you're both walking there and uh, I start walk out of the way and they tut like I should have. I want to go. Hold on, look, we're both in the same boat here. Yeah. And why is it me? Uh, that that annoys me. Where people just oh, think they, when they're in the wrong. They own the street or. <sighs> If, if, if two people aren't looking where they're going, it's one yeah. person's fault. Yeah. That really annoys me, yeah. yeah. So, Sorry. That, so that's it, really. I mean, I know the 24 hour shops and the knackered and stuff, but politeness, just to say. Well, it costs I nothing, does it? No. So, so those are your little quick ones, then we get on to your, your big three, three don't ones. We? The big one. Yeah, Should we play a record and come back to that? Well, I know what you want. I'm, I'm talking to Carl Pilkington on room, room 101 on XFM 104.9. Yeah. What? New order. Oh, excellent. You know what I mean? No. He's mad. We were shouting at you then. How loud are those headphones? Uh, pretty loud. But I'm always wearing headphones, so yeah. yeah but but look, look, look what I'm doing. This is an old radio trick. You put one earphone over your ear and the other one off, so you can hear people in the oh, room. It's on what, XFM one hundred four point nine. What did you want to say? Doesn't matter, Carl. It doesn't. The it really point doesn't is, it could have been important. It could have been a fire. Yeah, you, or anything. When when we shout anything, you jump. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Come on, Carl. All right. Get with the program. All right. Hey. Right. What other things do you want? Yes, one hundred one. Uh, uh, <laughs> other than us. Spiders. Right, go on. I, I know Ricky will yeah, be agreeing with yeah. this. All, all, all spiders, yeah. Just, I mean, not all spiders, because there's some spiders that are on the planet that don't do any harm. Uh, <laughs> they clean up stuff, don't they? What? <laughs> 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 like a little brush. Do you mean janitor spiders? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, there's, there's some that, you know. <laughs> Hong Kong leggy. Just, just yeah. clean with stuff, but I'm talking about the spiders that are deadly and right. uh and spiders that are massive i mean johnny's mate uh ricky's mate johnny i mean yeah he was talking about how uh he was in australia yeah and he was sharing a, a room with with a mate or whatever and his mate was having a shower and said uh johnny just just come in here a minute and he, he went in and there was a spider on the side of the bath that he said was the size of your hand Two yeah. hands width. It's sort of like size track, just like eight inches across. Um, was... That big, right? And the daft thing with that one is that that can't kill you. It's massive. It's got no purpose. It's a huntsman. Yeah, but what? Uh, uh, something you said it does, right? If you sort of walk around it and it and it thinks you're going to try and trap it, it it hisses at you and jumps at you and jumps on you and sort of clings on. That's you'd be, terrifying. You'd be sort of running around trying to get it off and it's just gripping on like the old stag beetle thing yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's clinging on to you. <laughs> but there is no what I don't understand is why is that spider that big? <laughs> what? Because no doubt it, it uh, only eats stuff like normal spiders do, but it needs to eat more of them because it's it's a bigger lad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um it doesn't it doesn't actually do anything. It's not like I just, I just don't. Doesn't get. create, doesn't paint, doesn't do yeah, anything. Yeah. It's just getting in the way, and it's one of those things that <laughs> are so big you couldn't kill it. Because can you imagine like the mess that yeah. would make something that size if you stamped on it? Yeah. Which I'm not, you know, again, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't get that. And then there was a program on a few weeks ago on BBC about spiders, and there was this one, right? It was going, you know, there's so many spiders in the world, and apparently there's so many of them they can't give them all names. Right. What they're saying is, once one dies out, they'll actually introduce another one, because there's so many different breeds of them that it's impossible to sort of up make a book and list them all. Right. Well, it's like the book queue. would be infinitely long. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a queue. They they're say, not right. trying to name them individually, are they? No, no, no. That's their problem. No, so <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just, Just keep it down ziggy. to the species. Go this on. Is, this is true. Though. Go on, yeah. So, so they'll sort of go the. You know, the it gives a spider the Black Widow, right? Black Widow, they've all died. So uh, who's next? And they'll say, "Here's a red back." Yeah, and that's that's how they introduce them. So this program was going on about this. <laughs> that's right? not how they do it. No, they do do it. <laughs> okay, your point okay, being, right. right? So anyway, there's this little one, right, in Australia, and it shows you some kids being dead happy and playing around in the sun, loving it. You know, all healthy and that, and you know, love being in the sun. They're playing around the pool, and you know, there's a couple of them there playing swing ball and that, dead happy, not a care in the world. Um, and like the one of them goes, oh, I'll go swimming because yeah. I've been playing swing ball for an hour. I got a bit of a sweat. Sure, go for a little uh, breaststroke or whatever. And uh, they, they get in the in the pool, and they can't wait to have a swim about. And then it pans to the bottom of the pool. Yeah, and there's this little spider just sat there dead still. Right, 
sat at the bottom of the pool holding its breath. Holding <laughs> its breath! Okay. <laughs> ah! Cheeks going up red, yeah, eyes bulging. Yeah, yeah. Oh, eight pairs of goggles on. <laughs> One goes by with a snorkel. You can look this. <laughs> Four pairs of flippers. Yeah. Oh. He sat there in the deep end, right? And it's, and like, he, and then it pans back to the kids having a good time, chucking a ball to each other. Mm -hmm. it, I can see what's gonna happen here. And it pans back. It's not gonna join in the game, is it? <laughs> no. And what happens is, the kid starts bouncing up and down on the floor. Sure. Goes and sticks its, uh, the kid goes and puts a foot on the spider. <laughs> Bites the kid, and apparently, if you're not seen to, you can be dead in 15 minutes. Sorry, well, sorry, why does this spider sit at the bottom of the pool? That's what it likes to do. <laughs> Animals don't do things they like to do. <laughs> Animals do things for a reason. Waiting for a kid to come along to <laughs> No! It doesn't make any sense! It doesn't make any sense. Well, it, that's, that's what it's it not, does. It's not, it doesn't go out to murder kids. That's, <laughs> not, it's, that's not what it does. No, there must be a reason. It's, it, do, I mean, if you just stopped when you watch these programs and don't get involved with the music <laughs> and like, you know, the odd, why does it sit at the bottom of the pool? There must be a reason. It either goes there for protection, food, to cool, it does it for a reason. It doesn't go there to wind up swimmers. Yeah. There uh, must be a reason this, is it, t uh, if anyone's watching, please, if you're watching that program, I don't know, I don't know about this spider. What, what, what's the name of the spider? I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, it, it oh, say... eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, Is it four. the Duncan Goodhue? <laughs> <laughs> is it, is, is, is it Paul? I mean, I don't know, maybe it does go into other things like ponds and that, and maybe it does the same for ducks, if a duck stands on it. But why? <laughs> Stands on it. Uh, oh, I love your brain. Probably because it, eventually, uh, you know, a kid can get like saved if it's if it's seen to in fifteen minutes. But a duck is just gonna like wander around and go, God, I don't feel well and what have you. And it, <laughs> and it, what good is that to the spider? Because no, I'm it, saying it might kill it if it might protect itself. But it must be in the pond for a reason in the first place. Or the swimming pool. It must be down there for a reason. It must have, Can it we, must have another agenda, evolutionary wise. It can't just do it. Could it be in training for the Olympics? <laughs> Unless it is just cooling. Like, like those, um, cause on, on one of the other programs that, that's a bit mental. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that one, yeah. The one, the one with the lizards. <laughs> with the well, let's not get into lizards. This could okay, take. Okay, no, go on, quickly. No, no, this is a good one. It was, it was a program, BBC program again, on how insects and animals help each other out. Yeah. Right? They were saying how, you know, you might think they're in an insect, but they think like humans do, yeah. and they all help each other out, <laughs> right? And there was this this lizard that um, is running about in the desert, right? And it's going, God, it's roasting. And what it does, <laughs> it it makes a little <laughs> hole in the sand, and it goes under the ground and it cools down, right? Yeah. And then you see one of the locals. I think it was in in Egypt or something, and the Egypt bloke comes walking along. <laughs> the Egypt yeah. bloke. And uh, <laughs> is he walking like an Egypt bloke? <laughs> Yeah, I walk like an Egypt bloke. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what uh, he does, right? He, he's looking out for these holes in the ground. Sure. And he sticks his hand in. Yeah. And he Why does he want the lizard? He, he makes shoes and stuff out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. And you see, Cobblers. you see him walking around. And he's got about twelve of these things in a basket on his back, and they're yeah. all looking really fed up. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's dead hot, and they can't be bothered trying to escape, and they look really fed up. And this bloke's laughing, you know, he's collecting loads. I love how he watches this, like, because they sort of uh, editorialise it and make it into like some exactly. sort of like evil play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, then, <laughs> but then it was saying how this deadly scorpion that man is scared of is mates with the lizard. <laughs> And the reason is that the scorpion <laughs> goes into the hole, right? It can't dig its own hole because its arms are that big and it's awkward for it to dig to dig a proper hole. Sure. So what it does, it goes into the, the, the like the little den that the lizards made, right? And um, whilst the lizards having a kip, the scorpion says, I'll "Tell you what, I'll do you a deal. You have a kip. <laughs> I'll walk up and down this hole there and, and, and sort of scare away any people." So the lizards like, "Yeah, all right then, fair enough." Because the scorpion wants a little hole to keep out of the sun. The lizard wants a kip. They've done themselves a little deal. The Egyptian bloke comes walking along, sticks his hand in the hole. Yeah. He thinks he's just going to get a lizard. Scorpion stings him. He runs off, drops the basket. All the lizards go running off. I love the fact that that is what always happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah, feel yeah. that just by yeah, chance. Exactly. That's what always happens. I like the fact that the the. the Egyptian bloke, uh, has done this every day, he does it, he goes, well, okay, I've got all these lizards, um, I'll just go to this hole again. Yeah. Cause I haven't got that lizard yet, yeah. this would be fine. No, I just, I, I just think- And yeah. when the, when the lizard and the scorpion make that deal, and he says, you have a kip, 
Yeah. And the other one does it. Do they talk in Egypt or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so they talk Egypt. How do they, how do they discuss? So they talk Egypt bloke or this. English bloke? What language do they use, Carl? Uh, no, it's the, but it's the international language of love. But spi yeah. spiders is what you're putting in room 101. Spiders. Let's go back to that. Spiders, spiders. Or so, so spiders, spiders that- so basically, spiders that have got the poison to kill a man. Because Rick, I know, because you're- Okay. But Rick, I know what you're- What about the ones that are just too big for their own good? So, you know, those I don't them? understand that either. But Rick- <laughs> But yeah. Rick, you're- you're- you're scared of all spiders, aren't you? Right? Yeah. Even the little tiny ones you find. I don't like any spiders, yeah. Is, is your husband afraid of them as well? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh dear. What are we playing here? Uh, what are we playing here? Oh, this is Cat Stevens. Silent Sunlight's beautiful off Catch Bullet 4 at its peak in the 70s. Silent. Oh, Cat Stevens, Silent Sunlight. Yep. Um, um, Carl just had a, a funny phone call, didn't you? From someone who's telling you all about the, the little brown, it's called, is it? Little brown, yeah. That's the yeah. name of the spider that sits in the bottom of the pool. He said he doesn't hold its breath. <laughs> it's got uh, an air bubble. <laughs> I didn't think it did hold its breath, to be honest. Uh, and then, as you know, Steve was opening a, a letter we got, and it's a football song, and it's They Don't Like It Up um, by the Leatherhead Gimpers. But it's just, it's the fact we keep, we keep getting sent <laughs> homemade singles. Uh, wow, that's good, isn't it? Oh, there's another one here. Uh, They're both football anthems, though. We don't. Well, do we show any interest in football? Are we? Well, well, yeah, the World Cup. We do, don't we? <laughs> You're right, Rick. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a bet on as well. Have you? Arsenal, uh, uh, Chelsea to win two one. What to do? Yeah, mm. and I've got Chelsea to win two one, but Henri to score first, and that's that's something like thirty to one or something. Best of oh, luck. Yeah. Best luck. Cheers. Brilliant. Right, so spiders, that's the first one in room 101, isn't it? So you rude people in supermarkets, rude people in supermarkets, spiders that are either can, have got enough poison to kill a man or are unnecessarily big. Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Right, good. Going well. Right. Uh, next one. Yeah. Stars in their eyes. <laughs> Blimey, it's a popular show. Can't you might alienate stand a lot of people. It. Um, what, um, why? Just, I think, if, if you've got a talent, right? Um, there's loads of shows now that you can go on and make a killing. Yeah. Like Pop Idol. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Pop Stars. Yeah. That sort of thing. So, people who will go on Stars in Their Eyes, they, they want to sort of be famous. Yeah. Um, they want to be a singer. What I don't understand is why I go on that show where you do all the hard work, got to do all the graft. Yeah. Uh, and yet, even if they win it, you never see them again. The guy who won. Last year, uh, Chris Kerberg. Ian Moore. Uh, Ian Moore. Before but, last. But I was now with his own stuff. Yeah, but, <laughs> right. <laughs> How did he say that sold well? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't but, get it. What I like is when, uh, someone doing Edith Piav, like, wins a heat, and, uh, Matthew goes, well, I don't think you'll be going back to the, uh, cleaning job, will you? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you will. Monday. <laughs> Almost certainly. Monday. She'll be back then Monday. Just, yeah. Uh, and, and just the way, you know, in like the final last week where the guy who was Elvis won, and they're I all thought he would there. though, I thought it was very good. No, he was good, <laughs> but will we see him again? Do you know what I mean? I, what, what is his job? I don't know. He'll be carrying on doing that, and there's, there's, there's gonna be no change to his life whatsoever. He's very good at what he does, but he's wasting his time on stars and eyes. <laughs> so what's- I don't understand exactly what your issue is. You, no. you clearly like the show because you watched the final last week. He thinks- he, I, you I think agree he thinks, that people are talented. You think it's a waste of talent to go on stars and eyes because it's not a vehicle to be famous, whereas something like- Pop Idol, yeah. Pop Stars, even yeah. Big Brother. Do you know what I mean? Go yeah. on that. Sit in a room all day, have a month off work. Because they're all- because they're all big stars now, aren't they? I don't know, but what I'm saying is- it's less work to sit in the Big Brother house, now and again just sing a song, and people go, oh, isn't he a good singer? You come out after having a, a month's rest or whatever it is you're having there. Yeah. You come out and there's loads of record companies, like, waiting for you to come out and give you a deal. And what happens then? When and you yeah. get a deal, when you cut a record, what happens to that record then? Then it either sells or it doesn't. Uh, and, and actually, what happened to it? Uh, it didn't, it didn't sell. No, none of them did. But what I'm saying is, that is a lot easier to do than to all the graft that you have to do on Stars in the Rise and the pressure. What would you rather do? Buy Craig's Christmas record? Yeah. Or, um, Ian Moore's, uh, classics? Probably Craig, just because the guy on Stars in the Rise really thought he was better than Christa Berg. When he was singing, and I <laughs> think I'm better than Christa Berg. <laughs> oh. He was singing and Chris, Chris DeBerg came walking on. Did he cry? And he didn't stop and go, oh, I can't believe it, my big fan. He was sort of carrying on, like, don't interrupt me, I'll have a word with you in a bit. 
yeah. You think you should show the man he's actually making a little bit of living off? Yeah. Emulating. A bit of respect. A bit more respect. And the most annoying thing. I imagine them arguing, resting each other on the floor, saying, I'm Christopher Berg. No, I'm Christopher Berg. Like two ventriloquist dummies. Mm. Just having a fight in the dressing room afterwards. <laughs> the, the most annoying thing of all with stars in their eyes, people who go on and do people like, um, say like, I think, I think last, last year, someone went on and did Lamar. <laughs> now, <laughs> if you wanna, cause the, the whole idea with stars in the rise, you get work off the back of that show by like companies, don't you say? Yeah. Let who will we book? Yeah. You could get the real Lamar for about 30 quid. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah. why, why have an imitator? Well, it seems to me though, Carl, the problem is that show's been running so long that all the big names have already been done, so it's gonna end up having to be, isn't it, Lamal or some yeah. old kind of 50s thing you've never heard of? Isn't that the problem? I remember when- I mean, uh, it's just an- it's just a- Eddie just Reader was yeah, on there, yeah, there was yeah. a movie by Eddie Reader. But it's uh, just a karaoke contest, it's just- it, I yeah. don't think- I think you're assuming that everyone on there wants to get, uh, yeah, you know, a recording could do, contract. They do, Steve. Okay. In, in that bit at the back where they say, uh, and the votes are coming in, let's have a look at the tension now that's going on, and they sat there and they really think they are Elvis <laughs> and they are Luther Mandross. <laughs> <laughs> sat there and like, if, if you were all sat there having Woke a laugh. Woke up this morning, looked at your picture just to get me started. <laughs> Phil. If they were all sat there sort of thinking, oh god, this is a bit of a laugh, innit? But they're not, you can see that they all really want it. And it's but like. So what I'm saying is, who are you putting in room 101? Are you putting in the people who are just there to have a bit e of fun? Everyone involved in that show. Including Kelly? Yeah. He's a talented guy. You don't care. No, he's, going he's, in, he's in there first, and then everyone else, everyone who enters it, the people who go and sit in the audience, everything. But it what was, would you do Saturday night? You'd love the show, you'd watch it every no, week. I he was just on when I was getting ready to go out, and there's nothing else on at that time. Sure. And it was the final on Saturday night as well. Yeah, you gotta watch the final, you know, the final. Really, the final. Yeah. Well, who would you do if you went <laughs> on the show? Moby. I'd probably do. Ooh. It's not. It's not that you look like them, though, is it? No. Yeah, you saying no, like no. they wouldn't let me on as Tracy Chapman. I was furious. That's Because right. I sound just like her, but they said, no. Bowie. Bowie. You do Bowie. Yeah. Can I hear your impression? No. Well, come on. No, no, because you just said if you could go on and, and what have you. I'm, I'm saying that. Well, it's got to be someone you can do. I mean, obviously, I'd go on as Will Smith because I can do the rapping. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't do it. I'm not a good singer. I've never, never really been into singing. I've never done a live singing thing before. Haven't you? No. no but if you, if there was a talent, if there was a talent show, if there was a talent show, what did you do? I did walk like an Egyptian by the Bengals and I mind, dressed up as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Uh, it was when I was still going out of school, so it was like. <laughs> well, I hope so. Twelve. And what? Well, sorry, what was the? What? Why did you do that? What did you mind to? And why were you dressed as a woman? <laughs> Where's the logic in this? Is what I'm saying, Carl. What what sort um, of act was this? Was I think, it? I think I was meant to get old of some like Egyptian outfit. <laughs> Couldn't. <laughs> so I looked in my mum's wardrobe and I had a dress. Dress got, dress and affairs. Carrying some lizards. That'd do it, wouldn't it? I had some boots and a wig on. And, <laughs> <laughs> and how did you dance? Look, <laughs> he looks confused! He's confused suddenly by his own act. He's suddenly confused! The best bit was, I also, it was like a, a proper talent show, do you know where you'd cover it all? Yeah. So I did like the dancing and the miming, and then I also did a bit of magic, right, <laughs> where I had like a cloth, <laughs> right, and, and I had it over my hand like that, and, and the crowd were like, oh god, what's he gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> of course they were. Go on, and what did they, and what was and the trick? They were <laughs> playing that. <laughs> and the crowd going, oh, what, what's the great <laughs> pill? One chorus, oh, what's, what's she gonna what's, do? Oh, what's the great pill Coney gonna do? <laughs> so, oh. so, so what I did was, <laughs> I stood there teasing them, and, um, teasing the audience? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I pulled the, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, a bird appear before your very eyes, okay. <laughs> and I pulled the, the tea towel <laughs> off, and I just had hold of an egg. <laughs> and I said, oh, it isn't born yet. <laughs> they loved it. They He's so they proud it. of that! Did like, you come up with that yourself? Yeah. Did you have any help at all? <gasps> no, no. Was, so, oh, you oh, did oh, walk like an Egyptian and dress as a woman, then you did the egg trick. And yeah. Then, and then I was also playing like a, a janitor. <laughs> because when the next person was singing, <laughs> I'd come on and all the electric went off. And, uh, I came on going, oh, cause I've only got 50p for the meter. Oh, you're quite a little show, showman, weren't you? And then like, you know, the Did you win? Chucked, chucked to some money. Yeah. And, uh, Are you sure you weren't actually employed as the janitor? <laughs> <laughs> no, did you win? No, I think we came second. Some, this, this really tarty girl who did Madonna, like a virgin. And I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like you are. She's a right ropey little woman. <laughs>
But, uh... <laughs> so great. That's so cute. Oh, oh okay. Brilliant. So Spider Stars and the Rise. We better play a, a track, hadn't we? Oh, indeed. Yeah. A bit of Tom McRae. This was a track we played a while back. I enjoyed it. Tom McRae. End of the world news. Yeah, I love that one. I hope you enjoy the music. We're loving it, aren't we? Indeed. Still to come. We've got uh, another entry to Room 101, Carl's final entry, and then that um, giveaway, the famous giveaway with uh, Enhance Carl's Life. Can I have some adverts though first, Carl? Because I'm oh, getting a bit fed up with adverts for a little while. Bad evening, boy. Once around the block. Classic retro cut. Getting a bit sad now, Steve. 20 minutes. Indeed. You're right. I've got so much to say. I've got so much to leave people with about Carl, about all the things he's, he's done. Looking back, Carl, do you remember when I put up the waste paper bin on your head? Oh, oh, classic. Classic yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? What did I do to you today? Well, you tried to bring the same memories flooding back to me by putting the same grotty bin on me head. But the annoying thing was, <laughs> last time I did it, it was quite a new bin. Yeah. Did it today. It's rank. All yeah. sorts of stuff on What it. else did I do when I saw you go around the corner down there? <laughs> go on. I went, I went to get the paperwork and that, like, you need to produce the show. Yeah. And, uh, came around the corner. Ricky was sort of hiding. And I was concentrating, reading <laughs> stuff, and he goes, <laughs> I don't imagine it was as soft and gentle as that. I imagine it was more like, <laughs> exactly. Like that. And he, I tell you what, I nearly exploded because he's not hot on one day, right? <laughs> and the, <it's laughs> He's not a, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but he's, I was walking that and all, we're looking down, and I went, ah, and he got like that, and he went, <laughs> Uh, rest oh. assured, listeners, that if you were here, it's not any funnier than it is if you were listening at home. It's only amusing to Ricky. But oh! It, it oh. makes you feel really refreshed. <laughs> what he, a... he was going on and having a heart attack like that. And I was, I was nearly having a heart attack laughing. And he went, I feel good now. He said, I can see why people skydive. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that'll be good for people that were ill. Oh, Carl! Oh! Yeah. They've, they've, they've made a feel. How am I gonna, how am I gonna live without Carl for 14 weeks? Oh, you'll find other people to irritate. <sighs> oh, dear. Okay, so, uh, right, well, um, we got this, this final entry in Room 101, but we've also, um, had m uh, so many emails and letters about this competition, people trying to bribe you with things. I've been great. Can you read a few more? Absolutely, yeah. Well, obviously, this is, uh, people are trying to win this, uh, bag that we got signed at the BAFTAs. We got Graham Norton, Angus Dayton, Alan Davis, Jamie Thiexton, Paul Whitehouse, Baxendale, Helen, Steve Filmich and McFadden, Peter Davis and Simon Pegg, Steve Rowe, all different people signing the big bag. Do you know what I think, though? Go I on. don't think people want that. I think they want to contribute to Carl's existence. Well, this is I what really genuinely think that Carl was sort of, you've, you've, you've you know, you've only won it. How long have we been doing this now with you, sort of like, you know, in the area? Three months? Yes. I think you've, I think you've touched people's lives, Carl. I don't think I've ever met, well, I haven't met you, but this, it, I think your soul comes across as like a cross between, I put it, it's like a cross between a cat and yeah. Rain Man. <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, we've had quite a few which are, uh, uh, sort of, which obviously wants to kind of further your education. Obviously, when we're off air, this is something we, we're we're worried that's just going to dry up, you know. And, and we've tried hard to educate you. So, lots of books. Lots of people suggesting books. Um, the Giant Book of Mysteries. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you chose this one, Carl, it uh, tells you um, how three thousand Japanese soldiers literally vanished overnight. Real life accounts Ooh. of vampires. Uh, the man who planned his own crucifixion. Oh, the famous Carl. Ghostbuster Harry Price. Oh. Um, and Ooh. lots of uh, things about spontaneous combustion. Is this the, the one about the one with the hairball? That's not got the one in the hair. In there. I'll have See, to that these, for you. these sort of books are the thing that I'm after. This is what well, I've, 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 I've brought in one as well. It's a, it's a, a, a friend who works with um, Jane, my girlfriend, called Liz, and she wants to put this forward. And this is trade secrets: everything you will ever need to know about everything. And it's just like little tips. You know mm. what I mean? But there's so many things competing with that. You see, there's another guy you sent in. He wants to give you uh, a video entitled "Making Love: Parts One and Two: An Instructional Guide." I mm. imagine you'd enjoy that, Carl. No. Nah. No? Nothing they can teach you? No. Nah. <laughs> sure. Uh, the Reader's Digest book of strange stories and amazing facts again, and other stuff here. Why cats have nine lives, Carl? Well, hang on a minute. Why meteors are likely to destroy Earth in the next hundred years? You're wasting your time. Okay. In this, in this trade secrets book, yep. listen to this for a tip. Make a necklace from electrical wire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> but don't plug it in. What? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't say that. <laughs> what about this then, Carl? Because uh, obviously we're concerned that you didn't get your GCSEs or you didn't get as many as you'd have hoped. There's yeah. a guy here. This is Victoria, and she's saying she's more than willing to give you all of her 
awards and certificates. She's got six GCSEs, six A's and four, but she's got many GCSEs, in fact, six A's, four B's, three A levels, and a master's degree in philosophy. She's willing to give you those certificates. She says you will be the proud owner of qualifications. As the owner of qualifications, she has found that anything she says is invariably believed and that she's popular and very happy. She's willing to give you those qualifications. That's pretty impressive. You can claim they're your own. You have to change your name to Victoria, but other than that, I can see no problems. <laughs> and you have to put a dress on, uh, yeah. Fez. It's not a thing. <laughs> More like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, there's lots of educational ones. Then there's other things which are perhaps less useful to you. Um, this is, uh, doesn't say who it's from, but, uh, I think it's Ruth, and she's happy to give you a statue of an ostrich that she made when she was seven. What about that? All right, you love birds, you love animals. Yeah, um, apparently statue. the legs fell off under the weight of the body, <laughs> so now it's just a legless ostrich, but even so. Yeah. Even so. I've only got a small flat and... Sure. Another woman here, she, uh, this I doubt if it's ostrich size. Yeah, it's, it's just clogging up space though, isn't it? This okay. is Lauren, she's willing to give you some of her handmade blue tack animals. She makes animals out of blue tack, she can give you an elephant, a seahorse, a tortoise, a pig, a butterfly, a fish, snail, even a stegosaurus, or anything you choose. See, I've got, I've got my art set on- You've got the books, you're excited about the books. Book. What about this, though? This is a Lego alarm clock with a little Lego man who's got a variety of hats. It says here, including biker's helmet and cap. Two, I think, of the village people. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Carl, if again people are picking certain things up. A clear stiletto mobile phone holder with pink fur on it flashes pink and green. I think people know that you are okay. listening. In this book, okay. listen, right? In this book, little tips and stuff. To one ear about if your dog keeps nicking a remote control. Sure. The way to get it off it. Ring the doorbell, right? So you got to get off your chair, <laughs> go and ring the doorbell, <laughs> so the dog goes, "What's that?" And it drops, it it, jo it drops the remote control, goes running to the door. Yeah. You you run back and pick it up. I love the idea of Carl doing that. And then the doorbell goes, and Carl drops it and goes, and it's the dog pressing the doorbell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he sits back down, and Carl going, oh no, not again. <laughs> I, I mean, I really do want. Can't I just have this? You excited by that? Are you? It's brilliant. What about this one though that you mentioned? This is uh, a book which has got all those um, urban legends and stories that you've read on the internet, and it tells you whether they're real or not. This has got the one in there. I know you're very excited about the one with the woman who stuck her head in the microwave. Yeah. Hey. Eh? Alright, it's not. Alright, so basically that she's saying here that whenever Ricky says, oh, it's not true, you can dispute, dispute that with your, your book? Yeah. yeah. What do you think then, Carl? Do I have a think about all these gifts? And There's then so much stuff, back? isn't there? Should we play a record and then come back? <sighs> can I, have you found something you like in there? You're so undecided, Carl. I really like this book. Go on, and what is it, what have you else you found? What tip? Uh, God, there's loads of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, let's just, let's just pick one at random. Don't be too tidy. Leave some areas for hopeful, helpful garden animals to hide in. So when you're cleaning your garden and that, you know, it might look a bit of a mess, but think about the, the animals that are walking about at night in the uh -huh. dark and stuff. Yeah. Just little things you don't think about. Yeah, because they're pointless. <laughs> little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then we'll just play a record. Oh, there's so many to decide on. Yeah. All right, what are we playing, Steve? This is something, um, from a little compilation that came free with a magazine called Comes With A Smile. It's a good little magazine. And this is, uh, by Matt Pond, PA. It's called Night's End, isn't it? I suppose it's a little bit of New Country, which we don't play often, but, uh, there's some nice tracks no, floating about, nice. and that's, uh, Matt nice. Pond, PA, Night's Well, End. I'm getting very sad now. Ten minutes to go, and so much to cram in. Now, thing is, Carl's fallen in love with that book, but I feel a bit bad letting a friend sort of win when all these lovely people, these regular listeners, so I don't think you can have it. But I'll tell you what, uh, I'll, I'll get, I'll, no, no, I'll borrow that or I'll buy it for you. So you can have that anyway. What, what have That's you safe, you're yeah, going yeah, home with that. What know, have you, avoid washing up by borrowing a bag of food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I can see why you'd love that. <laughs> exactly. Is there anything, else, what, uh, 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 what, what other things have you caught your eye though? Put that uh, book down. Yeah, uh, go on, go on. Um, well, well, one of our regular listeners who actually wants the bag and wants to be part of your life, come right. on. Well, Richard emailed in, right? And yeah. he's got a book, which is similar to the one I like there. Yeah. Which has got like 180 stories in it. Um, so, I mean, most of them are like true, I think. Do you know, do you know I was telling you that story about the woman who put her, her head in the oven <laughs> to, to dry, to dry her hair? Yeah. Cause she liked the way- and she boiled her brain. Yeah, she stuck it in the microwave. Avo avoid washing your hair by boiling the brain bags. <laughs> so she put her head in the microwave? Yeah. And boiled her brains? Yeah. And boiled her brains. So. She thought she'd get the same result as she did from the oven, but it all went wrong and that. And what do you mean? She used to dry hair in the oven? And she just like went modern? Apparently it's like what punks used to do. You can get, you get a different sort of heat off an oven than you do off a hair dryer. Right? Sure. So, um, she thought, well, I'll do it in half the time, use a microwave. Sure. 
She was busy. She was busy. I she don't was understand lying. how you can get your head in a microwave. It only works when the door closes. Yeah, but you jam the little thing, don't you? Well, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't tell. I don't think it's possible, but don't. Because it is. Yeah, well, well don't. Anyway, but he's, do he remembers that story and said, I've got a book full of stuff like that. And, um, he sort of sums up a little story that's, that's in the book about this girl who, uh, she had long hair, right? And, uh, she used to always mess around with it. And, um, she's sucking on it. Do you know, like, how girls, girls do with the, with the long hair, they sort of yeah, mess yeah. around with it and stuff. Yeah. And she's sucking on it all the time. And she was doing this from the age of, like, ten. Mm. And then, I don't know, she's probably about thirty-odd. And, uh, she's doing this all the time. Guessing. And, uh, she goes, oh, God, my belly's hurting today, mum. And she goes, oh, what's wrong with you? She says, I don't know. You're thirty. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so she goes to the doctors, and the doctors do an x-ray, and nothing's coming up, and it's like, I don't know what's wrong with you, you know, you're just being a bit moany about nothing. She's like, no, honestly. <laughs> He's a very intolerant doctor. <laughs> yeah. She said, this is- Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is uh. really hurting, I don't know what's up with it. So anyway, they, they found out some sort of system of, uh, looking at what, what was going on. Yeah. Well, apparently, X-rays. No, it wasn't X-ray, because X-ray didn't show it up. Okay. It was someone else. So, uh, anyway, it's only gone and turned into, like, she's been sucking her hair for so many years sure. that little bits have come off. Sure. She's got a giant air ball in her belly. Wow. Right? Yeah. Which was, like, huge, the size of a rat or something like that, right? The size of a... <laughs> it's so interesting what he chose. Yeah. The no, size right. of a rat. No, no, no. Well, the funny thing is, when, when they eventually got it out, yeah. the, the mum, was like, you know, oh god, it was terrible, and that's what she actually said, it looked like a dead rat. Oh. Right. And it was in her belly, and that's like what was causing all the pain. Sure. And apparently, your, your belly acids don't, um, uh. don't, don't kill hairs, because they're so fine, it can't handle it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, right. So, you, can, you're going for that book, are you? That's the one I want, Who's yeah. the winner, then? Who's the winner of the, the lovely BAFTA What's bag? What's uh, Richard Scholar, is it, or something? Yeah, Richard, uh, yeah, Scholar or Scowler, yeah. or something like that. So, he's the winner, so check it out. You're going to get that book coming to you. I'll get that, I'll borrow this book but for I you. I need oh. an email within, like, five working days to sort of... So, what's your email? It's... Carl.pilkington at yeah. xfm.co.uk. Okay, lovely. I want an email from this guy oh. and I won't be sending the bag out until I receive the goods. Okay, <laughs> right, good. Enough. Well, we've only got a few minutes. I want to play Swade and I want to end with the Smith track, so let's let's play this. What is it? Swade, stay together. Lovely track. My favourite tw- Swade track of all time there. Well, we're, we're, we're... Oh, that's nearly it, Carl. Right, what's your last room 101? Oh, God. It was, uh, holidays. Holidays. Well, you want to put holidays in room 101? People who are sort of annoying on holiday. Oh, yeah. Do you know when you go away? Oh, yeah. It's sort of touched on this before. Is, it, is this going to be the Scouse guy? Yeah. Go on. Oh, it's so long, though. I mean, it was holiday when we went to Tunisia. <laughs> and the scouts have pissed you off, surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the annoying thing was, you know, when you go on, on, uh, it was a cheap holiday and, like, the lesson here is, you know, if you want a good holiday, you gotta, like, spend some money. Yeah. And we didn't on this one, we spent about, I don't know, 400 quid for two of us for, like, a month or something ridiculous. And we got there and, you know, you, you get to the hotel and you go, we have made a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's a ropey hotel. Um, you know, you can tell, like, that the blinds and stuff as you're walking are all dirty and stuff. And well, let's make the most of it. You know, let's not, let's not get down about it. It's, it's a holiday. It's sure. for a rest. And <laughs> you try and make the most of it. And we had to meet. Do you know, like, you have one of those things where you get to your destination and the rep says, right, you know, go and unpack your bags and that. Go and sort yourself out in the room. And, uh, tomorrow morning we'll meet up at ten o'clock and I'll go through, you know, the, the best sort of place to go for camel rides and, uh, you know, the best deals I can get you. That sort of thing. Could anyone here walk like an Egyptian? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, she says, uh, right, tomorrow morning meet ten o'clock in the discotheque. So, we get up and we have breakfast and it wasn't a good breakfast, uh, the kitchen was, like, Bit, bit horrible, the food wasn't good, and it was run by sort of midgets. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it was run? Not there's anything wrong with that. There was little fellas running around, and the annoying thing was one of them sort of started to fancy my girlfriend. <laughs> 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 How did he manifest his, his affection? No, for you're not saying there's anything wrong with midgets, though, are you? Just no, saying no, it was no, strange. There was yeah, a but even midgets shouldn't be cutting on on Carl. <laughs> no, I know, I know, no. But it's also that thing of the, you know they've got little fingers and I don't, 
and oh, it's sort God, of ruined. I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm not. Th it's, it is a bit of a phobia of mine. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They are nice people and that. Sure. Um, oh, God. But the annoying thing is- So what was he doing then? How did he- I don't understand how he was chatting up your girlfriend. Was he crawling under the table so you couldn't see? He just kept- <laughs> whispering, <laughs> whispering to her from underneath there. <laughs> Stop it! Just, you know, Wait, I don't want to get a complaint on our last show. Oh, There's not many oh, What's gonna happen? Can oh. we just finish this and start up again in a couple of months? Oh, yeah. So if you want to more, know more about the midget theme <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> then <laughs> just, just we'll talk you in, we'll talk you in three months. Yeah. It's just oh. that, it's just- No, that's fair enough, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah no, right, sorry Carl, about this. Listen, um, uh, we'll see you in about a really, um, it's been a pleasure, truly, and thank you for everyone that wrote- I've got you a Let us- Have you really? Hey, I've got you both a present. Right. Oh. I've got Ricky, um, do you know how like we've done fables and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is like Mr. Ben. Oh. This is brilliant. Yeah. Right? And it's like little fables that Mr. Ben goes on. Oh, fantastic. So I want <laughs> you to t learn something from that for when you come back. Okay, brilliant. That's I, lovely, Carl. I'll tell Carl. one of the stories I read this morning. It's brilliant. In fact, <laughs> when you've done with it, yeah. give it me. Yeah. Because I, I haven't finished reading that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And for Steve, <laughs> a little, uh, Oh, up lines. a little book of chat up lines. That's fantastic. That's great Thank you. Um, well, we'll we'll see you um, in three months. But carry on emailing Carl. Cherish Carl Pilkington. He sits in a little room by himself, so keep him in touch. And we'll see you in um, August. I'm, uh, we're going to leave you with some of the um, we all we all love. This is uh, there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Very apt, I think. Goodbye. See you later. Take me out.